one, you usually want to just get these guys sort of set up, get the rotation happening as well. That way you can set up for that next one. They did have the course as good side at the begin with, but for some reason it has looked a little bit hopey. They're trying to pick up the second kill. Can't do much with it, though. Five, though, 30 seconds already gone from that train hard point, you know, the, tra the train platform. And it's exactly as I said, you know, you don't need to see too much time being... being accumulated here, you usually want to try and just get those spawns flipped in your favour if you are Oracle. Yeah, at the current moment, Oracle not really doing too much on the board. Again, that hard, first hard point, very, very dry for both teams. Hope you get those final scrap points. We've got Spades here, picking up a two piece. This is Zephyr on your screen. He's also going to be looking to get those spawns up back. He's got Granny, she's got their Lime. Can he hold on? He's got the new hard point. It's just flipped, and it looks like it's already gone over to Oracle, so we'll see if they can get a bit of time here. JTX with a two piece. We'll jump on board with Hope. He's just trying to get those players on the flank. Yeah, you should be able to get those those that time indeed, as you mentioned, uh, and I mentioned as well. They got their spawns flipped, and that's exactly what they needed to do straight off the bat there. They're still holding down spawns. They are spawning out wide, though, out there at Lime. They probably want to spawn a little bit closer to the back Mars, but, you know, what can you do? Work with what you have, as they say. And just like that, Oracle has scored 23 points out of this hard point alone, out of the possible 25 that was available there. Only contested for two seconds. They have lost it now. They've lost the controls, and they may have lost spawns unless they can get something working magically there. Zephyr does get taken down, though by Dismal, so that's going to be Spawn Swift in favour now of Aero Apotheon, and they'll be able to accumulate some more time inside a barn. I can hear the lads getting hyped up there on the main stage from the EOA squad as well. They're pumped ready for action in this one, and they're bringing it to this Oracle team as they get set up for that rotation. Wow, EOA really heating up already. The score may not show it, but you can see it. The play's massive defensive run there from both teams. We saw Oracle making a run right on through mid. They managed to get a couple of kills out of it, but nothing was found there. And now we've got EOA straight on a bike path. We jump board with JTX and watch him and the boys of Oracle try and break this setup. They go for that high wall run. Nades are out. They do have a Scarab in the back pocket if they need it. Dude, that was a nice trade between Kytosis and Zephyr there. Shots out for JTX. Doesn't manage to find the kill, and he's going to be running for a moment. Him and Spades are neck and neck in regards to their KDs on this one for their team, you know, on the other side of things. Sefty's had a bit of a slow start here. Oracle are down by that, was at nine points there for a moment. So Sefty needs to step this up a little bit more, I think. If Sefty can do that, then perhaps, you know, Oracle can answer back. Of course, we do have JTEX now on our screens. He's just trying to hold back that globe there to hold those spawns, but they can't. Kytos is coming in big. Big fight at half wall. Kytos just picks up one more. Hope he's trying to stay alive. Players all around him. He gets one, can't get the second. So that's going to allow EOA to perhaps get some more time here if they can get in. Well, we can hear EOA here from the stage, but we want you to be able to hear EOA straight through your screens. We're going to go to a quick listening with Error of Apotheon and hear the hype. No, I'm sorry. Two at the back. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Two on the sashi. Two on the sashi. Let's just hit bowling. Top lead. Top lead. Top lead. Top lead. Weak. One dead. Let's go. Nice. Go, go, go. I'm out of here. We close this. Let's go, boys. 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 let I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel. Jay, 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 he's slow warring, he's gonna push out the way Jay, just stay alive, Tunnel dead. I'm gonna stay alive, dude, stay alive, dude. I see three, three, corner. Gay corner, gay corner, 1v3, oh no, I see, I see. Two in me, two in me, two in me. He's weak, he's weak on that side of front green. Let's go, boys, come on. 30 seconds. I see front green. He's gay corner, gay corner, gay corner. Tunnel, 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 Tunnel,
I'm pushing off, I'm pushing off. I'm playing bowling, I'm playing bowling. One bowling already. I'm bowling, 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 i am bowling i am it's going to be over to the side of things now for this Oracle squad to try and get some more points there on that bottom half point under bridge. Seemed pretty much uncontestedly right now because pretty much EOA got, a, got dropped for four down and they had to come off this respawn. They are trying to contest a little bit. Kytosis, while in the hill, pulls out the scarab and grabs the kill. Big plays from him. Here we go on Walker Spades is the push. He and Setsy just clean that one up well. Good. This one, Kytosis all getting kills, and this is it. EOA back on hard point. 149 and rising Dallas. This is unprecedented. Oracle were dominating their hard points yesterday, but coming up here against EOA, the hype is just a little too much. Yeah, you know, I think Oracle need to get Hopi more vocal. Hopi's one of those vocal players. If he is hype, the rest of the team feel it, and they play along with it as it plays out. But right now, I'm not hearing too much from back here from the Hopi squad. And Hopi currently on 13 and 22. That might be why he's not getting too hyped. You know, he's dropping some, some numbers there in the neg negative department. So that might be sort of playing out in his mind in the background. So you see Dismal now trying to push into that back globe, trying to break it a little bit just to keep him off it, to keep that score line. We're around at plus 50. It was a plus 45 there. As we see that time tick on up in favour of Errol popping on still, but Oracle still trying to answer back. And even though EOA didn't get too much hill there at Globe at the start, they're still being as vocal as hell. Oh, man, you can hear him through our mics, I'm sure. Carrie's absolutely going off 15 17 for him. But on the real superstar for the team, it's going to be Spades going 24 and 15. Massive kills, massive plays from him. This is his point of view right now. And Dismal also going 30 and 22, so massive work from everyone on EOA. Look at these plays coming out on left, right, and center. We'll jump on board with Hopi. Baseball field is almost finished, getting ready for that next rotation. And here we go, Oracle. They're not out of it yet, 181 to 120. They've still got life in the tank. But these next rotations are gonna be huge. Hopi not winning any of those engagements. 16 to 26 right now. He's been on the receiving end of every single bad gunfight, unfortunately for the man in blue. Oracle now, do you want the can of stay alive? We're back to train, so all back to square one. And things are looking very yellow right now. This is Kytosis. Overwatching that position. Zephyr's getting kills in the back end. Kytos has got one. He's got his players on the flank. Just turns at the right time, but does, does get shot out. Manages to get killed by JTEX, so massive play. We'll have a board with JTEX. He's managed to secure hard point. He's got Centurion ready, 125 away from a Scarab if he needs it. And there we go. Malk still getting cut to pieces. Oracle just unable to find themselves here. 197 to 123. The clock is ticking ever so slowly. And now we've got Carry still going off on one. Space just got taken out there. And here comes the push. Hope he does get brought down. Carry still trying to stay alive. He's got his FTL jump also. Does get ripped up. So look, it's back and forth between these two teams, but the score, Dallas, is looking all EOA. Oh, it is indeed. And I was watching that minimap there for a little while, and it was going to be JTEX who was just trying to hold those spawns down for the longest time. They've still got back spawns coming to the next hill, hard point of bar, which is good, but they really need to contest that middle one a little bit more. Obviously, that score difference is not doing too much for their favour. They have to hold a good 40 seconds here to get back into this one in this barn hard point. They still have spawns. One has to stay alive. This is where they're going to struggle. Dismal is pushing in and trying to force those spawns out. If he manages to do that, which I just saw Seps spawn underpass, so in spades is spawning out there as well. So it's sort of in a bit of a up in the air regarding those spawns at this, very, at this point in time. If they've done well here. They've gotten a good 20 seconds out of the current barn 30. They're still going to have to try and get this remaining time to really fight back. And then I think you should see that Centurion come in when they're going to the next hard point, that lower bridge. Well, we've actually got the Centurion for Oracle just been deployed in barn. As you see, just con the defensive run from the boys in blue have been so solid here. This is Oracle's hard point from start to finish. This is a new lineup from, you know, they didn't look this strong a moment ago. EOA now on the ropes. Big Oracle, have done a, they've done a great job hanging on to this one. 206 and 180 and climbing. So on board now with spades. Getting ready for the next rotation. Three seconds time, it's going to be all lit. We'll jump aboard Kytosis, he's the anchor for his team. This is a big kill on Hope. He does manage to secure it. He's got his camo. That hard point has just been... That's, yeah, you saw you pulled EOA have just deployed their Centurion. And that's Zeppa on a seven kill streak as well. Carrying the run on. This is Zeppa's perspective. Eight. He's got his bombardment. He's got his FTL ready. And he's absolutely slaying it through. This is what Oracle need to get back in this game. 216 and 191 and climbing. That's a game changer right there for Zeppa. Getting those streaks, being fully streaked out. Allowing him to get back into that hill and get these guys more time. Now, obviously, he'll probably save the bombardment when they go to Globe next. And if, he can, if they can just get another 10 seconds here at a possible 30... That'll be a definite game changer for him. Obviously, you see a couple of those payloads will come into play as well. Got some armors there. Hope he's running that. 
Hope he's still struggling a little bit on the struggle street side of the kills, but the rest of the team, you know, overall, kill-wise, EOA have two players up almost on 40 bombs. 37 for Dismal, 38 for Spades. But it's not all about kills here. If your team can't control the hard points and lock it down just like these guys are, I want to see Zeppa as we head into this next hard point. Here comes that bombardment. Tree Rocket out. He's going to find one. Almost dead to get the tag. That is how he's going to clear out the next hard point. So they may have lost the rotation, but they definitely got the kills. And here we go, Zeppa. JTEC's got a kill in the back. Hope he's got one as well. 224 to 217. Oracle is still in this yet. It is coming down to the wire. He's got that bombardment. This is going to be massive. They've got the time. The clock is ticking. Here comes the push. We'll watch the perspective from Carry. Carry, they're making the run through. Here comes the opening kills. Are they going to find anything on that high wall run? He's got one. Kaitos is found. Hope he sets. He trades out as well. Spades on the trade. So it's three dead for Oracle. Last man in the back end. And there's Carry. 1v1 against oh. Zeppa. Cleans him up. They need this time. 227, 234. Oracle, this is going down to the wire. Here's the push. Watch this one from JTEC's perspective. They still have that bombardment. They could clear it out. The Centurion's actually still sitting in part, which is funny enough. But there was the bombardment. Managed oh, to get two of them. They're all dead. Him. It's all down. They're going to be able to get the last few seconds here. They've got to push those players on spawn. What can EOA do? Here comes the play. Are they going to find those players on the door? They make it through. Just one text with two as well and this is it spades he's got to make something happen here the clock is ticking 244 left the next half point is going to be huge here it is in mid can Setsy on the camera play make something happen here he's got to get a couple of kills 247 245 oracle need five to win this Setsy goes down zeppa's still making the play this is it oracle what oh, a comeback unbelievable God. run eoa the most vocal team we've seen on the stage yet they had the lead from start up until the bit some comeback. This is where you start Championship Sun WR Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. What a comeback by Oracle and it was completely made there. The final plays by Zeppa and JTEX. I mean, what a game. EOA, Era of Apothean, had nothing against the AOE of Oracle. And what a way to use those uh, streaks in the end, Miles. And of course, JTEX's clutch double, that two-piece, right at the end, stopped any coming through unders um, to stop the push from Statue, which completely changed five seconds left, but that's where it was shut down. Oh, man, I'm not ready for a game like that. That was game one, Championship Sunday. I've not even had my coffee yet. Don't, don't need, need it, it now. You don't need it now. I'm just yeah. looking at those scores there, you know, Dismal and Spade. Dismal dropped 39 kills, Spade dropped 41, and, you know, they still need to lose there. Over on the other side, though, of Oracle, three of the players all on 35. And I mentioned Hopi. Hopi fired up at the end there as well. He had a bit of a struggle start, but he ended up with 26 kills. So, you know, it was more even, even scoreline. Playing as a team, you know, trading those kills, a big effort in the end there. That's what we saw. That's what we see. Three, 35 kills on three of the players. They were trading so much and then getting doubles on top of that. And then, you know, being really the game changer. Oh, they're getting excited. I'm standing at attention because that was one hell of a way to start off this series. Miles, I've got to be honest, I thought Era of Apothean had it locked in the bag. Yeah, we were getting real riled up about how well Spades and Dismal were playing. Carry was going off at times. But at the end, you know, those kills, we, we talk about Spades, you got 41 kills in that last one. You know, and at the end of the day, it was really just, it was, it came down to the decisions made. It came down to the plays made by the boys on Oracle. You know, the decision, cho the choices were there. They really, they held onto those streaks until the right times. And the Centurion came out for both sides. We saw AOE, they dropped it on bike path on the second rotation, whereas um, uh, Oracle's, it was in the barn. Yeah. And that was their money heel, so that really changed it for them. That was where the game completely flipped for them. We, we saw them down by like 60 points, and they brought it right back. And after that, it was kind of like they were off Struggle Street, and the, the finish line was in sight. Yeah, that 40 seconds, I think they got minimal in barn. It was that game changer, obviously. They went down the bike path. Uh, they used the Trinity Rocket, I think, just as they came out of bike path. Then, of course, the that back hill at Globe. Like they broke it for a little while, then lost, and then a four place, five, five, so five kills in the Counts bar, but, you know, it was a, it was a moment, amazing work, and that was really, AOE could not, not challenge that hill. They had to go for it, otherwise it would have been game over right there and there. They had to tra challenge right towards the end there, and even though they didn't get those last couple of kills, and then went straight to the train platform, got the remaining time. I was surprised with the camo play. I thought he'd pop camo and just go lay on the hill. Nothing yeah. else, just stay in hill. But he would challenge a couple of kills. He ended up dying, but they still got there in the end, which is the main thing. My AOE could not not challenge that hill. They had to go for it, otherwise it would have been game over right there and there. They had to tra challenge right towards the end there, and even though they didn't get those last couple of kills, and then went straight to the train platform, got the remaining time. I was surprised with the camo play. I thought he'd pop camo and just go lay on the hill. 
nothing yeah. else, just stay and heal. But he will challenge a couple of kills, he ended up dying, but they still got there in the end, which is the main thing. My only critique was that I, I, I'd, I'd play Ditch and just lay on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't take anything from either team. Uh, what I will say is that uh, if Hopi plays at his best, Ooh. that was going to be one hell of a performance. And just credit to Zeppa, the way he played that game, Miles, was just insane. Oh, dude, we saw some remarkably clutch plays from Zeppa. He was he was one of the players that I was worried about going into this. He's got the clutch <laughs> factor, but at the same time, Seth, he's been the guy who's been going off for me. Uh, yeah, Ze Zephyr was, uh, he wasn't necessarily on my radar as far as his player to watch out for. He's going to go huge, but he was certainly a crucial component going to that one. And yeah, that was the, the camo play towards the end. It was interesting enough, I would have totally just laid yeah. there. I would have gone for the contest. I wouldn't have necessarily gone for the for the game winning kills, but I would have gone for the, the play that's going to set up your boys to be able to get in there and, and try and make a difference there. You can see there, Hope he wasn't feeling his game either, so he's going in to, for some last minute surgery. It's only keyhole surgery, boys. Don't worry about it. It's nothing too major. It's only day surgery. But he's in there, performance surgery on the controller in Dallas. Hopefully, he can come out with a better performance going into this crush search and destroy. Yeah, I don't know if it was the fact that the control was no good for him or if he just burned it out in that last couple of hills. You know, it was, it was amazing work by all those players. He just he got right into it. Perhaps he broke it because he was that hyped. Because, as I said, Hopi, one of those players, if you can get Hopi hyped, he hypes the whole team up. And we didn't hear, hear, hear too much. You, know, you saw it in the scoreline at the start there for a little while for Hopi. Took them a little bit to get going, and then once they did, they you know as a team they, they really meshed well together. Whereas EOA, there was vocal start from start to finish. I don't know where the hell we go from here, man. That was some game. EOA, EOA now. I mean, just the way that they're playing the respawn game types now. Throwback uplink is going to be completely up in the air for me. Mm. And if we have to get to that next breakout hard point, I don't know if I can. Can you make those kind of crazy comes back comebacks? again later on in the series do you have the energy the mental prowess to keep coming back from these deficits you know the, just the way that eoa are playing right now in the respawns i feel like they're going to be taking the lead almost every single game we start off the slaying prowess is there the pace is there uh, it's, it's they're a hot team to watch now and i don't know where i'm placing oracle you know later on in the series i just saw some madness coming out of uh, oracle at the end there um which i thought was you know that's that's what they are right they're this hot blood they're the guys that just have this crazy gun skill but it's for that reason, the fact that they dropped a couple of SNDs yesterday that I really feel this next SND is going to go to EOA. And then once we go back to that uplink on throwback, hoping the boys are going to be hyped from their respawns. If they keep slaying the way they are, they might be fine. But I, I don't know, Dallas, I'm feeling a little bit worried for them as we look at the rest of the series. Yeah, now you're not wrong. It was a close half point game, and EOA had the lead for the majority of that. It was only towards the end there that they sort of just, I, didn't, I wouldn't say they fell apart. They really didn't do that much wrong. They, they played it how they needed to play. It was just the fact that towards the end, that when they got fully streaked out on the Oracle side, it was just that was the game changer for me, and I think it was for them as well. So the S and D, obviously a respawn game, uh, go round for round. I, I would expect nonetheless than a game than around 11 in this S and D. You know, it's going to be a very close matchup. Perhaps one team will just sort of slay out straight at the start. It'll come down to the same old thing there, Miles, which whoever can get the first two rounds in a row sort of will start walking away a little bit if it's going round for round. Early prediction here, I mean, I'm, I'm play I mean, it's a top-level prediction, let's face it, but Oracle, they're the guys who I feel are going to be making the smarter plays, whereas I think EOA, they're going to be winning the gunfights. They're the hot hands right now are definitely Spades, Dismal's going nuts, Carry's going nuts, Kytosis is where he needs to be. They're the guys who are going to be getting those kills. So if it's going to be coming down to those clutch 1v1 scenarios where it's literally just a gunfight that's deciding a round, I'm giving those to EOA most of the time. So I am giving them the edge here in the SD. And, you know, if Oracle, if they can get the, if they get the shots together, you know, hope he's just had his, his open control of surgery. Hopefully he comes through with that one. Uh, maybe that's going to make a difference here for them. Who knows? But, yeah, right now it's EOA. We talked about how important this event is for the $30,000 in prize money and also the pro points. We talked about how that affects the CWL last chance qualifier in Melbourne. But also, we've got global pro league relegation happening, folks. June 3rd, it's an online double elimination bracket. You've all been asking me how relegation works, so here it is. It's an online double elimination bracket. Top 16 teams can play in it by CWL Pro Points. The winning team will join the bottom four teams from Stage 1 of the Global Pro League to compete for four spots in Stage 2. The Stage 2 qualifier tournament will take place on Thursday, June 15th at the Anaheim Convention Centre. Miles, we're hyped for that. We are hyped for that. I was doing my hype dance. That's, this is my hype dance. That's your hype dance? I, I thought pretty, it was a chicken dance. I'm pretty, I yeah. like that hype dance. I, Naked almost did it at the same time, but, you know, he chickened out the last second. Throw away the call the chicken dance. Nice. The coward. He's only here, is he? Here we go, guys. EOA versus Oracle. This is uh, rig draft. This is kind of, this is make or break in the series for me. If Oracle can win this, then I think they're home and dry. But EOA, 
I, which I think they will. I think this is where EOA turn it around because we heard how hyped they were. This is the momentum they need. They're certainly going to be a little deflated after this. And S and D is the perfect game time for these guys to be able to find them, find their confidence again, and get swinging into the rest of the series. Yeah, it's hard to bring hype into an S and D game though. Obviously, you don't want to talk while you've got, like you've got two players still up and alive. So it is one of those harder things to do. At the end of the rounds, win or lose, you just want to yeah, you want to give your teammates that hype though. You want to, you lose the round, don't worry. Next round's a new one. Let's go into that one. Fresh start. So it'll be interesting to see how loud they get, but I'm sure if there's a two or three piece or even an ace happening on the EOA side, everyone here will know about it, including us and those at home, because you'll be able to hear it from back here. Don't worry about that. And I'm just going to look over the rig drafts. I always I like to check this out. Even though it should be stock and standard meta-wise, you never know if someone's going to throw a curveball at someone else and just mix things up a little bit. But no, nah, pretty stock standard stuff from what I'm seeing right there. And Obviously, s and D. I I'm still feeling that round 11 miles. I, I really think this could go all the way to that end. I'm calling it right now, round 11. Let's see how good the tips are on Championship Sunday. I'm going to go round 11, s and D to Oracle, though. Oh, wow, because I, I think, I actually think if EOA can find, as you said, those two rounds in a row, yep. win an offensive round, get the defensive round as well, I think they're walking it from here. I reckon it could be a 6-4 EOA. Before I exit stage right, I was actually thinking that exact scoreline, Miles. So just to change it up, I'm going to go 6-3. 6 3, six three to EOA. Just to, just change so it up. I'm really feeling EOA for this one. I reckon this series is going to be a real screamer. I'm hoping for the Oracle win then, just so I can rub it in both your faces <laughs> after the match. But we'll find out. By all means, you know, I like to be proven wrong. It's one of the things I say to teams all the time. You know, if I'm tipping the other team, prove me wrong. I, I love to be proven wrong by you because it just shows how much, how, how much, how good you are, and it changed my mindset completely on how I look at you as a team. So by all means, EOA, take it out early, as the boys said, six four from Miles, six three, I think, from In Man. Yep. And we'll see what's going to happen. Going through the start there, Miles, the players, nothing too out of the ordinary in regards to what weapons they're running with. Yeah, nothing too exciting. We'll kick this one off with Hopi for uh, Oracle. They're on the offensive side. This is going to be a goodie. EOA down by one in the series already. This is loser bracket. Things are heating up. We're in round three of the loser's bracket. Actually, no, EOA are on offensive. My bad. So we'll keep this one off for Carrie. Carrie's going to be our bomb runner. Oh, and it's going to be an eight-man eight, eight man Royal Rumble. Here it be. Oh, and Zephyr's gone down early. Getting the kills. Look at this back and forth. Dismal versus Hopi and Sets. Dismal ties it up to oh. 1v1. But there we go. Sets in the back end. Absolute pandemonium. It was a brawl. And he came out on top. It was. How long did that round last? 22 seconds, I think, if that. It was not even moving 22 seconds. Remember the 19, 20 second mark. But that's some good S&D stuff. And that's what I sort of thought. I, I, I thought Oracle would play it differently. I thought they'd play the typical sort of defense. You know, sit back a little bit. Maybe go for a 3-1 split. One person middle of the map. Three on, stack one bomb site, And then get the call for the rotation if you need to. But they decided to stack it up. It was a good call. Always those 50-50 odds when you make the call on defense there. That time it paid off. We'll see how EOA answer back. Though, obviously, they are on that defensive side now. Oracle, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're going straight back to B. You can see EOA have been real slow. They went to A first. Without getting in their intel, they're going to be pushing on back through. But this is massive sets. Needs to get that bomb down as quick as he can. Here come the push. Hope he's on the front line. Tags oh. up one. Doesn't manage to get a second. Rami gets the kill. Carry gets the kill, excuse me. There we go. JTX 6 one Zephyr watching that back line. Beautiful place here already. Oh, Spades on his own. We didn't catch the kills, but there it was. Spades got to make something happen here. Jumps out into the guns of Setsy and Zephyr. Going to be cleaned up. Oracle 2-0. Yeah, they knew he was there as well. they just biding time, waiting for him to make the mistake and push out. Took a bit too long, obviously, and they just stacked up around that rock just as soon as he came out the door. If he had picked up one, there were two more there just to clean him up. And like that, Oracle 2 up in that lead. Now, we have seen this in the past with many teams. They get the first two rounds, but then the other team adapts to the play style a little bit more. They fix up their mistakes, and they'll come back and get a round or two of their own. So we'll see how EOA go now on that offensive side once again looking at that mini map now a bit more of a standard setup it would seem and oracle adapting straight away off the start the callouts will be coming in from oracle now to the rest of the team telling them it looks like it's at a b-boys come on rotate over trading off kills there one apiece now making it a 1v2 1v3 what's for a moment oracle are just walking away at the moment 3-0. Well, this is my prediction almost out the window. I, I called EOA to have the hot hand better to winning those gunfights, making better calls there, but so not far... Not over yet. It's not over yet, but so far, Oracle absolutely hammering this one. Do I get half-right points if it is a 6-0? I still called Oracle to win. Yeah, you did. Def uh, definitely does. Definitely. That that stands up in the uh, in the Codcaster court. <laughs> <laughs> that is my defense, and I'm sticking by it. <laughs>
Let's kick this one off with Setsi Oracle 3-0. Here's the first major change they've made. They've gone A. Look, and you see EOA have taken the bait. They've sent all four players towards B. This is what happens. Mm. You push them one way, and then they work out very little. They've a lot learnt. And yeah. the, this is going to be a massive wrap from both teams, actually. They're going to be circling around each other. We'll kick this one off from Carry. He's going to catch anyone through mid. No, he's not. This one's going to be the player running point for his team. Oh. It's very bold just to give up on the bomb side as well. Like, even though they are moving as, as, as a whole team, you know, trying to catch these guys off guard, it's still a bold play. We've seen that happen before, and we've seen people get diffused on because they just don't keep eyes on that bomb area. As you'll see right now, EOA making their way back in there now, checking things out. A few kills going out, though. Steps in a 1v3. Can EOA get this one? 13 seconds left. He's just got to stay alive. He'll go inside. He's got to stop the defusal. No one else is there right now to start it back up again. He's done the damage. He's done what he needs to do. The, the cops are coming out. They're yelling at him on bomb. There's the defusal. Oh, sorry. There's the actual defusal as well. They had that round. Almost. They had that round. <laughs> their whole team is yelling on bomb. <laughs> Sets thought he had it, but there was this player left. I'm not sure if he, he knew. He, he didn't know. He pulled out the taunt too early. <laughs> he almost got caught with his D in his hands while they could have looked at a round B lost there to the defusal. That's wild. That's I've never seen anything like that. Sets is feeling himself. He's going 6-0. I'll we'll have a quick look at his streaks, actually. Yeah, he's fully, he's locked and loaded. Oh, man, this could be a 6-0 EOA. Wow. That was crazy to see, but EOA now, you know, that was really that round they should have had, but big plays coming out of the steps, obviously, on that two, two skill streak. He's on 6 and 0 right now on that defensive line as well for Oracle. Stepsies putting up big numbers right now, though, of course. The bomb has gone down, or going down, it would seem. All players from Oracle converging on the spot, though. Big jump up over the heads. Three down, four down, I thought for a second there, but it's a team kill instead. Zepp's now stepping by, by himself, sorry, in a 1v2. Dismal and Kytosis have to get in there, have to control the situation. Step up. What's he going to do? Can he get the defusal on these two players? Can they get a round number five, or will EOA first get points on the board? I think he may have picked up enough information there, but now they've just done a loop around each other. 20 seconds left. This is going to be very, very interesting, Zephyr. He wants a kill. He's got one. He definitely wants another one. Clock is ticking, though. Oh, it's not going to work out in time unless he can find this player. Uh, it's not looking good for him. That's going to be it from behind. EOA, first round on the board. We not should... Not a bad call, but the timing was just so rough for Yeah, him. you should see on this kill cam as well, I think, in this final kill cam. He, he probably sees him and then just decides, yeah, you know, just take his time. He wasn't going for bomb, he was checking it out. Let's just make sure we get this kill first, because there was still about, I would say, 500 of a second. If he had gotten that kill, he still could have made it to the bomb to get that defusal. So, EOA playing that very smart. Now, 4-1 on the scoreboard. Five rounds gone. Again, they've got to get some more rounds on the board here, though. Sets, he's dead now, so the streaks have, have gone away. They don't have to worry too much about that, I think. As we just see now, JTEX on our screens. These guys, look at that minimap. Now, Oracle has changed this up. Look at that minimap. They've decided to slow things down a little bit here. It's already paid off for him. They killed Hopi. Oh, Sets, he's about to get rocked as well. This is it. Very, very aggressive run from EOA. They're pushing him through the back of B. Well, they've changed their mind at the moment, but that should be the bomb going down. B, here comes the defuse. Watch the retake from Spade's perspective. Real high wall run. Oh, he's got a window there. If he's got that window, he maybe, yeah, he's going to wrap back and he's going to try and get these plays in the hangar. But look at this. Oh, he didn't see anyone. Gets taken down immediately. JTEX also goes down. That was the uh, Trinity Rocket coming out as well. So this has been a big round. Oh, wow. We barely caught any of it. Oracle, the Trinity Rocket came out from Zephyr. And that was crucial in the uh, defense there of the bomb. This was the final kill. That was it. Oh, Setsy, excuse me, managed to get that kill. And then just in the nick of time. Getting Kytosis as well. Zephyr doing the most of the work there for that kill. It was a bit of a drowning pool concert just there with dead bodies everywhere that I saw just flying all over the place, mate. But 5-1 now. It's uh, EOA, I thought they might have had a chance at that round. Obviously, they got their first pick there. If they just kept trading, it would have been really good. But obviously, Oracle picking that one up now on that match point. Looking at the minimap this time around. If this is this is just going to be a massive contestion. And again, it'll be the same round. The armor's been popped by Dismal, though, I think. That could be a big game changer. He's gotten one on Hopi. Can he find a second one as well there in the background? Carry just chilling back. They've gotten the first pick here, though. Here come the Scarab. They've spotted it. Did he get enough intel off that run, though? He saw at least one player. So now we've got Kytosis watching the side. We've got Dismal on the doorways. Here comes the play. Bomb's gone down. Oh, this is a big defense. He's got to get two out of this one. Source Sands tags him. Not able to get the kill, though. Spades on defense as well, watching these doors. Oh, that was a big one. JTEX goes. Can he get a second? Shots out, not for Zeppa. Still alive. 2v3. Zephyr got spades as well. Setsy gets carry. Tagged from behind. 
On the turn! Oh, FDL! Still in front of him! Shut down straight away, but Setsi's last man alive. 1v1, Dismal versus Setsi, he's got 17 seconds. This is possible. Oh, the timing. Arad wins! EOA, stay alive on match point. Oh, that FTL jump into gunfire, I'll never understand. I've seen it happen a few times, but you know, obviously it was tr maybe he was trying to FTL to behind him. Oh, and if, swing if, around. He, if his foot got caught on that box, he might have gone straight over him. And what, if, then what if you FTL into someone like, and you stop inside like a, of them? Like a good old telefrag from like, yeah. from like the Unreal you're just You're just inside the person just, and you just start firing at them and kill them from the inside out. Just like Matrix 1. Oh yeah, there you go. Here we go, guys. Match point. Oracle on offense. Sensi, what's he still got? Bombardment. Ooh. Ooh. Good help. Mm. It's another brawl. Oracle won the first one. Can they win the second? Shots are out. First blood goes to Dismal. Kytosis gets a second. It's looking good for EOA. Oh, it's a disaster. Dismal's fired up. What a disaster for Oracle. That was match point. EOA crawling back slowly. That's two in a row now. If they get one more round, Oracle are going to be definitely feeling the pressure. You know, a 5-1 lead to now, or was it 5-1? I think it was. Yeah, it was 5-1 or 5 Yeah, so two rounds in a row just then for EOA. So it was 5-1 lead, you know. Dismal, look at Dismal, 13-6 and six right now. Carry, he's not doing what the name suggests, 2-6, and six, but he's still in there helping out. You know, he's OBJ player, fair enough. I'll let him slide. Spades, after a massive game before, a little bit lacklustering here, but when you've got a man like Dismal going 13-6, and six, you don't need to do too much else. Here comes the play on A. Only player was not making the same run. Oh, the camo it. play. Oh, in a second. Spades, last man alive for his team. We can barely find him. He's already dead. There it is. Oracle got the 6-3 over EOA. Inman was right. He called it. With the wrong team. Wrong team, though. That was close, boys. Yeah, not too far off, mate. I had EOA pegged for this one. They were winning those gunfights, and it was a miraculous comeback at times. But look at that. In the end, it was going to be Oracle taking that one. I'm pretty pleased. I, uh, yeah, I was a little bit off. I, I had the score right. I'll, I'll take that. That's a half win, isn't it, Dallas? Oh, according to Miles, it will stand up in cast court. Will? It so does? In the court? In the, yeah. the cast court? Yep. Man, I'd, we actually, that would be great. To, I'd like, like two things, a car for union. That's, well, that's not going to never happen. And then uh, the cast court. Okay, I, I like that. No, we, I'll, uh, you know, I'll stand corrected. I could not have been more wrong. You could see Oracle riding the hype train there to, uh, Hopefully to Winnersville, as they're going to be potentially eliminating EOA if they can get this next up link. But just bring it back to this search and destroy. Um, I mean, Dallas, you were feeling Oracle in this one, but you know their their S and D compared to yesterday is really night and day. Oh, it is, and they're on the replay as well. Setsy celebrating a bit too soon. Her in the bomb. That was almost a big mistake there, and I, I can hear it from back here, and I'll let it know on the stream. You know, they were all yelling at him, saying on the bomb. Because he was just celebrating, you know, he got the old lighter out and started trying to start a fire. He was fired up, perhaps he was showing that, but, you know, I, I felt that Oracle, that would have been a much closer game. And, you know, with Dismal from the EOA squad, I think he ended up about 12 or 13 kills uh, in the overall score. So, you know, he did, he did all he could. You asked Dismal to fire up, you know, get that old AR shot back on, and he has been doing that, but just not enough this time. Oracle now up 2 0 in this best of five series. Miles, I don't know if I'm feeling EOA after losing that SD as well as such a close hard point. So close in the hard point. And it's a really demoralizing defeat as well, especially when you were winning the majority of the game. And I don't know if this is going to affect them too much. And I still have high hopes for their respawn game types. But again, uplink is like that weird half. It's the weird sort of middle ground between hard point, which is, you know, kill everything you see and play super fast and go for those rotations. And S&D, which is play very slow and, you know, very methodically. Kind of have to do a little bit of both in uplink. You've got to be fast. You've got to be on the guns. But then you also have to be making the calls and, and listening to your teammates and all that stuff. So... I've got I still have high hopes for AOE that EOA, sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully they can compose themselves, bring it back and make this uh, you know, a bit more of a series. Dallas, we still have hope in them and I'm sure they can do that. It's gonna be tough because we know what Hopi and the rest of the crew can be like once they uh, start cruising on that hype wave. Oh no, definitely right. After that victory there, you know, after a very close hard point, then a six three in the S and D. They'll be much more comfortable, I think, going into this uplink now, but they shouldn't get too comfortable. It's still a respawn game mode. We saw what respawn is like from EOA. We've seen that they can compete and they can really bring this to this squad. I was very shocked in that, in that last round. Obviously, the second last round in the S&D, they got four down without dropping a player in that round, and then the next round, you know, it just goes completely against them again. It's rarely you see that, that when you can pick up four kills on the enemy team before the bomb even goes down, then it'll happen. So EOA, just forget about it. Focus on the fact that you did well in the hard point to begin with. Just keep it going in the respawn game modes now. You should be able to take it to a game five still. It's not out of the books.
Throwback uplink up next, and it can go either way, which is what we're just discussing here. Both teams have the potential. If EOA do manage to score a victory there, that takes us into a breakout hard point, which Miles, we talked about it. EOA had the lead pretty much the entire way in the first hard point. Again, I still stand strong to the fact that they can close those games out. They have the ability to do it. But Oracle, you cannot rule them out ever. You know, they say never say die. What's you know, even if the, the odds are heavily stacked against them, which they were in that first throwback hard point. Now, when it comes to throwback uplink, you know, I still feel like the the way we saw the way we saw AO, EOA play the map, they're going to be looking very comfortable here. They're going to be looking very very confident. But again, if they can execute the same way they did in the in the S and D, things are going to be looking pretty sweet. Uh, just you're exactly right, you know, things will look pretty sweet if they can execute at the start during the throwback uplink, you know. And they can, I feel that EOA, if they win the uplink, they can win the hard point. You know, they'll, they'll put Oracle up against the ropes, they'll take this to that game, five retaliation SD. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, obviously, but, you know, we want to just p paint a picture for you all using the magic of words. The voices in my head, aside from constantly screaming, are also telling me that the Validate Brothers have just eliminated Visualize. <laughs> In Called the it. lower bracket, you know, or on the other side of the lower bracket. So, uh, yeah, w that's not really unexpected at all, I don't think, Miles. Uh, it's hard. I mean, v we saw Visualize a little bit earlier on on this Saturday, I believe, and we've seen Validate Bros all weekend long so far, and, you know, it's, it's a high-caliber team. On paper, they've been a little bit lackluster in their performance, especially against teams that they maybe thought they'd be doing better than. I feel like this is the practice they needed. And what better practice than Atalan in a tournament when the stakes couldn't be higher? So I really feel like that might have helped them step things up. Bioacid, I mean, Validate Brothers, they can still make a pretty impressive lower bracket run if they put their head to it. I think that, uh, you know, this 3 we know, visualized the kickoff championship. Championship Sunday is just what they needed. Oh, no, you're exactly right. A win on Championship Sunday is the biggest thing you could ask for, obviously. Instead of having to play ladder in the day, you get the first Ws under your belt straight off the bat. You know, perhaps Oracle is sort of feeling that as well, but hopefully Validate Brothers just... They just keep the momentum running. That's what you want to do. You don't want to go cold. They can stay in there, stay warming up, get their shots up, keep it keep it going. Scrim against anyone else who's sitting around doing nothing and just try, you know, keep your team composed because as soon as you start getting a little bit cold and sort of, you know, fading away a tiny little bit, it will show in your gameplay when you're up against a high caliber team later on. Indeed it will. These guys are both hot by the looks of it, though, and they're ready to rock and roll. We're going to get into that game three very, very shortly. Just as a reminder to all of you guys, our third and final event of the Asia Pacific calendar will be coming up very, very soon. That is the Call of Duty World League. Last chance qualifier, we're going to be live from Melbourne. Um, it's going to be awesome for sure. July uh, 8 to 9, and uh, I think it's actually going to be 7 to 9. But anyway, it's going to be that weekend, folks. Black it out. It's going to be great. Um, as it says, the name implies it is the last chance qualifier where we will be sending two APAC teams to qualify for the Call of Duty World League Championship. Um, as we said, it's going to be going coming for, uh, live from sunny uh, Florida. $30,000 prize pool once again and 10,000 CWL Pro points. Gentlemen, we've all had the pleasure of going to the Call of Duty World League Champs at one stage or another. Dallas, you can speak to just how crazy these events can be. Oh, no, it definitely gets super exciting. You know, it, it's one of those things that sort of go any which way. I was there when, when T1 finished fifth in the world. I was in there when Mind Freak, known as Immunity, finished sixth in the world. You know, and these teams over there from Europe and from MA, from NA, they don't take us that seriously. They, they really haven't in the past. I think they're starting to now because they're realizing that if they give us a respawn game mode, our S&D has always been one of those stronger ones. And if, they, if we get the S&Ds and we get one respawn game mode, that's all it takes. Because I remember, you know, it's, it's exciting event. Curve balls get thrown left, right, except centre, because obviously they're curving. <laughs> I like that. I actually like that. Uh, look, we've had a top six finish, a top five finish the year before that, Miles. Then we kind of dropped off a little bit from that. Say it, Josh. Shit the bed. We shit the bed. Say it, That's Josh. exactly what happened. So where do we think we're, uh, we're going to be landing this year, folks? Because, I mean, uh, unless we see something crazy today, we're... All hopes are on Mind Freak to make something happen at the champs, at Call of Duty Champs this year. But uh, look, say we get a few teams there, we're, we're at least going to have three. We know we're going to have three, maybe four. How are we going to go throughout Call of Duty Champs, Miles? Because, I mean, it's hard to sell at this moment, but... It is, but at the same time, you know, MF have had plenty of time in the States now. You can see in their gameplay already, they're, they're looking real good. Um, I've, heard, I've heard whispers on the wind of other teams going over. Can't say anything yet. 
Who knows? Maybe we'll see a couple of teams go. Did you sign anything? Because if you haven't signed anything, I ain't anything, signed yeah, nothing. On, but there's, I know there's a crate of beer in it if I uh, if I don't spill the beans. But look, it's I'm, I'm I'm super hopeful for more teams going over. It's we've already seen the results in Mind Freak. They were there for two and a half weeks, and they play or two, maybe three weeks even. I don't know the exact time, but the amount of time spent in the game and and the level at which they learn. We called it the hyperbolic time chamber earlier. Oh yeah. And they really did come out of that looking a little bit more yellow in the hair. I can't believe I didn't hear that, Miles, because that is such a oh, perfect true, right? analogy oh, for that, right? Isn't it? <laughs> you know, Cody came out and he was huge. You know, when Trunks comes out and you're like, damn, son, he's all like super sane and all that. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much, that's, that's how it's looked. So I'm hopeful to see more teams go over because you do see the results. You really, really do. Especially once you have the connections with the North American teams and there's going to be Europeans out there more so now. Um, the level of competition is rising and unless you can get out to the States, you're going to fall behind in a big way. And we came very close at Cod XP, Cod Champs last year on Black Ops 3, very close to making it out of groups. And it came down to just a couple of moments. And if those guys had that time in the States, we would have been seeing them in bracket play. We would have been seeing them going up against teams like Splice at the time, up against teams like, you know, Fab E. They would have taken them out and it would have been freaking crazy. But alas, this year it's going to be good for the APAC teams. That's what I'm saying. If we can just finish a goddamn game five. If we can Go. just finish a goddamn series. Those round 11s, man. Ah, oh, killing me, man. However, let's bring it all back to what's in front of us. And what's in front of us is maybe EOA getting eliminated from the competition if they're not careful here. Up against Oracle in this throwback uplink. We're going through the rig draft process right here. Your standard fare, overdrive, reactive armor, active camo, centurion, all being brought into play. Throwback, one of my favorite maps here in Infinite Warfare. Not too much longer, and we'll be seeing some more stuff coming out of WW2, and I know we're all very, very excited in the pants to see that game come out, but here we are, finishing off potentially uh, uh, well, uh, what has been a decent run, I'd say, for EOA, but it is not over yet. We've seen reverse sweeps before, and this is such a talented roster. They may just do it. I'm seeing Hopi and the rest of the guys over there from Oracle looking very composed, though. Very well themed here in the ESL studio. The mood lighting of blue versus the light of EOA. Miles, this is this we've really set the stage here, literally it and metaphorically. Well, we've got fire and ice. We have a team that get really hot oh, and very don't vocal. I'm so keen. And then we've got a team that like to stay cool and they keep their heads in it. And no matter what, they manage to you know keep their keep their sort of molecular structure. They don't let themselves melt and get under the under the hotness of the, the turn the steam or even turn the water. They keep it together. I'm, I'm all losing it here, but that's the truth, man. I think if we can see the fire in the bellies of EOA, then something special can happen here. But Oracle, they keep it cool. They keep it together. This is their series. This is their 3-0. Dallas, your predictions have been rather on point. How do you feel this one's going to go down? Well, just looking at that rig draft, I'm questioning the Centurion from Spades instead of an FTL. So I'm sort of feeling that maybe it might, it's going to go in favour of the Oracle, and I think that it's going to... Score-wise, I'm going to say 9-6 to Oracle. 9-6 to Oracle. I'm feeling probably an Oracle victory here. I think it's only going to be by one or two points, though, Miles. What do you think it's going to be? Yeah, it's going to be one or two points, but I'm giving the win to EOA. I still think they've got it in the respawn game types. I still think they have the firepower. But do they have the technical execution to make those plays happen? Why don't we start this one off with, uh, yeah, with, uh, with Setsy. Setsy has been wrecking fools in this series so far, and I don't doubt he'll do anything but in this one. Dallas, any final predictions? The final prediction, I'm, I'm going I'm to stick with it. You know, I don't like uh, sitting on the fence. I don't like going back and forth. I'll start with that 9-6 to Oracle. Again, if EOA win 9-6, then again, half right, and... We'll, we'll keep it with that. But starting things off, as you said, with Setsy here on our screens. Just with the actually chemo, I believe Zeppel will be the one with the FTL jump. And let's see if we'll you see an FTL jump come out of him again. We did try and, try and see him on Frost before. Kytosis, though, picks up the first kill on Hopi. Some more shots going out. Trying to get that map control, as you always tend to do at the start of Uplink. You want to get the map control before you grab the drone, before you try and throw it down. That right-hand side, usually towards bowling, is the way Oracle will usually head towards. But... For now, they're just, you know, again, fighting for that first part of the map control, Miles. Uh, the map control, a little bit shaky between both teams. Hope he got caught with his pants down back on uh, back on that last respawn. So now he's back into the fight. He got ripped up though, by a player on top train. Oh, Kytosis is in a real bad spot. Nice jump there, gets the play, but he's going to get dropped on immediately. Carry now. Last player alive for his team Bring in him. mid. This is going to be the flat. And oh, brilliant kill on JTX there. That's going to slow things down. Oh, look at this, the drone. And they haven't slowed him down. Setsy still got drone, though. He's made it quite far forward. But here comes the respawners from EOA. They're going to be answering back. Lovely shots, though. Imagine that kill. Ken Kytosis flushes players out of his base. Beautiful Big shots. Kill. 
that would have been a game changer. You know, that was a big kill there from Kytosis. He was the last one left, just down that right hand side alleyway, and the drone had been thrown back out towards near bowling, so obviously he had to get that clutch kill, otherwise they would have been running that straight through bowling. At least got into one point, I think, throwing it up and over the top. But again, you see the drone currently away. It'll have to probably reset if no one's going to really go for it. I don't think they're too concerned about it at this point in time. Oh, I say that though. They decided to challenge for it just then. Sets will jump down to grab it. A push up now. It's a three down on EOA here. It's going to be Oracle trying to push up quickly, grabbing the kills they need to get. Obviously, the drone now sitting up so out on the outside of bowling alley. Will get picked up by the EOA squad and will get reset, I believe, just to slow things down and push Oracle back. Wow, Setsy absolutely going off winning these really crucial gunfights. But again, the rest of the team's not able to push on through. They've got them, they're winning the fights, they're holding on, but they're not able to make those executions happen. So again, getting drone forward, they lock down bowling, and then nothing happens after that. We'll jump on board. Oh, no, we won't. He's about to get there. Oh, we should have. It was Zepa, Zepa now <laughs> winning that gunfight. Watch and see the boys in Oracle can make a play happen here. That's a big kill there. Oh, Zepa goes for the far forward throw. He's going to be moving up. He has only got Setsy behind him. He needs to win a big gunfight. Oh, as a play. oh the timing. Oh, the timing big. lands right into his lap. His players are pushing up here now as well. That's three players down. The drone is exactly where they need it. It's going to be a two-pointer here. There it is from Setsi. Two points in. First points on the board after the first quarter now gone. 2-0 lead here to the Oracle Squad, and they're looking for the relay. Here comes the relay. That was a beautiful pass from Hopi to Zeppa. Zeppa now passes it on to Setsi. Setsi, it's good. Big. What a setup from the boys there. That was absolutely immaculate. Looking at the minimap now, it's going to be JTEX who's in that part of the minimap. He's not really set up though. His teammates are under gunfire. They're trying to clear the base out, EOA are. They know that he's in there. There it goes. Zephyr will get picked up as well. And now EOA can sort of push back Oracle again to try and get some points of their own on this scoreboard. But right now, Oracle looking very dominant. Few kills going out here. Looking at that minimap, you know, again, they're just trying to clear out the part, middle part of the map. It will be Carrie who's going to pick up that drone, go for a bit of a run here. His teammates are pushing up through Grandma's, through middle part of Barn. It may have to be a one-pointer, I think, maybe Miles, unless they can get some big kills at the back. All right, it's the play. He's going for the throw. It's a cheeky one, but he manages to net it. 4-1. EOA, first points on the board. That was a really rough one. I think, EO, I think Oracle, they could have done a lot more defensively. They should have seen it coming, and they had no one in the air to try to stop that one on the goal. But either way, the boys of EOA now on the board. There we go, Hopi and Setsi making that play happen. They got that far forward throw. Drone Zeppa wins the engagement. This is going to be big. They've got to make those, got to get these kills though. Without the kills, the drone throw is absolutely nothing. Mm. Kytos has got drone for EOA. Let's see if they can't make something happen. Big far forward throw. Carry is going to be leading the point, leading the charge. Tip of the spear gets taken down by Hopi. Kytos, can he answer back? Vengeance, will he find it? Trying to find it now there at Lime, as you mentioned. Two players though from Oracle pushing in. I know this play before, JTEX was the one who was actually in the opposition spawn earlier. He's waiting for this pass once again. This is the second time they've gone for it, and he's been picked up as he pushes around the back end side of bowling there. Dismal from EOA, though, he's struggling here. The drone is being run by Zeppa. He's got players and teammates all around him, though, but Spades and Dismal trying to clear the base out. Sets picks up one kill, goes for the one-pointer. It's good. The ref says in for one, 5-1 the scoreline becomes. Four-point deficit now for EOA. What a turn. Hope he got taken out in that 1v1 there. That was absolutely crucial. I thought it was going to all go downhill from there, but no, Setsy stayed alive, kept the point, kept the kills coming. I managed to sink that one point. Absolutely brilliant stuff. This has been a wonderful round for Oracle. Maybe not as many points as they were hoping for, but here we go. EOA, they've got a chance here. It looks like Kytosis is in position to get, up, get the drone and make it far forward. You can see his players already trying to win these gun engagements there in the spawn of Oracle. Oh, big win there. Kytosis, last man alive for his team. He's got to make something happen. He goes for the drone beatdown. Can he get another throw? It's up. It's out on the bounce, not a chance. As obviously they come to the end of the first half, 5-1 in favour of the Oracle team. As these guys looking to try and keep that lead going in their favour, you know, it's it's not over yet though, obviously. I think we might be able to see EOA. If it Dismal can fire up a bit more, heading into the second half, I'm hearing a lot of comms coming out of Oracle during that first half there. And looking over that scoreboard, you know, Dismal's only on five up to five minutes. It's a big thing to ask. You know, you've got to try and lift your spirits high, son. I believe we should go for a listen in, though, with this Oracle squad. The comms that were coming out from these guys were great to hear. I want to see if they can keep that momentum going, keep the hype train up, and we'll take this one away. So into a listen in, thanks to Astro with Oracle. All right, 2v1, 2v1. He's going to pick up bowling. He's going to be Wait, 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 wait. I'm in bowling, I'm in bowling. Okay, then I can. Alright, outside bowling, outside One more on me. I think under pass. Bowling, bowling. One, one, dismal tag, pick it, pick it and bowling, pick it and bowling. Uh, yeah. Bowling, he's out of the map, he's out of the map. 
Bowling, in bowling, in bowling, in bowling. One bowling, bowling kills, guys, let's go, guys. Last one shot. Go please, go please. Back up base, back up base, carry. Bowling step, bowling step. Just keep side of base, side of base, side of base. Just wait, just wait, wait, wait. Oh, chance now, danger, danger, danger. One shot danger, one shot danger, one shot danger. Stay back, step, don't move forward, step. One more, Kytosis, on ball, on ball, on ball. You missed, you missed, you missed. Oh, you have one, 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 one. One for one. Nice, nice, nice. On B3, on B3, on B1. I'm gonna get top ticket here. On B1, on B1. Top ticket, top ticket, tagged. Top ticket, still one shot. Top food. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. Top ticket, still one shot. B1, 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 B1. I got naded by this wall. Let's two, two, B2, two. I'm not getting one. Wait, go on bowling, go on bowling. Yeah, yeah. Are we going by ourselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two men, two men, two men, two men, two men. He's already bowling, two bowling! One one out, one outside bowling and one by... Pillar, 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 pillar. Hey, I'm with an A bowling. Under pass, under pass, under pass and pillar. One coming on danger. Two side police, two side police. Three there, three there. Still pushing, still pushing. I can shoot one there. Two there, two there. Watch your ball, watch your ball! What's gonna be on the end? Oh, fuck, I thought spade that ball. Let's go, come on! There's only two, there's only two. Nice, one more, one more, one more. We're not going together, yeah? And we're like 1v1ing through mid. We gotta go together. Get top red first and go mid. Like, fuck off. Yeah, I'm going top Fuck off left. B2, B2. Watch your fucking barn. B1 now, B1. He's B1, B1, B1. B1, B1. B1 and B2. B2, B2. Let's shoot B2. Pick it, pick it, pick it. There's three on the street. Three on the street. Top food, top food, middle now. Tommy train, Tommy train, Tommy train. Tommy train, Tommy train. Tommy train, Tommy train. I'm gonna streak, I'm gonna streak, I'm gonna streak. I'm streak, I'm 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 streak. I'm streak,
get carry just to get around there somehow. Pop camo grab drone in for a two. Like that would have been the perfect play to happen. But just the offense that was coming out from that, the defense, sorry, coming out from Oracle in their own section of the map and in the middle part of the map, that couldn't be done. They were just out slaying there time and time again. And that drone was just all over the place down under bridge. Oracle, just guns of fury, well executed plays. I think that Apothean looked, uh, I guess, a little bit composed with their setting up, but the execution just wasn't their mask. It was, there were times, there were moments of pure brilliance. You know, we'll see a few of those in the highlights. Um, you know, we had one superb play from Oracle. There was a, a relay where they netted their two dunks, and after that, they, they built a wonderful foundation to be sat upon, you know, for the remainder of the rounds. A couple of crucial moments, though, where it just fell apart, and it really did hinge on a couple of kills. Again, watching these highlights back, it was really, really close to begin with. You know, the teams were so tightly contested. This was the first dunk from Setsi. Beautiful opening play there from Zephyr, managed to give him the field and then after that the relay, there was a pass over the top from Hopi into sets he gets the single, uh, yeah actually it wasn't that, was, that wasn't the play one we're talking about, but yeah it was it was very, very well executed from the boys in Oracle Apothean, just falling short now and then Credit to all of EOA, but can I just say that Spades has very much still got it, oh. Stella's, Stella never lost her groove with Spades <laughs> No, he's definitely playing really rather well, you know we saw him, I think it was 41 kills in the first half point definitely going off there, uh Struggled a little tiny bit in the S&D. Dismal picked it up, though, with, I think, 13, 14 kills or so in S&D alone. And then into that hard point game, you know, he, he definitely is still, still having it, still picking up. Was it 26 kills, I think, I'm reading there as yep. well. So, you know, these guys are still a strong team. It's always going to come down to the thing, though. Once you are knocked out of a competition and the lane is over for you, do you stay together? Do you mix things up? I, I'd like to them to stay, stay together. I, I think they have a, something that can, can work well here. It's just more about, you know, working on that chemistry, working on the plays and... Just finding that right groove that'll suit you. I definitely think that they should be sticking together. I mean, they made a good roster last year. Kartosis makes a good addition to the mix. Um, and Miles, of course, we've already talked about it, that relegation online tournament, 16-team invite, as well as a 16-team invite last chance qualifier. I mean, getting that teamwork down pat is going to make all the difference. Yeah, I don't want to see a team change happen. You know, there's not a lot of chemistry between those four players. And particularly, uh, the only one who's going to be any, who's going to be really disappointed himself is going to be Dismal this, this, in his final map. But otherwise, he played like an absolute savage in the first two maps. Uh, you know, it was terrifying to watch in that hard point on, on throwback for the first one. Um, it was, yeah, it's, I, I don't want to see a team change. I want to see them stick together, work out those problems and get back in it because they've still got chances to make champs. Hopefully we'll see these guys stick together. Let's check out some of the other results around the traps here at the CWL Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. We talked about that Validate Brothers 3-0 win over Visualize. And unfortunately, we do say goodbye oh. to Sleeper Gaming after Empire, probably with an expected win, 3-0 over them and Tainted Minds with the 3-0 over Validate. I know that Sleeper Gaming were very, very pleased to have made Bracket. And, you know, that's what they wanted. That was their target. And, you know, if you, hit, you set those goals, set those smart goals, those smart attainable goals. You know, they certainly did that. You know, Tainted, not a massive surprise there, Dallas. We did expect them to get a little bit further. Yes. They were very hard on themselves yesterday. I had a chat with the players. They were super disappointed with themselves. And as they should be, you know, high expectations, top tier, you know, um, organization in the region. I, th I feel like they let themselves down a little bit. So they're going to have everything to prove today in uh, lower bracket play. With Tainted Minds 3 over Validate and the 3 of Oracle over EOA, Tainted Minds will now go up against Oracle, and we've also got Empire versus Validate Brothers Dallas. We have some stacked games ahead of us. I am, to say I'm pumped is an understatement. I've already drunk a liter of Red Bull this morning. Empire Esports and Validate Brothers, that's going to be amazing. You know, you, know, you guys are sort of tipping Validate Brothers to, to sort of have that in the bag, but I think Empire could, I think Empire can really turn some heads. Tanner Mines versus Oracle Esports, though. I think with the current way that Tanner Mines has been playing a little bit here, perhaps today's a different day altogether. They've, they've forgotten what, what happened the last two days. But Oracle this morning already, 3-0 win. They'll be feeling ecstatic heading into the next series against Tanner Mines, and I really think there could be a, an upset for Tanner Mines there. That's really going to be hard to predict how that one's going to go. Um, I'm actually feeling Empire, to be honest. I, I was the match before. Sorry, I'm, I apologise. It's all right. It was I'm, the match prior. Hey, man, we're... we're Good, man. It's Championship Sunday. It's, we're all feeling good. I'm feeling Empire in that matchup, though, Miles. Yeah, I've, I'm I've, feeling Miles. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, this is the first feeling I've got on the desk. Actually, we had a hug yesterday, didn't we? We did. Oh, well, I'm wrong. Sorry, man. Grumble, grumble. Seconds. It's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, don't, um, I don't complain when it's free. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Um, what was I going to say? I've lost it. No, I He's an easy it. broad. Empire, like Empire were, yeah, Empire have got the phase in that one. But this next matchup, a quick sort of early call in this one, I see a similarity in the play styles of what is now tainted and what we just saw in Era of Apotheon. Fast-paced, 
really aggressive, super strong gun skill. I actually think Oracle might have. Uh, they've got a key in here. They've got a little. They've got a little way into the armor of Tainted Minds. This one. So this is going to be a killer series to watch. Very excited to see how it's going to unfold. Oracle versus Tainted Minds is going to be up next here at the CWL Sydney Open 2, presented by PlayStation 4. It is going to be a bananas matchup. You don't want to miss it. Big fight at half walk. I chose to fix that one more. Hope he's trying to stay alive. Players all around him. He gets one cut. That's a big kill black now. Let's go, boys. 20 seconds. Oh, back. Look front, man. Look front. Look front. The boys in blue have been so solid here. This is Oracle's hard point from start to finish. This is a new lineup from Reno. They didn't look this strong a moment ago. EOA now. Funny enough, but there was the bombardment. But it's get two with it. They're all down. It's all down. They're going to be able to get the last few seconds. 13 seconds left, he's got to stay alive. He'll go inside, he's got to stop the defusal. No one else is there right now to start it up again. He's done the damage, he's done what he needs to do. The, the cops are coming out, they're yelling at him on bomb. There's the defusal, oh, sorry, there's the actual defusal. Tactical behind. On the turn, oh, FTL! In front of it. It's gonna be Oracle trying to push up quickly, grabbing the kills they need to get. Obviously the drone now, sitting up to the outside, on the outside of bowling alley. Will get picked up. Bays and Dismal trying to clear the base there. Sets picked up one kill. Goes for the one pointer. It's good. He ran a couple of kills. He's got players all around. He does die though. Pushing in on J Tex. J gets this one. Sorry, gets the second one. Play went into the back pocket. Hope he gets the second. Kaitos is finding the kill there. Can he get a couple more? Ca carry in position now. Oh, this position is ideal. Gets a couple and of kills. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The tournament lives of EOA end here. Oracle move on to the next round. The carving has been etched on the map. Three, round number eight, going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades, making it now a 3v2. Here we go, bomb down A. It's gonna be an easy climb. The active camo, why so smiley? He sneaks out there, he's gonna find the kill and there we go. Rotation, oh sorry, the spawns are gonna be in control of Validate. He's gonna find another kill, can he find the third one? Just over this the huge. pitch, no. It's so close, nice. there we go. Smiley turning up when needed most, and he's going to be able to break that spawn. To no avail, he's going to fall there, but his teammates do clean up the rest of the pieces. Ramming is the last alive in a 1v2. One player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko. He jumps up just in time. Perfect. It comes around Rame. Nice. Very nice. Holiday Brothers, their head is in the game, and I uh, don't blame them. They are behind by one at the moment. Dean Gunnan. Jeez, I wish I stayed to listen in for that one, because they would have been psyched. But eradicated quite comfortably. Dean picking up a second. Dean's just been a two-piece machine this whole game. Oh, sexy, absolutely ludicrous play. Rage, not doing, not making too many mistakes, but just getting out slayed, I think, a little bit at the moment. Yeah, Killify's positioning there was fantastic. On the end of, of two great kills there, receiving a ton of damage himself, managing to buy a, a whole heap of... The time is ticking on down, and just Fast. like that, they, they test the waters, so to speak, with that one, just to see if he was out. They got the tag. Can he get the second? Where is the second player? He says, hunting around for him, not too sure. Right, but if he keeps going around for round, it just shows you know, the talent on both these teams. They try and trade off inside a bike shop there. Fate picks up one on Eminence in the background. Lakey picks up a second on Chilean as well, making it now a 2v4. Down once again now. They'll wait for a bit of control, perhaps, and wait for that drone to come back on in, of course. Once it does get reset, here it comes on down now. And again, the battle inside the lobby will be taking place. Killify tries to pick up the second beast. And One more wave of spawners. Here's the run. Goes for the pass. It's oh, good. And Beast sinks it. Beautiful work there from Rage. That call up on Main Street. Nice, nice. I'm saying ball, same ball, same ball. Yeah, down, jump down, nice. I spawned her, I spawned her. Help me, help me. He's killing me, he's killing me. One what? shot. It wouldn't let me get it. Oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. It's second time. Try, 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 try. His back pocket, those will be coming out any moment now. This is a huge play for him. Caught nimble nap in there, gets a big kill. And now 27 and 19 and eight in a row for Excite. He finally goes down, but not without leaving a very serious mark in the back of Tainted Minds. Mind Freak has got so Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames and messieurs, welcome back to the Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation 4. This is CWL Sydney Open number two, and we are well into the business end of the competition already. I'm Oz Ross, and joining me on the desk, I have the Evanescent Millboss and Val Sider Chaps. We got one hell of a series ahead of us now. I'd have to agree. You know, these are two teams that have worked pretty hard throughout the event so far. They've been pushing to the lower bracket somewhat surprisingly, at least in the Tainted Minds side of things, but I'm sure they'll both put on a show for us today. 
Well, a show indeed. We've got a little bit of a, a bit of a graphic for you guys to sh explain just what kind of show we've seen today and what, we, what will be coming up later on today. Excuse me. So, if we can have a quick look at, uh, at what is going to be coming up later today, this is the second game we've seen. We will be shown so far on stream. The first game was a nail-biting 3-0, and you don't often get to say that one. It was Oracle up against Error of Apotheon. Well worth checking the vods out for that one. It was a treat, an absolute treat. The boys on Oracle put on a show, and they will continue to do so later on today we'll have a quick look at that schedule when it's ready guys and we can assure you for a ton more fun coming up later today fellas did you get a chance to see that game car i saw your head in the crowd there did you get to watch oracle versus air of apotheon yep i was paying attention straight up there um a little bit a little bit iffy from oracle early on but i suppose it is uh first game of the day well, here we are, guys. First game of the day was Oracle versus Era of Apotheon. We got Tainted Minds up against Oracle Esports, just in case you hadn't quite had your fill of the boys in blue there. Up again, after, after that, we will have SYF Gaming up against TBD. Now, TBD, fellas, I'm just joking. We're about to go in a serious discussion about a team that is yet to be determined. <laughs> later on today, the only guaranteed uh, sort of show we have later on is going to be the winner bracket final, which will be Mind Freak up against Rage. Rage had a fantastic, fantastic display yesterday uh, against Oracle, which was an extremely exciting match to watch and uh was it oracle i've already forgotten doesn't matter guys it's gonna be lit sunday or oh, also james you, you've got something to say it's sunday may 14th may 14th it's mother's day so shout out to all the mothers out there i don't know if any are in the crowd or not i've seen a few dads not gonna lie but of course i have to give a shout out to my own mother happy mother's day mom and you've got you've Aww. got a present waiting at home Aww. talk to you talk to your daughter <laughs> the other child talk yeah. to the other child <laughs> the other one yeah, I'm, I'm English, kind of get off the hook today. But yeah, happy Mother's <laughs> Day to everyone, uh, all the mothers out there, all the mother truckers in the crowd. Thank you very much for showing up. Here we are, guys. Oracle Leaves for Bots versus Tainted Minds. Look at these records. Oof, impeccable, almost. 14 wins, 13 wins, two losses, three losses. You know, these guys are on an absolute trot. Tainted Minds are on a bit of a longer win streak, obviously, Japs, because they did just come from uh, from their loser bracket game as well, which they did. Uh, they walked over, who was it? Was it Senex? I've already... Is, oh, no, it was oh, uh, Visualized. Like visualized, was visualized yeah. sorry. They took down Visualized, so that was a pretty convincing 3-0. Oracle as well, also looking damn fine. And here we are, Tainted Minds, guys. Damage, Nimble, and the newest additions to the squad, Scrism and Swifty. Carl, anything to talk about these guys? You know, that we've spoken enough about how it's a late team change for them. Mm -hmm. But is there anything that sticks out for you, in, you know, about the squad now? All right, well, we've got two old school guys coupled with two new school slayers. And I mean... This is, a, this is a really good combination of sort of old and new because they're able to, uh, the old school guys are going to teach the new guys how to play and do the slow stuff, while the new guys are going to be out there slaying hard. Ooh, that was, that was unusually wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, kind of caught me off guard there. James, anything from Tainted Minds that really sticks out to you? You've seen a little bit of the gameplay today. A very surprising defeat at the hands of Rage yesterday. Yeah. Anything to take away from that? Honestly, it's just, you know, once again, very new team. It's going to be difficult to be perfect off the rip, but there's so much good that can come from this change. I, I was speaking to Paigey, the manager, before. He was talking about how what this team change has allowed is that Damage can now play the way that he wants to play. He wasn't having to, you know, slay out heavy necessarily. He can play the way he likes to play, which is a little bit slower. We all know that, and that should produce better results for the team in general. Results are certainly what they need here in the lower bracket. Let's have a quick look at Oracle. We've seen them on stage already today. They put on a fantastic show for us. Hopi, JTEX, Setsi, and Zeppa. Kyle, very, very familiar names in this squad. You know, not necessarily the longest standing team together, but anything that you want to say about these guys? Um, again, it's sort of pretty similar to uh, what I mentioned previously for the Tainted squad, except it's only Hopi is the only real true old school player there. But I have noticed this weekend, Hope isn't quite as vocally um, leading as I expected him to be. It's actually JTEX picking up that role just a little bit there. Is that something that's really been affecting their gameplay so far? I mean, did you, c you caught a little bit of their previous series there. Um, you know, is that something you'd like to see more out of Hopi? Get him really shout and get him going. Maybe give him a poke in the ribs, get him to annoy him. Maybe spill a drink on top of him, get him fired up. James, is there anything you'd like to do to Hopi in order in to, to actually annoy him into better gameplay? Uh, I don't want to push him too far. <laughs> you know, he's a new dad. He's going to start getting protective about himself and his family. <laughs> <laughs> coming through, so I, I don't want to, you know, tilt him any, in any way, shape, or form. And you know, I love Hopi. I've seen him around the around the tracks for years, and I I feel like this team's got a lot in offer. I'm being a very horrible host. I'm setting James up to fail because Pretty now much. we do have an interview with Hopi on the main stage. Ben, take it away. Thanks, mate. Yes, uh, I don't think Hopi heard any of that, Mill Boss. So lucky for you, because uh, bit of trouble. I'm here with Damage and Hopi. Damage, first up, man. Congratulations, day three. You pushed your way through. 
it's been a little bit more of a bumpy ride than it was last time we saw you here at Sydney Open number one. Talk to me about these team changes. How's it changed things up for you guys? Uh, yeah, so, I don't know, after Dan's left, uh, we sort of felt that a change needed to be made and, um, you know, Jack and Swifty were up-and-coming players, you know, very talented and we knew we had to have them on the roster and so the roster was formed. Obviously, it's always more difficult to play with, it, with a newer team and, and coming into this competition. You, you've dropped down to the lower bracket. Last time we saw you guys actually push Mindfreak down to the lower bracket and it came through, obviously, to two best of fives in the end. Uh, what is it do you, that you guys think you need to work on or are you happy with where you're at right now? Uh, I just feel like we haven't been playing our game. I feel like we've been playing like every single other team here, which, you know, I feel like we're better than that. Uh, you know, we have a standard and we just haven't been playing to that. And um, we know exactly what we need to fix. We've, uh, we've talked about it all. We feel like we have fixed it and um, we're coming in pretty confident to this match. Well, that's good to hear because it's do or die from here on out. And you're going up against Hopi's team. Hopi, firstly, congratulations. We just saw your victory 3-0, a pretty convincing 3-0 as well. Yeah, it was a pretty good game. Um, boys played pretty good, but I had a few control issues, so I was slacking behind. But I definitely think we're definitely back into what we were supposed to be playing like. Uh, you know, last night's game was very quiet, um, you know, not making kills that we should. And just then, you know, the team was very vocal, making kills. So, you know, it seems like we're clicking on all gears. So hopefully no more issues and uh, we should have a good game. Damage was just saying, obviously, it's a little bit different now with, with the change in their team. How do you think these guys are going this weekend? How do you think you're going to match up against them? I personally haven't even really watched them, but, like, they're all good players, four good players on the team. Um, obviously, Scrisman and Swifty on Chiefs. CG Land did really well, so um, definitely can't overlook them. But, like I said, um, Dens did a lot of work in that team. Um, and, you know, him not being there right now is kind of showing it. So, you know, Ging's always in uh, Dens' backpack, per usual. So, without Dens here, I don't know what Ging's going to be like. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Gents, please shake hands and uh, head back to your desks. It's going to be a tight one. I don't know whether Tandem Mines is going to be up to this or not, because Hopi team has been playing on fire all weekend long. Guys, what do you reckon? Well, I think, uh, I think I, I don't know, to be honest. That was actually quite a fun interview. I was just pondering, uh, pondering a fun response, but it wasn't going to happen. Guys, there you go. <laughs> Hopi firing shots. Do you feel like King's not always getting carried, surely? CW said one. He was a monster. Den's had one turbo game where he was out, above and beyond, like, out of body experience, crazy, but oh man, Nimble's a beast, Did right? Did you see his face? Did you see his face? He was like, "Oh, what the hell are you talking about, Hopi?" And I, I don't think that's probably the right thing for Hopi to do, considering he hasn't been quite as fired up. And I think he might have just given Ging a little bit of extra juice to, mm. I don't know, probably pump Hopi full of it. Well, it can backfire. That trash talk really can, guys. Again, this is going to be a treat. Tainted minds, though, going down to rage. I want to touch on that a little bit more. Do you feel that that was the, what they really needed to get the fire in their bellies on that first day? You know, they went back, obviously went home. They maybe checked the vods out, had a serious discussion afterwards with you know the, the team, uh, the cod managers here as well. He's got in their heads. You know, they've really had a couple of chats about this. Do you feel that that's, that was what they needed to get themselves out of the doldrums and get back into the sort of that winning f form they're at? Yeah, Miles, like a loss like that can help, but I don't think it should have happened in the first place, in all seriousness. I heard from the guys in the crowd that that, that really shouldn't have happened in the first place. Like, they were not happy that, um, that they lost and they felt they all played pretty bad. So I feel like this is going to be, this is champions, Championship Sunday. They should be a bit more fired up. But yeah, Miles, we'll see how they go today. We will see how they go indeed. Let's see where they're going to have to be going. In the maps now, we've got Oracle versus Tainer Mines, guys. Retaliation half point is going to be game number one. Throwback Search and Destroy will be game number two. Frost Uplink for game number three. And should we have to get to games four and five, there will be a throwback hard point and a breakout search and destroy. Fellas, now that we've seen the maps, is there any team you favor going into this one? Obviously, we've seen, you know, we've seen quite a lot of retaliation hard points thus far in the weekend. Who do you pin this one on now that you've got the maps in your, in your eyesight? It's very difficult to really call how the Tainted Minds roster is going to go because we haven't been able to see too much of them on main stage as of yet. And on top of that, you know, it's very much a slay heavy team, right? You've got Scrissom and Swifty, who are probably two of the best slaying powers in our region right now, just for that, like, in general. And then, of course, you have Nimble, who's just overall very, very talented. Damage, he sets up his support role very nicely. I like them on, on uh, the hardpoint maps. I'm not too sure how well their search and destroyers might go, and uplink should be theirs because, you know, once again, you need to be able to get those kills to be able to push up the drone. Carl, how do you think uh, the hardpoint is going to be going for Oracle in this one? 
Um, honestly, Setsu's K bar has been pretty heavily on point, and his retaliation so it's a pretty big map with a couple sort of little tighter, tighter points there. So I, I feel like I have faith in them, but I just don't know how they're going to deal against damages AR. It's really solid. It's world class. So I, I'm just, I'm honestly not sure how this is going to go. I feel like Oracle absolutely have to slay up hard to get this W. So you're saying there might be a bit of a Setsy versus damage mm, I'm feeling here? Okay, I'm so feeling that's, that's a nice little rivalry to watch out for. James, who do you peg on uh, on Tainted Minds to really be going off in this series? Who's the who's the sort of the crutch to the team? If he falls apart, the House of Cards is going to come crumbling down. Who's that player for you? At the moment, I've really been impressed with the way that Swifty's getting very important kills. He hasn't necessarily been showing up with big, massive numbers like you might have seen in the, in the past, but he definitely has been getting the important kills, getting those spawns and things like that, which, you know, if, if that player gets shut down, you're going to fall apart. You're not going to be able to rotate quickly enough to the hard point. You're going to spawn out on the other side of the map, and then what can you do? What can you do indeed? Kyle, here's a question for you. So the f you've talked about the, uh, the sort of the old guns and the new guns mm -hmm. on, on Tainted Minds. You know, Scrizzle and Swifty, there's no doubt in their abilities of players, but is that experience, is that something that you think they're lacking here that may hinder them in this performance? Yeah, definitely. Excuse me. Um, it could be a little bit rough for them because, I mean, yesterday there's no way that the old Tainted Minds roster would have gone to the lower bracket. There's just, like, no chance in hell. They would have just 3-0'd everyone all day, every day. So I've got a feeling that that experience and that sort of late-game composure may come into play here. I I'm not sure how they're going to go Championship Sunday. I know I've talked about today's the day. You've got to bring it. Everyone's pretty pumped. And, I mean... When I talked to the guys, they all had really, really stony, serious faces. They want this W. They're working hard for it. But I don't know. It's it could just be a little bit of nerves coming into this, uh, coming into play here. It's just going to be on damage and ging to be really, really vocal and just to keep them in check, basically. James, the boys on Oracle are extremely composed, and they have been in the previous series before. Do you think they're going to be able to keep them there, steal their metal here up against this aggressive young Tate and Mines lineup? I feel like this Oracle team has nothing to lose, right? They've formed relatively recently with the addition of Hopi. The team, the rest of the team was, I think, consistent from Sydney Open 1. So that's good chemistry-wise, um, but yeah, they've got nothing to really lose. Meanwhile, on the Tainted Minds side of things, there's a lot on the line for them to be able to perform this weekend. Here we are, boys. Tainted Minds versus Oracle Esports. One of these teams will be sitting in the top eight after this game. This is loser bracket round four. Milboss and Valsider take it away. And, I mean, if one's in the top eight, the other one, they're going home here. So let's kick it off and see how they start off the rip, Oracle. Seems like Zephyr's going to be the first one jumping onto the hill. A couple of kills go down in Tainted Minds' favours. It's just going to be JTEX last alive for his team. He's just going to try and stay alive to allow his teammates to respawn and come and support him on this bridge hardpoint. It looks like Kobe broke out with double nades there, so that's a little bit dirty. That's something I have seen quite as often, but I do like that for the amount of cars there are to blow up on this part of the map. It's going to be very, very early points going down to Tainted here. It's quite comfortably, and I think they're pretty well set up as the rest of Oracle are fairly staggered coming off spawns. But we do see a little bit of a rotation from number three on your screen, JTEX coming around there. Damage is going to frag up, but it's going to get traded out straight away. So I think we've got still Tainted Minds in control of this hard point. Nimble, he's still alive. 2-0, oh, make that 3-0. Oh. As he'll find another kill and rotations. This is when you're going to need to think about them, but Tainted Minds, they've been able to get control of that upper market spawn, which will be helpful going to the lower street. You can see right now Nimble holding this power position of Patio. Just watching every angle, because as good as it is, you can definitely get shut down from pretty much any angle there. So, unfortunately, he will do so. He'll fall. And now Oracle, they can start and make a move onto this lower street. Yeah, it's interesting to see there. Hope he actually just went back to the old hard point and bumped it for points. So I assume he's going to come into this one playing streaks, but it's not going to matter, because he gets shut down straight away by another two-piece from Skrizzum. Boss plays from him coming out nice here and early. Skrizzum, definitely a player to keep your eye on. He's been absolutely insane since he broke out at CWL Sydney Open number one. And that was his first event ever since he turned 18. And now he's done, what, two since then. So definitely look out for him on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, Oracle, they've been able to get quite a few points here, but not really enough to bite into that Tain of Mines lead. With 18 seconds remaining, once again, if they can get spawns and hold them down, then they should be set up going over towards the Cathedral right now. You see Tain of Mines, they're flooding in here to the lowest rate, trying to get the last couple of players off as they push towards the spawns. They've been able to do that for Hopi. He's alive. He comes in behind one player. Able to find that kill. A couple more might contest him here. Shot's not good there, but JTEX, he's going to be there ready and raring to go for this rotation. I need to keep an eye on sets. He's got two players contesting him at the market stairs. Finds the first kill, the second one. He's not going to contest just as of yet, but he will. Around the corner he goes, and JTEX finds that kill too. Yeah, those are really, really important frags for Oracle to pick up there. That could have been a market flip spawn for Tainted just then. 
for the Oracle guys. Thankfully, got the rotate in just in the nick of time. They're able to sort of just bait taint it out and just make those gunfights last a little bit longer Ooh. so their team could come off spawn. But Nimble with huge frags there. Going 7 and 5 right now. They still have not managed to. Oh, they, sorry, I hate my words. They have managed to break yeah. that hard point and flip the Oracle guys out a little bit. Oh, very, very staggered and spread across the map. But Setsy picks up a huge two piece and definitely gives out the smash talk. Going back to those guys. And they're probably going to have an opportunity to break this as long as they hit damage together, which they do. Trades come out. 13 seconds left. We're going to see the rotation coming across as Tainted have control of the bridge and the new hard point. Grism now. He's going to be the one fighting for control over those spawns. Make sure no Oracle players can get him out of there. One of them's going to be Hopi, and he's going to get absolutely deleted off the map. So good hold by Skrizm for the meantime. Damage. He's getting chased here. I mean, little does he know it. So if he turns his back at the wrong moment, he could get shot in it. He needs to just hold down these angles. Can't believe Zephyr just threw his life in the bin like that. All of his teammates are a little bit staggered while coming off spawn. He's just basically wasting time by not being uh, close enough to trade. And again, I hope he does it as well. No one's close enough to actually get trades here up until Setsi just then. So they've just basically wasted the first 20 or so, 20 or so seconds off this hard point. <coughs> Sorry, we'll see here now. Nimble, he's trying to hold on to his life. He's going to push into the hard point. A little bit risky there. There's multiple players from Oracle, and he's going to get shut down there by Zephyr. Sorry, JTEX in the end damage. He's going to find Hopi, but little do they know, they've completely been pushed out of their spawns. Last really players alive in that hill was going to be Swifty for Tainan Mines. Prism, he can test, but can't find any more than two. JTEX, he's going to be able to get two of his own. Can't get the third there, but it is enough to stop Tainan Mines from really getting too much control over the remaining scrap time. They do still have a marginal lead, almost 20 points here. But, you know, 20 points really doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things as we rotate into the hallway, the hotel hallways. Yeah, this is a much closer game than I quite expected here. There are a few pretty nice breaks from Oracle. Looks like we're going to this uh, hallway hard point. And JTEX man managed to frag out here. He's in a good position, but I don't know where his team is at. They're taking so long to rotate into the hard point. They just need to get in there and back him up right now. Unfortunate timing there for JTEX. He just aimed out and then aimed back in at the wrong time and wasn't able to get all his shots on point there. But still, Oracle, they are maintaining control over the hard point. The Tainted Mines players, they just haven't been able to push in as of yet. Nimble, he's going to go on a bit of a flank here, see if he can't do any work with you. He's going to get contested by Setsy, and Setsy has the number on him. He's going to be able to find that kill. So, a very nice setup by Oracle, Oracle to come back into this lead, and they're very close to being able to take it over. But as soon as I say that, Tainted Mines, they're going to get the break in there. And it's only Setsy to stop any more points being taken from Tainted. And he sees a couple of players. He sees the beat of one, but can't find the kill. Just trying to stay alive, allow his teammates to come and support him. But two seconds left, you really got to be thinking about those rotations. Yeah, Oracle just chasing them with five seconds left. They could have easily rotated. I mean, yes, they won the rotation, but they could have been fully set up here rather than, uh, who was that? Setsy just diving and dying on his own. A little bit unfortunate there, and that could have been the difference between uh, basically a full setup and early points, and not really tainted in early control here. But we do have FTL up from Nimble. Not sure if we'll see it used on this hard point. It's like they are favored in the gunfights here. Wow, what a kill from Nimble, ripping Setsy off that head glitch. He's gone on a four kill streak, almost makes it five, but Swifty steals that one from his grasp. 17 for 10, very good performance from him so far. He still has that first streak, 75 away from the Trinity Rocket, so he's going to want to stay alive for a little bit longer if he can. FDL, as you mentioned, Kyle, could come into effect. Now 50 off that bombardment. He gets shut down eventually there, but a five kill streak is going to allow him to have a few streaks in his back pocket. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this has been tainted, almost getting the full time off of this hard point. I don't think anyone on Oracle's even touched it, so that... That um, mistaken rotate has really cost them here, which is pretty unfortunate considering how close the game was before this bridge hill. And especially because it's such a contest hill as well that just has not been contested whatsoever. So we're down to lower street. We have seen the early rotate out here from Oracle. Though not all players are totally grouped, so this is going to be a little bit of an awkward gunfight. Player 5, that's going to be Scrism. He's actually spawned up top market. And it's some interesting spawns from Oracle over, over towards near Cathedral. But somehow Scrism, he just breaks in with a two-piece like that. Easy as pie as he spots another on patio. Trying to stay alive. Doesn't really know where the Oracle players are going to be coming from. The Ten of Mines right now, they don't really have much spawn control at all. But Scrism, he's going to get contested from the side. Zeppa, he was already very weak. And he's able to find that kill. He's got his FDL jump. JTEX as well has the Centurion to use. You know, you think that this one's going to be a close one. It looks like it at this point. So that Centurion could be key towards the later end of this game. They're trying to come back into this one. Claw back into it, Oracle. 11 seconds now on this hard point, though, means that they should be rotating. And on the minimap, you can see they are. So right now, that Centurion has actually gone down there over a Cathedral Soap. They're trying to use it early and get some more points towards this Tainted Mines lead. Yeah, for the second time now, Tainted have been uh, flipped out basically end of Lower Street and they haven't been able to get uh, any any sort of control whatsoever of this uh, sort of big money hill on Grave. 
Things are looking pretty messy now for Oracle, as I do say that. They have spawned out across the other side of the bridge. We do see FTL Ooh. used, but it's not enough as he runs straight into two guns from Oracle. And Skrizzum, in control of your hard point right here with Superior Market spawns. Oracle going to have a little bit of a tough one. Uh, Zephyr dives in there with FTL, managed to pick up that frag. Amazingly enough, I think he may have just bought his team enough time by that solo crazy play here. Has to pick Ooh. up a huge two-piece. Is he going to get it? No, he doesn't. He gets shut down by Nibble. And it's going to be Tainted Minds in control of his hard point. Nimble comes and he responds with the two piece of his own. He's still got that scarab to use. Ended up using the Trinity Rocket. I didn't quite catch whether he got any kills from it. I need to swap over to damage though. Look at him sneaking around behind here at the broken hard point, which will be up next. He'll be able to find Zephyr off that spawn. You can hear him getting a little bit loud. Damage quite quiet when you talk to him, but he likes to get a bit rowdy if he's heating up on the main stage. This is exactly what he's doing. The whole Tatumai's roster, you look at their kills, very evenly spread out. 20, 22, and two players are on 19 kills. It's really nice to see that all players are contributing, sorry, contributing equally. Yeah, solid, solid work from them, but it looks like we could potentially see a win off of this broken hard point. Things are getting pretty close here. Oracle absolutely has to break now, but Nimble picks up the first frag. Camo, I think, just got popped. Zeppa comes around the back, but it's not going to be enough. Seven seconds left. I think this could be game. It should be. Only three seconds remaining. No one from Oracle in anywhere near to be able to contest. And there we go. 250 to 153 in favor of Tainted Minds. I mean, it looks a lot closer until halfway through. And we're, all of a sudden, Tainted Minds, you know, they got borderline 50 points on that bridge hard point. And then from then on, we're able to take complete control over Lower Street. And once again, Cathedral. So very nicely done by them to take this one out. First map falls to Tainted Minds. Gentlemen. Is it the first nail in the coffin of Oracle here at CWL Sid, open number two? Yeah, I feel like it might be. There was some pretty strange errors there. Like you said, they got a huge amount of time off of that bridge hard point, despite the fact that um, they had, or they could have had the rotation pretty easily onto bridge, but they just opted to chase, what was it, like five seconds in the long haul? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like that, that map could have gone so differently considering that TM was really, really late to every single grave. Now, boys, we saw, you know, in the overall stats, JTEX was the only t player on Oracle really putting up any numbers. TM, we expected them to be heavy-hitting, hard-hitting slayers in this one. You know, was there any, anyone, anything that disappointed in any way? You know, was TM, were they living up to standards? I was actually very impressed by that performance. They were very even on kills, and surprisingly, very, very even on time as well. Nimble with the most at 123, but everyone on that team had over one minute on the hard point. That just goes to show the sort of teamwork that they might be trying to instill in this team. Kyle. Nimble was pegged to have always been in the backpack of Dens. Mm -hmm. Is that true from this game? Can we can we safely say that, that? Can we refute that claim? No, he played like a boss. That was a really nice play from him. I'm pretty impressed, actually. He was, what was he, like 17 and 10 and pretty much was the catalyst of them holding down almost the entirety of Bridge? Yeah. Who's a standout player for you on Tainted Vines and James as far as, you know, who was making plays? I, I feel like it was Nimble, you know, he was constantly breaking into hard points, getting two pieces, and uh, Scrizzum and Swifty as well. It was never really a time where you saw either of those three players without two kills in the t kill feed when you looked at it. You know, Damage, he, he doesn't usually get two pieces, he's not the sort of player to go for those flashy plays, but every kill he does get is just very important. I, I mean... There was, it was so r evenly rounded with the whole team that I can't really pinpoint one player as a catalyst of their victory. That's a wonderful thing. That means the team's working the way they should be. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, boys and girls. Right, Carl, going into S&D. The next map is uh, it's make or break, really, for the series. You know, we've, we've seen good things out of, uh, out of Oracle and Uplink games. They're very well put together. Their execution is pretty much on point. Do we see Search and Destroy going towards Oracle, or are Tainted going to slam this one home? Um, I've got a feeling this could be a Tainted Slam, because, I mean, we saw back in the earlier sort of MLG events how e United sort of pioneered this really aggressive middle ground um, through the middle of throwback. And I've got a feeling that now you've just hyped up Skrizzum and Swifty, that they're just going to do that straight back. It's going to be probably a lot of e rides, a lot of K-Bars, just hefty rushes. If they're not doing that, they're playing a little bit passive here, I think this could potentially be an Oracle map. So can you say the pace that was set earlier on in the hard point was very much a, a tainted affair. Do you feel like the slower pace of Search and Destroy is going to affect them a little bit? Do you think there'll be a teething period for them against Oracle at all? It could, because I mean, you're on main stage here, and I know when you're a little bit fresher to S&D, you sort of lack a little bit of confidence, because you know that, hey, if I die first, then my team has to play 3v4. And, I mean, they can do it, but I'd rather not do that, because I'm meant to be the main slayer, I'm meant to pick up frags for the team. So I think that could come into play here. But they just need confidence. James, who do you pen on Oracle to be the real standout player in this Search and Destroy? Who needs to step up? I feel like Hopi did. He didn't have a very good performance in the hard point. I think he amassed something like 13 kills. I mean, you know, he's got a long, a long history in esports, and in Call of Duty esports specifically. And 
for him to not not have enough experience on Search and Destroy would be stupid. I'm sure that he'll be able to bring something out in this game. I feel bad for Hopi. Frankly, all we do is we talk up how great he is or yep. how bad he's playing. <laughs> he seems to be the only person on that lineup that we ever give any sort of praise or, or, or criticism to. Either way, guys, you know, the whole lineup of Oracle have been playing fantastically all weekend. Sets of shot has been on point. His, actually, his respawn games have been very, very impressive to watch. JTEC's also putting out numbers, and Zephyr has been clutch in almost every single match we've seen. If, anyone, if you can depend on anyone, it seems to be Zephyr. Are we going to be seeing any... Uh, would you, if, you, if you're going to call this one, in, a, in a terms of broader sense of the series, is this S&D going to go close, or is it going to be a blowout? I feel like it's... This is Oracle's map to win. They really need to if they want to get into the series properly because I feel like the uplink is definitely going to be in Tainer Mind's favor. Tainer Mind's though, I, I mean, I agree with Kyle and the fact that they could easily, quite easily come off the rip and just absolutely slay out, play their sort of way, the aggressive style that you'd expect out of these sorts of players and just, you know, don't even let Oracle get a chance to play the objective. Now, Kyle, final question for you. If TM drop the SND, do you think it's going to hurt them a bit? Hurt the sort of their style of play? Hurt, you know, get in the ego a little bit there? And is it going to let them? Are they going to drop the uplink after that? Are they going to be a little struggling on Struggle Street if they can lose the SND? I think it will be a harder SND for them. I mean, like I said before, it's it's all in their confidence and their own ability. I mean, they look pretty comfortable now, but if they lose a the map, I know that'll get to both uh, Skrism and Swifty. Like Skrism has just expectations of just three owing everyone now, especially because they're in the loser bracket. They really want to. They really want to look dominant coming into their future matches. James, for you, quick prediction. Who's winning it and how many? Look, I want to put my, I want to put my, uh, my money that I don't have because I'm a broke uni student, but I want to put it on Oracle. Um, I, I feel like they definitely have what it takes to take out Tanner Mines and Search and Destroy, but then again, surprise me. Kyle, quick predictions from you before we dive into this one. Um, round 11, if TM isn't playing confident. Round 11, here we are guys. Game number two, loser's bracket round four. Tainted Minds versus Oracle Esports. It's Milboss and Vile Cider, fellas. Take the reins and ride us all the way home. All right, Kyle, who do you want to start off with in this one? We're going to see Tainted Minds on the aggressive side off the rip. We've got a couple of, uh, couple of players running down under this underpass here. They're just going to break out into mid right now. Swifty, he's going to be the first blood. Hopi, Ooh. he's actually got a scope out. Let's see what he can do this. This is what I like to see from Hopi. He hasn't done this in a fair while. Ooh. He was known for the, his scope action back in Black Ops 2. Just misses that shot just barely. He's going to be playing nice and passive here. I like that he's only looking at one thing at a time. Good safe work from him here. Yeah, you, you really do need to play safe with that sniper, especially on a relatively close range map and a small map in general. So now it's a 2v3. Zephyr finally going down to damage. Damage, you know, he's a S&D god back in the day, and let's see if he can't continue that. But you'll see the three players from Oracle, they're all pushing him. He's going to be on Struggle Street right now. He's got to stay alive for his teammate. He gets no another way. one there. He's on three. Can no he find way. the fourth? Not going to happen. So that's going to lead it now into a 1v1 Scrism. He gets that bomb down today, and it's going to be him versus JTEX. JTEX putting up so many numbers in that hard point. Not enough, though, for his team and Scrism. This is the sort of thing where the inexperience, the lack of composure could come into play. Potentially see JTEX take this one out, who has been competing in the CWL for a matter of years now. Scrism turns away at the wrong time, and JTEX is going to take out that first round for Oracle in getting this defuse there. And look how, how far he's come on his uh, Centurion there. Three kills and a defuse. That's some very nice work, as well as that Scarab. Yeah, Milboss, I just want to point out that Scrism's carrying bomb again. Um, I said that this is going to go to round 11 if they're not playing confidently, and you just can't give your, your chins, your aggressive players, bomb. I'm, I'm really surprised by that. They gave it to him last LAN, and he's like, I talked to him uh, after the event, and he's like, I don't know, why, why do I have bomb? This is stupid. Like, I should be some of my slower teammates. It should be the people playing a little bit more passive in the back line. Anyway, getting into this round, looks like we've got a little bit of a split cross map. Hope you pick it up again. early. First blood, good work from him. I feel like they should be playing a little bit more defensively and not poking the scope, knowing that Hopi's actually getting killed, so he's going to run it twice, and that's going to be two down for the guys on Oracle. Scrism and damage left up, fast alive. They're going to be in 2v4 situation here. Not going to be very offensive, and as we say, that damage does get shut down. So now Scrism in a 1v3. He was able to find Hopi, so that's a start, but he's got three players all defending that bomb. Some of them look like they're going for a bit of a snake down range. He goes out into the open, gets contested by all three, and Oracle are going to be able to take out the second round. Good start by them. That's some very shaky shots from Scrism there. I expected a little bit of a tighter snapper of that guy in cover. He wasn't, wasn't really slithering around on his belly at all. He was just straight up contesting. Yeah. So I expect a little bit more from Scrism here. Probably get him off that MV4, give him an ear ad, and let him, let him hunt people. He is a predator. 
in the APAC Call of Duty scene. And he likes to show off at the big stage, but is he going to be able to do that in this map? We'll have to wait and see. He's picked up the bomb again, and it looks like a four stack from Tatum Mines. Oh, no, rather a three stack towards the B bomb site. And Swifty, he's going to be the man just holding down from bus over towards A. Holding down those flanks, making sure no one flanks him. Hopey, he had the sniper, and he's going to get found first up. So here should be an early bomb plant for Tainan Mines, and this is the first round that they've been able to get first blood. This is such an incredibly slow rotation from Oracle. I expect things to be a little bit tighter. Hopey really needs to get on that case, get them rotating much faster than this. It's 3v4. TM have the advantage here. They do have bomb down. They've all managed to back up. We do have Swifty. Doing a bit of sneaky work here. I'm not going to mention what he's doing so no one hears me, but I don't think he has a, a proper weapon here. He's only got this pistol. This goes and picks up another frag. He's really get this kill and get a gun, and this could be pretty nasty for Setsy. Less than a 1v4. He's going to get a couple shots down range, but back off here. Almost feel like suicide's the better option right now. He doesn't want to give up any yep. points to Tain and Mines, so that's exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> he's going to let himself die outside of the bounds, and that won't allow Tain and Mines to get any points towards their streaks from his death. Yeah, that was the right decision now. I'm, I'm glad he did that and stopping uh, basically any, any extra glad points he killed from himself? the bomb. Heart. Yes, I am, because <laughs> it means no bomb explosion, no points for the kill. Of course. It's solid work there. Looks like we're going to have. Can we jump on board with. Uh, yeah, let's see, Hopi. Nope, Ooh. no scope in hand. No this, scope. This could be good. It looks like Tainan have reacted a little bit to that scope and they're just sort of four stacking up this left side, Ooh. but Hopi gets a lot of damage out. One player stuck in the middle, managed to climb back over. There's really no one there to support Hope. I think feel like they've got the read on exactly what's happening, and Hobie's called what's going down, and Tainted, understanding exactly what's happening too, must have seen someone there, because it's going to be a pretty hectic 4v4 fight over on this B site. I'm excited to see what happens here. High wall run right there, might catch out a player off guard. Zephyr does find Scrisson, but damage trades off immediately there. Nimble, he's going to find an easy one as well. So now we're in a 2v2. Nimble and damage, make that a 1v2. Damage is going to be able to find the first one on towards sets. And now he's got to find JTEX there. He's in down range, but he has to recover his health. His half health here, very low. And he's going to snake a little bit, just jump out of the way. He needs to be careful of this because JTEX, he's on his nuts right now. He is that good. And he has been so far today. We've seen him play very, very well. Damage needs to get out of there. He's in such a tight position contesting this one. We'll see if he can't find the kill. JTX darting around. He's got the advantage here, but Damage is going to find it. Does he have time to get the defuse here? And no, just runs out of time there to slide a little bit too far away. And Oracle, they're going to go up 3-1. I really don't know what Damage... Oh, Damage is playing his streaks. That's what he's doing. That's why he's playing so passive. Um... I don't feel like streaks are quite worth losing around like that when it's just a 1v1 after sort of clutching up the earlier kills. Pretty much could have just ran at JTEX and had a little bit con little bit of confidence in himself. So that could be the uh, the downfall for Tainted Mines. Just not basically just confident in their own ability to get kills. Damage right now. Playing the best on his team in this search and destroy. Six for two to start things off. And yeah, as you said, he's playing for those streaks. 100 points away from that Scarab. Very close to his overdrive as well. And all the plays from Oracle, they're going on a long rabble, at least three of them around behind. Let's see if they aren't able to find some kills early on here. One player's going to contest, make that two nimble, and screws them both go down, but JTEX, he gets a team kill on Zephyr, so that's at least something to take away for Tainan Mines. They don't have to go up against all four, and Swifty, sorry, Damage, is going to find one now. That leaves Swifty in a 1v2. JTEX, he's got his specialist, sorry, his payload, I should say, and that's going to be the Centurion. Swifty needs to be careful here. One player's going to contest, that's JTEX. Melts him. He has to get in a corner hide because he's getting contested with little to no health and hope he's going to be able to find that kill and the defuse. Good round from Oracle there. They're going 4 1 up. Yeah, it was a little bit of a risky corner. It did sort of pay off, but then he just did not have any clue where Hope he was and completely with the gunfight. This is a little bit odd. I didn't quite expect this to go down quite as it has. Again, I just feel like Tainted needs to be aggressive up middle map. Do what they're good at. Just let the. basically unleash the chins. Let them run around. <laughs> do what they want. Let them do what they want. That's the advice from Vilesider. Former professional player, so you kind of know what you're doing. Kind of. Kind of. A little bit. All right, looks like we've got Oracle on the offensive. Can we jump on Bob with Jay? I want to see what his payload is. I've got a feeling that could be FT. It's Centurion. Um, no, it's Centurion. Okay. JTX, bomb in hand. Looks like we're going to finally see potentially a bit of a regular A coming out from the boys here. Nice 2-2 two -two split. Good stack around middle. Hope you with the E right out. I like that he's changing up here. Looks like... Tainan Mines is going to pick up a couple of frags, but it's going to be 2v2 now. Nimble and Swifty versus Setsy and Zeppa. But the bomb is down, and Swifty's defending it with his life. He knows exactly where it is, but now he's rotating. I don't know what's going on there, and his teammate Nimble has fallen, so it's going to be a 1v2. You know, once again, that inexperience from Scrizzum, maybe not playing with his team as yeah, much as he should. Why up? He should have grouped up. They need every round him. here. And he's going to get contested from the side. 5-1, Oracle. 
They're in place to take the second map in, you know, not close fashion, damn convincing fashion. Yeah, TM just look completely lost right now. Um, I've got a feeling this could really affect confidence going to the next map. This is honestly weird play. Very unexpected, I'd have to agree with that statement. You know, you think about the caliber of these players and usually they'd be a little bit better than what they're performing right now. You hope that they might be able to mount some kind of comeback, but I doubt it's going to be enough. One to five down, that's borderline impossible to get five rounds in a row. Very difficult indeed. And Hopi starting off with another nice. scope. First pick off the rip. Tatum Mines seem to always be getting first blooded here, and they're not, you know, adjusting to the play style that Oracle have set up that they should be expecting by now. But Scrism here is going to be able to find that trade there. Meaning it's a 3v3, but it's a little too little too late. One minute remaining. Players really all over the place right now. No one in a position to trade Swifty just yet, but he will be able to get some support from Nimble in the end there to be able to reduce this to a 2v3. Favoring Tainer Mines. Finally, something going in their favor, but Hopi, he just trades straight back and gets another one. Let's go over to him. He's going to fall there to Scrism, but oh my god, he got three in that round, and that could be the catalyst for Oracle to take this one. Sets now, you know, 1v1 with Scrism. I mean, Kyle, I can't see this going in Scrism's favor. I mean, it does have bomb. 29 seconds left, but it looks like Stetsy has got a little, bit of, a little bit of a scent up his nostrils here, actually. Scratch that. He's just sort of hanging around, waiting for this plant to go down. 20 seconds left. I like that he's got that bomb down nice and early. Because I'm going to back down. Pretty, uh, pretty same. He played what J JTEX was doing previously. Looks like Stetz is going to come hunting here. Needs to check that bomb, but there's no one there just yet. Because I'm playing nice and slow. Just misses out. Cod timing there. Oh my god, this could be close. Gets damage on. Stetsy has the. Oh my god! Scrism! Gets deleted, gets first shot, sets he turns on him and shuts him down. This is going to be a 6-1 victory to Oracle Esports here. Fantastic play from them. Looks tainted minds, just no confidence here in themselves. What a loss. I did not <laughs> imagine that if it was going to be Oracle, it was going to be this convincing. I thought they might win. I thought they might have a chance. But that was, that was, that's blown me away. I, I'm lost for words. I barely had time to pee. I'm still undone over here. That was a very, very quick game of Search and Destroy 6-1. Yeah. I, okay, boys. We didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I'm not sure if the crowd saw it coming. But that was a very surprising outcome. Uh, I'm devastated we missed that two-piece from Hopi. He took, he took Scrism's face clean off and then turned and burned on somebody else. Either way, we might get that in the highlights. Fingers crossed the, uh, the COD gods may be on our side. Boys, what a game. Walk us through these replays. I, there's, there's not much more I can say than Oracle just, they always found themselves in favorable positions. Hopi consistently getting first bloods onto Tainer Mines players. I, I think Tainer Mines only had first blood maybe one round and it wasn't even the one that they won. I, I don't understand how they kept on giving themselves up to these power positions that Oracle was holding, the snipes from mid that, that Hopi was delivering. And they just kept on pushing it and pushing it, and, you know, they ended up losing 6-1. It blows me away. We are all blown away. Prayers for Titan Mines on Search and Destroy game types. There's one more coming out from this series. If we have to get there, it will be very, very interesting to see what happens there. Kyle, the initiative was always in the hands of Oracle. Is that, is that something you think they went into this knowing that if they had the initiative, if they had those opening kills, they could play the game the way they wanted to? Or do you think that kind of evolved on the fly and that was something that they worked out themselves? Uh, a little bit of both, honestly. I feel like Hopi, Hopi was really confident in his play. He did what you should be doing in SMD, which was just mixing things up every round. Like, he didn't pull scope every round. He did it twice in a row, once on offense, once on defense. Pulled out the K-Bar, pulled out the Stubby, and just basically... TM had no idea what Hopi was going to do every round. Yeah. And I think, it, what was it like? It was three t three scope first bloods, basically wow. three separate rounds. That's a really wonderful mm -hmm. statistic. Mm -hmm. first, first round we saw him, we tuned in, he was missing shots, and after that, it was just all beautiful from there. Hopi, bringing up the numbers. Yeah. Uh, we were just we were discussing in the production room, actually, how all we ever do is talk about Hopi, whether he's hitting shots or missing shots. He seems to be the make or break catalyst for whatever team he's on. So the blame probably unfairly lands on him. But again, that lineup has been absolutely static. JTEX, he, he netted the most kills for his team in the first map of the series, in the hard point, and now he's done exactly the same thing on the SD. Where do you place these guys now going in the uplink? Oracle have got to be feeling fantastic after that victory. Yeah. I'd assume so. I, I don't know about your opinion on them, but they've, they've got to be hyped up after that, especially Hopi. I didn't hear that much out of him, but I'm hoping now we get into a respawn. This is where things really turn up the heat.
James, who are you looking for in the uplink to really go off? You know, obviously JTEX is playing well. Hope he's now coming up clutch. I heard some wonderful noise from the crowd from Stephas plays. You know, where who do you pin for this one? On the uplink, I feel like JTEX is going to be the one slaying around, being the front man pushing the, the players back into their spawn. And it'll probably be maybe Hopi and Setsu are the ones running that drone in. I'm, I'm not too certain of that. I haven't seen too much of their play this weekend personally. But I, I feel like the whole team has definitely come together quite well. And if they can continue what they just performed in the S&D, they should be able to get, get through this one. Kyle, can you believe that in 2017 we're looking at the losers bracket and we've got players of this caliber here this early on? You know, if you, if you lose here, this is top eight. Can you believe that one of these teams is going to be sitting in the top eight in this competition? Honestly, normally I'd say I'm shocked, but looking at the play from TM, that's just not, it's just not good enough, honestly. Like, I can see why they're in the loser bracket now. That was messy. Um, and if that carries on into other game types, I just don't really feel like they deserve to be in the top eight, honestly. This is just, it's not good play. Them's fighting words, son. Yeah, that's, that's honestly. <laughs> straight to the heart of Tainted Minds. Do you think this was the moment, James? This was the this is a crushing point. If they bend, but if they will they break or will they bounce back? Can TM do it here in the uplink? I feel like they can. Uh, I feel like they should. But then again, what's their mindset going into this one after getting very convincingly shut down in that search and destroy? Uh, and especially for the newer players who haven't played that many LAN events since they've turned 18 or since the Call of Duty World League being around. Uh, I feel like that could play a factor, the inexperience of how to deal with these mental situations. And it's, it's very much a, a, a mind game, you know? Oracle, they've been able to take that, for that second map out, and you're going to be doubting yourself. You can see the faces of the players there, taking their minds in the green corner, and over here in the blue corner, having comfortably tied up the series after a 6-1 victory in the S&D. That's Oracle Esports on your screen looking far calmer and collected than they have done thus far in the competition. They had a bit of a rough run last night. They were knocked into the loser's bracket, but so far, so good for the boys in blue. Kyle, you're on, if you're on Oracle right now, you know we don't have Bioacid's crystal ball, which <laughs> has been unusually accurate so far in the weekend. Where, what sort of scoreline are you looking at in this uplink game? Um... Jeez, uh, I'm feeling maybe like a 9-4 to Oracle here. I just, I feel like they're playing better as a team right now, and I feel like that's pretty important on Frost. James, you've got to pin numbers onto these boys. Who are you, who are you giving the win to? I, I, it should be, because of respawn, I, I'm thinking it should be Tain of Mines, and, but I feel like it will be close, definitely close, you know, 5-6 potentially. Losers bracket round four, Oracle Esports up against Tainted Minds, tied 1-1 in the series. This one's going to be a screamer. Valsider and Milboss run it through it. Here we go, Tainted Minds and Oracle. This is going to be the map to separate the men from the boys, see whether or not you know this new blood can hang with the old blood. And right now it looks like not so much because they just got three down. Yeah, it looks like Damage is able to sort of save the Grace just a little bit here. Picking up big Ooh. frags on Zeppa. Managing to retain middle map control, but Herbie cleans that up as he's too weak. Again, we still have slays by way of Oracle here. They really need to grab this ball and start moving it up the map. But it looks like we have number five on your screen, Scrism. Might be able to shut this down. Never mind, JTEX locked out of this push. And it could be Setsy here, potentially points on the board, but though Herbie is in first. <gasps> there we Ooh, go. The rim shot so close just hooks that in for a one-point lead for Oracle here against Tainted in the first 50 seconds of your game. Very good start from Oracle, definitely. It wasn't, you know, it was quite convincing being able to push up that fire, and Setsy did a lot of work being able to get into the spawn and just confuse the Tainted Minds players. What's going on? How are we doing this? Setsy now, he's going to go along this wall run here and go for a long drone shot, and oh he makes it land as well. Boss. So far, Oracle, a very hot start in this game, and JTEX, he's on a five-kill streak too. Oracle's basically got double the amount of kills in the, within the first like minute and a half that Tainted Minds have, and that's unexpected because these guys on Tainted are all pretty hefty slayers, but JTEX, show him what he's made Ooh. of. A huge two-piece cleans up Scrizzy Man Nimble. Zeppa cleans up the third, and it's going to be damage left alone. Ooh, this could be another... Wow. Oh, what the turn on! <laughs> <laughs> JTEX, man, you, you're making me feel all kinds of funny, and another two points goes in for Oracle. So hot right now. Tainted Minds, what are you going to do about it? You need your Swifties and your Scrisms to heat up, but they're not just as of yet. Swifty not being able to get that kill done. Scrism as well. Looks like he's going to get out gun, but finally does manage to find that kill. JTEX and Setsy, they're really starting to put on a show for us. Zephyr as well. Seven and three. He's on a two kill streak himself. Scrism though, finally finding another kill, and here's where Tainted Minds, they need to set up again. They need to start 
pushing up the map, trying to get you know, a three down or something to be able to get some map control. And it's starting to work out a little bit in their favor, but not enough that they can get two points on the board, and they need it. They need it fast. And here we go, it's damage. One. It better be a one. He needs to get this up, but he's nope, going he's for the enough. two. And there we done. go. A good clean up from Tane and Mines to get themselves back in this. Yeah, I feel like Oracle needed to slow things down just a little bit in middle map and get those trades on. They didn't really get to trade out uh, Scrism in mid. It looks like we're going to have Tainted potentially oh. with some map control here, but Zephyr's going to say absolutely no, get a two-piece damage. The saving grace yet again gets traded out. Ball's going to be start to move up, but I feel like Zephyr just needs to throw this down and slay right now so his teammate can catch up to him. Yeah, they need to catch up to him. He's got four tenant minus players to deal with. Sorry, rather three. And he's not going to be able to deal with any of them. So nimble and damage, they're going to be able to combine for two kills. And they get control over that drone. We'll see what Swifty decides to do with it. He's going to go on this lower wall run. Throw the drone out, and he knows he's got players contesting him. Somehow gets that hit fire. Can he turn around wow. for the second one? Swifty, that's the kind of slaying we expect from you, my man. And he'll get another one there, and hope Ooh. he can't get the fourth so close there. But now he's heating up, and this is what Tainer Mines need. Oh my god, that was such a dope throw. Looks like whoever was up top there, number five, Skuzum just grabbed ball and threw it over the building. So it's going to go land into uh, containers here. And this could potentially see points, but JTEX says no, shuts things down. This could potentially be a run here for Oracle up through sub. No one's grabbing balls. Swifty's sort of just baiting things out. No one's able to shut him down just yet, and he's buying enough time for his teammates to come off of spawn and get his back. They need to help him out here. He does go down there, sets. He's going to clean up in the middle of the map, and now help is on the way from Hopi. Here we go. The drone once again moving for Oracle down this ice, this cliff side of the map. And Tainer Mines are going to be expecting this for the most part. We'll see what Hopi can do. This is he passes it over to Setsy. Setsy's going to go for that long throw once again. Oh, it gets intercepted. intercepted this time by Scrism. So nicely done by him. But Oracle, so dangerous so far. Yeah, Hopi probably shouldn't have hit that pass. I mean, it would have been good to sort of catch him off guard how quickly Ball had traversed that ground. He probably needed to be the lead blocker there and get some slays out for his teammate. Now that is three down right now. Ball's going to be grabbed. Kimball's managed to saving things here, but looks like Seth's going to push up with his teammate. Hopi has got some kills here. So it might be too little too late because I think it's because I'm at far oh, sorry, Tanny Mines have too many numbers up here. But we do see streaks coming out now. This could be pretty big. Oh. JTX picks up one, Hopi another. This could be a dunk, ladies and gentlemen. They hope he can he get it through. No, it doesn't go Body through. Body reset. Wow, that that was lucky. If anything, from Tainer Mines to be able to get that body block in, as you said, says he he'll get a two piece. Though JTEX has been able to pick up the drone again, and Tainer Mines they're on the respawn. JTEX last alive. This far pushed up on the map. He's going to get at shot by someone. That was Scrism on some weird wacky wall run, and they've been able to shut down that passage of play. Oracle going into the half. Looks like they're going to be up four to two. I doubt Tainer Mines is going to be able to get a score in, but who knows? Something crazy could happen. Doesn't look like it. So that will be a halftime score. Four to two. Oracle. They look. They started off so hot. Not that hot towards the end of it, but Tainer Mines haven't really been able to break their defense either. Yeah, I think they just started to run blue a few too many times where they had teammates sort of spawning on their base. Um, and not up near that gate, so it was just a really long jog for the guys on Oracle to really get in and support their teammates. And they sort of played by the skin of their teeth as opposed to sort of the nice grouping they had earlier for the first four points. Well, here we go. Swapping over to the other side of the map. Potentially, well, a, a few people describe as the more favorable side for Tain and Mines to be going towards this cliff side. It's, it's a bit up in the air. I feel like Frost is definitely the more even map out of most of the uh, uplink maps. Some of them have more favored sides than other. A good two-piece there from Zephyr is going to be able to clean out the way for Oracle to push up a little bit. Scrism, he's going to find Hopi, shutting down any more of a chance there. JTEX, though, he's heating up so greatly. 16 kills for the man. Zephyr, though, he's on 21 and two points. I think he actually got the dunk there for his team. So, overall, Oracle, they're impressing me very greatly in this, in this half. Four down. Oh, four down, exactly. Here we go. They might be able to push up. Sessie, he's, he's, going to become a, he's going to come the nuisance in the Tainer Mines base. This should be a dunk. As they say, the two players are going to contest him. Hopi, he went for the two points and he got it. And there we go. Oracle, they've extended their lead. Nice. Good plays there. That was pretty solid. That's the team push I've been talking about. They grouped up. They managed to flip them out. Sessie, beautiful push straight through then and there. Well, we've seen how Oracle are in the lead. Let's hear what they are saying with the listening with them. Quick, quick, one shot, one shot, one shot! I got blue, I got blue. He's on me, he's on me. Blue, 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 blue,
Well, Kyle, we had a bit of a listen into how the comms are going for Oracle. I mean, it feels pretty much like they are raring to go and they are hunting for the victory here. Two points are going to go in for Tatum Mines, but not before Oracle, during that listening, were able to get another two of their own. Any sort of key takeaways from what we heard? I mean, solid team push, pretty good comms, a little bit rushed, uh, not quite as much small talk as I would like, but it's not going to matter here when they're slaying like they have been. JTEX with a huge turn on just there. It's like damage again. The last line of defense here for his teammates. Looks like Oracle are going to push force containers here. Not getting a lot of damage out. JTEX takes two. This could potentially be another scoring opportunity for the boys here on Oracle. He gets the last play of Swifty so weak there, but Swifty's able to do enough to allow his teammates to respawn. But it's not enough to find the kill onto Zephyr here. He's going absolutely ham. 29 kills, almost 30. He might be able to get the play around the corner here. He will indeed there. So, wow. 30 bomb from Zephyr. He's going off. JTEX, he's using oh his overdrive God. here. This should Is be this another two-point play. There we go. No, he goes for the throw. A safe play. Very nicely done. And, you know, that's some of the experience that maybe Scrism and Swifty wouldn't have to make that kind of decision. Yeah, I feel like he jumped just slightly too early. I feel like he had enough armor to sort of tank that and make it a dunk. But it's not going to matter. Because that means that you now Tainted Mines have to hit two dunks and a throw to get in this lead. So like we have Oracle fairly set up around middle map. This, things are not looking good right now for Tainted Mines. Oracle Esports have way more map control for the vast majority of this half. You look how pushed back into their base. Tainted Mines are finally getting some kills to be able to break out of that one. But Lance Hopi, he comes from behind. He gets a kill. Can't find the second one. Throws out the drone for good measure. It's going to be reset in the middle of the map here. But maybe that might just help out this Tainted Mines squad. Swifty is going to be able to get a kill in the middle of the map. Can't do much more than that though because guess who? It's Hopi. He's going to come from behind and find another one there. Been so influential in this game. Zephyr and JTEX slaying around Hopi and Setsy doing the objective work. Actually, no, Zephyr. I take that back. He's got two oh dunks. So very God. nicely done. And JTEX can't find any more out of that one. 27 seconds remaining. It is, I'm pretty sure, impossible for Tanner Mine to get back into this one. Even though we've got the camo out from Swifty. And he jumps too oh, early. Almost Ooh, it. A little bit awkward there. But either which way, it's not going to be enough. Tainted Mines, they're going down 2-1. Oracle Esports slaying hard. Ladies and gentlemen, that second half, complete boss work. Last five seconds of the map, and this is GG's. Oracle take the victory over wow. Tainted Mines. They go up 2-1. This is crazy stuff. I, I did not expect it to be that heavy-handed in Oracle's favor once again. You know, we might be going to a uh, hard point next, which should be Tainted Mines' favor, but the way that Oracle's playing, I can't see that going in, in Tainted Mines' way. Holy uplink, Batman! That was pretty wild, dudes. That was the good one. first half electrifying. The one-point throws. Some of the longest one-point throws I've seen. I, it, there was a general sort of... <gasps> in the audience, but when that first one went out. Guys, what's going on? The fellas of Tainted Minds, extremely capable slayers. We've seen them do good before. You know, it's a new lineup. But really, where's it falling, where's it falling over? Who needs a hug the most on that team right now? <laughs> um... I d it's not damaged, that's for sure. He's been the last line of defense for the vast majority of that second half, unfortunately. Every time uh, we'd see basically Jay just run in, and absolutely slay up, and it was just down to damage to just buy his team time, which sort of did work, so I might have to give the hug award to probably poor Scrism over there. Yeah, I was going to say Scrism as well. The man, he hasn't really performed that crazy in either three of the maps as of yet. Like, the hard point, he just did his part. He didn't really go off, per se. Meanwhile, in this map, he... 
definitely didn't go off. He only got 23 kills compared to, you know, JTX who got 28, uh, Zephyr with 33. Like, how can you combat that? Yeah, it's very difficult to do anything when you've got JTX who's literally unkillable and Zephyr who's now not only permeated the, uh, the bodies of these players, but he's certainly in their nightmares now. I think they'll be dreaming yeah. of Zephyr tonight and not in a good way. Look, guys, it was a relentless offense from Oracle in the first and second halves. There was very, very little breathing space for the guys on Tatum Mines. You know, how can they bounce back from this? They're, they're such a capable squad. We know this. And we're ratting on about it a little bit too much, probably. But let's face it. They're a top-tier team, and they should be performing a bit better than this. What can they do here in the... It is, the next game's going to be a hard point. This is going to be a saving grace for them. What can they really do to turn the series around? Well, for a lot of that last half, it was Oracle with sort of, uh, I guess, like two people middle, middle map and pushing up without much support. So I feel like if Tane had just been like a little bit grouped and just sort of playing, I guess, Heglitch's little bit of snaking middle map, it might have been a little bit safer for them um, to basically just take advantage of the fact that Oracle didn't have the numbers to win a lot of the gunfights. And most of them were pretty clutch. Um, usually like two or three pieces. Like we, I think that's the most like three downs I've seen really in a, in a game of uplink before. James, given the paradigm shift we've seen between these two teams now, we've seen Oracle swinging real hard. Do you think there's a chance that they may be able to take the hard point here? off of Tainted Minds, despite what we saw in the first map? I honestly wouldn't be surprised. It's a throwback, which was the same map as the Search and Destroy. Obviously, they played that one, you know, you can't say anything, but they played it better. It was simply better in every regard than Tainted Minds on that Search and Destroy. I feel like it's probably going to go Oracle's way. I, I wouldn't even, exp I wouldn't be surprised even if it's some sort of blowout, you know, by a hundred and something points. I mean, Carl, do you think that we're talking about the map now, throwback, it was it's very, very successful Search and Destroy, it was 6-1. The retaliation hard point, do you think that was a bit of an outlier? Do you think that was a, a stroke of luck maybe on the, on the part of Tainted Minds? Possibly that throwback is where Oracle are going to be finding their success. Do you think we could see them win this one? I think you're onto something there because, I mean, like it was that one bridge hill which was a full 50 seconds, which is a contest hill, which should not go that way. So I feel like if that was a little bit more contested, I think we would have had a very, very different hard point in the first map could all be different. Wow, this is really coming down to it, boys. Throwback hard point. We're in loser's bracket round four. This is top eight for these teams. Unheard of to see either of these squads sitting in the top eight. You expect these boys to be top four, even top three. This is extremely, extremely exciting stuff. Again, guys, thank you. For those of you who may have just joined us, this is the CWL Sydney Open 2. We're very into the business end of this one, and things have been nothing but a delight so far. This hard point will make or break this series for Tainted Minds. James, who are you looking for in Tainted to go off? I really need, like as we said before, Scrism, no, not only does he need a hug, he needs to step it up. He needs to get get right, you know, get in the right frame of mind for this one. You know, Nimble, he's been doing relatively well. He's been quite consistent damage as well, and Search and Destroy was their best player. Swifty, he's been getting important kills no, nevertheless, but he just hasn't had that support that he needs from the rest of his team. I feel like, meanwhile in Oracle, everything is working. All p pistons firing. It's it's really easy to see why they're winning now. Kyle, do you think Nimble misses his dens now? Yeah, I dare say so. I feel <laughs> like the ARs from Squizzman and Swifty have just not been anywhere up to par on the uh, sort of championship Sunday that Dens is known to bring home. Well, they ain't out of the woods yet. Oracle need one more to win it and move on in the tournament, potentially knocking Tainted Minds out into that top eight. However, Tainted, they've shown their prowess on the respawn game type so far. This could be a favorite for them, but to the way Oracle are playing, is there any tricks up the sleeves of Tainted Minds? Do they have anything left in the tank? You can see the camaraderie on your screen, the left-hand side of your screen, the green team that is Tainted. They're not out of this yet. Their heads are firmly in it. On the right-hand side, the cool blue of Oracle Esports. They want the win. They don't want to go home just yet. Championship Sunday, everything to play for here at CWL Sydney Open number two. Will we see crushed dreams or will there be cream in the jeans? Of these two teams, I'm a poet and I certainly know it. Fellas, take us into what could be the last map we see here on stream for Tainted Minds. That would be uh, a big shock, I think, to many people, Kyle. I don't know if you agree, but Tainted Minds, they just haven't performed this weekend as much as many people expected. Not only did they come in with the expectation of being, you know, a top tier team, most people thought they were top two, which is something they haven't been able to oh show off God. yet. Hope we just destroyed Scrism's face, just ate it off of the ground. Absolute destruction there. And it's going to be Oracle Esports early control of this hard point. 
Hopey, I don't know if you can hear him through our mics, but he's definitely getting loud on stage. Setsy as well. He likes to get a little bit vocal sometimes. You know, once again, a very quiet person in person, but once he gets up on that main stage, he is raring to go. And it looks like they're going strong because Tan and Mines haven't been able to get a toe into the hard point just as of yet. Yeah, 25 seconds off the known contest hard points. I mean, this is exactly what happened on Bridge, but opposite now for Oracle. Yeah. And TM spawned all the way out. I like to see the rotation start to come in from the Oracle Boys, number five on your screen. Setsi has recognized it, and he's starting to go back across the barn as Tane are pretty set up in a good position here to fight this anchor with it as a team. JTX is on a three kill streak, might want to play his life here. He's only 150 points away from that Scarab. Make that 50 as he finds another kill as well. Oh, and can he get the stick? Not going to happen there, but a five kill streak is enough to get him into that Scarab as well. But the setup here. Container Mines is a Big little gunfight. bit weak, you know. It could be a gunfight around the corner. Oh, Zephyr. Timing. timing, exactly. Right place, right time. And Oracle, they're going to have control over the barn hard point. Yeah, Hobie just came back from cross map and cleaned up a couple of Tainted members and brought them with him to the grave. And it looks like we're going to have Tainted coming up through Lemon right here. But Seth is pushed all the way out, and we can hear him yelling right now, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. He is tearing faces. Nimble returns with a two piece. And it looks like we could have a pretty solid Tainted Mines pinch here. Oracle guys spawning middle map. Only two people in the barn right now for them. See what Nimble can do here, coming from the flank. Where is he at right now? Tainted Mines, they finally get a point on the board, but it's not going to be enough. My God, this lead from Oracle is demanding to be something crazy right now. 81 to 2 is the scoreline. Finally, Tainted Mines get a couple more points, but JTEX says no. He says, you know what? This is my hard point game. We are taking this series. We are knocking out the team that everyone thought should have been the second best team at this event. You know, if they can't beat... Oracle, I highly doubt that Tandem Mines has a shot at Mind Freak. Yeah, they have no chance against Mind Freak if they're getting outslayed by the likes of Setsi, JTEX, and Zephyr. Though I shouldn't discount them like that. These guys have been shot up hard here, consistently outslaying these very known slayers on Tandem Mines. Fairly, um, I guess not online warriors, but they're pretty known online to be very skilled. But saying that, Zephyr, two piece right now, 85 to 27. Oracle, complete control of his hard point, but it looks like there's 27, se 27 seconds left. And Tainted is sort of getting the favoured spawns going into this next rotation onto baseball. They have been given them, but they've given them up by pushing mid and they've dropped two players. Potentially another two could go down here. In fact, they will. JTEX again with another two piece. This man is going off. He's on fire. He's absolutely beaming kids across maps and everything. Oh, to find another one. Finally getting shut down from behind. But I feel like Tainted Mines, they're not going to be able to hold on strong enough for Oracle when they finally push this baseball field, uh, sorry, baseball. Looks like Tainted are in a good position here to get some time on the board. They really do need a full 60 off this. They are spawning out pretty deep up on the field, but Skrizen gets a huge two pieces. Definitely needs that damage one shot. Can test his team, uh, his enemy to one shot as well, but he's playing nice and slow here as the health regens up and he cleans up JTAX, the man that's been slaying so hard for his team. Looks like we do have exactly what Tainted needed here. Pick there up huge frags, damage again. Again, one shot, but cleans up Hopi. That last bullet winning in that gunfight. Now we do see Oracle pushing up from blue here. They have good control, or potentially some good control. It's tend to get pushed back a little bit off hard point. And Setsi doing a nice job of waiting for his teammates. Ooh. Gets taken out though. 20 seconds left as we go back to this rotation in middle map. I feel like there, Setsi got a bit of that auto aim uh, aids, if you will, where it's, you know one player runs across the screen and drags your auto aim, even though you're trying to shoot someone behind them. It hurts, man. It hurts, but it's. You know, it's not too much of an issue because Oracle, they do have a very big lead right now, over 50 points. And they're going to be hoping to increase that as much as they can on the train platform here. Damage, he's going to be able to get into this one. He's last alive for his team. All the players from Oracle swarming around him. And they just get straight back into it. Exactly four down, as you said, Kyle. I mean, is there anything that you can imagine Tatum Mars can actually do to get back into this game right um, now? Probably cry, in all honesty. This is pretty sad. Oracle doesn't even care. They're just chasing him and hunting him down, getting kills right now. They were chasing that last hard point to the last five seconds just to really assert dominance. So Tainted has to be grouping up, has to be getting team fights. Uh, I feel like it's got to be all K-bars from them to have to win this fight. Uh, put away those MV4s. Not, no one's fighting at range here. It's just Oracle up in their faces, deleting them. And you can hear them on stage. Sensi is getting rowdy. He loves it, and he is just on fire. Hopi and JTEX both are also on kill streaks. Hopi finally getting shut down there, but JTEX as well can't find that kill on Skrism. So a good two piece from him. But is it going to be enough for any kind of push onto this? It's now a hundred point game. Oracle, they've been able to get 50 points in the time Tainted Mines has got three. I'd like to note on the Tainted's uh, rotate, they gave up the last points on the previous hill to rotate to Barn, and Hopi just like threw himself into the group to try and pick up a frag. Didn't work out, but it's good to see he's at least very confident in his ability. 
damage. Let's see. <laughs> you should he hear just them right now. Him. I wish you could. Damage just got absolutely obliterated. So that's it. He's on a four-kill streak. Going to be playing his life here to get some streaks if he can, and his active camo. Going to push into the hard point. Hopefully, see some something with his scarab. But no, the scarab's just going to blow up in his face. I don't know how that happened. He's going to end that streak, but Hopi says, you know what, doesn't matter if our kill streaks aren't going up on Setsi, I'll get some of my own. So he gets three kills, and now he is on the way towards that Trinity rocket. You can see he's just holding down a tight line of sight. Player contesting him from the side, that's going to be damaged, but in the end, it's going to be JTEX taking him out. His own teammate doing the work for Tainer Mines, but it doesn't matter because JTEX, do he oh. gets kills like that. Well, no, he doesn't get kills like that because Nimble got the smackdown. It would have been the ultimate disrespect just there from JTEX. Oh, yeah. Rotation coming up now. Setsi is going to be in a final little 1v1 here against one of the guys from Tainted. Gets the nade out. Secures the position. It looks like they're just juggling for points here. It could, could be pretty interesting. I like that Skrizen was playing that for uh, potential streaks because he's going to need it. As we go up, 71 to 204. Oracle in the lead. Payload's coming online for both JTEX and Zeppa. I'm so surprised how this is going in Oracle. They are fired up in the booth, so let's have an Astro listen in with them and see where they're at. Big kill, big kill, big kill, let's go, come on, come on, come on, small talk, small talk, what are we doing, hold that, hold that, nice, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm stuck, oh, camera, volley, are you on top, on top of you, on top of you, bussin, 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 JTEX with over 60 kills in a matter of two games. A man is on a mission to prove that Tainer Mines are nothing in the scene that they do not deserve the reputation that they've gained. And through those comms, all we can hear is they are fired up as hell. They are ready to go, and they are ready to destroy Tainted's hopes. Looking at the KDs now, Swifty and Skrizen, both of our two slayers that we picked to be basically destroying faces, are just not really performing anywhere near where we'd expect them to. Look at this, JTEX just constantly getting two pieces every single point on the map. It looks like we have, yeah, Nibble pushing up, taking a little bit of control here. They potentially need to get a fair bit of scrap off of this scrappy middle hill, but Seth is going to say no, shuts down. Boys on the hard point with a two-piece. Okay, still in control here, but they do need to get this rotate off because the next hard point, as we know, Barn can be a pretty juicy money hill, and uh, Oracle can definitely win off of that. They should be able to if they're able to hold it down the way that they were in the first rotation, and you know, even if they hold down the rest of this hard point as they did in the first rotation, they'll get that close. The Tainer Mines will be on the edge and potentially just won't have it in them. I, I feel like they're deflated right now. I, I can see on their faces they're not talking. It's, it feels like a very dire situation for them. It, not only are they disappointing themselves, but they're disappointing their organization that they work so hard to get this team ready for the event. You've got to feel bad for the man, but we're heading into Balm with 20 seconds remaining for Oracle to take the victory here. Tainer Mines, they need to step it up in the last few seconds. They've got 150 points, but is it going to be enough here? They're slowly picking up Oracle one player at a time, but right now it's really not amounting to nothing. They need to get so many more points on this hard point specifically. Lock it down like they've never done in their lives if they want to get back into this game. They're so far behind here. And Hopi and Setsi, JTEX and Zeppa, they are just having a field day out here. Well, boss, we could potentially have a little bit of a game on our hands. We have been talking a bit of smack about Tainted Minds, but they're catching back up now. It's 173 to 236. It looks like no one from Oracle has bothered to hit this rotate just yet. It's going to the last 17 seconds of Barn. Looks like Oracle wants to try and shut it down here, but they're just going to run out of time, and they should be hitting this rotate right now instead of hitting that hard point now because they can no longer win off of it. You would have thought that would be the most advisable situation. It looks like that was JTEX and his teammate in Hopi are going to be doing, setting down for that bike path. 
You gotta be careful because we know how much Tainted Minds, is, how good they usually are at finding those sorts of kills. Nimble just absolutely destroys JTX with a headshot there. But damage, he's gonna find his death as well. I'm trying to find players who are, you know, inside of that hard point. That one's going to be Setsy, and he gets a two-piece there. A big one. He's on a three-kill streak. 32 kills for the man. He is lighting up, and there we go. Tainted Mines, you're going home. 3-1 victory to Oracle. My God, did we expect that? No, we did not. What is that? Tainted Mines, not even, not even top eight. History is written by the victors, and Oracle Esports have just put pen to paper and written us a very nice two-part novella. Can they make it a trilogy, Ooh. boys? What a series. <laughs> Tainted Minds have got to be very disappointed with themselves. They made yeah. it this far. Natural, raw skill only gets you so far. Practice makes perfect. And that's certainly what they'll be needing going into the last chance qualifier. They can't be too disappointed with themselves, but you know those players had high expectations. Oracle will advance Kyle. Break it down for me, man. What happened? It was it, it was all blue. Tainted Minds made a comeback. Where did it go wrong? Oracle just had absolutely zero respect. They got up, I think, like 25 points on the first hard point, and they just didn't care. There were times where I saw Hopi just, like, diving into the middle of them, like, just completely fire out of position. JTEX, again, was like, uh, I saw them fighting on middle map, and he just sort of dove out into their spawn. Could have been, like, a risky flip, but he just flew at them. Didn't manage to get a kill, but it's still that confidence is just insane. James, this tainted lineup, you know, on paper, the potential there is astronomical. They could be a phenomenal squad. Where do they go from here? Do they get back into the ring? Do they get back into training? Do they make a change? What do you see these guys doing? Look, I, I think their raw potential is, is out of this world. It's on another level. You know, I think with a bit of time, they could definitely contest my freak as we, as we take some of the looks at these replays of this last map. But I, I feel like what they need to do is set up for a lot of hard grinding practice before they head over and try and get themselves into the GPL. I'm assuming that's their main aim out of uh, the next couple of months. And then, of course, yes, the last chance qualifier that's going to be in Melbourne. That's going to be so vital if they want to make it to COD Champs. Now, Carl, the next opponent Oracle will be facing is SYF. Do you think they burnt themselves out here? Do they have a lot left in the tank? How much longer can these guys keep up this intensity of play, the screaming of the lungs? You know, how long can they go? And especially if a team like SYF are also quite a vocal squad. Is it going to be a shouting match coming up later? Definitely a shouting match. But I mean, I've teamed with Hopi before, and we've we've lost many a LAN, and he's <laughs> still vocal and bouncing off walls back when we go to the hotel, like at midnight afterwards. So I've got complete confidence in these guys. I think Hopi's just fired up, and this is going to be just the start of a pretty monster run from them today. Well, it was a really, really thrilling series. We saw the first map fall to uh, Tainted Minds in an incredibly convincing fashion on, uh, on Hardpoint. And then after that, guys, it was a, a very a sort of a smooth journey into victory for Oracle. You know, the throwback search and destroy 6-1. We, 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 we did favor Oracle going to that one. But James, you know, the 6-1, that's a very dramatic scoreline. It's... Definitely uh, something that we didn't expect. I, 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 yeah, I thought that Oracle would be able to get, come out on top. That 6-1 line, uh, score line, just it opened my eyes to the potential that these guys have. You know, you've just been in Tainted Minds. You're now going to be going up against SYF once again on the main stage. And th they're so hyped. They're so pumped. They're raring to go. They're so hot as well, especially JTEX. You know, we said that we always talk about Hopi, whether he does well or not so well. I, JTEX has blown me away in the last two maps, at least, even in the Search and Destroy, so influential, uh, amassing something like 70 kills in two maps. What? <laughs> that's a lot of kills. That's a, that's a whole heap of bodies. Now, that's Carl, tell us a little bit about Frost Uplink. I mean, these, this was a 9-6. It was a very, very impressive display initially from Oracle. You know, they came off the gas a little bit when Tainted found themselves again, but is there anything that stood out for you in that game? Um, honestly, it was just the aggression that we saw again in the throwback. They were just constantly pushing up. They made uh, basically first points onto uh, the boys of Tainted Minds. And I think that means a lot coming off of that previous win on the S&D. It just showed that we're still confident going into the next map. And that carried through in every single map. I mean, even the throwback, they were up 81 to 1. Oracle have now been on stage. This will be their third game in a row they'll be playing for us. We saw them take down Error of Apotheon in the first chapter. The second chapter has just been written, and we have a third coming up for you a little bit later on today. You want to stick around and see how that one comes together, guys. But before we do, let's have a quick look at the bracket and see what else has been happening here at CWL Sydney Open number 2. Because let's face it, the drama doesn't end here on the main stage. James, 
We can see already, you know, the game's lining up for us as well. In the in the lower bracket, we've got Regicide versus Validate Brothers. Now, that's going to be another slobber knocker. Who do you peg taking that one? That's that's a very difficult one to call because, you know, Regicide, they're a squad that have shown a lot of potential at this event. They were the ones that knocked down Oracle into the lower bracket. Meanwhile, Validate Brothers, they're all a bunch of highly experienced professionals in our region who just haven't had that consistent practice and might be a little bit out of practice. Who really knows how that one's going to go down? I know that the players on Regicide are grinders, so that should be a close series. Now, Carl, on the other side of the bracket, we, the previous game, sorry, was uh, Validate Brothers versus Empire. Empire had a brilliant run in the competition so far. You can see they took down Sleeper Gaming 3-0. They only fell into the loser's bracket after a very, very closely knit series against SYF, who we'll be seeing shortly later on on the stage. Did you see Empire making it that far? Are you disappointed in their performance whatsoever? Um, not really. I mean, they're a pretty solid squad, and Validate Brothers do have a stronger, sort of more experienced lineup, but I... I, by the way they were playing, I expected probably just a little bit more, maybe a 3-2, take it to map 5 uh, from Empire. So yeah, not too bad, but I mean, expect a win from Validate Brothers. Well, Validate Brothers indeed will be moving on. They'll be taking on Team Regicide in the other side of the bracket, and we have got an absolute gem for you coming up here, guys. It is going to be SYF against Oracle Gaming. Can Oracle continue their run and write that third chapter in the history books here at CWL Sydney Open 2? You'll have to find out after this break. They are favoured in the gunfight here. Wow, what a kill from Nibble. From Oracle, they're all pushing in. He's going to be on Struggle Street right now. He's got to stay alive for his teammate. He gets no another way. one there. He's on. Let's see if they aren't able to find some kills early on here. One player's going to contest. Make that two Nimble. And screws them both nice go down. That's unexpected because these guys on Tainted are all pretty hefty slayers. But JTEX, show him what he's made of. A huge trip. He's <laughs> the drone out and he knows he's got players contesting him somehow gets that hit fire can he turn around wow. for the second one swifty that's the kind of he's playing nice and slow here as the health regens up and he cleans up jtex the man that's been slaying so hard for his team it's like we do have exactly what tainted needed here pick up huge frags damage Come on, David! Come You're going home! 3-1 victory to Oracle, my god. Did we expect that? No, we did not. What is that? Tanny Mines not even not even top eight. History is written. So they're doing very good at uh, betting and trading here. Ludak was just inside the hill there for a little time, trying to get some more up off the respawns that will come. Trappies will go up now, he's got the he's, he's going to try and redeem himself after that last round, picks up all around him, he pushed too aggressive there, too many players focusing up on him, shots will come out, can get to the double! I'm not sure how- Guess what? Rapids on the screen right now, he's going to be coming out this little mid-cut here, finds one player in the back, can he get the second shaky shots, but he'll do it, so a nice two piece from him, but it's not enough, Fighter, he's going to shut him up. Let's see what they end up doing. Shocks like a long roar on yeah, there. Great. It works out. Point. Double kill. And he might find the third in the middle of the map and potentially the fourth as well. Third there. Can he find the statue of APAC and we're the second best team that we can kind of like snake through, I guess. Um, I think we've got like a really well balanced roster. All four of us are really capable of playing all like three game modes at a high level. And we just need to add a few more like clutch factor to our game. I think we've got a complete package. So Our players are just better than theirs, really. That's the, the best way to put it. Our experience, we're more experienced than them. We clutch up when we need to, and if you're not in the land league, um, you're not playing for that big cash, you're not playing against the best teams in the world, you really are sort of irrelevant in a bad way. <coughs> Why didn't the toilet paper cross the road? It didn't have legs to walk. It got stuck in a crack. <laughs> Moving on. What's blue and smells like red paint? I don't know. You're a painter. It's blue paint. How do snails fight? <laughs> they race. They slug it out. They're not slugs, they're snails. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of concert only costs 45 cents? Probably a Justin Bieber concert. No, 50 cents featuring Nickelback. How many South Americans does it take to screw in a light bulb? Seven. A Brazilian. 
Well, let's face it, these guys are absolutely ludicrously good at Call of Duty. And let's stay on board. Josh, can we jump on board with Excite? Can I make a oh, request? Oh, we can do that. Please, Daddy, please. He's got a sniper rifle. Let's see if he makes something happen here. He's... Ooh, I thought he was going to shoot his teammate. Man, I love this game. The, the, the art design of this game is so rad. The way that his teammates look all blue and funky when he's looking at them through his thermal. Ah, I get distracted by the funny little things. Either way, we've got Excite running thermal. He's got snipe. So far, it's a big old push through mid for the boys in green. What I love about this wraparound from Tainted Minds is as soon as they heard that scope out, they're like, look, we can't do B with that line of sight. So obviously the wraparound to A and an insta-plant, but still, Excite gets boost. I kind of wish we stuck on him, but instead he's going to be ripping out the pistol. Let's keep an eye on him anyway. We've seen him pick up a kill with his pistol anyway. He knows where Dens might be as fighter was just from scope out, connects with it, that's the second one from Excite, Buzzer gets damage as well, which means it's all up to Nimble, I'd normally jump on a Nimble right now, in fact, you know what, well, I was going to, but he died too fast, and Mind Freak clutch a vital first round against Tainted Minds, no 6-0 victories for Tainted Minds in this one, Mark. Yeah, they have it, Josh, not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of some certain ages, welcome back to the Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation 4. It is CWO Sydney, Open 2. Whew, and things have been pretty damn sweet so far. Joining me on the desk, it's Big Papa Inman and Naked, fellas. You've been, you've been seeing exactly what's been happening so far. It's been an absolutely electrifying journey. We've been watching Oracle work their way through the lower bracket. We're now in chapter number three of their tale so far. Guys, what have you made of the journey thus far, Josh? Uh, Oracle have definitely been working the bracket all right and uh, manipulating it and contorting it in all sorts of ways to make them come out on top, which is what I love to see. Hopi and the boys, you know, they I think they were a little lackluster yesterday, but naked, they're coming out swinging today. Yeah, I mean, even, even the start of today, the first hard point was very, very slow. I, mean, I think they caught it back. And I think that was pretty much the turning point. You know, they started to heat up, heat up, and in, but during that last series, especially that last game, you could pretty much hear Hopi over everyone else getting really, really loud. JTEC's going huge in the last two maps as well to, to take out Tainer Mines. Well, things have been absolutely wild so far at City Bell Sydney Open number two. But let's have a quick look at what's coming up a bit on later on today. We've got SYF up against Oracle now on the main stage. And after that, we'll be taking care of Loser's Bracket round six. So we've got uh, on the other side of the bracket, I've already forgotten who the teams are now. It's been quite the day. But those two teams, the winners of this one and the winners of the other side, will be meeting each other after this. It is actually going to be Regicide versus Validate Brothers. So once we get the results of that, we will update those graphics later on. The winner's bracket final will be Mind Freak versus Rage Esports, which is going to be wonderful later on. We'll have the loser's bracket final. And of course, the grand final. Because let's face it, we're here for a reason, right, fellas? Let's talk a little bit about Oracle. Because let's face it, that's what all we've been doing today is talking about Oracle and their wondrous journey. This is their third game in a row on the main stage. They've actually invested chairs into the stage. Those, know. Yeah, the, ch the chairs are Paying now... dividends. If you go smell those chairs, it's just like... Hopi, you know, sets of chair, you know, that's definitely Zeppa. Done, they've marked their territory over there firmly. But how long can they keep this run going? Albert, you know what it's like to play in competition, especially games of this caliber, you know. How, what's the endurance like for these boys? Are they going to get tired soon? I think the same thing happens basically in the open bracket at MLG, you know. It's, it's grueling, it keeps going and going and going. I think Hopi would be the only one that had experienced that at uh, Atlanta earlier in the year. So, I mean, the longer it goes on, those more game fives is going to drain them and drain them. They're going to want these three O's, three ones. Otherwise, it's going to really wear them down if they do make it into the finals. Josh, let's talk a little bit about Oracle Esports. You know, your man Hopi's on the squad. Uh, JTEC, Setsy, Zeppa as well. We've talked about him enough today. Is there anything you've noticed in the boys that maybe hasn't been a, hasn't been a standout so far for the weekend for you? I mean, there isn't anything that's really lacking. Hopi, very early in the day, in their, you know, their first match, was a bit slow for me, but he's really picked up the pace. And if he can fire up, get vocal like we know he does, yeah, Big Daddy Hope is going to be leading the charge with the rest of this Oracle squad. They do have quite a fight on their hands with SYF, but SYF have just come off a loss. They're on that, you know, three-map losing streak right now. Oracle, quite the opposite. They lost that first half point, but are now three maps in a row. Feeling pretty good. SYF, we just spoke about them losing. They, they've fallen into the, into the lowest bracket. And this is their lineup, of course. Bakabek, Chilean, Eminence, and Killapai. We saw some wonderful highlights from yesterday. I think I will be hearing myself scream Bakabek at the top of my lungs for quite a while now. It was an amazing run they had in the winner's bracket, but now it has come to an end. They're down here. Now, Albert, mm -hmm. we've talked about momentum, pace, endurance. Oracle have been playing hot all day. 
This is SYF's first game of the day, I believe. How, what, how much of a hindrance is that going to be for them going up against a team that's already sprinting? I mean, especially how they were finishing that last game off and how high they were and how hyped they were. It's going to be very hard to go in very cold, you know, against a team that was pretty much all four of them were firing, firing off, you know, um, I don't know, not insults, but I guess, you know, banter basically during the game and pretty much, you know, warming up and... It's going to be hard to, you know, fire back. You just, your first game of the day, you're just not ready for it. Brick walls can also be cold, Miles, and sprinting into the one of those can hurt quite a lot. And Oracle may just be doing that. This S-Way roster over there in the fiery red. I think they're getting ready to warm up. And you've got to remember, this is quite a stacked roster. These guys have so much experience. Chilean, you know, at one time, sure, we're going back a couple of years, but top five team in the world. And, you know, invisibility is quite the uh, quite the trick <laughs> there as he's, as he's missing from the chair. But... Seeing him back in a second as he's just getting ready to rock and roll, but you know, KP, uh, Eminence, and you know, Backerbeck's out to give him a smack -a as well. So, I am I'm looking forward to this match immensely. Josh, look, the magic is broken. There he is. He wasn't invisible, he was behind the curtain this whole time. Ah, and ah. the movie magic fooled us though, guys. That we talked about, you know, Josh, you're touching on the fact that this is a real star studded squad. These guys have all been to champs in one way or another, they've all competed. You know, as you said, Eminence, top five in the world, man. It was a different game, it was a couple of years ago, but he's still, these guys are, this is a high caliber squad. We don't, I don't think the momentum is going to be too much of a problem, is it? Are these guys going to come into this game? Hard point might be a little bit shaky, but once they get on rails, are, you, are they going to be able to be stopped? Oh, man. Like, I, I think once they're rolling, they're going to be very, very hard to stop. Uh, Oracle are on quite a run right here, but we've got to remember these kind of slayers that you have on, on, on this team. You know, the old El Dios, do not underestimate him. And Bakabek, Naked, we see what happens when that guy's on fire. Yes, we do. Obviously, I you know, uh, got a few big, big kills in, in, in the Mind Freak game, um, obviously, in their last series. But for me, this, this first map is going to set the momentum for the game. If SYF can really shut down, you know, Oracle's momentum as we saw it build and build and build. If they can shut it down straight away, they should be able to take this series. But if uh, Hopi and Co can, you know, keep firing and being so loud and, and bring that onto the S&D, I think Oracle's S&D has been pretty good at times, uh, especially in the, in, at least today. Um, you know, SYF, I remember talking to uh, uh, Eminence about, you know, they got qualifiers in a couple of weeks for, chan uh, for the Stage 2 of the Pro League. And he was worried, you know, our S&D is probably our weak point. And, you know, there's two S&Ds in this best of five. If you don't win that first hard point, it's going to be very hard to win. It's been a weird turn of events here at CWL Seed Open 2 that the respawn game types have been making the biggest differences for these teams as far as, you know, game-changing moments. Josh, when it comes down to the boys in blue, Oracle, you know, they were devastated to have been knocked in the loser's bracket by, by Regicide. Do you think that's played a big role here in the, uh, in the, t in the pain train they're all aboard now? Well, I think the teams they've beaten today are better than Regicide, in, in some, at least in some ways. So I think they've been able to shake that off and really uh, get laser-focused on the job at hand. So I think they've, yeah, really, no, surely yesterday it affected them a bit. Um, I'd like to point out that I totally underestimated their Search and Destroy game up against SYF. I think they're going to have quite a bit of trouble. You know, worldwide, uh, Australians have been known to be great at their S&D game. We've got to remember... Chilean was part of that roster that really gave the hands to the global teams just a couple of years ago with SD. And Chilean, Naked, you've played against him. He's always been great at that search and destroy. And he, with this entire roster, I think is going to be a real challenge. So it's not just the respawns, I feel. Yeah, we always used to mention that Chilean's pretty much never stopped sprinting. You know, he's always the first one in the first engagement. Um, so this game, this game especially, you know, this is a game where, you know, you always got to keep moving. That's where he's so deadly. And he doesn't stop. He will not, like, he won't rotate back. He'll just keep pushing. And you don't expect it sometimes. And that. That different play style, you know, can catch you off guard. And if he's there so quickly, you know, you don't know what to expect. Josh, who's on tilt watch for SYF? Who are you looking for to uh, keep their head cool and not let it get to him if the games go their way for them? Backbeck's got to be like one of the most hot and cold players. You know, if he starts just on this downward spiral, I think he could probably find it's a tough game for him. If he can get out running and, you know, just be really a bull out of the gates, then they've got a good chance. But for me, Backerbeck's the one to watch on that squad. I'm going to say it's uh, Eminence. You know, Eminence can really turn their game on its head. If he can drop 40 kills, you know, in a hard point, and then sometimes he has really slow games. I think at the, at the previous LAN event, he had a, a pretty poor performance for his standard, I'd say. You know, uh, if, he can, if he can pull off a really good performance, you know, he'll leave from the front. Same question for Oracle. They're all playing hot at the moment, but who do you think is going to give way first? I don't even think it's about the kills in the game. If Hopi is loud, the rest of the team will feed off of his momentum. He doesn't need to get kills just to be loud enough. He was struggling at the start of the day. You didn't hear him at all. I was, I was sitting there in the crowd saying, you know, you can't even hear him, even though he's not getting kills. You need him to be loud. He, he's building the momentum for the rest of the team. I would normally say the exact same thing, but I'm going to go straight to Zeppa because the way that kid played his first hard point of the day and really, in my eyes, put the team in the backpack in the slaying department, which they're going to need here, especially on breakout to control this map. I'm looking at him to uh, really 
help lead the charge, and with Hopi sounding the horn, that's just going to make him all the better for it. Loser bracket round five, Oracle versus SYF. Can Oracle write that third chapter in their victory here at the loser's bracket all SYF? Can that one in the back? Josh, naked, take it away. Zeppa is the man we're going to be starting off with. I was shouting him out at the start. K bar in hand going straight towards mid map, and he's going to be the one going into the mid building. Going to get potentially first blood. He does have to fend off that nade, and unfortunately, he will be one of the first to drop, along with Eminence on the opposing team. We've got the El Dios himself over on top mid controlling the points and getting these first points on the board and naked we know this is one of the a really tough spot to hold but if you've got showers control and a man at your back you can actually get a few points here yeah they've already built up pretty good amount of points you know it's usually very scrappy at the start but they've been in control uh chillians you know he was, he was right in there from the start basically and look he's got all the time for his team they're already playing for this second hill already so you know oracle are going to be in the back foot here if they can really uh, if eminence can pick up a lot of these kills in the rotation you know it's going to be a pretty big lead early on Every person I jumped to on Oracle went down except Zeppo, who was trying to get control of mid. It doesn't matter if you're in showers or over in graves, you're going down, and SYF have gone off to a blistering start. They've got 34 points set up for the rotation. Oracle, all they can get is the scraps as we now go over here uh, for the second hard point of this map. And look, Eminence, he's already set up on it, and he's playing this brilliantly, just watching the back. Uh, look, I, I think this is going to be tough for Oracle to break in here. This is a brilliant setup for the SYF squad naked. Yeah, and they're pushing probably the most unfavorable side, you know, if, even if you do get killed, usually um, if you do get killed, the team can still spawn behind you. If you look at the, the mini-map where they're spawning now, they have kept them spawning out, you know, SYF are still spawning in there. You still push that, run, that one side, and, you know, the next wave will come, and you'll still got to run across the whole map to get back into it again. The good thing about cells, though, this second hard point, is that if you do get it locked down, it can be very hard to break into. But as I say that, SYF pick apart Oracle. 20 seconds for the rotation over to Graves. Let's watch Zeppa from Oracle's point of view and see how they're going to try and get in there and set up for this. And it looks like they don't even have a chance. JTEX is going to be at his back, getting picked apart again inside of caves trying to push on out sets and hope he do both pick up kills hope he actually got a two piece three players down for syf they're ahead by a minute already as we only just get to the third hard point over here on graves naked this is tough but we know oracle they can get some momentum behind them even though they're this far behind yeah i was very worried there because this way i've pretty much had the full rotation you know hope he gets a big double and turns it back on its head but jtex really needs to pick it up he was dropping massive kills i think it was 60 between the last two maps just for himself, and he can't afford to go 0-6 uh, to start this game off against a hot SYF team. JTEX is feeling pretty lonely, but lucky Zeppa has his back, and Zeppa picked up two there. JTEX off to a little bit of a slow start, 1-6, and six, same for sets, 2-4, and four. but Zeppa, who I called out, is on a 3, make that 4-kill streak. Beautiful stuff for Zeppa, and this is how you turn it around. If he can stay alive and get that Trinity rocket, which he does, Zeppa is beaming, kids, folks. Oracle could be on the brink of a comeback right here, thanks to this graveyard hard point and some beautiful uh, single-handed performance from Zeppa. But this rotation over to fourth is going to be vital, and I want to keep my eyes stuck to Zeppa. Six kill streak. He's 50 off this lightning strike. He wants to stay alive, and streaks right now could be very, very important for the squad. He needs to watch himself. He might get taken down here. Vital for him to stay alive, and he does! He is now fully streaked out. Zeppa, seven kill streak, and this is why I called him out naked as he picks up his eighth. Yeah, as they've started to build up all these streaks, you know, they're really getting onto their points there, but you can hear them a lot louder than they were in the opening half of this game, and that's why I haven't got a point in over a minute, I think. I mean, look look at Zeppa. He has a teammate one and eight, and he's pretty much just destroying the other team by himself, stopping any push coming in from SYF. I cannot take my eyes off Zeppa. Nine kills streak. JTEX holding down the back wall. You can see you've got Hopi and Sets coming out as well. Hopi's on that three kill streak, and Zeppa's somehow still alive. JTEX racking up all of the points. You wouldn't think over as we went to Graves are a minute behind, and now they're over 20 seconds in front. This is disgusting as Zeppa is on a 10 kill streak. Zeppa is feeling himself, and so am I after that play. What an amazing start for the young kid right here. Finds one in the corner. You can't hide from Zeppa. He's coming at you big. 11 kill streak goes for 12 as well. Drop shots, got nothing. He's going to be dropping them left and right. Zeppa on such a roll right here. We have not seen a personal performance like this so far 
through our CWL Sydney Open 2. Is he done yet? Can he get lucky 13 or will that be his number? He still go and gets the assist and what a run from Oracle as a squad. It was 73 to 10 and now it's 125 to 73. Oracle have got two minutes of time uncontested and it's all to do with Zephyr as he gets 13 and he's still not done yet. Josh, SYF had all these points from the second rotation. They haven't got a point since and we're almost back onto the second one. Oh, stop it. He got 14 before he went down. 18 in 8. Zephyr, my gosh, you're now my mum. Happy, happy Mother's Day, Zephyr. Beautiful stuff there. Meanwhile, JTEX, he's either fallen asleep at the sticks or he's just jaw-dropped at his teammate's performance. I can believe either as Oracle at putting the stomp in right here. He finally gets off the breadstick. JTEX, welcome to the game. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty unusual to get it rack up about 120 points consist uh, consecutively and your teammate not get one kill in that whole amount of time. I mean, back down to the uh, cell block and now Oracle have taken it back over. This is looking grim for SYF after an amazing start. JTEX, he may be lagging behind, but he does have the majority of the time for the Oracle squad. Now, now, now they are ahead by more than a minute naked. I have to confess, I don't think I've seen such a, a, a black and white flip. Like, it's night and day. We saw that uh, SYF were two minutes in front, and now you've got Oracle ahead by almost a minute. That's just insanity. You wonder what the score would be if uh, JTEX managed to pick up, you know, four or five more kills even, you know, even, even had a 0.5k to eat. Or is it that Zeppa's just getting all these kills? And even Hopi, I think we, we didn't even notice that. Hopi's on 17 and 10. He's only one kill behind Zeppa. Hopi, that was uh, a great performance by him. I think we saw him on about a seven kill streak. But when we saw 14 out of Zeppa, I just, I think I lost my mind. But you've got streaks coming out of SYF and you could be seeing another comeback as well. The El Dios, he's got two in a row. The Scarab as well as three are pushing through caves. He's got them lined up. Will they be the ducks in a row? You can see they're just prone and down, trying to get their positioning right. Hope he's one of them inside the caves. We'll jump over to his POV. He gets the assist on one, gets dropped. Three players down from Oracle though as Chilean picks up another two before being dropped. Killer Pie racking up the points for the SYF squad. They're within 20 seconds of Oracle and it's now make or break. Zephyr from his beautiful performance earlier still has that bombardment up his sleeve. We'll expect to see that a little later on, potentially even on the fourth hard pointer as we rotate back to mid. Eminence holding down the last 10 seconds of this hill. We're getting set up for next, and Zappa, he's going on a tear again. Two kills so far. I'm holding you to a high standard now, buddy. I'm expecting at least 22 in a row. SYF ate a lot up here, but what was really effective for them was uh, pretty much Oracle burnt out three of their score streaks they managed to land. So not only did they catch back up with time, you know, they burnt out that pretty much advantage that might help them win the game in the later moments. Zeppa, three kills, going for four, spots the one in the corner, beautiful reaction timing, he's going to be going down though, JTEX, 4 and 19, rough game, but he's the objective player for the squad, picking up the time, which is what it's all about, 10 points separating this team, and SYF are coming back in, they've, br they've brushed aside the blood coming out of their mouth, and now they're going back into the ring, and what a fight this is turning out to be, the entire SYF squad sticking together, coming in here to try and take the lead once again. They did for a split second before Oracle comes out once again. JTEX along that wall run, trying to back up his team. We've got 13 seconds to the rotation towards mid. Eminence is going to be fighting along mid as well, just outside of showers. And look at this. He's on the hunt for the player. Going upstairs, spots him, helps get to the kneecap on the assist. Now over to the rotation. Oracle in front by 20, but SYF should be in control of mid. Yeah, um, SYF has done a pretty good job controlling mid off the first rotation. I mean, the second rotation has almost been all SYF, uh, uh, really. Uh, Oracle still have a narrow lead. Zeppa does have some score streaks still saved, and I think that'll probably come out on the third hard point. Oh, he's bringing it out now. We'll take a look and see if that can do anything. I would have definitely saved that for the third. I think that's they, they've misused all of their score streaks so far, and they really could have you know, put this game away. I really think the exact same thing. That should have been used a lot more better. However, Zeppa. He's still alive, 25-16 right now, SYF though, only five points behind and this is a really, really close hard point. 20 seconds left, so we're still going to be seeing contesting on this mid. And of course, you want to try and get those spawns over for cell block as well, which it looks like SYF do have the advantage right here naked. Yeah, I hope he uh, also dropped off as well. I mean, he was 17 and 10, he's now 19 and 19, so he's died nine times to two kills. Um, you can obviously see with, uh, see with JTEX, you know, he's, he's been pretty slow as well. Without Zephyr right now, you know, where, where would they be? They, I think they'd be very far behind. 
Chilean's watching the back wall run. You've got Hopi trying to get aggressive. They're challenged as well from behind, and that was going to be Sets coming in. Sets, he got the flank, and now that's going to allow Hopi to come along this wall run. He does get taken down. JTEX is pushing the cell as well, finds one. Sets is at the rear, gets the assist, so they clean that one up. Great little trade there from both teams. Zeppa coming out on top, though. He picked up a couple before being dropped, but Sets with the drop shot on back of back. Down he goes. Three in a row here for Sets and Oracle. They're going to be about half a minute away from victory here here as SYF are one point off hitting the 200 club here. Yeah, if uh, Oracle managed to hold this uh, the whole time, they'll only be one point off winning. So, you know, any, any break at all, you know, SYF can't afford it. And they're pretty much streaking away here. Just over 30 point lead. Pretty much picking up all the kills. So I'm assuming streaks will probably come out. And they've got the next rotation as well at the moment. So they've really got to worry SYF here. They've got to do something. Well, El Dios does have that Trinita rocket up his sleeves. And with Oracle in control, you should be seeing them come out. They have to hold down this next rotation. He's got the support of his teammates. I think it would have been a great opportunity to use that Trinity. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. And Oracle come out on top here on the breakout hard point. 250 to 199. And I just want to say a 14 kill streak to Zephyr. That's got to be one of the best individual performances we've seen all weekend. Oracle, they are certainly the authors of their own destiny. They've got one in the bag, fellas. What a way to do it as well. SYF, they came out so hot. What happened? I think Zeppa happened pretty much. I hope he came in for a bit in the middle, and then, you know, Setsy really fired up right at the end. It was pretty funny actually seeing that. You look at JTEX's reaction. He, he wasn't too happy. He was like, I don't know what I did then. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. JTEX went triple negative, but he did get two minutes on the clock, you know, and that's 120 seconds, almost half of the time in the hill, so you can't complain with that, Miles. Look, let's talk a little bit about Zephyr. We've talked about him enough. He was a juggernaut. He was a celestial being, 14 in a row. It is probably a record, Josh, at least on this stage. I mean, the highlights are going to be very, very Zephyr friendly. But again, look at the score at the beginning. SYF up by such a huge amount to start with. The first two hard points were all them. Albert, where did it fall apart for them? You said Zeppa, but really, was it because they were losing those engagements? Was it because Zeppa was cutting off the pushes? What was going on? Uh, I mean, he, he, he pretty much cut everything down for about two consecutive, maybe even three consecutive hard points. You know, he was just he was pushing with no respect, basically. knew he was going to win his gunfights. Uh, I didn't like the, uh, the, the score streak management, really, you know. Not even the fact that they didn't get any kills. The times they chose to use them weren't really very effective or, you know, they used them and they had no players there to kind of take advantage of them. You know, you, you bombard men out and the other players will kind of move to you and, you know, you can just pretty much aim up and they still didn't even get those trades and I felt like, you know, that could have been a lot easier for them. They, could, they made it hard on themselves. Josh, not to be outshone by Zeppa. Hopi also picked up a ton of kills for his team and he had a Trinity Rocket as well. What do you think of his um, streaks management? You know, he got a couple more kills with it. The timing seems to be a little bit better for him. Yeah, the timing seemed to be a little bit better. The experience showed with Hopi and he did follow up with I think it was a seven kill streak of his own following Zeppa as we see here during the replay Zeppa just on a tear and you can see just up on the scoreboard hope he was up there on six six it was beautiful from, from both sides I think the real issue from SYF was just short they were just getting out slayed you can tell by the scoreboard everyone was negative except for KP killer pie he got tw he went 23 22 and you know we hype up SYF and the, the power that uh, this roster provides they just the raw sheer gunslaying ability from the squad it didn't turn up in this map and uh oracle just really flipped syf on their head and you wouldn't have thought it after the first couple of rotations albert we talked a little bit about kp killer was slaying that one he really did have a good performance you know throughout the entire weekend chilean though hit a seven kill streak helping his team get into that one do you think he played a major role in keeping the score together uh the very 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 start basically when they got that massive lead that was pretty much all of chileans being really aggressive i think you know he held down that middle part they rotated first when Eminence got there. He pretty much, you know, held Oracle so far back that even if they managed to get one or two kills, they still had to run across the map. And, you know, they had a perfect spawn right back into jail cells. And then right near the end when it was looking a bit grim, you know, Chilean was close to those score streaks. But, you know, you can use the score streaks, but your player is still not actually actively in the hill. You know, it's not going to really help when you only can afford to give away one or two points before you lose. Oh, good God. Josh, where the hell do we go from here, man? Search and destroy between these two teams. Oracle firing that hot. But SYF, they're a dark horse here. We're going into Crusher. They've played before. We've seen them play s &D before. They're a little hit and miss, but they can definitely turn heads. Is it too much to ask against Oracle? I. It's not too much to ask. But I'm, I'm just going to steal your words. Like, where do we go from here? Because I, I honestly don't know. You know, yesterday, if you asked me about Oracle, I would have said, uh, you know, they would have got a. Uh, they would have just 
got pooped on, really, by SYF in the S&D. But after the way we've seen them perform this morning and the way SYF, I don't really know if their head's in the game after that loss, after they had such a dominating start. I, I question it. I really do question it. I, I don't know where we're going to land, though. We saw Oracle play this uh, map today, actually. I remember Setsi got that 1v3 where he accidentally... Um, <laughs> did his uh, taunt yes. instead of Finland But the S&D looked really tight, so, uh, you know, this map especially, I, I can't go past Oracle after watching that map. Now, yesterday we did see SYF clutch up a couple of us searching his destroy rounds. It was, of course, Backerbeck. You know, things were looking on Trackerbeck. Maybe he was on Crackerbeck. <laughs> oh, he's giving fools the Wackerbeck. Is he going to take any Flackerbeck in this series, boys? And give Oracle the Smackerbeck? Yeah, you think he can? I think he can. I wrote those down during Racked the last <laughs> A lot of heads shaking in the crowd. <laughs> we enjoy it though. We enjoy it though. Fellas, here we go. So you're giving it to Oracle. I mean, any predictions going to this one? I don't like predictions. I think it's kind of dull to just put numbers on things, but... I think a team will win. Albert, no truer words have ever been said <laughs> on this desk. Uh, look, I'm going to go with a prediction anyway. I reckon it's going to be uh, Oracle 6-4. 6-4? Well, I like that, actually. I'm going 6-2 Oracle. 6-2. I think Oracle, if they win one or two rounds straight away, it's, it's GG. Well, there's not a lot of love in the red corner on this stage. Fellas, this is going to be, I think, make or break for SYF. If they can win the S&D, I think they can turn the mentality around. What do you boys think? Can they, can they beat Oracle in an uplink, though? Uplink's been so strong for them, Josh. Uh, yeah, I mean, uplink has been so strong for them. I hope SYF can turn them around. Otherwise, you know, but the way Oracle has been playing, I think they're going to kick them right in the sack of back, to be honest. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Okay. I got nothing. I got nothing. That Had was a great. big night. Your breath. I think you need a bit, bit of a tic tac effect. Tic tac effect. Albert, you got anything? You got anything? No, I've got no more. You got nothing. No, you're good. No, I want to keep my friends. <laughs> well, guys, we're almost ready to get into this one. Mm. It is losers bracket round five. Everything to play for here. We've got Oracle up by one. They took the hard point in a very, very enjoyable, dramatic fashion. Going in a search and destroy now. Everything to play for. We've had our predictions. There's a lot of blue in the predictions, not enough red. That's why I'm not getting the love here so far, but I think they can pull it out. There's a lot of magic on that side of the stage. We've talked about their accolades, their experience. Can they harness that here in I knew, Maniac? I knew naked. it was you spinning around the camera all yesterday. I knew it. It was always you. <laughs> Fellas, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I knew it. take us into this one gently, but very firmly. Because I think this one's going to be a very bumpy ride. I do like doing things gentle yet firm, Miles. Just so you know, I'm there. We're going to be getting into this one. SYF kicking things off on the attack. And this is going to be a great match for sure. No matter who is going to take the W in this one. And I want to start this one off with the one and only back of Eck. And uh, look, he was, uh, he was part of, of, of our, a bit of fun that we just had prior to the match, which I really enjoyed, guys. Eminence, though, he's going to be picking up a kill on Hopi. Bakabek follows it up with another one, which actually leaves JTEX all alone. He had a slow match in that hard point. Let's see if he can form some kind of 1v3 miracle here in the Search and Destroy neck. Yeah, he really needs to bring it back a bit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he needs to really start off really well. Um, can't afford to you know, give away some more uh, kills, really, and... Let them build up on their score streaks early. I really feel like if you know you win the first one or two rounds and you get ahead on those uh, score streaks or payload management, basically, you can really start the streak away with a few wins. You can indeed. It's not going to start there though, as Oracle are eliminated. Syf taking the first round here on the attack for their search and destroy. Crusher, one of those maps where you can uh, really get these rounds get away from you. Oracle may need to watch himself after losing that first round, but very, very early days, and we'll see what Oracle themselves can now do on the attack. Hopi, you can guarantee he's going to get up in close, up close and personal with the SYF squad. He's got that ERAD out, charging straight over into this A bomb site. Yeah, you know, they've completely missed each other here. Hope he's going to go for a big rotation here. And I mean, he might catch himself off, but he won't. You know, they're planning, they're already getting pretty much set up to, you know, kind of defend this. And look at the fourth man push from uh, the flank, you know. They're actually quite tuned on to it, I guess. You know, you can, you can pretty much read this. Hope he's in a good spot here, but he doesn't want to get taken out here because, you know, you don't want to give them a 4v3 advantage. You can see here Chilean's ready down mid-street just to keep an eye out on what's going on. All four players here from SYF 
wrapping around and Bakabek going to be leading the charge in here. He's got his teammate coming up the stairs trying to get some shots out. Usually you expect one player behind it. He won't check it. He should be caught out here. They're actually going to team up. You can see that player did get the jump. That was going to be Sets who actually picks up a nice kill there, leaving one alive. That's going to be Killer Pie. He needs to get the 1v2 and the defuse. Player right in front. He's going to miss it and Oracle respond in kind after that first round. Beautiful stuff. 1-1. One, one. That is how we start things off and uh, look, both attacking rounds too naked, which you, you know, generally speaking, broadly speaking, it's generally the, 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 uh, the defensive rounds that you'll see some early wins on, but good to see both teams getting very aggressive on their attack and able to take a couple of wins. What worried me there for SYF is, you know, they knew no one was pushing that B side. You can, you can tell when someone's pushing B, they don't play it passively, they play it aggressively, so it took so long in the flank, by the time they even got into the door, the way they just ran into them, they only had 25 seconds left to kill four people and defuse a bomb. It was, it was never going to happen, they took way too long to rotate. Chilean and Bakabek both getting aggressive here up against Oracle. Eminent's going to be coming uh, up the back with that uh, with that objective. Of course, they've forced Oracle right back, and you can see where they're positioned all around the outside of A. That bomb's going to be going down. The timing's about right for Hopi to push on in. He goes straight to the bomb, and is this going to be a ninja? Yeah, we well, need to watch this. We're watching people running. attack through the and middle here, basically. Right. Shots are ringing out. He needs to watch himself. Oh, he doesn't know that he actually could have got that, but it doesn't matter. Three players are down. There goes the fourth, and now you're going to see the defuse. Beautiful stuff there. And uh, Sets is going to get that, as he's going to get his Scarab for the trouble as well. I would have liked the Ninja, but it just wasn't it's required. It's pretty far into that active camo very early. So, you know, that's going to be very, very useful. I mean, probably in the later rounds, as I said, if you can win the first two or three rounds in a row and streak away and get it early, you also have a chance of getting it a second time. No, that, that's incredibly hard, but, you know, He's got bomb plants and he's got diffuser ready to in his name. It makes it much easier for him. Oracle getting two rounds in a row in a good position here. They got the upset victory in the hard point. Now looking for, not really an upset, but looking for another win here on this search and destroy. And I uh, hope he's actually off to a, a great start here in this search and destroy. He's got four and two. And he's planting the trap here in mid. This actually could be some, some brilliant positioning here for him naked. Yeah, especially uh, if you, I was worried he was going to lose that gun fight there for a second. Gets away, hopefully he needs to stay alive here because he doesn't want to drop that advantage that they've already got. You know, they can really build with it and at least trade out to get this round. And a 3-1 advantage with people almost already onto payloads, you know, you, you really start to streak away and pretty much put the other team behind. Did you see how well he knew his timing as well? He got the kill instantly through the nade down tunnel just in case there was that player pushing through. Really love that kind of performance. So great stuff from him. We did see that JTEX did for Oracle. You can see they do have the bomb down. Only 175 away from Trinity, Trinity Rocket here too for sets as he has been the objective player for the team. You can see some shots were ringing out from Zephyr as he found Chilean over on the opposing side here. One player pushes in, going to be tagged up with sets. And the other side, Killer Pie does take down a Hopi player point blank. They do trade out now. It's up to Killer Pie all alone. He gets dropped. Oracle with three rounds in a row, halfway to victory in this map. This is beautiful gameplay right here, Naked. Yeah, I love the idea that they're actually giving sets, you know, the diffusers and the plants, especially since he has active camo, getting a lot of kills as well. You know, he can really build it up so early and pretty much start to capitalize. I mean, I'm, he's probably going to be one kill or a diffuse off it, you know. He's going to get it so early, he can start to really put a dent into this uh, SYF team and go up 2-0 almost. Looking at these teams on paper naked, I would not have expected this series to unfold the way it has. And what an entertaining series it has been. I mean, been. all we can, look, look, look at the teams on paper, and do you expect to be where we are right now? No. I don't think anyone would have picked, that, picked pretty much 50% of the results. Hashtag caught IW. That's what's going on right here. And on land, you never know what's going to go down. You can see Eminence is going to be trying to get this plant down. And he's going to be, oh, I thought he was going to be eating a scarab, but he's able to get that bomb down. Great stuff there from the SYF squad. Now let's have a look at this from Oracle's point of view. Setsy, he's going to be pushing in. Indeed, he'll follow his teammate in. Shots out. He actually backs up into that nade, but able to stay alive. Zephyr, the first to fall. Hope he's gone out with his ERAD. Tries to get two. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. JTEX on the wall run. Meanwhile, Setsy evens things up. Let's go back over to JTEX. Got to find a player. Oh, he actually gets outgunned. So do his team. So does his teammate. Given the positioning, I, I thought he would have had it, but the player in prone just uh, had his number. If he managed to get that first, uh, that kill on Killer Pie, which is so close, I'm pretty sure he picks up this one on Eminence, who's you know not even facing him. Uh, it's probably a chance that you know could you were up pretty early. You probably pop your camera there. You could probably get the round and have a chance. You know, even if you lose a few more rounds, you probably probably end up getting it back later on in the game. 
Alas, it was never going to happen. Now you've got sets here. He does that active camo that you mentioned, Naked. They only have one round advantage. You can see a huge stack over here towards A. Back of X is going to call that out to his teammate. And you can see on the minimap, they all come collapsing back. Killapai is going to go rushing in through along that top catwalk. You can see that nade out naked. Interesting enough, they swapped the bomb plan at Hopi, you know, to build those payloads up. So it's very good that, you know, they're, they're playing the right way for it. Oh my god, Seth is just going to come in behind. They know he's there, though. If he gets both of them, oh. no, he doesn't. So Could have been utilized a little bit Definitely needed two there. Definitely needed two. I mean, now they're dropping another death here. They really need to stay alive. 30 seconds. Hope he's probably going to get traded out no matter what here. Which that he does. And now it's a 1v2 situation for Zephyr. I mean, if, if anyone's in this situation, you probably want it to be Zephyr after the performance he's had. But I think... Is that bomb being refused right now? No, 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 no. They're not on it yet. You think he's gotten away from this? Oh. Oh, if he gets in there, he's, he's done it. He's got it. Wow. And he gets his payload. Wow, I, I just didn't want to say anything in case anyone heard anything because that was who, who, that was intense. Who was it that wrapped up that round? Oh, Zephyr. I just didn't uh, didn't want to have to say his name again. The kid has been nuts today. I mean, a lot of that, you know, Setsu did really good. He could have pretty much got three. There was three in there that he got by, and they they saw him. So you know, it's a very tight situation. I don't think it was a great use. He did get a kill. You know, they got they went down on numbers there, and you know, that's all right. Zephyr's all right. Zephyr's alive. We'll get Not it. Not just a bag of nuts. Not a crate of nuts. He would have to be the whole factory of nuts actually been really really entertaining to watch oracle oh the scope out here for hope the hope scope coming out he's got two surely third time's a charm sure oh it's third time the charm while stunned up it don't matter son he's taking faces now he's going to be peeping out as well he does have that reactive armor just watching this from eminence they're going to be going far far away from that scope as soon as you see one tagged up it's like you know a little puppy yelps and they just start running back <laughs> They get hurt by that. And I don't blame them, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, that's why I really need to do something. I mean, it's, it hasn't looked crash hot. The rounds they won haven't been very convincing, I'd say. You know, it's a lot of 50-50. But Oracle looked really clean. I mean, we said we said they've been looking clean this weekend. Uh, their S&D looked very clean on this map before. That's why I was pretty confident picking it. I um, mean, you know, it's looking very grim again. 1v4 situation for Killer Pie. They've got no uh, payloads built up for the next round. Pretty much, you think Oracle will be, we'll be able to close it with those advantages. Surely they close it up. Now, actually, I think you predicted a 6-2 naked. Oh, nice one. Nice one. If it goes down that way. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> just happy to be here? That's it. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm a little concerned for SYF. I'm not going to lie naked. Where do you come back from this, really? I mean, you go into the uplink. You could win that. The s &D hasn't looked any good. The hard point did look good. But where is your momentum at? I'll tell you where it's at. It's in Oracle's boot camp. They've been going really, really well. Uh, now you can see this big stack over here towards uh, this A bomb site, and you can see these shots ringing out. Nice kill here. Sets picks up two. Sets, my man. 2v3 uh, situation right here. Killer Pie and Bakabek. Killer Pie is going to be caught out. He goes down. Bakabek, the 1v3, goes for one. It's not going to happen. Oracle with the 6 2 victory in the search and destroy. They're up. 2-0 in this series after what was a super impressive hardpoint comeback as well. And what a game, what a series, what a tournament here at the CWL Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. Miles, I mean, we're, uh, we're all spitting chips. As, uh, they're good chips. <laughs> they are good chips. Damn, you want they're good chips. Oh, good, man. I've seen Josh iron it off. He wanted that snack a bit. It was actually... <laughs> <laughs> Eo, this on, guy, man, this guy, so anymore, this gonna, guy. I'm welcome gonna, to the party. I'm gonna get the sack of back after this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best event I've ever been it's to. It's pretty good in my entire life, oh, hands down. Mean. Pretty much. I had like a sort of like pseudo epic line about nails and coffins, but screw that, man. What a round! <laughs> oh goodness gracious me! Is this it? Is this the end for SYF? Can you stop Oracle right now? It's a cliche. It's losers bracket run. They're untouchable. Once you get hot, you can't be stopped. Once you pop, you can't stop, etc., etc. Well, but right now, it, it seems that way. It really does seem that way. I mean, Oracle, they came out firing. They got the gun off the racker back, and they're firing it straight towards SYF. Oh, oh yeah. That's, this is... Oh, we should keep these. We should keep we these. We should keep all of these. Out Every of single person in the audience just shaking their head. Keep you know them what? locked away. And never, may never mention this day again. Gator's going to gate, man. Albert, we talked, uh, Carl and I talked briefly about Hopi's performance in S&D. Scopey came out, right? So with a bit Hope of... Hope Scope was out. And this, look at this shot. We're about to see it. He, he, got, um, he got tagged up by that tactical, and then he uh, still managed to pull off a shot somehow. There it is, in slow-mo. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Now, Albert, we I'm not going to lie, it looked questionable, but I'm okay with the scope. That's okay with that. Um, Albert, we talked about this a bit before. 
Hope he's got a weird strategy now in SD where he plays each round very, very differently. Occasionally the snipe comes out. It's not some. I, ha I hate to use the term random, but he's quite erratic in his playstyle. Do you think that's really helping him out here? Do you think that was a key to victory? Unpredictable is very good. I mean, that map, you know, you can kind of guess, you know, it's going to be four stack here, four stack there, which is pretty much what it was every round. But, you know, him going out there with the scope and the other guys going somewhere else. You know, you don't expect it, especially if you've seen action at the other bomb site and you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to push around and the scope can pretty much hit you in one shot, you know in, you know, you would never get those kills with an assault rifle or an air raid or something like that. So, for me, especially looking at, like, the next maps coming up, I just can't see SYF winning in SND. Based on what, as I said, I spoke to Eminence, the evolving confident in their search and destroy. I mean, they're pretty newly formed with Kelepi as opposed to having Fate in the team. Uh, and Oracle's SND has looked really good. Yeah, Fate's sitting in the winner's bracket finals as well, so sometimes team changes don't exactly go the way you planned. We talked about confidence. Confidence being the key word here. Round three, we saw Hopi on his belly etching close to that diffuse that's the game winning play because ultimately you know they heard you could hear the call from the from the players on the stage the bomb 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 he's on the bomb he's on the bomb and they all jumped you know, out they all jumped out confidence seems to be one of the key ingredients to oracle's success what could take them out what can peg them off the top of that confidence mountain oh really it it has to be someone being loud and for me it's it's going to be chilians now because when he was firing at the start of that game they were so good and he didn't have a great search and destroy but if he plays his own game he, he's very very loud it's pretty much I'd say he's one of like Hopi's rivals for, for you know banter and loudness, and they need it. They're, they're, they're quiet. They need it. Josh, you've watched SYF the team, the players for so long now. Is there anyone on that squad that can get out of this hole? It's a deep, dark, miserable hole to be in. Two nil down in the loser bracket. Can they get out of this one? I think because we're heading into an uplink and it's a do or die uplink, they're going to be really heavily relying on Eminence. Um, we, they need his slaying ability, they also need his smarts, his objective ability has always been great in uplinks, um, and you know, he's always been able to, to bring a squad, squad together. When we go to listen-ins, which I'm sure we will here throughout this game, you'll see that generally speaking, he's the composed one trying to be the playmaker, and if people are raging, he's the one who try to keeps everyone's head in the game. So Eminence is going to be a key player for me, and as Nick has already highlighted, Chilean needs to come out with all guns blazing. Naked, the Cinderella story continues for Oracle. Is the slipper going to fit once more here on Precinct? Or do you see SYF pulling out something pretty magical and ending that dream at midnight? I mean, with the momentum the way it is, you know, you'd think Oracle would roll over. But the, the first one or two minutes will pretty much dictate the rest of the game. I feel, you know, whoever's loud and keeps, keeps the momentum going should win. That's pretty much what COD is about. And I think people really underrate how much, you know, being out confident is what you were saying, basically. When you're loud, you're confident. And that's what's going to win their team a game. Josh, question for you. I asked it to the previous casters on the desk. Who needs the hug on SYF right now? Who needs the hug on SYF? Yeah. I think they need a hug. They all need a big group hug. Uh, I, yeah, I think they all need a bit of a, of a group hug, to be honest. I'd probably agree with Naked right there. I mean, if I gave it to anyone... Uh. If, if you look over there, I mean, Chilean's is one barking orders there. I don't think he's even the team captain, and that's, you know... You need your captain for barking orders, really. Well, let's see if these dogs can keep on barking. Oracle are one game away from moving onwards here. CWL Sydney Open number two. Things are getting spicy. SYF with their backs to the wall here. They absolutely must win this uplink to continue their tournament dreams. In a matter of moments, gents, we're going to find out. Predictions have been laid. Hugs will be delivered. We've dropped enough back of jokes for a lifetime's worth. But have we? You want any more? I think there's some more. There's definitely I'm pretty some sure more. there's some more in the tank. Like, for example, no one would have called this. Anyone would say that Oracle have Hackabex. You know, yeah. something close like that. The wall Hackabex. They might give him the Dakabek. Kick back at the end of the day with a fat Yakabek. <laughs> 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 oh, there's more. There's more. Just when you think we're all done. I thought we were spending the Yakabek. That's my favorite so far. Now <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Here we are, guys. Matter of seconds before we get into this one. Any last minute, any last minute calls out, but you know, you're pegging SYF to drop this one. Again, first two minutes, going to dictate the pace. If Eminence can get out there screaming, Chilean can go beast mode. He is El Dios after all. First, Otherwise, first kill wins the game. First kill wins the game? That's a really bold prediction. It's 50 50, sir. Josh. I can't, I can't, <laughs> it's not that bad odds. <laughs> Josh, Oracle, the first runs. point wins the game. First point, well, maybe. If Oracle, uh, if they can, if they lose this here, do you see them continuing the streak, or do you think they'll collapse? You know, they're tired, man. It's been a long day for them. They're no, playing, no, they're playing on on like 110 percent. If SYF win this, they can very much turn it around. I can easily see it going through to a game five. Um, it's yet to be seen. I'm just so surprised. You know, talk to me at the beginning of this competition and say that this throw to, to get the squad of, of young talent, Hopi, Zephyr, Sets, and JTEX are going to be taking down the monsters, Chilean, Eminence. 
kill a pie and then back a back, it's just, it blows me away. Well, they have the biggest hit list right now. They've taken down some of the best in the tournament so far. And I don't think they're quite finished yet. Will Oracle continue the run? Or can SYF Gaming finally knock them off that perch? Here we go, boys. Take it away. I reckon Chilean's going to be starting off hot to trot. So let's watch him off the break. You can see he's going to be finding one just past Statue. Going in, getting this flank. And in fact, he's actually going to be going down for his troubles there. Hopi going to be doming him for that. Killer Pie just going to be watching it up here from the tickets building. And you can see he's going to be almost eating an aid as a couple of players dancing around Statue. Naked off the break here. I mean, it's a little rough for SYF. It's three players now down. But Killer Pie just trying to stop any form of run from Oracle. But you can see Sets is now going to get set up in that forward position. Yeah, there's actually two of them getting ready to try and, you know, kind of get those points in there. Sets does pick up the opener. JTX will get one. We'll get two. There's going to be first points for sure coming out of here. And it looks like it'll be a two-pointer how well they're set up. And SYF really probably right, at, right now at this point need to just go over to the uh, the drone and basically get ready for the next rotation I mean if they stopped it wow that was an impressive stop wow. you gotta be honest that was wow. uh, desperation from SYF that came out but fortunately for them it paid dividends and eminence is gonna be getting these tacticals out and he does tag them up doing in stuff back of it gets the kill on JTEX Zephyr and sets both beaming though which is great stopping any kind of SYF push chilling trying to get mid-map control as that drone is still out. Um, the spots player in the corner, picks up the kill there, and it's a nice start, but pretty much everyone here, it looks like a very even run. Zeperon is on a two or three kill streak before being dropped by the LDLs himself. Over here, he's got this forward position as well, which they are throwing the drone forward, which does look good for SYF, you have to admit here. Killer Pie, he's going to be in a uh, decent position until he was blown to smithereens. Eminence, though, there should be at least one point. It's good for it. SYF first on the board. So I, I guess there's my prediction now, Hit. I'm going to be betting that uh, SYF uh, are going to win. Oracle actually got the first kill, so I think you're leaning to, uh, towards Oracle. That's Is that how right. we're going? Yeah, I think Oracle definitely, I mean, they screwed up their first uh, their first possession. They should have had a two-pointer pretty easily. I mean, they should get one or two here, which they will get two, and that's really good for them to, to bounce back. But, you know, they didn't let it, it phase them. They, they pretty much 99% of the time should have converted that to even one point last time. They didn't get it. You know, it hasn't phased them. They let one in. They turn it back with a two. Killer Pie, we're going to be on with him right here after Oracle did a very nice uh, run with that drone and they were able to go through for uh, for that two-point play. Eminence making the run. He doesn't have the support of his teammate, though, so he's going to be throwing that drone forward and just trying to maintain mid-control, snaking his way through the map. Killer Pie jumping on out and <laughs> running right into three members of Oracle. Sets goes down. Hop Hopi goes down as well. JTX and uh, himself, actually, after Zep goes down, will be the only ones left alive. SYF with a golden opportunity here. Yeah, definitely. First uh, real good scoring opportunity, I'd say. You know, they're off respawn here. Three or four of them back up now. I mean, they're just playing it very passive, and I'm not sure if that's going to work in this game type, especially, you know, against people like uh, Zeppa and that who've been so aggressive in your face that you can't really afford to sit back because you're going to get punished with a four down there. All four players down, as you just mentioned, and now we're going to be seeing it. Oracle try and make some kind of push up here. Hopi outside the window, he's going to be taken down. Sets and Zephyr trying to get some kind of semblance of a run. Zephyr, he should go down after being tagged up over in the statue here. Should be easy pickings for an SYF. In fact, tell you what, eat my words, because Zephyr is going to be blasting them. Picks up two kills before dying. Hopi and JTEX go down, though, so Sets left all alone here in that forward position surely this has got to be a couple of points on the board yeah it should it should at least be a one if not a two does not get intercepted so you know i think a big big error there from um from oracle you know sets he was up far which he did the right thing and his team just didn't pick up the right amount of kills and you know it, it didn't pay off because he was so far away he couldn't even stall the push that last throw did you think there was an opportunity there to go through for a two or did you like the one point play i love the one point play you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take so take one <laughs> <laughs> Nice work, and they do tie things up there with that throw. SYF and Oracle, both of them are playing for their tournament lives throughout the series, but of course, with Oracle up 2-0, all the pressure is on them, and they're going to be uh, trying to make a move here, but they need to stop Chilean as he's going to be thrown out, and that's a beautiful two-point play. SYF lined that up perfectly, and once they uh, switch sides in the second half, I'm kind of feeling worried for Oracle right now. Yeah, well, Oracle are going to do exactly what they did uh, last time they you know, had a scoring opportunity. They're going to look close to get another two-point, and it does go through. So, very good job. You know, that even if uh, SYF are going, you know, pretty much they're letting them get those points, and you're going, you know what, we'll just overextend and we'll get one back for ourselves. You know, all that work you did just got undone in about 10 seconds. 
Zephyr and Hopi both get dropped, though. That's three players down. Sets the only one left alive. He needs to go defensive mode, and he does not stop the, uh, the play. But luckily for him, he gets stopped anyway, and Zephyr is able to throw it out and reset the drone. So that was a bad throw from SYF under minimal pressure, Naked. Yeah, my, my big worry point here is JTEX. I mean, he was, he was turned up when they took down Tainted Mines. You know, he was pretty much the reason why they... I guess they cruise through one of the, 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 the two last two maps, but he's been missing in these respawn game types so far, and they can't afford to have him doing that because they'd be probably doing it easy right now if he had any kind of repeat performance that he did against Tainted. 4-4 four, four is how we're going to finish things up in the first half, and you wouldn't expect it to go any other way. Now, we do know that uh, the way SYF are attacking now, probably the preferred side naked, so I think there's probably going to be I, th I think for an aggressive for team, yeah. that would be the preferred side, mm. but I haven't seen much aggression besides, you know, one or two plays there. I liked how Oracle pretty much, you know, they were getting beaten for a quite a majority of, the, of, of those pushes, and you know, I'll oh, just overextend for the two, overextend for the two. All the work he did for about a minute and a half to get us stuck in the spawn, we just undid straight away. Are you a fan of the Wiggles naked? The Wiggles naked? No, no, no not oh, the Wiggles okay. naked, Jeez. but I mean, I'm a fan of that as well, but. Okay. No, that's not your clip. No, that's not uh, your thing. Okay, I, just me. I was when I was a kid, like right. four years ago. <laughs> well, didn't make. Anyway. You know how they go that, you know, where they try and wake up Jeff? I think <laughs> they need to do that for wake up JTEX. Okay. <laughs> That's where going with that he was. He just picked up one. That's where I was going with that, but then we ended up thinking of uh, a naked yellow wiggle. Don't know how we got there, but yet here we are, as SYF got a fast two points on the board. And uh, Oracle, I mean, they're now on the back foot, obviously. Drone's going to be thrown out there after they're going to be put in a bad position here. Uh, SYF. I, I, I was thinking that once they switch sides that they're going to have the advantage here and after those first couple of points it's probably looking that way but Hopi trying to do something about it naked. Yeah, Zephyr missed um, a, a pretty good scoring opportunity for himself and they're probably going to get two point in here or if it does go in, it does go in a little. Oof, that was a bit scary at times but JTX managed to clean it up. JTX picking up a few more kills already this half so that's a good start. And then they really lay, they're looking to relay. I don't think they're going to get the relay here. No, you Hopi's see. not watching um, his teammates I guess. He's by himself, or he's not by himself anymore. He won't get the one pointer either. You know, that's a pretty big error from himself. You can see there's going to be a couple of plays here making their way through. Bakabek actually got into full streaks. We missed on that out on that a little bit before, so that's going to be big for the SYF squad. Eminence trying to convert something out of it as well. Uh, and look, SYF, it's desperation mode, and you can kind of smell it on them. But lucky for them, back them into the corner, and they come out swinging, as we already know, naked. And that was some beautiful shots coming out from Eminence there. All four players are Oracle down. You can see Overdrive's activated. This surely is two points on the board. Yeah, I'm a bit worried if this Overdrive comes through and, you know, they've already burnt it out and they won't have it in the, in the die stage of this game as how close it's been. I mean, getting the two points won't matter, but if they can relay off this now, it's going to be really scary. Setsy does stay alive. It's going to be all on him right now to slow this push down. And this is what we wanted out of Bakabek, giving them Smackabek full streaks. He's going to have points in a row as well. Two points. Another two points gone through there. 10-6 is your score line. And Bakabek, he's still gone on a streak until just taken down there. Almost on 30 points. And he's got that bombardment, Trinity Rock. And he's got everything up his sleeve. All of the toys in the toy box. And he's not sharing with anyone. He might decide to share them with Oracle very, very soon, though. You can see with two and a half in this lead. Only behind by four, though. So Oracle could make something happen. But when you're getting bombarded from above like that, it's going to be tough. Yeah, Setsy does pick up one. does get traded out, though. And uh, I think the streak's coming out here. You know, slow any push down. Eminence, a big gunfight there, actually stays alive with just a fraction of HP left. Hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully SYF, you know, can bring this one back and pretty much bring the series back. JTEX here, he's going to be picking up one. Hopefully he can get a few more. He has not been slaying that great in these last couple of games. And, you know, I'm not too sure why that is. Maybe it's just the caliber of opponent he's got or something else, but Oracle trying to make a run. JTX does have the support of both Sets and Zephyr. Making a run here, caught out. He's going to be tagged up and goes down. That was just plain unfortunate. It's Oracle. They lost one of their last few chances, still with a minute 45 on the clock. They can make something happen naked, but they need to get two dunks, and that's just to tie things up. Yeah, I mean, they've missed a lot of, I'd say, very easy score, or oh, easily had a chance of scoring opportunities, really. They didn't convert them, and that's been the difference. The SYF pretty much converted almost every chance they've had. Hopi couldn't get in from the front, goes around the rear, and unfortunately couldn't get that either as well. 
players getting domed left and right here from the Oracle squad. Sets fortunately does get two in a row. Controlling mid-map, which is what he needs to do, obviously, on that drone spawn. Shots rings out, and he does have three in a row. Goes for four as well. Sets, he's trying to keep the squad together, keep the fire alive. Scatter about, and he dodges that one. Hopefully, we'll get the kill here. Indeed, he does. Gets five in a row before being dropped. Hope he needs JTEX and Zephyr to work their magic. He's got oh, almost that throw out. He needed to get some more points on the board, though. And I tell you what, considering they made nothing out of such a big play, just they're naked. I'm feeling bad for them. I reckon SYF, now that they're winding down the clock a little bit, they should have this one all wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, Chilean's just wasting time, wasting, and then pretty much drawing out as long as he can for that drone. I mean, SYF here does pick up the kill kill fly. I mean, I'm just a bit worried. You know, Oracle, they didn't have to convert any of these scoring opportunities. Even for ones, you know, they'd be back in the game if they didn't go for the twos every time, and the ones would be enough. Active camo does come out here. This is pretty much one of their last opportunities they needed here does get through which is good and they need to start picking up kills here so they can attempt to relay one from Setsy that's what they needed another one will follow up hopefully if they want a chance at making this out a good throw there picks up the kill no he doesn't two down is going to be very hard Daytex we need you to go hero mode mate oh that was not good Zappa gets dropped as well 10 seconds left this should be all she wrote Last few seconds, there's not going to be enough time. SYF are in control of the drone. It's a camo play. Eminence, excuse me, back of back might be through for one. There it is, the nail in the coffin at the end, and SYF stay alive in this series. They take the uplink 11 to 8. I think there was a few missed opportunities there from Oracle, and this could be the kink in the armor. Well, we discussed it. If it was a time to come back, why not? You know, a better time than the present when you're absolutely on the back end of your tournament life. Why not come back then? SYF, there's still life left in the veins. Is this the turnaround, Albert? That was quite a thrilling run. I think they've got a good chance in this high point. I mean, if, if Zeppa doesn't play the game he did the first game, they probably get away with it. I think uh, JTEX, been a bit underwhelming in the last two respawn game types, uh, needs to shake off whatever's going wrong because it was doing, it was doing perfect in the Tainted series. Now, SYF has just knocked off, what, a five-map win streak? that uh, Oracle were on. That was their fifth in a row. And SYF were on a five-map losing streak. They were indeed. So that is a wonderful way for them to get out of this one. Here's a quick look at some of the replays of what was a thrilling and extremely closely contested uplink game. So Josh, it was tight. It was, it was there. Both teams were neck and neck. They were toe to toe. They were trading blows. But in the end, SYF just came out on top. I mean, they did, and there was just a few missed opportunities there, you know, and you don't want to nail it down to one or two players, but throughout this entire series, JTEX has just been asleep for six, you know, and uh, he really needs to get those thumbs twiddling again because right at the end there, I mean, sure, there was a lot of pressure riding on him, and he needs to take down two players of uh, SYF, which was a tough ask, but that was the play. If he took those two down, two points on the board, they would have tied things up. It, in that, that would have been uh, Oracle still in the game. So uh, I would love to see him step up a little bit. And Oracle, they can lock this down right now if that can happen. Uh, but jokes aside, let's talk a little bit about Bakabek's performance in that one because he really was killing folks. He was doing a great job. No joke. We're done. We're almost finished. I was waiting for it. I've got something. Nah, we'll save that for later. Um, but yeah, he was he was really playing out of his mind that time. And, and this was the first series, it was the first game we've seen in this series so far where he's really elevated his, his gameplay. How yeah. important is he now? You know, that one player going off for I think, SYF. I think Josh definitely, Josh definitely touched on it. He was saying, you know, he's a hot and cold and he was very hot then. I mean, you need that performance out of him. That's that's the performance pretty much Zeppa had in the first map. You need your standout player to pretty much turn the game on its head and, you know, change it completely for your whole team. And he did that there. I think uh, there was no other standout kills on his team really and then Setsi came came up with a few kills near the end you know but they got no points in that time so those kills really didn't mean that much really but they need, they need that performance out of him as I said we haven't seen much of Eminence yet and he was the player that I thought you know really needed to step up for them he's been very quiet so far well we touched on both those teams a little bit we've got an update coming in from the other side of the losers bracket it looks like Validate Bros are up 2-0 over Regicide that game 3 is now well underway I can just see it out of the corner of my eye on the other screen in there uh, the, I do know that the S&D score was not close at all. It was another sort of 6-1, six, 6-2. Six, uh, so that has been a bit of a blinder so far. But guys, we're going into another hard point. These teams, they were close enough to begin with in the hard points. The first one was a 250-199, to 199, which was a pretty spectacular run from Oracle. Of course, we did see Zeppa, the juggernaut, 14 kills in a row. Can they repeat themselves here, Josh? I mean, they might be able to, but what we saw in the first hard point was that Chilean really came alive, and I'm expecting to do so again. But now that Bakabek's also woken up, 34-23, he just went in that uplink, and if he can follow it up with another performance like that on Scorch, 
I think uh, they might be able to walk away with this one. Now, SYF, we also saw, I've seen them a couple times play Scorch Hard Point this weekend, and they played it very, very well. Um, so I'm a little worried about Oracle, but as we then go into an S&D at the end, I'm feeling Oracle again. I'm thinking this is going to go to the Game 5 guys, but I think Oracle are going to lock it down at the end. For me, oh, the, for ooh, me, for me the longest this goes on, it's just, even if Oracle do win the series, it's going to keep draining and draining and draining them. So they want to wrap this up as quick as possible, get into the next game, because then they've got a, a little break in the winner's bracket final. You know, they can sort of regroup and that, but they don't want to keep playing series after series five map games. The clock's ticking, and at midnight, that chariot will turn into a pumpkin again. Can they keep the dream going? Albert, we talked about the performance of, uh, of SYF in that first hard point. They were rocking and rolling for the first, what, 80 points? They looked super strong, and then they dropped off. Do you think they've finally found the endurance here? Do you think they're going to have the consistency to break on through and run this one home? Oh, I'm just trying to think. Scorch. Oh, uh, I'm thinking, you know, you're going to need you know, Chilean's back of Ek and X Eminence firing. I mean, back of Ek had a pretty good uh, Scorch hard point against Mindfreak. I'm fairly sure he got a, a he really did. big clutch play. I remember that, yeah. So we've seen a lot of four pieces from back of Ek, and that's what you need. You need it consistently to happen there. You can't, you can't afford for him to bring it out in map three, and then that's it. You're going to need him going off. Can they go off? I think he can go off. I can see his face from here. He's looking ready to go. He's primed and ready. He's like a bullet in the chamber of a gun. These guys are almost ready to kick some off. Stacked audience tonight, by the way. Today. Well, I have no idea what the time is. We've lost all comprehension of time and day. Don't like know what the day is. It's a bit of a blur. It's when a bit of a blur, but it is the best. I feel like we've had about 16 hours with the back of egg puns in about 30 minutes, so. I but still don't know that's is that bad? I'll, well, I'll save them for the end of the series. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't handle more right we, now. We have no idea where this one's going to go. This could go to a game five, you know. It's a, it's not a marathon. It's a sprint, right? No. It's a marathon. Not With a our jokes, it's a sprint. We really do. <laughs> no, we really It's a do. relay. It's a relay. <laughs> well, you, in, a, in a perfect world, it would be a relay. Mm, plus, it's a baton. Well, speaking of batons, the first map was all blue. Oracle won that one. They won the S&D. But now, the uplink has taken to SYF. Can SYF keep the run going? Tournament lives on the line here in this hard point on Scorch. Josh, naked, in Maniac, Albert. Take us deep into this one. This could be the last time we see SYF on stream today, or will it be the beginning of their journey? Time will tell. We're just going down the yellow brick road. The journey's just begun. I've got Scarecrow next to me. <laughs> Not just Scarecrow, I think you're more of a Tin Man. Tin Man? I don't know. Is there a small No, I guess small I'm character. You're, you're Tin Man. man. I've never I, I can't believe I just threw that one away. I just crumpled lion. it up and threw it at Naked's face. Hit him on the forehead and dropped on the table. He's like, what are you doing? I've never seen it, so. I'm You've never seen Wizard of Oz? I've never seen it. Bro, you, rep you represent the Literally, the, the audience just turned around as like, what? I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen that. It's um, okay, Albert. I haven't seen most of the Harry Hey, Potters. what are you doing next week? Playing COD, probably. Yeah, cool. No, 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 no. I might take some watch time off work and we'll just sit and watch Lord of the Rings together. Yeah. We can have a movie I'm a date. Bit, I'm a loud crier, We can have a movie date naked. Your movie date? After my Wiggles jokes, I don't know if you want to, but we can have a movie date. We can go through I'll all that. my childhood outside. Let, let's do it. I hey, found hey, video games uh, like 19. The, the game's begun. We need to get into this. Okay. Chillian's actually going to be the first to die. And <laughs> we're all lost for words. SYF all taken down off the start and Oracle are off to a blistering pace. And they're probably going to set the pace for the rest of this hard point, at least for the first hard point anyway. Setting the trap, it's sprung. Hopey picks up two easy kills. They were gifted to him. Got a gift bag and everything. Yeah, well, the time's starting to climb down on this hard point. I mean, pretty uncontested from uh, SYF at the moment, but they're looking to go for the spawns, I guess. You know, these points aren't as crucial if you can get the next 60 seconds, but when you've already got 30 seconds on the hill that basically no one gets any decent time on, you know, it's, it's kind of worrying from uh, SYF. They need to start putting some points down on this hill. That was a brilliant start from Oracle. They got 32 out of a possible 36 seconds off the start before SYF would finally be able to break in there. You can see Oracle all pushing in hard. Now they need to start thinking about this rotation and naked. It's looking pretty good for the SYF guys. Just going by their positioning at least as they are spawning out of there. Killer Pie, he's going to be set up for that and he will secure that hard point as uh, the boys from Oracle push out. Zeppel is going to be taken down inside of Lab and now you're going to see JTEX and Zets both pushing in here for the Oracle squad. Yeah, you can see the spawn just got flipped. I think it was back back spawn very far out. Eminence actually. So now they've actually flipped him out even though that uh, SYF still had control of it. They did manage to flip the spawn by getting the opening kill. So here we go for Oracle. They're going to start to pretty much build a lead if they start to pick up all these kills and Zeppers 
Getting a double does get taken down by Eminence there. And this is so hard. Eminence was one of those first players that got spawned out. He goes over there, he takes down one, but then instantly dies yet again. And Oracle are going to be able to go off to a very healthy start. 25 seconds left in this hard point. This is when they want to start thinking about spawns once again. And when they're taking down three players, SYF at a time, make that four, they must be feeling pretty good about themselves. I want to break it down for everyone at home. That break it down or, now. Or in the crowd, pretty much, he doesn't understand what just happened, basically. So, uh, Oracle pinched at the right time. So, everyone SYF had full control of the Turbine Hill. Oracle pinched and he managed to get the first kill. Now, in that time, uh, they did get traded out, but Reef man uh, Eminence managed to spawn in first, which actually flipped him out because they didn't have complete control and got the bad spawn. If he managed to, you know, watch the kill cam and stall out how long till he spawned, pretty much, they actually would have continued to keep spawning there. This is some brilliant shots out of Zephyr. This guy's been beaming all weekend and he's still going strong. He's got the back as Sets and JTEX both go knocking down the front door. And now you've got a three-man stack of SYF trying to come on out. Eminence has got that K-bar in hand, pushing out through rocks. And you can see there, he's going to have the support of his teammate. You're going to have Sets watching the back door. And that's who you want there with that ERAD. Turns at the wrong time, but he goes back in. And you can see here, his timing's going to be brilliant to pick up that first kill. He's going to get another. Back-to-back -back slide on ins, and he's going to be trying to get this uh, back to the lockdown. No one was getting past him until finally back -back shuts that down. They've just hit 100 points over here on the third hard point of Hangar. And this is like reverse of what we saw in that first hard point. Oracle just leading the entire way. Yeah, for me, back has been about 15 to 20 seconds trying to get that spawn. And by the time you got the spawn, there was about 15 seconds left. Anyway. So you're better off probably dying if you're just going to waste the time there. You know, your, your team's still spawning out. You're not really doing much of anything. We talked how uh, how badly SYF need Chilling to step up here, and unfortunately, he's uh, off to the roughest start of anyone on SYF at the moment. Moment three and seven. Uh, look, what's going through his head at the moment, Nakey? Because we can only guess, but it uh, mustn't be anything too good right now. Well, I mean, we were saying touching on like Chilians and Hopi, they're pretty much the the rivals of each other. Hopi having a really good game. I mean, for for probably the best game he's had uh, this weekend so far. And, and uh, uh, Chilean's having the opposite effect, and I hope he's just building off, you know, his team's feeding off all of his energy, and Chilean's is probably, you know, not, not boosting his team up, I guess, uh, momentum-wise, and that's what he really needs. Chilean picked up one before being dropped. Oracle over 100 points in the lead as we set up for this rotation back towards mid, and you can see the guys from SYF trying to get control of this. You can see both uh, Chilean and Bakabek fighting for mid. Bakabek is going to pick up the kill. Killapai and Eminence also getting kills for themselves, cleaning up drill. The scrap points will go to them, and they will be set up for next as well. Spawning behind them in rocks is going to be Oracle, though, and trying to shut them down before they even get out is going to be Bakabek, who's just inside the building. But you can see they're going to try and slip below him, and I think one might have got away, but Bakabek is on the three-kill streak, and we must give a shout-out. He's the leading slayer of the game naked, and he's on that three-kill streak. Yeah, however uh, bad this game did start for SYF, they pretty much just need to pick it back up on this hill and then, you know, move in that turbine. If they can control full 60, they're right back into this game. JTEX still a little slow. Sets here just warming up with that ERAD taking down Eminence, but it is Killify and the rest of SYF still in control of this bridge hard point. They're working towards that 80-point 80, uh, 80 mark, but it's still only half the points that Oracle has. You can see they've got four stacked up in here, setting up for the next rotation. You've already got JTEX in that top left corner. He's about to be met by Eminence, so in this 1v1, for control of this next hill's going to be vital, and of course it's JTEX that goes down. Eminence just besting him in that 1v1 scenario. Yeah, it wasn't very right for him to, you know, just slide off there. He knew the the player was there and he just pretty much slid into the gun battle instead of aiming up after the player had already taken about half a half a grenade and you know that's it's not a very good play again he's having a pretty poor respawn performance for the team and they can't afford for him to do that because they'd be very far ahead right now you know if, if he held that hill I don't want to criticize JTEX too much but I don't know I don't what know. it is about today maybe he's sick or maybe I, I don't know maybe that's he's got to perform that that's not even it. He, he was going crazy against tainted so it's not even that i just don't know what's going on with him in this series in particular will the real jtex please stand up because i don't know if he's on the stage but credit where credit's due he's got a minute 19 of time for the team and he did the exact same in the hard point uh the first hard point naked where uh, he racked up all the time for the squad as well with that time you're not winning hard points but jtex speak of the devil he actually got two goes for three as well unfortunately going to be down there by killer pie he actually managed to stay alive going to be running around and use that FTL jump to nowhere. 14 seconds left for the rotation. SYF is set up for it. It's got to be, excuse me, Eminence left alone over here. 
you've got one player watching uh, mid, which is going to be Bakabek, so you want him there, but he is going to be taken from uh, Sets, who ended up coming at the flank, so Eminence left all alone. You've got both Sets and Hopi pushing in here. Will Eminence survive? No, he will not. Sets and Hopi teaming up. Hopi goes down. Sets manages to stay alive without Erad, though, and gets a three-kill streak. Something we haven't seen throughout this game, uh, Naked, is many, if any, uh, kill streaks at all. So Sets trying to work towards those, and it just shows how close, at least on the kill front, this game has been, but that doesn't deny the fact that Oracle just hit 200 points and are ahead by almost a minute and a half. Yeah, I'm still pretty dirty on that FTL play from Tillify there. I feel like it was, you know, it wasn't really big in the in the terms of the game where the FTL could have break it, broken into a hard point like it is in there right now. And I mean, they're streaking away right now. They're probably going to get one or two more decent pushes at this SYF. And, you know, this team's only going to be about 20 points off or under. Oh, oh. my God, Setsy. Five Sets. streak right now, building on the streaks. And if he manages to get these streaks right before the next hard point, it's going to be all over Red Rover for SYF because, you know, that hill is so open and gonna get very close to it. I mean, even if he doesn't, if he stays in here and uses his streaks to get more streaks, I think it's pretty much all she wrote for SYF right now. Let's see how this Trinity Rocket gets utilized. He's gonna pick up nothing with it, which is unfortunate. We kind of saw that from sets last time as well, but who cares about streaks when you're on a streak of your own? Six kills in a row, 230 points and climbing. You can see Zephyr's picking up kills and well, there he is. There's the bombardment. Sets seven kills in a row. Doesn't matter who it is, make it eight. His teammate Zephyr got 14. He's got the camo as well to turn on that player. Goes for another. Finally being dropped, sets with the play of the game, and Oracle are going to wrap it up right here. 250 to 121, Oracle take the series in a 3-1 fashion, and they probably surprise a lot of people both in the studio and at home with that performance. I feel like, you know, we, we watched that, and we didn't realize how the quick the game was running out. I mean, we got to that hill, and we are like, wow, there's only 30 points to go, and... Sets he was playing, didn't even use the bombardment or whatnot. We didn't even notice, like, you know, the game was running out of time. That's how good they were doing. Cinderella may make it to the ball yet, guys. Well, there we go. Another notch on the belt for Oracle. My good God. They took down Air of Apothean. They took down Tainted. And now they've taken down SYF. Who's next on the list? We're at, about to find out, actually. We are very, very close to finding out. If, um, it's likely to be Validate Bros, but we'll let you guys know, obviously. It's a 3-0. It's going to be Validate Bros up next on the main stage against Oracle Esports. Whew. Boys, we, uh, we we kind of, we had mixed feelings going into this one, mixed bag of results. That's why if there is still a top caliber team, but you can't really seem to stop Oracle, can you, Albert? I, I thought Tainter would take out Oracle, to be honest. I thought 3-1 three, three at best uh, after watching you know, the very first high point, but that they proved me wrong. SYF, I thought, weren't going to be as good as a respawn team as Tainted were, but I thought, you know, Oh, they, they were pretty confident. They started really well, and you know, it just went all downhill from there. The uplink was very good. I'd have to say that's pretty much off the back of back of Beck. Um, he, he had another pretty good performance here, but the rest of the team seemed not to show up in the fashion that he did. Again, great. You know, obviously, Setsy showing off a bit there. Twenty-one and ten uh, finishes the game. Twenty-one and eleven has bombardment still waiting. If he needed it, didn't even have to use it. The game was over. Josh, the Setsy Zeppa duo has been wrecking fools all day. You, can you see them stopping? You know, sky's the limit for these boys, right? Nothing's stopping them right now until they hit the mind freak wall at the end, I think. Um, because this has been such a great performance from the entire squad. I would, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to say they will, will take the whole competition. But, I mean, if they keep playing the way they are and if JTEX can start playing, you know, somewhere around the level the others are, just in the slaying capability, then I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, especially just in the hard point in those, you know, in uplink as well. Go back to JTEX. He had a really great start to the day. His first games against Era of Apotheon were blindingly good. And then, you know, towards the towards the second half of, let me get, let me check my notes on this one. I'm absolutely correct. Towards the second half of the TM games, he sort of, he kept it together and he, he managed to uh, to stay hot. But this series has just been a little lackluster. Do you think he just needs a breather, needs a break? You he's know, just he's charging up that special beam cannon, man. That's all he's doing. He's <laughs> charging. Like it's like three episodes, right? It does. Three episodes. <laughs> it does. So, you know, he's probably just charging it up because, I mean, we saw him play earlier, Miles. The way he was playing then was not the player we saw in that series. So maybe he just did need that break. Yeah, well, if you look at the scoreboard at the end, it wasn't overly as bad as it looked. I think maybe they, strick, they, they, they ran away with it near the end and he got all these pretty much, you know, pretty easy kills at a team running at him knowing, yeah, we're going to need some time here. And, you know, he's posted up easy kills for himself. But if he's going to want to go on against, you know, the brothers, fellow brothers, uh, the, I'm trying to think, Rage and Mind Freak, you know, you're not, you can't afford to have one player not firing. Well, 
the fairy tale is continuing, guys. Let's have a quick look at how the brackets have gone down because at the moment it's a tale as old as time. The Oracle is still running this one home. There you see Validate Brothers. They took down Regicide 3-0. I've got an update on the score. The uplink game was 11-4. to So Regicide, lo and behold, the king is dead indeed. The brothers up against Oracle. We haven't seen how Validate Bros have played today. Yesterday they were pretty hot. Again, it's a, it's a star-studded lineup. Four incredibly experienced and kick-ass players. But how the hell are they going to fare against the boys of Oracle? You know, we've seen them all day. We've been chatting about them now for what feels like an eternity. It probably is. And for you guys in the audience, it's probably even longer. But the truth is, they're playing out their minds. Can the Validate Bros come in here? They're definitely going to be swinging hot because they've had two series already today, Albert. I mean, what do you think the Bros are going to be bringing to the table? I mean, if you look at the Validate Bros roster, that's almost the Validate Black, I think it was, at the last event. It's, it's, it's pretty much mostly that team. They came third. They did manage to take a map off Mind Freak as well we, when they did come third and get knocked down, uh, eliminated from the tournament. So there's four really good teams in here. And I mean, they're not your standout, you know, the, the household names that you're used to seeing in these finals area, uh, area but those players are actually... Majority of those players that, are in, that have been in those teams are actually in these teams now. Josh, do you have any parting thoughts on uh, on how the games have gone thus far? Especially Oracle, let's face it, man. Your boy Hopey's going wild. He is, he is. You know, I've been keeping my uh, all my thoughts on Hopey reserved because I know we're going to have a chat with him shortly. But I'm proud, Hope. You've come a long way, mate. But um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the action from all of the teams here today and indeed throughout the entire weekend. There have been upsets aplenty. We didn't expect to see the teams that are now that that have now progressed this far in the bracket, um, and I'm just excited to see if anyone can really challenge Mind Freak at the end of the day. Well, that's pretty much all it is from us on the desk here. We've had a very thrilling time enjoying the sights and spills of Oracle versus SYF, but alas, it's all over now. Extra shout outs actually to the chap on stage because he's now a dad. That means Mother's Day is happening right now for him, so that's a big one. So Ben, take it away. Thanks, Miles. Yes, I don't know if everyone's sick of hearing from Hopi today, but I'm certainly not, man. Congratulations. This is the best that we've seen you and one of your teams go in quite a while, and you guys are on fire. Yeah, I think this team is just a bit different because I've tried to, you know, tone down the hype a little bit, but um, this event I'm just going to unleash it. So, you know, that's how when I play best, and then Setsy and Zephyr go off with that too, and then JTX, just a calm, collected guy, always telling us what to do. So um, everything's just clicking, you know, like, after yesterday's loss, like I said this morning, we just had to really turn it around and just keep going with the momentum. Um, I don't feel drained yet, so hopefully we keep it going against this next uh, team. So, yeah. Man, there's been some insane fragging power coming out of your team as well. Even that first hard point. I think, what, 14 frags in a row or something ridiculous like that. This is... If, if you're going to come into this competition, you're going to come into today, you're probably not going to find yourself in a better position than you are now. Yeah, that's just how we've seen it, like... You know, our practice wasn't too good leading up to it. Um, we'd have a few days on, a few days off, but we always seem to get on and feel like we're just clicking straight away. So coming into this event, I felt like the further the comp went on, the better we'd get from it. Um, considering, you know, we might play for one night and get off for two, but now we've played for, you know, three days in a row and now three series in a row. So, um, you know, it's just that momentum factor and everything's just clicking, you know, so, yeah. It certainly is. Now, on Friday, I spoke to you about Maka and his team. Some of these boys you played with, quite a lot before. They come through, they're coming in off a 3-0 win in their previous game. You're going to burst them on stage coming up next. Uh, you've already beaten them once this competition. Are you feeling confident going to this game or do you think they're warmed up as well? Yeah, I definitely think they'll be more warmed up. Um, you know, we played one game before them on Friday. Uh, I know like Macca and uh, Swift as well haven't played too much COD recently, but um, I mean, we're hotter now than we were on Friday and Friday was pretty slight, so yeah. Is it going to be close, or do you think you, you've got them in the bag? Oh, same as us. I'm not going to predict the score. I'm just going to go map by map like we've been doing so far. Um, but, yeah, if we win our S&Ds, we'll definitely win it. But, you know, I respawned to being strong, so could go either way, if you want us. Well, it's gone pretty well so far, and Hopi, I've got a ticket to the Hopi hype train. If you want one, boys and girls, we're selling them up at the back of the room in the merch store. I think they're only like three bucks each, but as the, as the day goes on, they're going to get more and more expensive. We only have a few games left today, and this next one is going to be a cracker. Can Oracle take them down, or will Validate Brothers push their way through to the lower bracket final? We'll be back very, very shortly. Don't go anywhere. 
But Zephyr, who I called out, is on a three. Make that fourth kill streak. Final for him to stay alive. And he does. He is now fully streaked out. Zephyr, seven kill streak. And this is why I called him out naked as he picks up his eight. Yeah, as they've started to build up all these streaks, you know, they're really getting on to their points there, but you can hear them a lot louder than they were in the opening half of this game, and that's why I haven't got a point. For the young kid right here, finds one in the corner, you can't hide from Zeppa. he's coming at you big, 11 kill streak, goes for 12 as well, drop shot, Scott. Now over to the rotation, Oracle in front by 20, but S-Way at one up, great little trade there from both teams, Zeppa coming out on top though, he picked up a couple before being dropped, but that's with a bit of fun that we just had prior to the match, which I really enjoyed guys. Eminence though he's gonna be picking up a kill on Hobie. Back of follows it up with oh. Oh, if he gets in there he's, he's done it. He's got it. Wow and he gets his back. Oh, the scope out here for Hope. The Hope scope coming out. He's got two. Surely third time to charm. Sure. Oh and third time to charm while well stunned. Get those points in there. Stets does pick up the opener. JTX will get one. We'll get two. There's gonna be first points for sure coming out. Oh, the drone is still out. Um, the spots player in the corner, picks up the kill there, and it's a nice start, but pretty much everyone here, it looks like a very even run, Zephyr on surely is two points on the board. Yeah, I'm a bit worried if this overdrive comes through and you know, they've already burnt it out and they won't have it in the, in the dire stage of this game as how close it's been, I mean, it's getting slowly pushed down. And this is what we wanted out of Bakabek, giving them the smack of full streaks, he's gonna have points in a row as all time for the squad as well. But that time, you're not winning hard points, but JTEX, speak up. 20 points off or under, oh, oh. my god, Setsy. Five in a row, it doesn't matter who it is, make it eight. His teammate Zephyr got 14. He's got the camo as well to turn on that player. Goes for another to 121. Oracle take the series in a 3-1 fashion and they probably... The competition in the Australian region, it's definitely increased, especially with Dens departing from our team. Um, you know, I don't really know what to say. Well, I was in Mind Freak and I got an opportunity and an offer to join a different organisation. And so I went to my former teammate. They didn't really pursue. So I thought, look, if they're not interested, I still want to pursue the opportunity. So I just pretty much got up and left. We are friends with Zeus. In their team, we asked him to join and be our fourth. And he just goes, huh. As in, you know, you guys are nothing without Dens now. They got the players that they want and we sort of had to figure out what would suit us best. So Excite now, he's really got something to prove. He really wants to impress us, so to speak. You know, he doesn't want to be that guy that lets the team that's won every single year down. It's all fun and games winning in Australia, but if you're not winning internationally, it's kind of like no point. It had to so be that we had to play it a bit dirty and not, not announce who we were going just to sort of hold them off from booking flights or not getting a team pass. It's every man for himself at the moment. At the end of the day, I win. Three, round number eight, going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades, making it now a 3v2. Here we go, bomb down to A. It's going to be an easy climb. Active camo, why so Big. smiley? He sneaks out there, he's going to find the kill, and there we go. Rotation, oh sorry, the spawns are going to be in control of Validate. He's going to find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just throws it's huge. Pitch. No, it's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most and he's going to be able to break that score yeah, to no avail He's going to fall there, but his teammates will clean up the rest of the pieces Ramming is the last alive in a 1v2 one player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko He jumps up just in time. Perfect. It comes around Ramming. Nice. Very nicely done nice. by him to get that 1v2 A very good clutch. Empire has already hit the rotate. They're set up pretty nicely We don't really have anyone out on that anchor, but it looks like we finally have someone from Validate playing spawns for once so This could be a flip here and it is so we have number seven, Pixel spawning out cross map in the lab. This is a full- oh, Control, control, Pixel, Pixel is pushing out. No, weak, weak, weak. Tag on the right, heading. Go down, down. Down. No, two, 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 Receiving a ton of damage himself, managing to buy a, a whole heap of the time is ticking on down, and just Fast. like that, they they test the waters, so to speak, with that one. Just to see if he was out there, got the tag. Can he get the second? Where is the second player? He says, hunting around for him, not too sure. Right, but if he keeps going round for round, it just shows you know, the talent on both these teams. They, they try and trade off in sort of bike shop there. Our players are just better than theirs, really. That's the, the best way to put it. Our experience, we're more experienced than them. We clutch up when we need to, and if you're not in the land league, um, you're not playing for that big cash, you're not playing against the best teams in the world, you really are sort of irrelevant in a bad way.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, BioAcid here at the CWL Sydney number two, presented by PlayStation 4. And we have a big match coming up next on the main stage. Oracle Esports taking on Validate Bros. They met up before in pool play. It was a three out of the Oracle team. Can they do it once again? Joining me on the cast's desk, we have Miles and James. Hi. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. I don't know that we're getting to the pointy end of the competition. And these are two teams that are relatively evenly matched. Yes, maybe it was Oracle taking out that three on their first meeting, but I'm sure that the Valde brothers are fired up and ready to go with their, you know, dated run through the lower bracket. It's a similar stage that Oracle's at. I have to give it to Oracle, though. I have to. I don't recognize either of these teams from Friday. They don't. They look the no. same superficially, but what's inside is completely unrecognizable. Like, yeah. you know, Oracle has been going off today. You know, as far as we know, it, it was a 3-0 when they first met the pool play, but I have no idea who the guys on that side of the stage are on the blue team because, like, no one is recognizable anymore. <laughs> I just get you back. It might be like on, like an onset of like tiredness or blindness kicking in, but as far as the gameplay goes, it's all different. Of yeah. course, it was that Validate Bros team that did defeat the other team of Registered just before that 3-0 victory. You'll see their head-to-heads right now. 20 win, 4 losses at the moment for that Oracle Esports squad. I think that might be a little bit the other way around. I think they've got more than the one win streak at the moment. I think they're on about a three or four win streak, but I think that's, I think that's actually maps. So it's there maps you go. So it's one, yeah. 15 and 7 for Validate Bros with that map win streak of five. So coming into this matchup, both these teams obviously very hot, and both of them want to win. Low key want Oracle to win just to that Oracle v, I'm assuming, Rage rematch in the Losers Bracket final, but we're getting ahead of ourselves right now. The Oracle team. We've seen them plenty of times already up here in the main stage. They haven't moved. They haven't. There's been no roster changes since their last victory and the last time they played here. So they're looking pretty, still pretty strong. You're seeing right now. We see on your screens once again. Obviously, you guys have been watching how good they've been playing so far. Miles, you, you cast their last game as well. Thoughts on sort of to express how you really feel this Oracle team's played so far this morning? It, for me, it's the they're the living embodiment of the cliche that when you hit the losers bracket fairly early you go on these wild runs. And right now, they have got the running shoes on, they're well limber at the moment, and they're kind of, it's, if it's a marathon, the finish line is very, very attainable right now for them. You know, I don't see, I can't see them slowing down up against the Validate Brothers, but you know, the bros can't rule them out. They're still an exceptional squad, but yeah, when they've got the pace that the Oracle have, uh, I can't slow them down. And of course, that is the Validate Brothers team. You see now, Dean Mac arrival and Swift Zord now. These guys, again, have very strong talent on that lineup. You've got the old Mac Daddy Macca. I like to call him with that outfit. You can't go wrong. James, overall, your, your, your thoughts on the Validate Rollers squad so far, not just today, you know, over the weekend as well. They've had up and down performances for sure. I, I feel like even though they have such high quality players on their team, that lack of, I guess, practice on the lead up to this event has hurt them in many cases against teams that are arguably lesser than them, that they should have beaten quite easily. Um, it, it, they've, they've struggled sometimes, and I feel like that could be their downfall here. But then again, now they're finally heating up. They've played a few games today as well. They should be ready to go, and, and there shouldn't be anything holding them back. Miles, do you feel that the 3 open pool play is going to phase Validate Brothers at all? Do you, do you think that they're, just, they're not even worried? They're not even thinking about that at all? Like, I know I am, but are they? I think these are the kind of players that have been around the block a few times, definitely on the first rodeo. They've shaken that one clean off, and I think the only thing on their mind right now is, yeah, it's, it's one game at a time. It's the old, it's a tried and true test method of forget what happened before, move on. You know, these guys, they're well-rehearsed players. They've been doing this a while. And yeah, we talked about the, the level of practice. So maybe going to this event, not in their best form. Yeah. But they've had some really, really good games in the competition so far. And I feel like that's good enough practice, right? Trial by fire seems to be working out. They made it this far. So we'll go in and now and have a look at the maps that these two teams will be playing it out on. Of course, you will be starting with that hard point as we always do. It's going to be on Scorch to start things off. We just saw a, a great performance on Scorch Hardpoint a moment ago there by Oracle as they defeated SYF. So heading to this next, the next one, of course, will be Breakout S&D. Throwback Uplink. And then we're sort of, I think we're all maybe feeling this might go all the way to a game five. It's not a game, it's not a game match four. Retaliation Hardpoint and a Throwback S&D as well. I, I feel that Oracle sort of have that, uh, that mentality advantage knowing that they've already defeated them. With that 3-0, they're sort of feeling, guys, we've done this before, we can do it again, don't stress. We'll get to this losers bracket final and secure ourselves at least a top three finish. Miles, first thoughts on that first map, score chart point, mate. I think, I think Oracle, they feel invincible right now. 
Well, they just won 250 to 121, I think, against SYS, so they're, they're still reeling for that, I think, and they'll just play it the exact same way they played it, probably. Yeah, the buzzword we were throwing around on the desk earlier was confidence, and I think right now it's crazy to think that they've got anything but the highest you know, regards in themselves. You know, they're feeling themselves right now. This is prime time playing for them. You know, it's, it's going to be really difficult for me to get around the idea that they could even possibly lose this first map. I guess, James, one thing that Vel uh, that Oracle might have over Veldate Bros is the fact that they just played this map a moment ago in their game number four in the last match. While Veldate Brothers won their last series 3-0, they didn't actually get to game four, which would have been that half-point scorch. So yeah. do you feel that, you know, obviously Oracle might have that small bit of an advantage coming off a map that they just played, they can just go back and play straight away again? It sort of goes two ways. I know that sometimes players get a little bit annoyed that they play the same map two times in a row. That can kind of, kind of be like, oh, I just I don't want to yeah, play this map. True. I want to skip past this one. But then again, on the same side, like on the other side of things, there definitely is that fact that they just played it. They just obviously beat a very top quality team. They'll be looking to do it again. So obviously the Velody Brothers, I, I feel that they'll be sort of pretty confident heading into this one, obviously, with that th with a 3-0 win. So they've sort of got a little bit of mindset advantage as well. Mm -hmm. While they are coming onto this one, while well, Oracle have been here for a little while, Oracle only won by 3-1. They did drop a map, whereas Velodate did not with that 3-0 victory, I guess. I think it was against like Regicide, Regicide there. So obviously that mindset mentality for them, they're thinking, 3-0 boys, let's, let's just do this. And I, I hope that they yeah, have forgotten that first day of pool play. And let's see how they'll get into this one. But... I feel that this should go all the way to that the game number five. I, I can't see why it wouldn't, provided that Validate Bros do pick up a, or the S and D at least. I feel that they could come back and, and pick up a hard point there as well. All the players up on the main stage at the moment. I'm gonna James. I'm gonna put you under the spotlight as I tend to do with all the casters that come up here while I'm hosting. Theory score. Who's taking it out? Go. I look honestly. I believe that it should be a three-two or a three-one, depending on whether or not this Validate Bros team can take out that uplink, because that seems to be the biggest weakness for Oracle so far. Search and Destroy, I believe, wholeheartedly that the Validate Bros players overall are more experienced and, and have shown a lot more talent on that game mode. And then, yeah, as I said, the uplink could be a bit of a, a setback for Oracle, but we never know. It all goes down to who shows up at the time. I'm so, I'm so excited about the S&D, man, because yeah. uh, the Bros are white hot when it comes to S&D. They've got some superstar players there. And then seeing how Oracle have been playing, this is the match. This is the, I'm actually really pumped for the S&D. Hard point, who cares, man? It's all about the S&D, right? Bit of a history as well between the players on either of these teams. I think at one stage, you and Hopi, Macker and Dean were actually all on the same team. So, you know, a bit of, a bit of history there for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, I think Swift is all teamed with uh, Macca and Rival for a little bit uh -huh. on an excellence lineup at the start of the season. So they've all pretty much played with each other before. There should be carried chemistry over from that. It's just about reigniting that fire in them and, and you know, bring out the passion for the game that I feel like some of them may have lost across the, se the well, season so far. I mean, in a scene whereas there's only one team that hasn't changed in a long time, which is Mindfreak, I think everyone's played with everyone at some point pretty in their much. career. <laughs> you know, they, they get around a little bit there, but... The rig draft was happening, but it looks like we've been a little bit delayed there, so we'll just wait a little bit longer. I'm sort of thinking that, like, Rival don't seem, not, not Rival, sorry, Oracle don't seem too concerned about what's going on. Beautiful ink there on that lovely hand of Macca. That's his killing hand. Yeah, That's mate. Trigger finger. He only plays one-handed, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, he's better than he looks, right? He's yeah, yeah. not bad for a guy with one hand. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. But, you know, these guys, obviously, they're pretty chill. And I think not, not a lot really going to concern them too much. They're obviously talking over some strats, thinking what could the opposition of Oracle be planning and going up against them. I think Hopi, that might be warming his hands up a little bit. It is the Hope man. Look at him. Gotta love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. I think that might have been the little lizard hue 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 there. A little bit. I'm too sure, but obviously, yeah, like I said many times, he's he's pumped, he's ready. He, they, they seem pretty relaxed, and I think they seem confident, and they exude confident, as you mentioned, Miles. It's one thing you need to sort of do in these sort of situations. I think it also helps that they've been sat in those four seats now for three series. Yeah. This will be the fourth consecutive series I've had at, that de at those desks, on those same PlayStations. They're, you know, they're so comfortable now like this is like playing at home for these guys you know at first everyone worries about like oh, i'm on the main stage there's lights and a cameraman and the crowd's there blah, 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 but like pff, man, i still do that up here on the caster's desk <laughs> well it's, it's these lights it's that one especially that's the that's oh, the one that hurts. gets me <laughs> I'm, I'm like a moth into bright lights man i'll just flutter <laughs> towards them absolutely love it but obviously the teams are getting set and up underway the rig draft coming on up there you know i just want to creep on over i enjoy looking at the rig draft i really do you know i want to get more involved in it and Anything sort of standing out for you there, Miles? Well, it's, uh, it, I mean, what the map first map is, 
Scorch. Uh, on Scorch. Yeah, so, well, look, Centurions for both sides. That's going to be <laughs> potentially going to be very interesting. Swift as all. Oh, I thought he was not going to choose Power Slave for a moment there. If you don't choose a, uh, um, a, a rig trait, you do get nothing, which is kind of annoying. But we, as we discussed at the first CWL Seed Open 1, uh, there's been a major patch change to Power Slide, so it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make you slide any further, but it does decrease the amount of booster you use when you do slide. So everyone's cotton onto that now. That was kind of new news back in the, uh, back in the day, yeah. but now that's all... Uh, Back that's in the day, like it was that, all, that long like ago. Three months like ago? Two months. Two months. Yeah. Two months. <laughs> when, when you start getting on in the days, you just, do, you just refer to everything back in the day. Don't worry, trust me, it happens a lot. It could be last week, I'll still stay back in the back day. Back in the day. <laughs> Miles, I didn't get to ask you though, prediction, final series score in this, this one, mate. Final, final series score, I think this is going to be a 3 0 um, to probably the Oracle Bro, or Oracle, sorry, because the Bros, it's going to be so tight. But I'm a broken record. They're playing so well at the moment. It's very difficult to get past them. But Dallas, as you've said so yourself many times, proved me wrong. Oh, I love to be proven wrong. It's one of the biggest things. You know, I was putting some hot tips in the production room earlier, and my tips were coming up wrong, one after the other. What uh, happened to the crystal ball, man? I didn't have it with me. I had, Sam man was distracting me. Oh, I'll, fair I'll enough. put it down to him, but obviously these two are set, ready for action, so I'll hand it on over to you, Miles and James, to take it away. Well, James, here we go. We've waited for a while. This is our first time in the desk together. Uh, the entire event, yeah. God damn, man. It's going to be a goodie. It, we're in for a treat. Again, we talked a little bit briefly before the match how we thought this was going to go down, you know, off-desk caster chats. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this could be either very, very close or it's going to be an absolute blowout. There's uh, no in-between. Yeah, pretty much it seems like. And, you know, the, the only reason that I give bros, like, a leg up to be able to get maybe two maps is because of, you know, once again, they've got star players, uh, star S&D players on that team. And then, of course, the uplink seems to be Oracle's biggest weakness. But then again, who knows? It might just have been that um, that map, the one map that has, you know, we could we could see them come out on this one on top, which will be if we uh, once we get to a throwback. So, hopefully, for their sake, they're able to take that one out and prove that they have no weaknesses. And then, you know, going forward, they've got a, a big, big, tough challenge ahead of them in, in you know, losers bracket final and potentially grand final if they make it that far. If they do, that would be something out of this world. I don't think that we've actually had a team in CWL for a while that's been able to manage that. I mean, the best example I can think of would have to be the Denial at uh, the AW Championships, and that's a long time ago. And that really was back in the day. Here we go, guys. Validate Bros versus Oracle. This is Loser Brackets round six. Dean just picked up three in a row. And we didn't get to see it. Oracle getting that first few One moments team, on the mate. board. Well, it still counts, man. That's <laughs> a three-piece in my book. This is Swift Azor. Rucking on through. Does get dropped there. It's Oracle with the early opener here. They're going to get that first batch of hard point time. But the Validate Bros, they're not out of this one yet. This is Dean. See what he can do to hold on this hard point. Two players that are going to be contesting him make that three, and they take him down with ease there. But Rival, he's going to be contesting this one still, trying to get some more points on the board. Not going to happen. There's going to be a two down for both teams. So, sorry, three down on Validate Bros, two for Oracle. JTEX is staying alive on the hard point in typical fashion. He's already got the most kills in his team. In fact, he's doing the best in the lobby because why not? He's been doing so well today, and I can't wait to see if he can step it up in the latter stages of this tournament. But it's going to be so, so hard against a team that's arguably their biggest challenge so far. Setsy losing that crucial gunfight to secure spawn. Zephyr, though, top heads up play. Gets oh, so close to the second, but not able to find that one. This is still set. Managed to lock down that hard point. Turbine is looking very much an Oracle hard point at this stage. The Validate Bros haven't really been able to answer back. Let's just have a quick look and see how Swift Azor can crack onto this one. He's got a back end. He's found a way in there. His teammate's got dropped, but he does have a player in line of sights. Now, this is a good start for Oracle. The Validate Bros, they're hot on their heels, James. Is there anything you can do to see uh, Oracle break through this one? It's going to be difficult because they're spawning so far out in caves. By the time they make their way to this hard point, it's going to be basically no time left to be able to get some solid points on it. But Hopi, he's going to start up by opening out on Maka. Two players are going to be pushing down this alleyway. Rival, he's such a good position with his shots there. And so Hopi's able to come in and clean him up. But then Dean and Maka, they respawn in time to be able to get Validate to maintain control. And they're now going to take the lead. But only eight seconds remaining. Here's where Oracle can use those spawns to their advantage, get control over the hangar hardpoint, and start to build on their lead. We talked a little bit about JTEX cooling off in the previous series, but now he seems to be hotting up, going 6-4 and four currently with a ton of hard point time to his name. Hangar has flipped, and it looks very blue right now, but JTEX still holding on. 
Nice peak jump shot there. Can he get the second player behind him? Beautiful oh. turn there on Rival, and he's still keeping this run going. Can he find a third in that hard point? This would be massive for him, for his team. If he does have the help from his friends, that is going to be the flip. So there we go. Oracle now in control of the hard point. They've got Hanger, and all off the back of a nice 2 piece from JTEX. That magic turn really helped him out. Let's have a look at, uh, probably go to Maka and see how he tries to break him through this one. This is hot. Validate Bros on the offensive. Setsy just a little too strong. Why we got off the man, I'll never know. This is Zephyr's perspective. Trying to get those players on the cutoff point. Nice nade out. Does tag that player. No, doesn't actually get shut down there by Trophy. So we'll see how this one goes. Oracle are doing what they can to hang on, but Validate Bros getting certainly back in this one. Ooh, there, JTEX with another two pieces going to increase his streak right now. A four kill streak for the man. But he's just heating up once again, as you said. Might have gotten cold in the last series. Doesn't mean it's going to keep stay that way. As Hopi, he's already waiting for this mid cart, trying to spot out some players. He'll find Dean, but gets shut down by Rival, who gets another one as well. And so now well, they're going to be looking towards this drill hard point here. JTEX, he's the one on the hard point. He's going to get shut down off a five kill streak. But he should be able to have at least his Scarab, if not a little bit more, and well on the way towards his payload. But Maka, he's going to be coming into his hard point, trying to contest it. Setsy and Hopi are alive. Setsy now the last one, and Swift is also going to find that kill. So now it's going to be down to JTEX, trying to dart around the drill. Not going to happen. And still Validate Brothers, so they'll maintain a little bit of control here and claw back at Oracle's lead. Beautiful plays from Swiftazor, getting the cutoffs on those players. Can he find a second? Lovely work there on Zeppa as well. Not bad for a guy who seems to uh, have retired, eh? He's still got a pretty damn swift aim. We'll stay on board with him for this next push. JTEX is also going to fall fell to the mighty Swiftazor. 10 and 8 at the moment. He's on a 5 streak and running. FTL's ready. He's got a Scarab as well. And he seems to have sniffed out his next prey. Next rotation's coming up real quick. We'll jump on. We'll still on Swift Swiftazor, actually. I hope he's in a, uh, in a bit of a quick position to try and find something here. Is he going to get caught out in this trap? He does indeed. Swift is all watching that back end. There was a uh, bombardment from JTEX. He found Rival and Dean. Swift is all on his own now. Can he push onto the bridge? Does not manage to find anything sexy. There is. Oh, that was. Nope, oh, that was a bit of a funky glitch. That was actually the, uh, the bombardment that we saw a moment ago. So, traveling through time and space here on Infinite Warfare. Still Zeppa running things. But yeah, James, very, very close game so far. 88 to 87 and rising. Not too much between these teams. Nothing at all to separate them so far. Oracle, they're trying to stay at, on top. They continue every time Validate get you know back onto that lead and potentially take it over. Oracle hop back on, and then they increase the lead even further. So they're going to look to try to keep doing that. Setsy and Dean, they're going to be fighting for control of this hard point. Rival and Zephyr trading out there. Swift is all going to come in for a bit of support. Spots a player around the trap. Can't find that kill. Eventually, it's going to be Rival to pick that one up, and he's on a four-kill streak now. So a good little couple of kills from him has allowed him to get up on those streaks and as well help his teammate with the rotation, but it's not going to be enough just yet. It is Oracle with the initial hold of the hard point and the spawns, and they're going to need to find a very good kill here on Zeppa. They do, in fact. They break into that one relatively easily, and now it's going to be Oracle spawning all the way over a drill. It's going to take them a fair bit of time to make their way back onto this hard point, uh, hard point here on Turbine. So that was a very, very clean break from the boys in blue. Validate Bros knocking on the door. There was only one or two players to answer that one. JTEX now doing a lovely job of holding on their Oracle back in sure footing. 28 seconds left in this hard point. The Bros on the offensive now. Can they hold on? We'll have a quick look. From Swift Resource perspective, he seems to be the tip of the spear for his team. First man in, tends to be the last man out. And here we are, still on board with Swift Resource. Here comes the push. Doesn't manage to find anything just yet. Hip fires away, gets cleaned up very, very comfortably. Zeppa now. Still for Oracle. As far as ratios goes, JTEX has found himself once again. All he needed was a quick nap, and there we are. Zeppa has surrendered. We kid. It's a lovely taunt, though. Swift is all still. Has his FTL ready. Shots out. Erad has been doing him nothing but favors so far. Does get taken down from behind. And this is Rival. Still in top control of that hard point. Hanger is looking good. FTL jump from Zeppa right into his face. Absolutely caught him with his pants down. Faster than light, indeed. Maka does get the cleanup kill, but it wasn't quick enough. Can they hold on here? This is still very tight between these teams. Validate Bros. It's still within grasp. Oracle got only a minor lead at the moment. Can Maka help keep that one going? He can't. He does get taken down. Rivals there to pick up the pieces. He's got a few in as well to his name. One player left in there. Gets the flush. Doesn't manage to get him with a hip fire. Now he's dead. Swift as all. Quickly coming in there. Here's an FTL. He could have closed that distance and maybe got in there quicker, but his teammate Dean just managed to get that kill by the skin of his teeth. There's two more. Cannot do anything there. And that was going to be Hopi and JTEX coming in, cleaning those players up. Still on board with Hopi. Almost managing to get the turn there, and Zeppa is going to be there to pick up the pieces. Validate Bros, they're just getting shut down every time they try and come into this hangar to hard point, but it will be rotating shortly over towards Drill, so we've got to be careful about that one, Validate. 
They want to be able to get control over spawns, but it doesn't seem to be happening for them. Dean now on your screen. He's going to come in contestion with a player right now. JTEX pushing forward. He's going to get shot down and ta uh, tagged by those nades there. And the second one from Dean, who's going absolutely off right now. 20 and 16, a two kill streak for the man. He's heating up here and trying to lead his Validate brothers to a victory in the end. But so far, it is not enough as of yet to get a lead. They haven't been able to maintain a lead. Meanwhile, Oracle, they've been doing just that. And of course, building on it every single hard point. We'll see right now. JTEX, another two piece for the man. He keeps on going on these four, five kill streaks, and that is so influential to the slaying of this game. If, you know, validate. If they could have a player that starts to do that, it would be so helpful. And Zephyr, he's combining for a couple as well, giving Oracle everything they need. All the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place, and they are coming together so nicely after, you know, probably one of the more longest standing teams since CWL Sydney Open number one. They're coming into this one very hot and working so well together. Meanwhile, Validate Bros, that lack of practice is really harming them, it, it seems right now. Yes, it's not a very big score line, but it's enough that Oracle, you can see what they've been working on. You can see that it's been working. Still on board with Setsy. James Josie Wright has been working. They're keeping it together with a team that has been absolutely decimating the competition here in the hard points. Swift as well does get taken down there as well. And at 147 to 201, Oracle now in the business end of the game. Setsy has got his sights set on the next hard point. Here comes the play. He's charged on through. Gets tagged up by that trophy system. No nays for him. Tipsy toe and dipsy doodle back and forth. Managed to get one. Zeppa comes in from behind with the second. Swift as well gets Zeppa. But Setsy is somehow still alive. And that has been a very clean attack there from Oracle. They're going to hold on to this one. 20 seconds left, James. They're going to get ever so closer to the win. And by the looks of things, Validate, they're setting up for the next hard point, allowing Oracle to get every single one of those remaining seconds. Ten more will take them to 2.30, which leaves them with literally 20, 20 points away from victory in the first map. And of course, that would be beating Validate by over 100 points if they're able to hold down on this one. But no, Validate, they're going to have those spawns. They're going to have control here. A couple players pushing in, not really able to do anything. Swift as well jumps off the map because he doesn't value his life. And uh, Validate, they're going to be in a sticky situation, but Dean, he comes out with another two-piece. Hopi, though, or rather Setsy, decides to get one of his own, but that active camo is popped there. I'm not quite sure. I think that was Rival. He can't find the kill there, and he's actually going to lose out on that one. So that's a waste of his active camo. There's no chance he's going to be getting that one again. And now it's going to be Oracle who have complete control over this. 15 seconds remaining until they take map one. Make that 10 as they continue to slay out on this half point. Setsy, he's going to pop his active camo. Players are going to be pushing him. He gets a four piece there. A really nice end to this one. And that's going to be Oracle taking map number one over the Validate Brothers. That, <laughs> wow, at the end there, they just took over and destroyed. You know, I just had a quick little question from the production team that got back to me in time. 250 to 155 was the original score in half point during pool play. 250 to 160 just then in a replay of a half point. Different map, it wasn't throwback back then. But, you know, half point overall does seem to be Oracle's game mode going off those two ones alone. Yeah. Oracle, speaking up big, you know, I... I could hear them the whole time, no matter what, comms, call-outs, yelling at each other, yelling at the opposition. Very loud, very impressive. You know, they were definitely getting inside the minds there, I think, maybe, of the Valade Brothers team. But thoughts on that one, Miles? What are you sort of seeing on that scoreboard? Well, the scoreboard wasn't... I mean, yeah, the scoreboard really does tell the, the, the tale there. But you're right, an improvement is an improvement. If it was 155 initially, 160 is going to be something special. I mean, and I think in the highlights, it's also going to show this, that... I, it, the 1v1s were mostly being won by the bros, but the team play was all Oracle. So they were making the right choices. They were rotating early, except for one hard point. It was the second time round on a turbine. It was pretty much, the, the, it was very much the business end of the game. Oracle were about to win it. They got to about 238, I think, on their final hard point. But the bros set up very, very early, and it paid off. They got a good chunk of time, and we'll see that in the replay. But I think that was a little too late for them, maybe. They, they needed to make that kind of call that would, they were going to abandon the last hard point and get ready for a longer one, maybe a more preferable hard point for them, one of their money hills. But this was basically it. You know, they, they slowly fell to pieces, and these was just kill after kill. Zeppa, massive two pieces there. And again, positioning was really what was selling the, uh, selling the wins there for Oracle. Yeah, I did notice some big two pieces, some big three pieces as well here and there between a few of the players. And obviously that bombardment that came down in the middle there was a bit of a change of two. Picked up two kills. The teammate picked up the third. Allowing them to come in and break the hill. I think it might have been Spitzord who was in there still on that hard point, but he got taken out. And it was just allowed that Oracle Esports team just to come on in and, and grab the extra time. A couple other things I, I did note was, like, while the team of Validate Brothers did have control initially, you know, Oracle played that 
not to perfection, so to speak, but very well because that weight. And I heard them with, even without my headset on. Okay, push down, push now. And you can hear them from here. And it's all just like that. They swarmed in at the exact same time and took over the hard, the hard point. And it was amazing to see. So, James, we're going to be heading to an S&D next, though. So, it's a non, non respawn game type. Do you think after that one, Validate Bros would sort of be feeling a bit better? Oh, just so you know, the first hard point was 6-5 in favour of Oracle when they played in tour play. It's going to be a hard one to call. I mean, I, I just think with the momentum, with the way that Oracle have been playing today, I'd have to give it to them just naturally. But then again, the Valde brothers, they have very, very talented S&D players. And we keep reiterating this. We're a bit of a broken record here on the desk about this squad and about the talent, the S&D talent there. But, you know, at, at this point, I, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to lean towards this Oracle team. So we see that S&D will be on breakout few of the players you go wandering around but they are back now so they'll get set ready for action in just a moment yeah they have to just uh they were feeling a bit too heavy i think have to drop a couple of leaders off but you know i feel that this is still looking very excited for that validated brothers uh, for that oracle team you know while the past s and d was six five I, I feel that the validated brothers squad might be sort of reeling a little bit now like seeing that hard point was done it was a different game mode it's a non-respawn it's a respawn game mode coming into that non-respawn type next miles are you sort of feeling that, yes, this will still go in Oracle's favour here after that first performance there in Map 1? I have no reason to think why not, except for that, you know, again, I'm just a big, big fan of, uh, of the lineup as far as S&D play goes. These guys are spectacular S&D players. I was, and I want to go back real quick to the ratios in the last one. The Swift as well, he didn't have the best performance numbers-wise. He got like 18 and 25 or something like that, but his plays were on point. He was in the right place at the right time, and things were good for them. Um, as far as, you know, who I want to see go off in this one, Swift is always going to go off. Mac is going to go off in the S and D, and I think Oracle have got a really tough game ahead of them. You called it earlier. You said it was a six-five yeah. first time they played. Damn, that is as close as it gets. And I think we're going to see a fairly similar repeat going into this one. I think during that half point game as well, we sort of saw the scorch come out there from the previous maps that Oracle played. You know, it was only a five, it was another another strong performance by them overall. And now we just have that rig draft coming up. I'm having a quick little look at that. James, nothing in that rig draft sort of stands out to me, mate. I'm guessing it's the same to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's the rig draft has really, this year, seemed to be very consistent. Sh should be by this stage. It, it should be. And, and, you know, there's definitely the rigs that have come out as the favourable ones for the professionals. Definitely a different map or game mode can influence whether you pick Overdrive or Centurion. Yep. But I'd, I'd like to believe that for the most part it's very consistent. Shout out to Templix, though, <coughs> for using Gravity Vortex Gun yeah. and getting kills with it. My man. That was fun. That would have been interesting. I don't think I actually saw that, but hopefully it's on some highlight reel somewhere because it would be Should interesting be. to see, definitely. You know, you just got to mix things up sometimes. You got to keep things fresh. No one likes stale. It's always some fresh stuff every now and again, so it is good to sort of do that. But looking at the boys' faces there from Oracle Esports, again, Cool Calm Collective as usual. Pretty casual stuff. Probably might have been sucking his thumb there, but I think he was just sort of leaning on the edge of his, his mouth. A little bit. He shouldn't be stuck in his thumb. They just want a map, you know. He doesn't need yeah. mummy just yet. Although it is Mother's Day, so a very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. You know, I've got to give a shout-out to them all. Mum, if you are watching, love you. But right now, so we'll get into this next matchup. Enough about the mums and into an S&D on Breakout. Miles, I'll leave it up to you, buddy. Well, here we go. S&D, Breakout. Familiar territory for both teams. The bros have ratted on about them enough. Super strong S&D players. Unpracticed. Maybe out of form but they have been fighting themselves slowly over the course of the competition. And then on the other side of the board, Oracle, we've talked about them enough. I'm sure you're all bored of that, but let's face it, playing hot, they've demonstrated time and time again, we've been able to pick apart their gameplay. They're very well-organized machines, if you will. We saw a couple of great plays uplink, you know, they're very well-structured there, and they know what they're doing. And when it comes to S&D, they tend not to throw rounds. You know, you make a really bum choice, and you throw a round, and you end up passing, you know, points in time to the other team. They're not really too keen on doing that one. So it's going to be... An extremely close affair, I think. And, oh, here we go. Scopey. Bit of Scopey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boys and girls. We're in for a treat. Maka. A treat. He's pulling out the yeah, sniper. He, he is. And also Hopi. This should be fun. I'm excited, dude. Oh, Let's get into this. Hopi's going for the, uh, for the thermal. He loves the thermal. I, I personally like the thermal as well. Hopi or Maka? Uh, Scopey. Scopey. Every, every day of the week. Here we go. Game number two. Oracle Esports versus Validate Brothers here in Losers Bracket Round 6. Rumble with Hopi on the offensive round. He's got Snipe. Can he find anything? No, nope. They're going to be going the other way. Oh. He got enough information. 1v1 Macca. against Maka. Uh. 
This is turns up. <laughs> Macca's not going to peek that again. He knows if Hope is there that he's got no chance, but he is actually. Macca's he's, big he's old balls. A balls. <laughs> few balls. Just a couple. Just a couple. Like most men. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, Bomb's gone down at A. Here comes the play. Is that rewatch, uh, rewatch Dean on Velvet Rose? He's coming in on the flank at the moment. He's about to engage somebody up close. 1v1 against Zeppa. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. There's another kill on the back end from Maka. He got set to you with his pistol. And here we go. The play for the bomb. Shots are out. JTX gets one on the slide. Can he get the player on the window? And low wall run. It's all on Hopi. Last man alive. He's only got the sniper and the pistol. He didn't say the player to his right. There we go. That is going to be the last player cleaned up. And we'll see Rival picking up that defuse. Of course, they're going to be giving it to him so that he can get closer to that active camo, probably one of the most influential payloads that we've seen in Infinite Warfare so far. Let's see whether or not that will come into effect early in the game, if he can heat up, or if it might take him a little while there. You can see Rival, he was sort of just chilling there, hope he didn't see him, Rival didn't see him until he'd already found that first kill. And there we have it. The cleanup is there, and we're going to be going into the second round, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we speak about this map ever since it came in very, very much defensively sided. If you are on that defensive side, it's a lot easier to get the win, and, and that was what Validate Bros were on. So now we've got uh, Oracle going on the defense, and we'll see if they can't pick up their first round. The sniper battle, though, it doesn't look like it's going to be happening, and already a trade's gone down, so a 3v3. Yeah, Mac, I didn't need to find anything with that scope this time around. Sniper Rifle brought out, but for not too... Not too fruitful so far, or oh, we'll make it JTEX on the run. And if I set as well, he's got two in his sights. Oh, he's just missing by millimeters there. You know, sometimes if you don't practice those quick scopes, then you, you get out of touch with them. You don't you don't feel the uh, the phase in you. So we'll see if he can't utilize that as they're gonna go for a rotation by the looks of things over towards this B-bomb site, it could be dangerous because the Oracle players are all stacked over there or somewhere near there. One of whom is flying down on the corner here. Can he contest Maka Maka? He's going to turn around and be able to gun him. That's Hopi going down. That's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> Great shots from Maka though. What a response. You know, Hopi went for the slide. Maka broke his ankles and that was it. Up and over him. And here we go. Here's a play for the bomb site. They know it's coming now. So here's the shots out. Setsi and JTEX. The dream team so fast. 15 seconds left on the clock. That's the nade used. They're going to make the play now. They've got the space. This is it. Rifles in. Mac has got the bait. Can he find them in the doorway? Ooh, so he does very just close. run away. He's the last man for his team. He needs to make the bomb happen. That's the bomb gone down. Oh, there it is. 1-1. One, one. If he'd made that shot, I would have probably lost the controller. Let's face it. If he got, I imagine, two with that and won the round. Yeah, the controller would be in the crowd now. I'd be asking for it back before the next start of the round. Yeah. That would have been something special. But here we go. 1-1 one, one apiece. JTEX getting that final kill. Looks like we're in for a long one, James. It seems like it at this point, and you know, it is one of those maps because it is so defensive sided that it does send, tend to trade out rounds and go to a get around 11 because of that. And then it's just down to, of course, who gets placed on that defensive side. It can be make or break for a team. And we'll see how Oracle go on their second offensive round. See if they can't find themselves an early pick, and they do in fact own over on to Rival, so that's going to be a good start. Can't find the second, so JTEX gets straight out, and Setsi as well, so from Swiftazor and a nade. So that means now it's all up to Zeppa, who'll find one, but he's still got two more to contest with. They're both in this bomb site. he contests one, can't find the second, a millimeter of health left on the man of Swiftazor there. So close to making that 1v3 happen, oh my lord. Oh, that would have been ridiculous. Just a little like, bit. Totally, look at him. Well, when you get that up close to people, luckily, Swift as all was not to be fooled by that one. I think Zeppa would have made the play of the tournament with that game. Probably. Well, there we go. Valet Bros up by one. It's, uh, it's a screamer so far. I've got a feeling now Oracle back on offense. Oh, excuse me. The Bros back on offense to see what Mac is up to. No snipes this time. Hope he didn't opt for one either. We'll go with Swift as all. He's carrying that bomb. He's at four and two at the moment. He's 50 away from his Scarab JTEX. Uh, he's also not too far away from that. We'll Any second now, we're going to get that FTL play as well. So. Yeah, you'd assume so. If you can find a kill or get the bomb down, I'm assuming that's why they've given it to him. So he can pick that up quickly, uh, quickly as possible. Seems like there's a bit of rotation going on from Validate. Eh? They'll be making their way through mid. They do get spotted by potentially two players there, which could give Oracle all the information they need. They're going to sort of contest here in mid a little bit. Nothing too set in stone as of yet as to where they're going to be putting this bomb. Mac is going to slide out. Little does he know there's one player in that control room just sneaking around. That's going to be Zeppa. 
And he's been able to find one kill, can't get the second. Then he distracts Maka enough for Hobie to come in, but then the trades are going to come out and leave Dean all alone in a 1v2. Two to contest with, heavily tagged. He's going to go for the shot, but can't make it happen there. And Oracle are going to be able to trade out a round once again and level the pegging at 2-2. Two two. Very awkward round. Both teams rotating around each other. And then a very, very challenging Mexican standoff in mid. Yeah. You got guns on us, we got guns on you. No one wants to make the first move. And in the end, Setsi managed to, uh, to peg that one up. So by getting that first kill, he opened the space for his team. Oracle managing to tie that one up. So we're back. Let's see what's going on. Scopey, no, no need. Again, hope he's erratic, unpredictable. Search and destroy play so far on this main stage has been one of his key traits to victory. Yeah. Oh, that was a lot of information garnered there. That Validate player definitely saw the whole team coming. Here comes the Converge. They're going to make a play for it. Shots out. Setsy. He's already deep. Oh, he gets tagged. He made a break for it and he got caught before making cover. Maka gets that first kill. This is JTEC's desperately not going to make that move. He needs cover and fire from a teammate in order to make the space. Hope you're watching the rear. They're too worried about the flank. Zephyr's also watching the back now. They're so concerned about that flank. But it won't actually be happening, as you can see on the minimap. They've put all those resources to the rear, and now they're going to they're going to bail. They've taken they've taken the uh, they've taken a hit. Setsi hit the deck. Maka managing to get that kill, and now they're backing right up. As you can see, 39 seconds left on the clock. They've got a lot of time to go around to A. Not a lot of movement in the Validate Brothers camp. They're sticking up to that sort of staggered back line that's running across the back end of the map. The only player in mid is this one, Rival. He is now in center. He's going to be the player who needs to spot these guys coming through the outside. But as you can see, everyone on Oracle hitting the wall run. That was the intel. It had to be spotted. Zephyr. Is the jig up? 18 seconds left on the clock. Bomb's going down at A. That's JTEX making the arm, so it's happened. Here comes the push. He gets Ooh. out. He gets dropped straight away. JTEX, can he find one on the wall run? He's exposed, but he does get a kill. Hopi, last man standing for Oracle. It's a 1v3 situation. It's going to be so hard to defend it from all over here, but he might be able to pick up Switzerland early there. It's a good start in this attempt, but Rival, he's already on the bomb. And I hope he's got no idea of it. He has to push here if he wants to make something happen and find two very quick kills. Not going to be able to happen. Dean. Shooting a couple of bodies there. And he lies down next to him. Check those wounds. Old teammate. Quickly, get his wallet. <laughs> Whatever. What's the secret to success? Get it, quick. Here we go. Round ending kill. Hopi. Difficult position to defend from. Again, he didn't know where they were coming from. He knew that the bomb was gone down. And when he backed over there to the, uh, to the commissary, it was a tough spot to defend from. That hard cover. The bomb was out of his line of sight. He knows that if two players are going to push him in showers, he's absolutely going to get wrecked there on the bomb site. So yeah. it was not going to be an ideal situation to be in. Let's see if anything changes happening here. Rival's going to have that bomb. As per usual, Swift Azor, yeah, nothing too special. But again, Scarab and FTL for Swift Azor. If he wants a six and four, he's going pretty huge so far. Valade Bros, only up by one round. Here we go, James. Defensive line for Oracle, pretty much straight down the middle of the map. They've cut it in half. Heavily stacked more towards the uh, A side. B is just out of reach if they want to have it. But here comes the play rival. First in, best dressed, tagged first in from kill. behind. <laughs> and it's a melee. They've trade back and forth. Two dead for Validate Bros. With Zora and Maka, last one alive. Maka's going to try to get that pinch on the front. If they coordinate this one properly, tagged up. That's brilliant. Back on a Swift Azor. He's going to make the play on the player inside. Here it comes. Beautiful concerted effort from the boys in blue. That is how you clear up a point. Hopi, all on his lonesome now. This is a tough round for Oracle. They're going to get the plant. Hopi's all on his lonesome. The timing, it's in his favor. There's one. 29 seconds left. And he didn't get the plant down, so here we go. It's going to be now down to Swift as all. He's picked up the bomb. Hopi, he's going to spot him up in close and person. Guns him. And he's talking a little bit of trash there, getting in his head, telling him how bad he is. That was so close to being that round that Validate needed to get, you know, you get that offensive round. And there you are. You've basically won the game from there, but it's not going to happen. Hopi says no. He wants to keep going in the search. He wants to win it. That could have been it, James. Turning point, not to be found. Chief, there was, that may have been the moment we needed. Either way, Hopi is going to be grabbing that bomb this time round. No snipes on the side, not even for Maka. So we'll get back to the bomb, see how the play develops. Let's see how Hopi does with this. He's gone 5 for 5 after that 1v2 clutch. He's building up to straight 25 points, in fact of getting the Scarab, might get contested by Rival, does in fact and loses that gunfight, but all of a sudden, three players are down for Validate Bros and Mac is last alive in a 1v3 and I highly doubt he's going to be able to do it. This may be the turning point that Oracle needs and it will in fact be. Finally, an offensive round is won and that is going to be Oracle going 4-3 up and this is in fact the first time that they've led the score. That bomb site, man, those doorways are showers. It's like 50-50, are they left or the right? 
If you kill a guy on the left, he probably goes to the right. If you guess wrong, you're dead every time. I hate that bomb site, man. It's not Sucks, a fan, dude. man. It's, it does suck. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I hate it. Maka. Three and six at the moment. Eight and six for Swift as well. He's been leading the team in kills. They're only down by one round, but was that a big round win for Oracle? Time will tell. Here comes the big, 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 big push. All four players charging A. Or B, excuse me. A has been abandoned. But the information has been passed. It looks like they may have been spotted, as you can see, moving on the minimap. Here goes the push. Yes, uh, Dean Swift is all with the Scarab. Gunfights are ensuing. We'll see what happens with, the pay with this uh, kill streak. Oh, he got enough information on his plays in mid. Okay, he's seen them. So that is going to give him enough time to maybe make the play. Player's getting tagged, that perfect slide. Managed to make it across this time. There's only Maka getting those kills in that previous round. There goes the arm tagged by the nade. Is Maka in position to slow this one down? In from behind. Who was that? It was JTEX. He found the option. He that found the window. Got two. Can he get another? Setsy goes down. JTEX is still there. Maka fighting for his life. It's happening in the back end. He hasn't seen it yet. The defuse. Obi gets taken down. Tagged up. All on his lonesome, but Zeppa comes out on top. We didn't want to call it, because if we say the words ninja disarm, the players might hear it. What a round match point for Oracle. They were able to come out of, of this one on top. And JTEX, a huge two-piece. Basically, what gave them the win there? And then, of course, Zeppa was able to get two of his own. So, very nicely done. Combining for a multitude of kills here. Finishing that one off with one bullet. Maka, not much he could really do in that situation. It can become a little bit of a cluster and so many players around, it gets confusing. Your auto-aim's dragging your left, right, and center, and it can kind of put you off balance here a little bit. And that's what's given Oracle this lead now. Two rounds, as you said, map point, which would put them 2-0 up in the series and definitely a step ever closer to that loser's bracket final they so desperately want. They want this long, extended loser's bracket run and to have their shot at Mind Freak potentially in the grand final if they make it that far, but we go JTEX with the Scarab out. He's going to be scouting around this A-bomb site, sees nothing. So he's going to allow his teammate to come in, push in, and get the bomb down. That's going to be Swet Setsy, sorry. And that should allow get him so close to his payload, which will give every single player their payload. The Centurion goes down from JTEX as well. They're going to expend all of their payloads, I feel like, in this round just to make sure that they win it. But Hobie, he's gone down for first blood. Finally traded out to Maka. The Swifters all can't win that gunfight. And Nor can rival. So Setsy with a massive two-piece, leaving Dean alone in a 1v3 for his map life here. He gets contested by one, finds the second one as well. And now he could potentially go for this disarm. But here we are. Zeppo. He won the last 1v1 engagement. Let's see if he can't do it again. He's going to fake the defuse. Drop shots him. And Dean with a 1v3 to keep Validate Brothers in this. He hook, lined, and sinker. The bait. He popped the top of the laptop. The time was on his side. And oh, he came in just enough. If he'd given him enough time, if he'd stayed on the bomb, come in at when, you know, on the clock on seven, here was the fake. There was the shot. Zeppa took it. Dean, absolutely crucial from a two-piece from the gods. He didn't miss. He didn't miss. And he again, his teammates getting wrecked out there on the railings. Ooh. Not how you wanted to go. Nah, no chance. But obviously that means Validate Brothers, they're able to win that defensive round. Now they've got an offensive round, and this is where things get tough. But we could be potentially seeing that round 11. That's what Validate is going for here. But we do have two payloads available on each team, Zephyr and Hopi with theirs. Swift is all, and Dean as well. Hope he got the information there on the players going towards B. As you can see, the, the total shift. Now backing that towards A side. I think the engagement is going to hurt when it happens. We're still on board with Swift as all. As you can see, out mid. It's the same thing. It's the Mexican standoff. They've got guns on each other. Players overwatching from top. Here we go. Nades are out. This is the play. There's something big has got to happen here. The bros, life's on the line. They've used their nades, the shots are out. Who's getting the tags? Swift as all sees his moment and he strikes, he gets one. He's got first blood. There's two players here by showers with him. Can he make something happen here? Two dead already for Oracle. Zeppa's down, JTEX is down. He needs to watch his back though. Still Swift as all. Dean's out there, they've swapped. They've got the kills and now they're gonna rotate to B. This is a great move. They have the numbers. This is the preferred bomb site. They're gonna force Oracle into a situation they cannot win. There's the positioning. They have to watch a flank. Shots out. Swift as all goes down. It's now a 2v2. 
Opie uses the specials there though, so that's going to be out of order. And he's going to be able to win the second one on Dean as well. Rival us alive, heavily tagged there. They're going to be hunting him down now. Setsy and Hopi, they're going to do it. And there we go, Oracle. They are going to win the search and destroy 6-4. to four. A very nail-biting game there, but that puts them up 2-0 in the series. And of course, one step closer to making that loser's bracket final. Yeah, big plays out of Oracle there. The first s &D was 6-5. They closed this one out a bit earlier now, 6-4 in the rematch of Oracle versus Dolladay Brothers. Quickly mentioned, though, that round 9 1v3 by Dean. That was an amazing, Ooh. amazing thing to, to see. You know, he saw some good plays overall, but I think that was one of my favourites so far in, in, in that s &D. Amazing stuff from both teams. That final round killed me, man. Killed me. I really thought they had it. I, I genuinely believed that that round was going to be going towards Validate. They had all the pieces in play, they had the man up, and then when they made the rotate around to that B site, it was like, perfect, they're going to get it down, they're going to set up that choke point, they're going to be able to sit tight and let our Oracle come to them, but they overextended, I think it was, it might have been, uh, it might have been Dean, I've already forgotten the names, but somebody overextended, got, yeah. got picked out by the two players coming around on the flank, and as soon as that happened, it just fell to pieces, and Rival was left watching the flank, worrying about the play from the rear, but when they realized too late, they got crushed there, and it was just an impossible scenario to get out of. Well, it was played perfectly by Oracle. Obviously, being a much more open bomb site, they had to go together. I feel like there's no point pushing in a closed quarter area when you have to go in a massive open place where three people could be setting up from. So you need to have that two-gun advantage, because you figured, okay, one person might be watching this way, so at least we get that first kill, get some information, try and pick up the next kill as well. You've seen you replay some of those rounds that went through went through during that S and D just moments ago on breakout and some big plays and a very few of those rounds. A bit of a no scope there from Maka misses that one but picks up the pistol kill. And I saw Maka he, he liked to sit up on there with that scope some rounds, pick up a few of those players who pushed on through. But at the start there it looked more of a round for round. I think it was Oracle who picked up the two rounds consecutive first, then sort of got to that number five, then they brought it back to a I think it was at four rounds and then just not enough. I really thought, like you did, Miles, that, that was going to go to that final round 11. Just that, that last round did seem in the favour of Validate Bros, but the two players from Oracle really clutching up right at the end. And you look at that, like from JTEX picking up, a, I think it was 11 and 5 there, almost in, that last, almost in the last round. And then Dean picked up a double figures. You know, you've got players going double fields everywhere. If I had to name someone, you know, rival, he struggled a little bit during the s and I think he was doing a bit of OBJ there as well for his squad. So obviously you can't really expect the OBJ player to, to outslay because his job is obviously to get the bomb down for your team. But up next, it is going to be an uplink. Third game in this series. Will it be another 3 0 look at Wasn't Cool play when these two teams faced off for the first time? Or can Validate Brothers answer back? James, I'll, just, I'll let you know. It was 7 3 uplink on precinct. During the during the pool play matches, obviously two two Oracle who won that one. Yep. Are you sort of feeling that this is going to be another three zero for the Oracle boys, and they'll head into that losers bracket match to potentially face off against Rage later on? Because I don't want to say that Rage are definitely going to lose, but you know, winners bracket final. But yeah, I feel like you know that S and D was definitely the Validate Bros map to win because of their advantage, because of yep. their skill. Yep. But. The uplink seems to be the detriment of Oracle. That seems to be their worst game mode. But maybe it was just the map that they played in the last series. Can't be too certain about that. I haven't been able to watch them on every single map to, you know, decipher where everything stands. But for sure, this is a map that could go either way. But I'm probably leaning towards Oracle. I just think that there's nothing stopping them right now except for an SYF precinct uplink win. But apart from that, I, th I think that there's nothing that can stop them. Well, you know... If you go off past results, 7-3 isn't a major big score difference. It's only four points, it's only two, two, two pointers, you know, a couple of ones throw, throw in there as well. Yep. So it's really not out of their hands just yet. And then being a completely different map as well, perhaps they have, or well, they may not have practiced too many maps, perhaps the one coming up was one of the ones that they had a bit more of a look at. Of course, that was going to be Throwback Uplink, which is coming up shortly. Again, myself, having a look at that rig draft and the payloads, not, nothing, nothing too special overall, I believe. And... The map fly through right now as the boys get set ready for action, Miles. Yeah, the only difference in the uh, in the in the in the rig draft was uh, Dean using Striker, uh, and he's going to be running Centurion, and JTEX is going to be using the Overdrive on his Warfighter. So that's the only difference between the two teams. Otherwise, active Camo, Reactive Armor, and FTL Jump. Uh, but there, that's something we've talked about a little bit. Overdrive can open up a play immediately. You know, within a second, it's got immediate return on investment. You know, straight away, you're already halfway across the map you may be able to make a big play happen. Yeah. Whereas the Centurion, a little bit hit and miss. We haven't seen massive things come out of it. Yeah. But as a defensive tool, or even as, an, as a, you know, 
yeah, more of a defensive tool. You'd have to be pretty ballsy to use it on an attack and run. But on, as a defensive play, it could work out. And if anyone's going to pull it off, Dean's one of those players. He's got the kind of brain to make that work. I mean, I've also spoken to a few players as well because I was questioning that during a series, <coughs> series earlier. And I said, like, what's with the Centurion being used in an uplink game? Said, oh, there's some reasons for it, but overall not too many, you know. But I think that one of the other reasons is if you have a chemo player who's going to run through that, you will then see them. And that's one of the things that people can sneak on through with that chemo every time and time again. But the boys are getting set ready for action, so I'll hand it back over to you, James and Miles. Take it away, lads. One interesting fun fact that I've noticed so far in this series, JTEX has been the top killer for his team on both games so far. He yeah. was 30 and 19 in the H in the high point, and in the S&D, it was 11 and 6. So he's been the number one slayer, which is dramatically different yeah. to the series against SYF. And uh, yeah, it was just mostly against us, to be honest, because otherwise he's playing pretty damn hot all day. Yeah. So he's turned back up. You know, he had, a, he, he had to have a breather. He had to have a nap. Feet were up. Kettle was on. He needed to take the backpack off for a moment or two. Whereas Setsi and Zeppa, they haven't really let up. So do you think no. they're going to have their crash a little bit later on? The energy's going to dip and they're going to lose their focus. Time will tell. James, here we go, man. Could be the last map we do today. It definitely could be. Could be. Setsi and the boys of Oracle. Are looking pretty damn focused. Yeah. Validate Bros are not out of this yet, though, man. They will never say die. You know, I, I wanted to bring up something about that whole Centurion versus Overdrive choice, though. I feel like that could also be, like, I'm probably just looking way too deep into this psychologically, but I feel like there could be, you know, some aspect of their mindset going into it that Validate Bros, they're looking at the defensive side. They're looking at this, we're probably going to have to clutch up. It's probably going to be a late game, sort of very close, and we need that Centurion to stop them from using their specialists or sorry their payloads to be able to get points on the board and well oracle are like let's go all out let's go aggressive let's get in their face and shut them down cut them at the knees and you see here hopi he starts off all right with the kill he will get traded out however setsy as you said has been so consistent three kills to his name before he finally falls we'll see whether or not he can't carry that over maka though he's going to start off quite hot himself four kills and two streak right now Defending with his life right there. Switchazor is going to be able to pick up this drone as well. He needs his teammates to push up and clear out the base. All right, he's got drone. He's got Maka over watching him from bridge. He's got two players pushing him from middle. So this is a strong push from Validate Bros. They need a couple of kills and they can make this work. Oh, JTEX coming from the side. Switchazor still got drone. We'll see how he can hold this one. He's making a play. He's making a run for it. He's got the high ground. Tagged up from behind. Instantly dropped. Hope he's going to be in position to slow that one down. Quick pass to mid, as we like to see. Can he get a kill as well? Dean's tagged heavily. Zephyr gets the kill there. This is rival in mid. He managed to sort of receive that throw from Hopi. But his teammates are being cut down left and right around him. Here's the play. Still nothing on the board. First major attempt has actually come from Oracle. But possession has been looking a little bit more like Validate Bros so far in the round, James. Yeah, it definitely has. I mean, they've been able to get a lot of map control and push up into the... Oracle spawn point, but it's not been able to work so far. No points on the board as of yet. I hope he, he has picked up that drone from middle though, and his teammates have been able to just clear out the field side of the map. See if they can't continue to do so though. JTEX now with the drone. We'll be running it, chucking it into the barn. Setsy picks that up. Let's swap over to him because he's going to get that smackdown and potentially a two point play, but he goes for the safe option, and that was probably the smart option too because he had two players who could have potentially contested him for that, and he may not have got anything. So Oracle, they are the first ones on the board with a quite convincing control over the Validate Bro spawn for a while there, but they were able to clear it and clean up and get that drone out through Barn. Very nicely done by them. And the drone will be, of course, reset. And here's Setsy, he's going for it again. There's only one player, Swift saw alive for Validate Bros. He's going to be lying down and catching Setsy off guard there, but Hopi, he's got something to say about it. And he's got the drone and goes for a throw, and he's going to make that one sink too. So... Oracle, a very good start now, two points on the board. Yeah, easy points for Oracle, you know, not necessarily scrappy. You know, Dallas, you brought up a perfect point earlier in the day, which is that the communication for Oracle is very, very clean, very concise and crisp. And that throw landed directly into the hands of Zephyr, and they are going to get a third, Ooh. another easy one-point throw for them. Oracle, looking very solid here. You know, as far as kills and the kill department go, they also seem to be outslaying the Validate Bros. And it is looking a little bit like a 3-0 at this stage. Still too early to call it. Still have Hopi now on screen. He's had a nice run there. JTEX has just grabbed that drone. He's going to be making a slow and steady push through Granny's. That's the lemon right next to him. In case you were wondering, that massive yellow thing on your screen is in fact the lemon. And here we are, still on JTEX. 
Doesn't have the help of his team, but he's making a cheeky run regardless. Passes to Setsy. Setsy doesn't manage to get the pass, and now JTEX still in position to make something happen. Setsy, he's gone around the back, goes for the throw, and it's in. Oh. Nobody in position to slow that one down. A lovely bit of 1-2 between Setsy and JTEX, and coming in from behind. That was a very naughty fourth point. And you can see the players on stage getting very vocal indeed. This is Dean. Shots out. Two-piece not to be found. Swift is our last member of life for Validate Bros. He, here he comes. The push from Setsy. Setsy, can he sink another one-point throw? Does indeed find that. No, he didn't. Yeah, she missed it. That was the first miss of the game. I take it all back. Well, it doesn't really matter too much because they are 4-0 up. And we'll see if they can't get on with the, with the rest of the game. We'll see if they can't continue the pressure they've been putting on. As I said before, you know, they put out that overdrive instead of Centurion because they want to take the fight to validate. They want to end this one as quickly as possible. Pardon me, as quickly as possible. And force themselves into that loser bracket final continue their deep run into Championship Sunday and it seems to be working in their favor so far and you know sometimes those those sorts of one-two plays that we've seen happen so far with this Oracle team very nice throw there from Hopi you know that's all that all comes down to the experience as a team that they've had in the last two months practicing together whereas Validate Bros a pickup team as much as they team before they haven't teamed in a while and you know a lot has changed, I'm sure, in their gameplay. I know Maka for a while there was retired. He's come back. But, you know, they're, they're not necessarily in the, you know, hottest of form, whereas Oracle, they just, they just are. It's as simple as that. Beautiful form from Oracle. We've seen a couple of lovely plays. That last one-point throw between Hopi and Setsy, that was a tiny, tiny window for Hopi to work with there. And he managed to sink that one point. So 5-0 at the half. The whistle has blown. Validate Bros down by five. Nothing to sneeze at. This next defensive round for them is going to be a bit of a mission, though. They were on the preferred attacking side, attacking towards bowling. Well, actually, I don't know. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make that claim. It's kind of a player preference, but this is going to be a rough round for them. The way Oracle are playing right at the moment, the kills are very heavily stacked in favour of Oracle. Maka, the only player going positive for his team. Everybody else sitting in the red zone. Let's see what Maka can do. Validate Bros playing for their tournament life here in losers bracket round six. They've had a good run, but it's not over yet. Not just yet for Validate. They need to get back into this one with an early point or two. And if not, they could be losing out on this one. We'll see wh whether they can utilize the three down and get on with it. Just can't imagine that they'll be able to get the point on early in the board if they're just continually pushing one by one like this, though, Miles. Well, we'll see how it goes. Why don't we find out exactly how the communications for Validate Bros are going with a quick Astro listen in. He's jumping at me. Fuck's sake. Nice. Yeah, grandma's, grandma, grandma. That's one yeah. bowling. One's in front, one's gone hay, and one's lemon. Now I'm pushing. Just hold, they're already up, they're already up. Hey, middle, 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 middle. Two middle, two middle, two middle. Hey, push, oh, push, 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 Nice. You fucked it, you fucked it, I got it, I got this, I got this, I got this. Right. I'm, go I'm gonna go tunnel, you guys go left. Hey, watch over, don't do it off, I do it off. I'm right, I'm right top ticket. There's nothing here. Oh, top ticket, top ticket, he's camping, dude. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Can you kill the guy top ticket? Tunnel dead. Let's do it over, let's do it over. Fucked it. Reset, reset. I don't know where he is, he must be in that bay. Yeah, underpass, underpass. Tunnel, 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 tunnel dead. Can I throw it, underpass, tunnel, 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 Oh, he's, he's close to me, nice. got him. Come, come, come. One there, Jack. One, 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 one. Nice, nice Jack. Shoot, shoot, shoot. No one, I got one. Can't be stopped, yeah? Very interesting listening to what the Validate Bros' minds are like. They sound very all over the place, so confused in their communications. But as a bit of a contrast, I say we take a listen to Oracle as well and see where their heads are at. Let me get two. One's fine. One, we can live with one. Okay. Oh, one lemon, lemon, take with four. Oh, one more, He's gone ball, ball. Weak, 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 weak. Jack, Jack, Jack. Just keep it. He went granny, granny, granny. Watch granny, watch granny, sit. I'm coming with you, middle. Underpass, oh, underpass. He's top granny. He's nice. Did it, did it, did it. Throw up straight, throw up straight. Get out, yeah, underpass. Right. Yeah, nice. B3, B3. I'm at B1. B1 corner, B1 corner. One mid. Dean's mid, Dean's mid. Pushing, foot, foot, foot. Dean dead, Dean dead. Foot, foot, foot. B1, B1. Dean killed. Gay corner, gay corner. He's gay corner, Top B3, B3. Nice. One more, one more. Top, jump down, B1. Tag, tag, tag. Street, tag, street. Get him, get him, get him. He's pushing up, he's pushing up. Yeah, I'm not playing with you. I'll, I'll, oh, okay, just lie down name, lie down name. There's gonna be one. There's gonna be two. There's three. This second. Yeah, okay, watch this. Good pitch. Watch out, watch out. Can I watch out? Yeah, no, two, 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 two. I want to already in. Grannies, grannies, pick up grannies. Come on, grannies. Underbus, underbus. He's on high one, high one, high. Ah, he's close. Oi, 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 oi. Be quick. 
You can be quick on the OE. Just leave it. No. Oh, I got one. Yeah, yeah, you only got one. You only got one. Yeah, oh, got one's in bond. One's in bond. Yeah, one's in bond. In bond. In bond. In bond. Wait, but it's on the side. Don't start base. Pass is out, it's good, it's 3-5, Validate Bros, they're not out of this yet. There's a minute 36 left in the game, and Validate Bros do not quite want to go home just yet. Maka's got drone. This looks like it could be another solid run from the boys in blue, Oracle. Their communication is clear, but they're looking a little frazzled, and this is the first time we've seen them look this way in quite some time here on the main stage. Hopi, though, does have drone back on the offensive. This is the first time we've seen them out of their spawn in a good part of 30 seconds here. That listening was very insightful. Can we see a play happen here? This is a nice rat run the outside. The gunfight's happening in mid. Doesn't look like they're going the way of Oracle, though. Validate Bros getting the kills. Here comes Maka flying through the air. Swift Azor does get the kill as well. Zeppa unable to make the play happen. JTX now all alone behind enemy lines. The drone has been brought almost towards him. He's actually still, his rival has actually grabbed that drone. He's running around the side, so he may be able to get a kill out of this one. Not able to do so. Drone still in the play, though. They're still pushing this one forward. That was uh, Seti, I believe, or Zeppa maybe managed to get in behind any lines there. Big shots, not made able to get the kill. Tags are plenty for Seti, James. These guys are back and forth. 35 seconds left on the clock. Validate Bros need a dunk, and we can go to an overtime. But Hope he says no. Two piece, not a third. Lovely work. Yeah, it feels like at this point, Validate, they don't really have it in them to push for that final two points. They're trying to, but Oracle, they're just applying the pressure. You know, they did for a second there. They did look a bit frazzled, but well, they got their composure back, and now they are in complete control of the map. All of the game, all, sorry, all of the kills are going their way. This is a nice little active camo play to go through for the two, and that cements it. Oracle is sending home Validate Brothers in a 3-0 fashion and heading to the low bracket final where they're going to fight for their place in the grand final, potentially. These guys are on a monster run. It's deja vu all over again. A 7-3 scoreline once again and a 3-0 series win again for Oracle. Taking this one out, they, of course, will send Validate Bros, or brothers, I should say, home in fourth place, finishing up here at CWL City 2, presented by PlayStation 4. But they're not going home empty-handed. They, they will still get $2,000. And I believe some pro points thrown their way from Acti and MLG and them. I'll just shower them in pro points. All that good stuff. But oh, Oracle, <laughs> Oracle, I can't even get words in my mouth on how phenomenal these guys have been so far this morning and what they have done. And as you were saying earlier, Miles, that's another notch on the belt. Just another notch on the belt or the bedpost, depending on how, uh, how the games are going. Giggity. Naughty. Very naughty indeed. Well, speaking of naughty, check out these replays. A couple of killer plays from uh, from both sides of the fence, and some uh, some hearty listenings as well. This game was not yeah. without its drama. Yeah, that camo played right at the end there as well. I was sort of containing myself because I didn't even realize he had camo until he went in camo flash. He just pops it and runs through. He got tagged pretty heavily as well during that last run, which you'll probably see right here. A few tags there, but just that the good old dodgeball, dip dive, dodge, duck and dodge coming on into fruition there, and just like that, spending a 7-3 scoreline and guaranteeing themselves that win in the series 3-0 so of course they'll go on to face the losers of the winners bracket final and that is looking to be another member for the match mind freak up against rage i am keen for that one that is going to of course be next once this one's finally wrapped up but a big congratulations obviously to the validate brothers team they finished fourth overall as i mentioned they will be taking home some prize money they'll be taking home some pro points and they've done a very solid effort as you see the bracket there now so oracle esports have guaranteed themselves at least third place, which is a prize pool of $4,000 for that team if they get third, if they finish up there. And they'll have to wait for the one more match, of course, which will be that winner's bracket final up next. Lad, oh, sorry, James, how keen are you for that winner's bracket final, Mindfeet versus Rage Esports? I'm very excited to see what Rage can really do. This is now going to be their toughest opponent, pr probably, for the whole tournament. And it's going to be the, man, the, the men from Mindfreak, the boys in blue, who have come all the way around the world facing off top tier opposition. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they stick to their, stick to their original predictions of not dropping a map for the event, but I'm hoping that, that Rage can bring the fight to them.
If we have a look at that lower end bracket there, Miles, as well, you see where Rage sort of came from. It was that 3-1 against Tated Mines. That, that's what sent Tated Mines down to that lower bracket. Then 3 owing Team Regicide. That's so Regicide joined on in that lower bracket as well to get themselves into that winner's bracket final. And up the top end there, you've got Mind Free, of course, Validate Brothers. They, they pushed them down with a 3-0. They pushed SYF Gaming down with a 3-0 as well. It's pretty much just 3 O's all around from the hands of Mind Freak at the moment, don't you think? Uh, if anyone's going to take a map off of them, it could potentially be Rage. You know, they've, that's yeah. a solid lineup. They had a great run yesterday. And they, some close and exciting games, but the gods do bleed. We know this much. You know, they're in good form at the moment. They've come back from the of States. Course. We've talked about it enough, but it's very, very possible that Rage can get a map off them at least. And if not, do the upset, because let's face it, winner's bracket final, it may not be Mind Freak's uh, most comfortable place to be in a tournament. They did lose to Tainted Mines yeah. at the last uh, CWL set open one, and that's where the drama really began. But well, who knows? Tainted Mines aren't here anymore, so yeah. they don't have to worry about let's that one. Honest. But it could be a new formidable opponent being Rage Esports. Now, the Rage Esports squad, there are some names on there that we are familiar with, some, some names that can do some damage as well. So, you know, it's not going to be the easiest of runs. I'm sure Mind Freak will come into this with their heads screwed on in the right direction. So do not go anywhere when we come back. The winner's bracket final matchup. It will be Mind Freak up against Rage Esports in just a moment. Nice peak jump shot there. Can he get the second player behind him? Beautiful oh. turn there on Rival. And he's still... This drill hard point here. JTX, he's the one on the hard point. He's going to get shot down off a of five kill streak. He should come in contestion with the player right now. JTX pushing forward. He's going to get shot down and... This slaying of this game, you know, validate if they could have a player that starts to do that, it would be so helpful. And Zephyr there, one of whom is sliding down on the corner here. Can he contest Maka Maka? He's going to turn around and be able to gun him. So Setsy with a massive two piece, leaving Dean alone in a 1v3 for his map life here. He gets contested by one, finds the second one as well. And now engagement. Let's see if he can't do it again. He's going to fake the defuse, drop shots him, and Dean with a 1v3. 35 seconds left on the clock. Validate Bros need a dunk. And we can go to an overtime, but hope he says no. Two piece, so not bracket final, where they are going to fight for their place in the grand final potentially. Three, round number eight, going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades, making it now a three v two. Here we go, bomb down at eight. It's going to be an easy climb. The active camo, why so smiley? He sneaks out there. He's going to find the kill, and there we go. Rotation. Oh, sorry, the spawns are going to be in control. Of validate, he's gonna find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just over the huge. Pitch. No, it's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most, and he's gonna be check your corners, son. This is gonna be it. And oh. there we go. <laughs> validate back into this one. Four to f and as you can see there, nothing but game talk here for the validate brothers. Their head is in the game. And I uh, don't blame them. They are behind by one at the moment. Dean Gunnan. Jeez, I wish I stayed to listen in for that one because they would have been psyched. But eradicated quite comfortably. Dean picking up a second. Dean's just been a two-piece machine this whole game. Oh, sexy. Absolutely ludicrous play. Right. Not doing, not making too many mistakes, but just getting out slayed, I think, a little bit at the moment. Yeah, Killify's positioning there was fantastic. On the end of, of two great kills there, receiving a ton of damage himself, managing to buy a, a whole heap of the time is ticking on down. And just just like that, they, they test the waters, so to speak, with that one. Just to see if he was out there, got the tag. Can he get the second? Where is the second player? He says, hunting around for him, not too sure. Bro, but if he keeps going around for round, it just shows how the talent on both these teams. They, they try and trade off inside a bike shop there. Fate picks up one on Eminence in the background. Lakey picks up a second on Chilean as well, making it now a 2v4. Down once again now. They'll wait for a bit of control, perhaps, and wait for that drone to come back on in, of course. Once it does get reset, here it comes on down now. And again, the battle inside the lobby will be taking place. Killer Pie tries to pick up the second beast. And One more wave of spawners. Here's the run. Goes for the pass. It's oh, good. And Beast sinks it. Beautiful work there from Rage. That call up on Main Street. Nice, nice, nice. I'm saying ball, saying ball, saying ball. Jump down, jump down, nice. I spawned her, I spawned her. Help me, help me. He's killing me, he's killing me. One what? shot. It wouldn't let me get it. All good, all good, all good. Second time. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uncontestedly, so they're doing very good at uh, betting and trading here. Ludak was just inside the hill there for a little time, trying to get some more up. Off the respawns, they will come. The trophies will go up now. It's up to Curry Kid. He's, he's going to try and redeem himself after that last round. Picks up all around him. He pushed too aggressive there. Too many players focusing up on him. Shots will come out. Can get to the double. I'm not sure how. Rapids on the screen right now. He's going to be coming out this little mid cut here. 
Finds one player in the back. Can he get the second shaky shots? But he'll do it. So a nice two piece from him, but it's not enough. Fighter, he's gonna shut him up. We'll see what they end up doing. Looks like a long raw run. Yeah, there. Great. It works Double out. Play. Double kill. And he might find the third in the middle of the map and potentially a fourth as well. Third there. Can he find the fourth? Hang alive for a bit, you know, just controlling it to it's still the nitty gritty of this map. There's nothing really Oops. crazy going on. Cody shooting everyone but killing nothing and then <laughs> killing everyone. So Typical Cody things, that streak. So really ineffective in the end there, but Hypers, he's going to be able to get another two PC. He's been getting two pieces after two piece. Make that three, and the man starts to heat up a little bit here. Ritter actually just played nice and slow, and he managed to just sort of sneak in there, get the break without really much effort, because his teammates were expected, or the other team was expected to have cleared out that ground, but it's not going to matter. Stems just have a huge two piece, and they're just comfortably in control of Turbine yet again. Thought worse coming out. Stems gets dropped pretty early. There's a camo player oh, right oh, in front oh, of Shoggy. Lucky. Didn't even see him there, <laughs> but picked up the three piece nonetheless. Ooh. There's a four kill. And just like that, Shonky, I think he was as surprised as I was at a player just strolling past his screen. Already, I do like that. But I think they need to have a little bit more presence on middle ground. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you've got your pull-ups on because you may pee a little with the next series. We've got Rage. Going up against the Juggernauts, it is Mind Freak. I'm a maniac, and it is my absolute pleasure. I got it out there eventually, and it's not the only thing we're going to be whipping out after this series. It's going to be awesome. We are here live from the CWL Sydney Open 2, where things are getting a little R-rated up in here with the action that's about to take place. And going through the uh, the motions here and taking us through the action, it will be Milboss and Bioacid. Thank you, gentlemen for once again hanging with us here on the desk here. It's going to be a firecracker of a series for sure, Milboss. I'm excited for this one. We're finally getting to the very, very important matches. The winner's bracket final, it was decided last night, and we're bringing it to you right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be an awesome game. Oh, it really is, you know. I'm really looking forward to the actual rage from the rage team of how much Beasting can fire up up against that Mind Freak team of Maniac. I cannot wait to get this one underway. Rage, a huge surprise to have come this far. Mind Freak surprising no one. They're uh, coming, uh, hopefully warming up from their slumber that they've had. But Mind Freak, 15 and 0 so far. That is a very impressive streak. They were 18 and 0 last time around, as we know, as we they headed into the grand final. So looking like they're trying to equal that record again. Rage Esports, you can see 15 wins as well, only dropping four maps, and they are on a six-map win winning streak so far. Um, Bioacid, that is quite a streak, even for uh, you know for Rage right here in this roster. Let's uh, excuse me, let's go through them. I'm tumbling over my words, just looking at these guys on the main stage right here. Beast, and of course here leading the squad of Fate, Flares, and Lakey. I mean, who from this squad should we be looking for in this series to step up against Mind Freak? I mean, we always talk about how Lakey is one of those players who have been around a little wise as Fate, Beast, and uh, Flares too. But you know, we've spoken about Lakey; he can fire up there. I, I feel that Beast on these respawns is really showing a new side of himself and really. Get behind that team, it's meshing well in regards to the chemistry there. So I, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm feeling Beeson should get a fair fit in the respawn side of things, and of course you'll have the veteran of fate coming in as well with the SNDs. I, I feel that you know overall it's a it's a fairly consistent of all these players should really be pulling up some big numbers. There's no reason why they shouldn't, unless of part you're going to be doing the OBJ work. If that comes down to you, then obviously we're not going to expect too much out of that player apart from he's getting hill time, getting the bomb plants, getting the uplink drone in, but Right there, you know, that beast, that that, that rage line up and just beast in space, the, the, the rage that's on there. This way, you need to animate, it's like some steam coming out of his nose for a raging bull. <laughs> Milboss, has it surprised you how far rage have come and how dominating they've been throughout this tournament? Uh, yeah, a little bit, I'm not going to lie, you know, at the last event here in Sydney, we saw Beaston fall a little bit short and, of course, Flares as well. Um, they were both placed equally top eight, uh, like seventh and eighth, respectively, or seventh through eighth, you know, equal placings. At that event, obviously, Lakey and uh, Fate, I believe they were both on that Chiefs roster, I think, at that stage. I can't remember exactly. I know Lakey definitely was. Um, and they have they did all right then. Once again, they placed top three or something, so they're already locked in for that and equal placement there. But the other two, uh, I'm feeling like Flares and, and Beeston have definitely stepped up this event. Beeston especially has shown himself and shown everything that he has to offer after a couple of you know poor performances over the last few months. 
That's the well, one of the rosters up on stage. And the next one here, of course, is Mind Freak. Look, straight over to you, Dallas. Who's the most attractive member of Mind Freak and why is it Shocks? Well, clearly it's Shocks because of that new that new fresh dew that he's rocking there. They haven't updated his photo yet. And I, I told production, I said, you need to get the new one in there. They're like, no, nah, not happening. But, you know, it really should have happened. There's a few fangirls in the arena, though, there for a fighter as well. They like to back the fighter man. So, of course, Excite, a.k.a. Cody, he loves the dab. And then you've got the muscle man himself, a buzzo. He loves the Louis Vuitton. Oh, he does. He does <laughs> indeed. He's, They're all he's, looking he's, sharp he, Yeah, Buzz is actually getting pretty fresher as he gets older. So yeah, pretty fresher. Throw that out to him. You know, I mean, like I said the other day, I remember him as a little little 12, a little 11 year coming up to me, and it was adorable at the time, but he's definitely changed. Definitely coming to the man that he should be proud to be. And as you see right there, Mind Freak, they're pretty more or less, you know, getting set up right for this one. They're not going to take this lying down. They're going to give it the full force you're behind gonna... that blue army. The full force, maybe the full Monty in celebration cool. pretty soon. You heard it right here, folks. The team photo of Mind Freak's going to be on the cover of the So Fresh album 2018. Make sure you keep an eye out <laughs> for that one. Looking for Mind Freak to stand their dominance on this, uh, on this series once more. And look, it's a broken record, but it's kind of truth as well, isn't it, Millbus? I think all the pressure, you could say, is on Mind Freak. Not that they're feeling much, because they're the one that are just expected to win and rage potentially, maybe, could cause an upset, especially in this first hard point, at least off the break. They're expected to go pretty much flawless. This event, that's what they're expecting. That's what a lot of people who are supporters of them are expecting. Could be a little bit difficult at points when Buzzo drops donuts on uh, S&D, but we'll have to wait and see if he can't you yeah. know, step up in this game. The last of, the last series he played, he did actually drop a donut. Zero mean, for six. You just go zero and six, but still win the S&D six and three. Like, do you need to get kills? Are they oh, really, Shocks uh, thought he did. He are they on really their faces. necessary? I mean, <laughs> no, but you are right. You are right indeed. You know, Buzzin, he, he can have some sketchy moments. There's one person from each team you usually see have a bit of a slow start. It te typically usually is buzzing. I'm sorry, Mitch, but you're not, you're to, I'm not just throwing you under the bus, but I'm pulling the bus out, putting you down the road, and then driving the bus over. Well, lucky <laughs> lucky for these guys, the, uh, they do have the Astro backpacks, which fortunately do fit a whole Mitch inside. So oh. they, they can go uh, backpacking and, and carrying him around, so that's okay. But Mitch has actually been performing really, really well throughout this weekend, I like yep. to think anyway. And as a squad, they've just been uh, dominating everyone else here. So we'll see how they perform throughout this series. We are in the winner's bracket final, and these are the maps. Throwback Hardpoint is what's coming up first. A Crusher Search and Destroy, and a Throwback Uplink. There are your three confirmed maps. Breakout Hardpoint, if we get there, Retaliation Search and Destroy. I actually, off the bat, want to talk about Breakout Hardpoint, gentlemen, because I've seen uh, Rage perform very, very well on this map, and yes, Mind Freak can as well, but if Rage can just pull off one of the first three maps, I think they've got a real shot at taking that breakout hard point. Oh, no, you, you're not wrong. If they just grab one of the first three, then yes, that breakout hard point would seem in favour of them because they do have a strong play on it. I think that the Crusher S&D should at this stage go in favour of Mind Freak. I've, I've seen them perform rather well on that map. They play it pretty consistently overall. So it's going to have to be obviously one of the throwback ones. I, I think if, if they're going to take any of them, the Rage team will have to sort of keep the score low on throwback uplink. Go for some cheeky ones here and there and just sort of keep that drone in their own control and just keep Mind Freak away from controlling the middle part of that map. But time will tell, though. Millboss, what do you think of these maps and game types here for both of these teams? I'm actually very excited to see the throwback uplink, mainly because that was the map in the winner's bracket funnel that Tane and Mines came back on and, you know, performed that reverse sweep to knock them into the loser's bracket. Ooh. Meanwhile, throwback was supposedly at that event, according to the Mind Freak players, their best map before their best game mode. So... It's going to be an intriguing one to see if Rage can't potentially cause an upset on that one, that's for sure. Look, if they can't cause an upset on the throwback hard point of the Crusher Search and Destroy, we go to the uplink, which we've always said is Mind Freak's bread and butter. But Mind Freak, they actually only just got away with their last win against SYF. That was a lot closer than when we all expected on that Frost uplink, uplink that they played. Bio, I mean, if it does come to that third map, and if Mind Freak are ahead 2 0 at that stage, do we still expect Rage to be able to, t to come out like bulls out of a gate? Or are they? Uh, what, what, what's going to happen through that uplink? You know, I think no matter what the score is coming into the third map, it's simply going to be Rage. They're still going to give it in full force. They're not going to go down easy. They want to get themselves into that grand final and secure at least a top two finish here. Either way you look at it, though, both these teams have finished top three at this event. Like That's the simplest way to put it. It's an achievement in itself. Obviously, Mind Freak, they are the expected overall winners of this event. Everyone's expecting them to win. 
But I, I feel that Rage, you know, they, being that underdog, being one of the teams that sort of surprised a couple of us here at this event, they're definitely going to be turning some heads. And if they can grab one of the maps off this Mind Freak team and give them that first map loss from the event so far, like that'll, that'll start playing on Mind Freak's minds a little bit. I mean, they could give them a bit of a shaking here. We shall see. It is the winner's bracket final where Mind Freak, we knew, lost in the last uh, the last event we had here in the studio just two months ago up against the former Tainted Minds roster. It was a huge upset. Rage looking to do the same again as we head into rig draft of our very first match. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are hyped. This is the winner's bracket final of the Call of Duty World League Sydney Open number two presented by PlayStation 4. It has been an amazing weekend so far and we are very, very happy to host you all here, both in the studio and at home. It has been an absolute pleasure. We hosted a record-breaking 31 teams from the Asia Pacific region. They're all fighting it out for that $30,000 prize pool. Each of the three teams remaining are going to have at least $4,000 as your third place prize, 7K for second and a cool 14 grand for first, and not to mention the 10,000 pro points per player for that first place spot. All gonna be useful for, for the upcoming relegation online tournament as well as the CWL Melbourne last chance qualifier coming up July seven to nine, which I'm sure all of your beautiful faces are going to be there. It's going to be an absolutely stellar event, the last event in the calendar for the Asia-Pacific region. We are psyched for it. And here we are at the winner's bracket final of our second event. We've come a long way, guys, and it's going to be a great one for sure. The Juggernauts, the heavy favourites, Mind Freak, they're at one at the tote, up against Rage here, who are trying to cause the massive upset. It can be done. So much raw talent on this roster and on a throwback. Hard point, mill boss, it's definitely a possibility. It's a possibility, but I'm sure that Mind Freak is going to do something rage inducing that absolutely crushes the hearts and minds of this rage lineup. They're going to try their hardest. I know that for sure, and I no, don't, have no doubt in my mind that they can pull off a miracle, but it is going to have to be just that, Dallas. I oh, know it will be indeed. So obviously, these guys are set, ready for action. That final counter down in this rig draft, 10 seconds left before they load on into the match. And both teams obviously getting cool, calm, and collected. Their thoughts, their training, they want to be as one mind, one body, one AR, so to speak. Yeah. As the lads get set and ready for action, you see them now. The fist bumps go out, handshakes, everyone's happy, everyone's cool. And that's what you want. You don't want to be stressing too much just yet. The match hasn't even begun. You just want to be focused. Focused on getting this first map behind them, focused on getting the 1 0 up in the series lead here at the winner's bracket final. As those in the audience, of course, can see on that main screen, all of them are in the game. They are set and they are ready to rumble. I want you guys in the crowd to get behind this matchup, of course. It is the winner's bracket final. Make some noise. There you go. Come on. There we are, firing up in the crowd. And we are firing up here at the caster's desk as we head into this one. On point, on, sorry, on board with Excite. See what he can do off the rip, of course. He is the most recent addition of this Mind Freak roster, and he did bring a lot of aggressive nature to the team. We've seen that, just not in their play at home, but abroad as well, and it's been working out very well for them. You know, Rage, you, you look at this lineup of players, they're all very aggressive players as well. Beast and, and Flares love getting the face of their opponent's fate as well. Lakey, he likes to just sit back and be the passive aggressive player. He will just, you know, he can change depending on the situation. The Mind Freak off the rip, they've got the most points on this hard point in the middle of the map on the train platform. We're looking to continue that as they absolutely <laughs> destroy flares. There's shocks. Very nice shot. Buzzo with the two-piece. And the man, you know, as much as we give him a bit of flack for his search and destroy play recently, all of his response have been very, very admirable. Yeah, no, he has been picking up indeed. Look at shocks. 5-0 and oh, and that five kill streak already here off the bat. Mind Freak have lost the spawns though, and this could be a little bit troublesome now. As you will see that Rage squad down the back behind Barn. It's going to be Shox just chilling outside here for the moment. He wants to get inside that hill. He wants to streak up. As the hill comes in, he's like, whoa, there it is. He got the kill anyway. Fully streaked out Shox within that first 30, 30 seconds gone now of the full-time time. But 41 to 3 here for Mind Freak as they lead the way just for now. It is going to be Fighter who's struggling to get out of the gate on 1 and 4. Yeah, not, not the best start out of him, but do you really need it when your teammates are doing enough work to get you almost 40 points above, or exactly 40 points now almost 50 points above. Rage really not having much luck getting control of spawns, maintaining it 
and then getting themselves on that hard point. As soon as I say that fighter, he's able to get a three piece there. So very nicely done by him off the respawn. Yeah, picking up that team kill there as well. I think it was on shocks. He said, that's enough out of you, buddy. Yeah. You don't need any more kills. I need to get some for myself and have my <laughs> own stats. Right now, Beeson, though, getting a nice little clean double there. Trying to get inside this hard point here at Barn. They do break it with only 10 seconds left, though. Was it really worth it? They'll get that scrap tire. Mind Freak already going to be pushing down mid to try and get set up for the next one out. Why is the gun battle going on? Shocks is not done yet at challenging that last one, but Lucky makes short work out of him. 72 to 15, the scoreline now becomes as they head on down to that lower hard point there at Bypath, and the lads are going to get set up here. I did challenge Excite actually earlier on to put on the Warden and try and juggle the hard point here if they were going to play, play on throwback. They are playing on throwback. I don't know if Excite did put the Warden on, though. You the lads, well better have. The lads from this race squad, you know, they're, they're still doing right slaying department. Why is the Phoenix just shocks and maybe Excite there who are just doing the out slaying side? So far, yeah, definitely. He's shocks. He's, def he's put on the slaying boots, as he usually does, Excite. Always in there in contention. He likes to get on this hard point and contest up close. The Beaston and Lakey, they've been able to outsmart him and outgun them. Buzzo and Excite both going down there. And a few points are now in the favor of Lakey and his squad. But they are still, of course, a little bit under 30 points, uh, sorry, 60 points behind. And that's, you know, that's a full hard point that they need to hold to get back into this one. And it's going to be such a tough ask against Mindfreak, who also have spawn and hold of the next hard point that is now on the baseball, baseball field. Or globe, however, however you like to call it. I know players have some interesting call-out names. Oh, I said I'd call it 360 Sphere as the boys head on back there now to try and take over. Mindfreak, of course, capitalising on those first initial points Ooh. from it. 110 to 34. I also believe that Shox still has all these streaks there to use if he's he does so later. Too. You know, he's, he's looking to st double stack on his own streaks, not that it's actually needed at this point in time. But this Rage Squad, you know, they are pushing down hard. They're trying to break this Mindfreak setup. We just couldn't see them doing too much work, though. Look at that. Four players down. It's all coming up blue in the kill feed oh. as Mindfreak just start to take away a little bit. Shox <laughs> just gives a salute down to his man of Flares. Flares, sorry, as he takes on down that one kill. Got picked up by Fate of, of, afterwards. And just like that, it's now going to be looking like a few little scrap times again going to Rage. You know, at least they're getting some more points on the board. That's what you need to see. Mindfreak are not going to let him have that final scrap times. It's excite this time to challenge forward and pick up the extra points. He hasn't put it on that warden, which is very disappointing to see. But he does have his FDL jump available to use very early on in the game. You know, we're still just making it onto the second rotation of hard points. We are back on the train platform. And him and his squad are going insane. Shocks. He's already been on two seven or eight kill streaks. He almost doubled up on his kill streaks just before. But he does still have that Trinity Rocket and Bob Barman to use if he so desires. But at this rate, I doubt there's much use for it. I mean, they're over 100 points ahead. And it, it just keeps climbing. There's nothing the Rage have really been able to do continually, uh, consistently, sorry, giving off the salute to Flares and the squad. And he's just shutting them down at every angle here, Shocks. He's on another level. Buzzo. You know, he started off quite hot. He's, he's fallen off a little bit. But once again, when you've got teammates of shocks and Excite going as big as they are, there's not, many re not really that many kills to find. As Rage close in to that 50-point mark, they do hit it. They'll get the extra scrap time there. So Mindfreak can't welcome them to the 50-point club. But they're still on aim for the 100-point one. As you'll just see like that, this is the excellent comeback now from, Ra from Rage team. They picked up the scrap points. They've got the bar control now. They're picking up a few extra kills. They've got to watch out for Fighter. He's hiding on the outside there. His team come out this right-hand side line. Of course, the left-hand side there for Rage, if you're looking from their POV, POV. And there could have been a big double there for Flares. He got taken down by Buzzo. Buzzo with the big double instead as he breaks on inside. He will get cleaned up in the end. But was the damage done? It is contested inside of there now. And Mind Freak are getting the points. They're going to be holding this onto this one. There's 30 seconds remaining here, and they might be able to get all 30 of them if they're not too careful. Beeston needs to play this passively, allowing his teammates to come and support him. He pushes in a little bit too soon there, so he's going to get shut down with no chance for a trade kill. Fighter and Excite, they're both on the hard point right now, racking up time and the points. As they're going to be able to get a couple more streaks going. Not too much, though. Shox is still holding on to everything he's got, as well as that active camo this early on. Very nicely done by him to get it as soon as he has. Rotations should have been even full effect down towards that bike path. It looks like Rage, they've got control of it initially. Fate here. Has to be careful, though, because he's getting naded out quite heavily. 
Jumps across dangerously low there for someone. That's going to be Fighter contesting him, sliding him, finding that kill. His teammate shocks as well on Beast, and Flair's the only one able to make a trade happen. And this might be able to get one kill. It will, in fact, the Scarab there. So Ooh. impactful. Lakey, though, kneecaps Fighter. Bait comes on top for Buzzo as well. And here's where they can start to try and get a little bit of contestion in, try and potentially push for control of it. But there's always another Mind Freak player there. And if not one, there's two of them. So it's being so hard for Rage to get into the these hard points and control them when there's so many my freak players around yeah a few pay payloads are available from a few different players on each team at the moment but not too much can be utilized at this time obviously that lower bridge that hard point is about to come to an end with eight seconds left the players will be starting the rotation it is going to be rage who are currently back there lying in wait but they've got to watch out for buzzo buzzer's going to try and sneak in here he's managed to do it he's managed to pick up a kill he's gotten to that back side now he's just got to hold down this bowling alley sides a few players around one in front picks that one up one outside in the alleyway as well. He knows. He's aware. The caller came. Can't get the kill on Beaston, though. Beaston gets in there. It's going to be now Rage, who are going to try and get some extra points out of that globe. Hard point. A few players around, but they'll get set up. Excite picks up one, picks up two, and then Fighter on the third. It's only one player up. And just like that, Mind Freak take over the hard point. Some score streaks coming out from Excite and Shocks. Shocks with the two-piece there with the bombardment. Very impactful. And Excite, I think, found one with his... I think it was the Trinity Rockets back a little bit earlier. And it looks like my freak, they can definitely win off this hard point. There's still enough time and they're going to be able to use this Trinity Rocket to get Lakey off as well. Buzzo, he's still on this hard point. Now Rage, they need to contest only five seconds remaining for my freak to take this one out. Eight seconds remaining on this hard point and that's going to be it. My freak, 100 point, point club Rage and that is going to be the statement made early on here. Mind freak in the winner's bracket final, as Milboss just said. 100 point club in them, which is supposedly suppo supposedly going to be their hardest competition at this stage, or should be at least. It looks like they're on another level. There's still a chance for them to come back throughout this series. We are very early in the game, but it's a dominating start there, Bayer. Yeah, no, my freak will be feeling extremely confident now after that first respawn's done and dusted. 250 to 90. I, I feel that that'll just set the tone now for them in their own ability, of course. We, we're sort of used to seeing that from Mind Freak. Rage, hopefully they can just sort of shake that off a little bit now. Just focus on the next map at hand. It's the non-respawn, it's the S&D. So it's definitely something that they can fight back on and perhaps get that around. But as I said, I think it's on the S&D on Scorch off memory. So I'm sort of feeling a bit... Crusher, I Crusher, think. sorry. Crusher yeah, you time. are correct. So I'm sort of thinking that was going to be mine for his bread and butter. A little bit there, we'll, we'll find out. But here are the replays, as you see now in, in man. And yeah, it's a, a fairly bit of that kill fee was blue. James, I, I, as Miles said, uh, I think it was yesterday, it really was as if the Global Pro League was at the hyperbolic time chamber for the Mind Freak squad because they've come back bigger, better, stronger than ever. Absolutely. There's no stopping them right now. I can't see any flaws in their gameplay. Yes, of course. There's the opportunity on particular maps to maybe out, at like S&D especially, to maybe outplay them, maybe pick up a couple of rounds, potentially fight for that win, but it's going to be so hard in the form that they're in, in the knowledge and the experience that they've gained overseas, and they're utilizing that to the full effect. It will actually, you know what, they're probably not. They're probably not even using everything they learned, because there's so much stuff that I'm sure they learned. You know, they talked about it in, in an interview yesterday, I believe, about all these teams, E-United, E-6, all helping them out in their in their plays and, and teaching them all these different things that can help them win internationally and just elevate their game to a whole new level. Game one in the books of this series, ladies and gentlemen, it is the winner's bracket final, CW Sydney Open 2, and it's pretty much what we expected, Rage, a dominant force, until they go up against the blue wall of Mind Freak. We're going to be heading into that Crusher Surge and Destroy next. Dallas, we talked about how one side of that match was as we go into the, the Crusher Surge and Destroy. I think this is kind of what's going to set the tone for the rest of the series, or do you think the tone's already set? Because 250-90 to 90 is a convincing hard point, and we've already touched on that uplink where it might go either way, but I, I really think a lot's going to be pinning on this uh, Crusher Search and Destroy. Yeah, no, a lot is, obviously. I still feel that Mind Freak will pick up this Crusher S&D victory. I, if I had to pick some round numbers, I'm going to just throw out a 6-2 to Mind Freak. Just with that there, I, I, I hope that Rage can prove me wrong, as I always say, because it's always a, it's a great feeling as a caster to be proven wrong when you have a doubt on a team, in my opinion, you know, because you get shocked, you get surprised, and you, the people in the audience, the viewers at home, feel it when you, you know, exert that excitement as you cast. And I don't know if it's too little too late, obviously. They've still got some more maps to happen, but Rage really have to sort of dig deep for this next one if they want to try and tie this series up one apiece. 
that rig draft was about as exciting as watching paint dry. Everything all uh, pretty standard there, all your usual rigs and uh, payloads going to be selected. Mind Freak versus Rage, both of them just relying on the skills that they have attained over many years of Call of Duty action. Mind Freak looking to make this a sweep. They are currently 16 and 0 for map count. Rage now, they were on a six map count uh, spree. Obviously now just losing one against Mind Freak. If you're in the minds of Rage right now, James, what are you thinking? How are you going to go up against Mind Freak after a loss like that? You have to bring the fight to them. And on a map like this, which is very stack heavy in origin, you want to be being aggressive and, and you know, utilizing those opportunities to trade. Don't push things one at a time, and maybe not even two at a time. Try and make sure that you stack enough players that you can always get the favorable trades. It's going to be hard against p players that have the caliber of Mind Freak's gun skill, but I think there's definitely an opportunity there for the players of this caliber on this Rage team to cause a bit of an upset. And, you know, I'd have to agree with Bio's estimation of the scoreline. It's probably going to be quite one-sided, but I'm sure that a lot of the rounds will be quite close, maybe come down to 2v2s, 1v1s. So Millboss is suggesting a 4-E uh, rad stack all on one point. Yep. Uh, Bio? Pro strats. What do you think? How, well, if you're uh, if you're if you're in the minds of rage right now, what are you thinking? Uh, do you have your tail between your legs, or are you kind of expecting that hard point loss? You know, I think they might have been expecting it a little bit after the first full rotation, going into the second rotation that hard point. I think they've got to sort of answer back because if Excite gets that scope out, which he sometimes tends to do here on this S and D, it's going to be one of those things that they've got to sort of answer back for it somehow, in some way. So I wouldn't be surprised if someone from the rage squad decides to try and scope as well in that long side of course where that B-bomb is located half the time where they sometimes stack when they want to rush for it as both these teams set ready for action here at map two it's of course Rage and Mindfreak here in the winner's bracket final right now let's have a look over the map see where these lads are getting set up nothing too different but as I mentioned Excite Milboss with that scope in here he should be able to get a nice pick down on B if some of the players from Rage push it but it doesn't look like they're going to do that they're actually opting for an A play and this could be very handy. Let's see what Shox is doing all the way back in spawn. Being a little bit sneaky here. Potentially playing for a bit of intel. Just lying down waiting. And this is what I like to see. The reaction from these My Free players. They're sending two on a flank behind. But they might come up against too many players here. If they're not too careful. It's going to be Fighter and Buzzo. They're going to get flanked as well. So here we go. Lakey's going to come from, from behind. Find Buzzo. Fighter does find flares, but Lakey's going to be able to find the favorable trade there. So now it's going to be a 2v3 in favor of Rage. A very nice start to their S&D campaign here. Excite. These close quarters. Gunfights. Not going to be able to do it. And there we go. Rage. They're going to be able to pick up the first round, only losing one player, I think, there. Yeah, no, it was very good to see from that Rage squad, obviously, getting that bomb down, forcing Mind Freak to come to them now and play their game instead of playing that Mind Freak game, which they tend to force on a lot of teams. After some aggressive rounds, you sometimes tend to see on their defense, of course. Mind Freak now over to the offense. They will go. Excite will change on up to a different kind of set of the scope this time around. Yeah, probably and a smart decision. <laughs> we'll see how they break out this time, though. Looking at that mini map, sort of the standard stuff I'm, I'm used to seeing from Mind Freak. Again, you know, you are going to sort of see a, a stack on a defensive side as well. They just want to try and guess. And as always, a 50 50 chance of a guess from the bomb side. Sadly, this time, though, Ray, you have guessed wrong. And the odds were not ever in your favor. <laughs> As that bomb has gone down now at A, they're going to have to now wait for this Rage team to come to that bomb site. Of course, Mindfreak will set up the way they want to set up. Try and get the first get kill of the round. They will. Buzzin will find Lakey there. That's one down. Trying to get the tag in a trade. Ooh. Flares finds Buzzin, but Shox answers back with Beast. And 2v3 now with Flares and Fate having 20 seconds left to get on inside here. Get the three kills and get the bomb defused. We'll fight it, making short work of flares. Fatal now, though. Loads them with a sniper and pistol. I think he's in his hands. It's a hard man to ask to do that against three Mind Freak players in close quarters. And just like that, the score becomes one apiece. We went from Mind Freak to win out in that 2v3 situation. Favorable. Once again, not dropping a player until then. And there we go. Fate, unfortunately, not really being able to find anything with that pistol. Some players are very, very proficient with it, but unfortunately he wasn't able to do anything in that regards as we go now. Rage, they're going on their second attacking round. Looks like Fate's going to keep on with this sniper rifle, see if he can't find a pick down mid. He might spot out Buzzo if he's not careful. Oh, oh so close to finding that first pick, but it's also very good intel from Buzzo. Why are you still contesting that, though? As much as Fate might not be known as the best sniper in the region, he definitely has the thumbs on his hands that can pull off something pretty amazing, so... 
You want to be careful when you're going around him, but now you can see the flank three my freak players going to be pushing up onto this one. Flair, so he's going to find the first pick here, but Fighter, he comes in, stops that bomb plant. Oh. No, he doesn't. In fact, the bomb has been planted here. He gets the two beats, gets the third oh, yeah. as well, and Fates just around the corner. He's going to be chasing the ace here, but Buzzo is going to be able to find that one. Somehow he has two kills in this game, and they're going to be able to get the defuse. I think Fighter stopped for a moment there, straight after Buzz got that kill and said, come on, mate, that was my ace. Yeah. But no, that was the, then they paused for a second to see who was closest to their payload, who was closest to Streaks, and they gave it to Fighter because he, he's on his way there. But 2-1 now in favour of Mind Freak. Fighter, big plays out of him on that flank they pushed, and that's the sort of aggressiveness that I, I spoke about seeing on the defence from a team like Mind Freak. You know, you've got to watch out for that because when they get aggressive, they will come on that flank. They'll either come, or they'll come four-man rushing straight down the middle at you, and you've got to keep an eye on these boys as they break off in the round. But just like that, we head into round number four here. And it looks like, again, it's a 50-50 chance. But Rage has gone for a bit more of a sort of typical or semi-typical setup now on their defense. They want to try and not build themselves up on one area. They want to keep themselves spread a little bit. And you'll see it now. The bomb goes down at B. Still no one picked up yet here. And it'll be up to Lakey Miles to grab a kill or two. He's going to be able to find a couple of players and some intel there, but Buzzo's going to out absolutely gun him. Shocks as well onto Beast and already making this a favourable situation for Mindfreak, and now it's up to Fate, who hasn't even found a kill yet. He will find one there, but it's not going to be enough Mindfreak. They will go up 3-1 in a round count there, and you're looking ever closer towards your prediction, maybe even a 6-1 if they continue this form. Oh, well, let's not count our chickens before the eggs hatch, as I like to say sometimes. Old people things. Oh, you know, just mix things up a little bit here. But 3-1 <laughs> is the scoreline, as you mentioned there. Four rounds now gone. The good old days. This, was, this would be the rage round, but it is round number five for those that are just new to my sort of casting. Going to have Fighter with his payload available. Six and one, he's currently on that defensive side as well. So really picking up some good kills. In the last two rounds, he's picked up five kills alone out of a possible eight. So bear that in mind as a team from Rage. Again, you know, it's a 50-50 chance, Mind Freak. Bet on the wrong horse that time. And the bomb will go down at his B site. As you'll see now, Flares is aware he's been noticed. Oh, they know he's there. Oh, Fighter! Fighter! Three P's with the Trinity. And then Shoss comes in once again to steal the man's ace. What are you going to do about it? But Fighter, nine and one now. We're in shock and all. We couldn't even change back to another player after that. Uh -huh. Fighter really going deep and going big here for the team. 4-1 <laughs> the score becomes from the Mind Free squad. I saw those Trinity Rockets coming down, and then I saw the positions of the Rage players all out in the open, and I could tell, Just I think we were watching Beeson at the time, I could tell he was just like... Well, yeah, we well, tend to like, we want to watch the offense, we want to watch the guys who have to yeah. do the job of the bomb, the bomb carrying side, so you know, it's, it's, it's our bad that we weren't watching fighter, but who knew he was going to get a three-piece? <laughs> in the end, it's going to be Mind Freak up 4-1, and Rage... This is coming a little bit out of their control. They're going to start pushing down now. Buzzer's able to find one. Uh, Fate, he gets a two-piece. And as soon as that, a very nice aggressive round. And that's what I was saying at the start in the pregame. We need to see Rage take the fight to Mind Freak. Exactly. And be the aggressors here. You think that they've learned so much about the aggressive style that the NA scene likes to bring into this game. You have to match that. Even if you haven't practiced it that much. Obviously, they haven't practiced it against top-tier NA and European opposition. But... You know, there's definitely times where you'll be able to switch on enough to go for very aggressive rounds, get those favourable trades, and in the end, there wasn't anything to trade because Bate just cleaned up shop. Yeah, no, a big round there from Rage, definitely getting that extra point on the board for them to allow them to sort of, you know, recompose after getting cleaned up by, with a three-piece from Flyer. Beast and Flares, here's another good round for Rage right now. They've got the two-man advantage coming to this one. The bomb has gone down at A as well. Excite and Buzzo. Excites a one and four. He has to pick up a little bit here to help his team out. This is the round to do it because there are still four players up. And that bomb is ticking on away. He spotted one. He knows he's there. Can he grab the kill? He's decided not to worry too much about it. Buzzing perhaps got the intel to him. Well, here, pick up a tags all over the place. There's an assist on one on Beeston. He knows there's one top stairs. He knew he was around there somewhere. Excites being dropped to back turned. Fate, I believe it was. And now 4-3. Rage answers back with two rounds in a row. Two very good rounds of that. Like, I don't know what they did, but their post-plant situation, the setup that they had was just basically un 2 v 4 it seemed. Yeah. There was nothing that Excite and Buzzo could do, and as you said, Excite was basically in a 1v4, so it wasn't going to be that easy as it was. As we go into this next round, it's going to be round number 8, Mind Freak once again. They're going to be on the offensive and fight it. 
He's still got that bombardment to use if he wants. He's not going to use it just as of yet, but Lakey, he's using his payload. Not quite sure which one that is, but he's going to be able to find a kill. Oh, and another one there. Fighter is going to be able to clean up shop, but now he's in a 1v2. He's already found one of the kills in this round. Sorry, no, both of the kills in this round. And he needs to be able to pick up two more to end it out. He's going to rotate now over towards B. He can put the bomb down, and you know what? He can find somewhere to hide and throw down this bombardment. You know, it's a good chance indeed. Of course, he still has that armor there as well if he needs to pop it out. And it might be the round to do so, obviously. He's come very close to picking up an ace round for round in the past. Can he finally grab one here? Sees so one there. Doesn't see the player on the right. Jumps over underneath him, though. Sliding every which way. Lakey with the hot back step. Up and over he goes on top of Fighter. And he will grab the defusal now. But Fighter currently 11 and 4. Big Man. place to him. Also, three bomb plans to Fighter. I think it might be a point. The defuse in there as well. Actually, yeah, it would have been for the defusals. But. Another good round now there for Rage. Four rounds apiece, I believe the score is now. And they're really taking this one to Mind Freak round for round here. After it looks like Mind Freak may have walked away a little bit earlier on. And you know who's not having a good search and destroy game? That's going to be Excite. One for six. The man is not stepping up as we usually see from him. But maybe this is the round where he'll be able to do it and pull something out of his back pocket here. Because it's going to be a 4v4 stack on A. Except for Buzzo, who's still watching mid, and you can see the rotation from Rage already. They're, they've decided that that's not worth it, and they're going to make their way towards B here. Buzzo, he needs to get some intel, but they're not giving him any. They're rotating through their spawn, not allowing any vision from the middle of the map, which means they can make their way to B safely without any intelligence from Mind Freak, who will probably start to push at least two players, maybe even three on that flank, but Beeson's going to be there to stop them. They push one at a time. This could be devastating, but he's going to be able to catch one off guard. That's Shox. Shox is going to be wondering how the hell he was there. He'll get contested by Cody. Finally, Excite gets another kill here, and it's going to be a 3v3 retake situation for Mind Freak. He said, Fighter, he's still got that reactive armor. He can use Fake. Fate, sorry, he has FTL that FTL there, yeah. as well. So if need be, he might use it. And here's the bombardment coming out. I don't think it's going to find anything really. Oh, no, nope. in the end it does on flares. But he's going to be traded out Lakey now in a 1v2. Spots to play around the corner. He'll find that kill. But then there's Fighter. Yep. The man who's on a 13 kill game in this search and destroy is going to be able to clean that one up and get this defuse as well. Moving ever so close to his next score streaks. But I doubt he's going to have time to find him because they are in such hot form to be able to take the next round. Yeah, no, Fire's about to double up on Scarabs, you know. You can roll two out at the time, I guess. Why not? And you'll see there on that final kill cam that Fire to pick another kill on Lakey. Good trade right at the end there by MF. You know, just in the nick of time too. I think he had about 9.8 seconds by the time he got to the bomb to get the defusal there. So, you know, very good indeed for them. Not so good for Rage here. But Rage, they're not out of this yet. You'll see Lakey fully streaked out, it would seem, as well here. So he's going to lie in wait to see what Mind Freak do. You're going to see in a little while he'll be able to use that ping. If he sees anyone when he does ping it out as well, he'll be able to get the callouts to his teammates. His teammates are more or less protecting him back in spawn. He comes to believe that Trinity Rocket coming on down. Will it be enough to shut him down? Will it be enough intel for Mind Freak? It looks like it sort of is. You oh, see a few of the Mind Freak players, so the, the Rage players there moving a little bit now. As it would seem, Fighter still with his payload there to be used. Here comes the bombardment though. They're really slowing Mind Freak down. Oh. Big double kill from Lakey with the bombardment. Shocks and Excite both down. They didn't pick up Fighter though. And he's one of the ones you've got to worry about. But it is a 2v4 here for Mind Freak now as they try and get this bomb and do something with it. There's one down. Doesn't pop the armor though. Busted into 1v3. Can't do it. And just like that, we go to around 11. 5-5 five, five on the scoreboard. This one's getting a little bit closer for comfort than I'm sure Mind Freak would have wanted. And, you know, we were thinking that it was pretty much Mind Freak's game. It seems to be a map that they tend to enjoy, but right now I can't imagine that they're too happy with their performance, especially Cody, Excite, sorry, and Shox. They're both going with only three kills at the moment. Not the start that they would have wanted, not the game they would have wanted in this search and destroy. Well, Fighter, he's getting a lot of kills. He's got 14 kills. Like, what do you need the rest of the team to do when he's getting 14 kills? That is very true. Buzzo, though, he's got six for himself, but this is the active camo play from Lakey. He's going to be able to catch one player off guard. That's going to be Fighter for the first kill. Heading oh. in the second, no shocks too strong. And that's going to be the trade. Very nicely done, but it favors Rage because they're able to find Buzzo as well here. But Excite, he'll come in with a two piece and maybe Big make round. it a three. That's going to be Mind Freak taking round 11 relatively quickly and a very nice round to that. Good stuff here. It's actually going to be shocks in your final kill cam. Excite, a very big last round to get that two-piece. A round 11 in the winner's bracket final for game two. That is how we do it, folks.
I was feeling a little bit worried for Mind Freak in the end, but I tell you what, Fighter leading the charge there with some amazing numbers on the scoreboard and leading the team to victory in that one. Look, there's a lot of things we can break down from that game. I want to touch on one of the final things, though, which was Lakey, who went hero mode yeah. for Rage until that final camo play, Dallas. I thought he really needed to do a lot more with that. Oh, you know, he obviously did the best that he thought was the right call at the right time. It's a hard thing to, to ask from any players to really, you know, get into their minds and, and sort of see how they react. I don't think he saw the other play at the back door until it was too late. I think he only saw the one in there, and that's why you sort of thought that that's why he's shooting now, because he thinks there's only one there at the time, and that's when he realised he's getting shot in the back. Thought he may have picked up that second kill, but say it wasn't to be the case. But, you know, both players on those teams had, had phenomenal, phenomenal games, of course, fight I'm talking about in Lakey from the Rage Squad, definitely taking it to Mind Freak and really putting Mind Freak on the edge. Mind Freak now 17-0 and 0 map count throughout the CWL Sydney Open 2. Impressive numbers and again, deja vu of what we saw yep. of the previous event, except it was at this stage that things started to turn around and the previous Tainted Minds roster ended up taking them down in the winner's bracket final. James, do you think it's going to go that way again? Uh, for, I, can't, I can't imagine it will, but this has definitely put some doubts in Mind Freak's mind that that might not be as strong of a map as they previously thought. And of course, Rage, they'll be taking a lot of good things away from that. Lakey on fire. And, uh, you know, that's the sort of play that they needed. They needed someone to step up big if they had to take a game to Mind Freak. As much as we talk up Rage and we talk about how close it was, you can't fight the scoreboard. 2-0 is what the series is currently standing at, Dallas. And that means there's only one more map required for Mind Freak to knock Rage down into that loser's bracket final where they'll face Oracle if they get there. But remember, we've seen reverse sweeps before. Throwback uplink could be the case. What's it going to take for uh, for the team here to kind of get their group back and, and give Mind Freak a run for their money, Dallas? I think, obviously, the most important part of a map like Throwback being so small is that middle part of the map control. You know, they need to just hold that down and keep Mind Freak away until they want to make a play with that drone. If they can perhaps just get a couple of little ones, as I said in the pregame, Get a few little ones in there, you know, keep the score low, but in their advantage and just hold Mind Freak down. And that's what the, it's going to come down to that whole slaying ability. If they can just get the numbers up, get the slaying numbers up across the board, not just two or three players, all four, getting the slaying numbers up, you know, some streaks as well will help them. And that's what, that's what I feel it's going to need. I, I can't see it, if it is going to go in favour of Rage, I can't see it being a very big score line. But if Mind Freak start getting some real A's, then it's just going to keep them out. We said at the beginning of the series that Mind Freak looked shaky in their uplink against SYF in yesterday's match. However, they still came out on top. Do you think that shakiness is going to play a part in this series, James? I can't imagine it is. They're a very professional team. There's not much that can really impact their met mentality. Obviously, a very close session short like that will have a bit of a bit of ba weight bearing on their minds. But probably for the most part, not too much. I can imagine that they'll be you know, closing this one out quite convincingly. But then again, for Rage, it's always about putting, you know, of course, you may get that mid-map control that Bayer was talking about, and then push up, keep applying the pressure, and as I've said all series long, take the fight to Mind Freak, and that's when you'll scare them, showing them how good your gun skill is. Having a look at the rig draft now, there's going to be no surprise. We saw a couple of interesting choices of Centurions throughout yeah. some previous matches in the uplink. It's been put to effect a few times, but I think the better choice, the FTL jump, which both teams picked in that situation. Dallas, this could be our final map of the winner's bracket final. Uh, and look, Rage, we've seen these players over years. Dallas, you've seen these players from when they first started. I mean, still very impressive players. And we hype up Mind Freak so much. Yes, they are the dominating force in the region, but they've also got so much experience under their belt from overseas. We have to give so much credit to Rage for coming this far against the opposition they've faced to make it all the way to the winner's bracket final and a guaranteed third, a minimum third place finish. Yeah, no credit where credit is due. Obviously, Rage, if they weren't any good, they wouldn't be here to begin with. They're in the winner's bracket final right Right now they've guaranteed themselves at least a third place finish and i feel that you know both teams in that losers bracket for the lower bracket final sorry rage would probably prefer to, to verse uh, or not be down there to begin with but you know if they know that they can beat oracle they know they've done it before they know they can probably do it again so if they do drop down to that lower bracket they'll, they'll feel confident enough to get back into the grand final that being said obviously that oracle team down there wants their revenge and mind freak are not going to make it look any more easier than what it's going to be as they get set up ready for this next one Rage going to be doing all that they can to hang on in there in the winner's bracket final. The CWL Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. We're two maps deep. We may only go to the third before we head back over 
to our losers bracket final where Oracle are waiting their hot to trot to face one of these teams. It looks like it's going to be Rage, but we shall see after this map in the remainder of this series. Gentlemen, we're getting into it. And Millboss, who are we going to be looking for at the beginning of this map? I'm really looking at Excite from Mindfreak to step up. He had a little bit of a poor performance in that Search and Destroy, but then of course I want Leahy to continue his form. The way that he played in that Search and Destroy was absolutely outstanding. Beaston, of course, has been stepping up in his slaying recently as well, so I'd like to see him continue that. Flair's doing some objective work in this team. It's nice to see, as well as Fate, just consistently all round a god on this game. So. Let's see whether or not they can't do it as we get into this one. Look at that sexy transition on the screen from our gym men. Thank you very much for that one. And I mean, by who do we really want to start off with? Oh, obviously, on his own board, we'll stay here with Lakey. I think that's fine. You know, Lakey's going to try and get this middle map control. You see on the mini map, though, top left-hand side, Mindfreak have already forced that out. They're pushing this up as fast as they can. It was going to be one play. Excite with the double. Shocks Ooh. picked up a third. There's a three down, or pretty much a four down there for a moment. This parcel should come in. I heard the call come out from Fighter, I believe it was. Yes, it, well, that was Excite, sorry. But then he said, oh, he passed. The pass came in. The, the ball went up. It was good. And the two points in favour of Mindfreak. And this is what oh, I was worried about relay. for him. The relays. Wow. This is what they had to try and shut down. Here it goes again. The relay for another two. Fates killed flares, though, in a team kill. I'm, I'm not hoping that was just an accident. There's not, no sort of technical difficulties over there. As you'll just see once again, it just seems like these guys are just going to keep relaying this back and forth for the time being until Rage find themselves in this match. At the moment, they're really getting no luck and excite. He's being such a nuisance in their bait pace that even when they try and go for him to shut him down, there's still Shocks who's able to get that relay in and take his place. I mean, Mind Freak 6 0 to start off. Got to watch out here, though. Here comes an answer back from Rage. The Mind Freak boys got overconfident, left the holes open. And the Rage boys found their way through. They did get, they get three of them dropped, dropped straight after it, but they got the points on the board to answer back. Six and two, the scoreline now becomes. I also noticed that Excite's actually fully streaked out already within yeah. the first minute of the game, so you've got to keep an eye out for that. He may not even worry about using them at all. They might just want to keep trying to get as many points on the board they can during the first half here, and I wouldn't really blame them. I mean, he went on a five-kill streak with two dunks to start off this game, so when you're doing that well, you're going to have a good start with some streaks. Shocks as well is fully streaked out and continuing that dominance, and you know, they were the two players. Oh, there's another four down, but they were the two players that didn't perform that well in certain destroy. Now they're stepping up their game as usual. Shocks is going to get in that dunk as well, and it just seems like there's no no defense. There's no one ever there for Rage. As much as Mind Freak overextended and allowed a two-point play to go in from Rage, Rage still has no defense whatsoever. Yeah, they've, made, they've fixed that mistake now, obviously, with that overextending cause, forcing, allowing Rage to really spawn when they needed to to get that two-point in before. You'll see now, back on that mini-map, Mind Freak going back to basics here, looking to get set up once again, looking for that map control one more time before they get decide to run that drone. They're just waiting for the kills to happen, waiting for players to show themselves. Flair's been a bit sneaky there, but making sure work out of it when we buzz on Fate. Shocks on Flares and Lakey picking up, trading for the two for two just a moment ago. First quarter's now gone, eight to two remain uh, in the scoreline. Two of the twins on the clock remaining here in this first half. And, you know, here comes it sounded like, yep, Trinity Rocket in from Shocks that just decided to clear out one player. Excited, decided to go a little bit of a different path that time, but if he's got a teammate down there, did he stay alive long enough? No, he did not. It's going to be fate picking up Buzzo and Lakey taking down shots there as Flares now making a run here for Rage with the rest of his squadron. They're going to be pushing up the bike path of the map towards Lemon, which seems to be the way that a lot of the time teams like to go on this side of the map. It's not really working out for them too much. They don't have much control here. As much as they've been able to pick up two kills, though, Shocks will find Lakey with that Scarab there. So it might be a little bit harder as we'll see if Beeson can turn on this player. Turn and burn once again onto Shocks. Nicely, nice couple of kills strung together there for Rage. Now we've picked up the drone again. Beaston, he's starting to fire up a little bit. Fate, he has that drone ready to go out of ground. Mouse, go for the throw, and oh. it's going to go through. I don't know how Fighter didn't get that interception, but either which way, that's Big three still piece. is a massive three piece as well. Cleaning up shop after that one. Five points the difference here. It's going to require three possessions and two uh, and three dunks if they want to get in the lead. Yeah, you know, obviously, he looked like he was inside that portal to block that one. He got three kills afterwards, but too little too late, son. Doesn't matter if you get the kills, the points already been gone. Eight to three, the scoreline. Of course, here we are here once again with Rage, trying to run this drone down Grandma's side. Of course, Mind Freak aware of it. Shock's making very short work, and it flares. Goes for the one point. Ah, interception! Fighter pops on up big there to grab that drone. Fighter's playing very well as well. 10 for 8 as well as the interception there. Very good work from him to start off. 
Shock Sight still has all of his streaks available. I think Shock has used his bombardment and Trinity Rocker there. No one on uh, this rage line has really been able to pick up streaks as of yet. They haven't been able to go on any three down there, though, for my freak means that that drone push that Shox was going for is shut short, uh, cut short, sorry. His fate is going to try and get back in the middle of the map. He does. His teammates, they're over in Granny, trying to put some pressure onto my freak's base. They're doing a decent job of it. Flares actually picks up a two piece there, but all of his teammates have been killed, so there's no one to pick up that drone and get it over towards the opposition's base. Excite tries to throw it over the underpass or under the uh, overpass. I, I, over I, I the don't underpass. Want. You're getting Both there in ways. the end. And uh, it's not going to be successful there. And that's going to be the end of the first half. Five points, the different Mind Freak. A very dominant set of relays there, giving them the lead on the half time. Yeah, and they still got some streaks there as well. I think we only saw the Trinity Rocket really come in. I think they might have been from Shocks, perhaps. Then we saw a Scarab, too. So you still got Curry. I think he's still fully streaked out. Shocks with the Bombardment still there as well. Yeah. So it's going to be a bit of a struggle now coming into the second half. Hopefully, some relays can come in favour now of the Rage team. They can do what Mindfreak were just doing to them, you know, get that drone up over, over, over the top, get your players in where they need to be and get those two pointers in. Off the rip, Mindfreak are going to have a four stack pretty much out of this left side. One player is going to be shocked up in the top window. They'll find a kill onto Lakey in the background. Fighter on the screen right now. He's found one at the start of this half. Searching for a second one, but not going to have the reaction time. Or maybe not even the sensitivity to be able to rotate and look over there. But you look in the mi at the minimap right now. Players from Mind Freak, they're just trying to reset here. They did find a few kills and clean up shop for Rage. Buzzo, he's going to go down towards the lemon. If you can't spot some players contesting that, Lake is the first one. Shaky shots there, but he'll find the kill. Heavily tagged, though. Needs to be careful as one more is going to contest that fate. Oh, sorry, Flair's able to find that one, too. Excite, he's been able to pick up his FTL jump as well. He will go down there, but it, do it doesn't really matter as he's been able to pick up that payload. He'll be able to utilize that later in the game if need be. But a minute is gone already, and not a single score. I don't think anyone's even touched the drone as of yet. But finally, Fate, he'll pick it up. His team, they're trying to go for this one. Excite's going to shut that down. Very good job by him and the def defense there from My Freak. So they've been able to sort of reset a little bit here. No one really with map control. Excite's trying to help his team go for it. And it looks like the Rage players, three of them, are going to contest this one. Two are going to fall there for My Freak, and that means that they'll be able to go into Ooh. this one. Another one falls. That's going to be Shocks going, sorry, Buzzer going down. And now here's where Rage make a play. They're going to go through this bowling by the size of, by the looks of things. But the bombardment will come down. It will take out Beast in the drone carrier. Excellent. But he's still got a throw off and a point on the board. So now a four-point game. Yeah, Excite killed himself there. Why not? You know, do it, taking one for the team, literally, by picking up the other members of the opposition side and then killing himself in the process. And just like that, 8-4, the four-point scoreline difference. Deficit for Rage right now. It's not out, of, not out of just yet, but Fighter is firing up. You can hear him from down here in the casting section. He is definitely feeling it. As all these players now from Mind Freak make this number play once again. Big Nate's coming from Fate. They know he's down there. They Two players dropping now from Mind Freak. This run's been cut short. He's not going to worry about too much on the drone now. Players oh, swarming freedom. left, right, and center. Shoss gets two, can't get the remaining ones though. And like that, it will be Lakey picking up a clean little double. Goes for the third. Knows there's two down there, gets the call to his teammates. Might be able to pick him up and get the drone for a run, perhaps. Just like that, they're slowing things down a little bit. Mind Freak now forcing Rage to play their game, pushing them back and slowing them down. But the drone's been picked up and he's going for a run. Ooh, Couldn't get the over. kill. Buzzing, shutting down flares and fate to stop that drone play. A very nice play by him. So weak and yet able to find that second kill. The reaction time as well. But Beeson, though, he's definitely putting on a bit of a show. 23 kills for the man. The best in the lobby in the slaying department right now. We'll see if that helps his team, I guess, path their way towards some more points on the board. Two minutes remaining, and they need to get four of them. Fighter, he's going off right now, trying to help his team as much as possible on a four-kill streak as well. The man is definitely... He's trying to pat his stats a bit. Exciting shocks have been going at it all, to all, all tournament long. It's now Fighter's turn. And through that, they're able to find another one-point play once again in the hands of Fighter. So a five-kill streak and a one-point play. He should be good with at least a Scarab, maybe a little bit more. And, of course, working his way towards that reactive armor. Shocks. he's just picked up active camo, however. And this is going to be, I believe, the bombardment coming yeah. in as well. And this should be able to find at least one player. He gets two, in fact. And that's going to clear the way for Shocks oh, now the with the active camo to get that drone in for a two-point play there. And they're going to extend the scoreline even further. It's going to be so difficult now for Rage to come back into this one. If they even get the chance, 
it's going to take them a couple of them. And right now there's only one minute left, so it looks like at this point probably going to be a Maverick win, but never count out these players from Rage. Oh, that's exactly right. And a big teamwork there on that last two-point play there from Maverick as well. You know, Buzzing could have ran it, got the call out. His teammate had camo, decides to pass it off, pop the camo, running for the two. Excite, again, taking one for the team. Picking up Lakey, <laughs> but also killing himself in the process. Classic Cody moves. Uh, as you see right now, Buzzing up on that long side of the bridge, picks up one, answering after a couple of kills of their own. I think they just had a Trinity come in as well, but didn't get a new one. And we'll just see now, we'll see if Rage can answer back in these last final 33 seconds. 11 to 4, that score line is currently. The drone comes on down once again. The kills are going in favour right now with the Rage squad, but Mindfreak are answering back tit for tap, they say. As a few players now on the lower side of bridge trying to make a push up here. If they can get that drone, maybe go for a final one time run. Looks like Faith's going to do exactly that. He's got the drone in hand, goes for the one pointer. It's up, it's bouncing, it's no good. And that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Mindfreak, they're going to 3 0 rage here in the winner's bracket final. A very interesting game that we saw out of the uh, Rage Boys. They seem to have a couple of moments of, of gold, but for the most part, Mindfreak was just way too strong, and that's going to push Rage down into the lower bracket, and here's where we see Hopi get his opportunity to take a swing at these heavy hitters. Ladies and gentlemen, Mindfreak into yet another grand final here at the Call of Duty World League Sydney Open 2, presented by PlayStation 4. They make it look easy, this, this crew. This team, this lineup, these monsters, Dallas, what an uplink that was and what a performance by the entire squad. Oh, it was indeed, you know, when you've got Excite getting fully streaked out within the first 30 odd, 40 odd seconds of the, of the first half and two uplink, you know, four points for his, for his team straight away, it's looking to be one side. They relayed that a few times, you know, it wasn't really getting away too much until the end of the, end of the first half there and as we head into the second half as well, you sort of saw it stand, speak for itself. Rage weren't doing too many things wrong. The slaying wise, they had the numbers there as well. Only one player was sort of going a little bit lower than the rest. But the rest of the guys, three of the players on the team, were putting up some good numbers. And I sort of did mention prior to that, you know, you needed all four to really outslay Mind Freak to be able to hold that yep. control. It was such a monstrous performance. I saw Cody yell something across stage at the beginning of the game. I'm not sure what it was. It turned out to be bite the pillow because Excite was not holding back at all, James. It wasn't. He really stepped up in that one, especially after a disappointing search and destroy. 26 kills for Manny. In fact, you look at the scoreboard right now. Shox, Excite and Fighter all with 26 kills. Buzzo lagging behind by a few with 19. Meanwhile, you know, you talk about this, how everyone on that Rage team needed to step up. Well, we only had two of them. That was Lakey and Beeston with above 25 kills. Both of the others under 15. So... Unfortunately for this Rage lineup, it just wasn't enough to contest these Mind Freak players. Mind Freak just too dominant in that performance, guys. I mean, it, I mean, their performance really says it all. Was but there was there one or two things you could have picked, Dallas, that you think Rage could have potentially done better to probably get some kind of semblance of a of a uh, an offensive push and maybe get a map here. I mean, it's it's obviously very hard when you look at their score lines. The S and D was clearly their best option to get the, to get one of the maps. Uh, just sadly, it wasn't in their favour. It wasn't it wasn't the way it was meant to to go. As some might say, it's, it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Eleven to four in the throwback. You know, overall, I didn't see too many mistakes. They were trying to run the drone a little bit. The only difference was instead of throwing the drone up over that underpass down near Bolling side, they kept trying to run that sort of down near Globe and. That was the only difference, but I think they were mainly going for the one-pointers. They didn't have the players and the numbers to go for the two-pointers, so they had to go for the ones just to try and stay in the game. But sadly, this didn't happen. Excite and the rest of the team were not messing about in the first minute of that game, James. Not even close. So the relays were impeccable. I don't even know if Rage contested them. They started spawning out near blue, and they'd just start running down and overextending either to the Mind Freak base in that first half or into the middle of the map trying to get drone control and not being successful in Mind Freak. They'd get two or three kills, be able to pick up the drone and once again throw it over the underpass, not under the overpass, and get it towards Excite. He got two relays, Shock's got a third, and all of a sudden you're up 6-0. It was such an amazing performance. Mind Freak stamping their dominance on this one. You can see how, how, how our day has unfolded. Up next, you are going to have the Losers Bracket Final. Rage Esports versus Oracle Esports. You're going to have Beeston v. Hopi. This is going to be one for the ages for sure. 
then the winner of that will go after face Mind Freak yet again. We're going to have a look at how the championship bracket has unfolded and how our entire tournament has progressed. As you can see on the top side, Mind Freak, a flawless run. 3 0 Validate Brothers, 3 0 SYF. Then again, just Rage Esports, as we saw. Rage had a great run themselves. They lost one map earlier to Tainan Myers, but other than that, they've been going amazing as well until they face the blue wall. Now they are down on the bottom side where they will face Oracle, who had a great run themselves over Tainan Myers, SYF, and of course the brothers at Validate. And now we've got an amazing losers bracket final ahead of us. Yeah, you know, sorry, I stand corrected a little bit there. I actually thought that Oracle had faced off against Rage before, but looking at that bracket, clearly they hadn't. Um, so I apologise for misleading any of the viewers and people <laughs> here in the audience. It happens sometimes in my old age, I just make stuff up. But no, it's going to be an amazing losers bracket final, you know. I, I feel that Oracle sh should hopefully still feel pretty hot. I think they've done, was it three or four matches already, which they've been knocking out three O's and three ones on the other people. And you now heading up against a team like Rage, while they, are, while they are good, Rage obviously coming off that loss of a 3-0, They'll be feeling that a little bit. Let's just hope they can just go, you know, wash their hands of that match, come into the losers bracket final fresh. Well, that was one hell of an exciting series. Mind Freak were flawless throughout it. Let's get the thoughts of their fearless leader, Buzzo, as Sam has got him on the stage. Thanks, Josh. Yes, I'm here with Buzzo. Firstly, mate, you guys have had an impeccable run through here at uh, Sydney Open number two. How much better than everyone else are you guys, really? Real talk. No, oh, you've hit me with the question to make me look cocky. <laughs> Um, to be honest, with the last three months since, you know, I think we've played, we've played like three or four events overseas, we've boot camped. Um, yeah, our, our level has skyrocketed a lot, um, even though I think we've dropped down a bit because we haven't scrimmed and we're sort of playing back in the style of uh, the Australian meta, you know, where we can get away with winning, with, you know, not doing the fundamentals that you would be doing overseas. Um, but the level that we've sort of, you know, got to, you know, we're not going to drop below that, so. Um, I mean, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, I, it, it sucks. You know, I want to I wanna improve the scene. I want, I want, I want close games. I, like, it's annoying. I, I don't like three... Like, you know, I like three owing everybody, but I want entertaining games. But, you know, we're, we're pretty good. I think the longer this goes overall, the more chance other teams also get to go overseas, the better they can progress. How much is, how much is playing overseas to help you guys? Uh, it's everything. Yeah, no, we... Um, so, for example, when we boot camped, you know, we, we didn't win a map in like four nights. So it was like, you know, we're like zero and like 50 in maps. So that kind of sucked. But, you know, we, every single night we're, we're learning more and improving. Um, but, yeah, you know, since there's only one spot, you know, in the league, that kind of sucks. Sort of hurts the scene a bit. But, um, you know, if a team can go through the online bracket, you know, go, through, go to relegations, we get two in there, then, you know, then it starts increasing, you know. But, you know, having the one team does hurt a bit, but, you know, it is what it is. Obviously, a lot of chances going into COD Champs with uh, our 16-team Invitational coming up in July as well, and that's, I would hope, what everyone is working towards here. When you look out towards this crowd, Naked put out a call on Twitter this morning. If you're coming through today, you've got some Mind Freak merch, put it on, and there's literally, I'd say 60% of the audience here is wearing Mind Freak merch. How good does that feel? No, it, it feels awesome. You know, you sit there... And you get like a little cheesy smile, right? You know, you sit there and you just see like, you see girls, you see guys, you know, everybody um, just walking in with Mind Freak jerseys, Mind Freak hoodies, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, I always feel bad because it's like, you know, if you're playing, you know, you're, you're the other team, you look in the crowd, you see everybody rocking a Mind Freak jersey, it's like, you know, shit. But, you know, it, it feels cool. It's good. It's, uh, it's nice. It's good looking merch. So it's certainly got that going for it. All right. You guys are in the grand final. We have one more game to go before that. Who do you think you are going to see up here in the grand final a little bit later on? Are you Team Beeston or Team Hopi? Um, I want to go with Hopi. Um, nothing against the guys that, you know, Rage that we just played, but Hopi, Hopi's team's just been turning up, you know, Zeppa sets. Um, and if Hopi, Hopi just goes, you know, decent, he gets loud, he gets hyped, you know, they're a, they're a dangerous team. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Hopi. I'm going to say we're playing Hopi's team, yeah. All right, well, I've been on Team Hopi all weekend long just because I think he's a pal, but it's going to be a tight one. I don't know, man. I think we'll have to wait and see. We'll see you guys a little bit later on. Our lower bracket final is coming up here next, guys and girls. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. You, buddy. You don't need any more kills. I need to get some for myself and have my own stats. Right now, Beast is not that blue in the kill feed oh. as Mind Freak just start to take away a little bit <laughs> more. Which is very disappointing to see. But he does have his FTL jump available to use very early on in the game. You know, we're still just making it onto the second rotation of hard points. We are back on the train platform. 
and him and his squad by the first pick here but fighter he comes in stops that bomb play oh. no he doesn't in fact the bomb has been planted here he gets the two meets gets the third oh, no. as well he's being noticed they know he's there oh fighter, fighter. Four. three pitch roll two out for the time i guess why not and you'll see there on that final kill team that fighter picking up that kill on like he could trade it right at the end there I don't think anyone's even touched the drone as of yet but finally fate he'll pick it up his team they're trying to go for this one Excited to two players shot. dropping down from mind freak this run's being cut short he's not going to worry about too much from the drone now players oh, swarming left right rage boys they seem to have a couple of moments of, of gold but for the most part mind freak was just way too strong and that's run contestedly so they're doing very good at uh, betting and trading here Ludak was just inside the hill there for a little time trying to get some more up off the respawns they will come the trophies will go up now it's up to curry kid he's, he's going to try and redeem himself after that last round picks up all around him he pushed too aggressive there too many players focusing up on him shots will come out can get to the double i'm not sure how this one rapids on the screen right now he's going to be coming out this little mid cut hit he finds one player in the back can he get the second shaky shots but he'll do it so a nice two piece from him but it's not enough fighter he's going to shut him up we'll see what they end up doing Shocks like a long roar run yeah, there. Great it works double out. Play. Double kill. And he might find the third in the middle of the map and potentially a fourth as well. Third there. Can he find the fourth? Being alive for a bit, you know, just controlling it. It's still the nitty gritty of this map. There's nothing really Oops. crazy going on. Cody shooting everyone but killing nothing and then <laughs> killing everyone. So. Typical Cody things. That fleet package, so. Our players are just better than theirs, really. That's the, the best way to put it. Our experience, we're more experienced than them. We clutch up when we need to, and if you're not in the land league, um, you're not playing for that big cash, you're not playing against the best teams in the world, you really are sort of irrelevant in a bad way. The competition in the Australian region, it's definitely increased, especially with Dens departing from our team. Um, you know, I don't really know what to say. Well, I was in Mindfreak and I got an opportunity and an offer to join a different organisation. And so I went to my former teammates. They didn't really pursue. So I thought, look, if they're not interested, I still want to pursue the opportunity. So I just pretty much got up and left. We are friends with Zeus in their team. We asked him to join the Our Fourth. And he just goes, huh, as in, you know, you guys are nothing without Dens now. They got the players that they want, and we sort of had to figure out what would suit us best. So Excite now, he's really got something to prove. He really wants to impress us, so to speak. You know, he doesn't want to be that guy that lets the team that's won every single year down. It's all fun and games winning in Australia, but if you're not winning internationally, it's kind of like no point. It had to so be that we had to play it a bit dirty and not, not announce who we were going just to sort of hold them off from booking flights or not getting a team pass. It's every man for himself at the moment. At the end of the day, I win. Three, round number eight, going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades, making it now a 3v2. Here we go, bomb down eight. It's going to be an easy climb. Active camo, why so Big. smiley? He sneaks out there, he's going to find the kill, and there we go. Rotation, oh sorry, the spawns are going to be in control of Validate. He's going to find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just over this the huge. Pitch. No, it's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most and he's going to be able to break that spawn. To no avail, he's going to fall there, but his teammates do clean up the rest of the pieces. Rami is the last alive in a 1v2. One player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko. He jumps up just in time. Perfect. It comes around Rami. Nice. Very nicely done nice. by him to get that 1v2. A very good clutch. The Empire has already hit the rotate. They're set up pretty nicely. They don't really have anyone out on that anchor, but it looks like we finally have someone from Validate playing spawns for once. So this could be a flip here, and it is. So we have number seven, Pixel spawning out across map in the lab. And this is a full... Oh, control, control, Pixel, Pixel is pushing out. No, weak, weak, weak. Tag on the right, Eddie. Go to the middle. No, two bits, two bits, two bits. In the middle, in the middle. No, it's me! Last one, last one, last one, last one. He's pushing, he's pushing. He's absolutely, absolutely hit him. I'm on that. One more front, one more front. Find us, find us, find us. Find dead. Good shit, guys. Help him, help him, help him. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely. Last one, second, not dead. Nice snake. Hang on, hang on. Good shit, good shit. Hang on, tag. There's two, one tag. Pixel, one more. Pixel is tagged, Pixel is tagged. One more, Gary. Not heavy, not heavy, though. Watch out, watch out. Picked up once again. Zephyr's going to have it this time. He's got his team out of steps right in front of him. He's got two teammates there in the opposition spawn, and only at one point he did die mid-air. So you know, he would have thought maybe it would be the old jump. 
if he can use it. They might try and give him a pass, and he might, yeah, here, he's going to shoot. He might use it here. He's got no one around. Oh, there it is. Oh, he tries to go for the play. The one that Miles was talking about earlier, but it gets shut down in the pro. They do have some decent lobby control and a little bit of control of the hall here. Fate's going to come in. Going to get this frag, potentially. Yes, he does. Shuts down Monster. Going to go for a second one here. Just getting a nice little bait and switch with his teammate that gets traded out by Templix. No real control has gone either. It's going to be Rage in pretty much full control, pushed up nicely on the headshot spots in this hard point right now. But Monster jumping really high, getting that frag, surprisingly enough, through the window of the van. Nice place from Monster. Is he going to get a three piece? You always got the reload, drops down, and he's going to get this. Goes out that one, and now look, back in control of the Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, Dallas, the bioacid, as some know me, and this is CWL Sydney number two, presented by PlayStation 4. It's been a long road. We're not just done yet, though. We are here at the Losers Bracket Final. It's looking to be an amazing, amazing event, amazing matchup, and both these teams really wanted it. Joining me on the desk, though, we have Inman and we have Miles. How are we, gentlemen? We are excellent. It is time to take the children away. Josh and Miles are out to play, brother. Here we are. We're in the loser's bracket final. Things are about to get funky because I think this, Miles, has to be the game of probably the weekend. Yeah, this was, we were talking about it before the match started, that this could be a grand finals, essentially. You know, if you eliminate Mind Freak from, from the equation because they're quite a dependable variable, they tend to win most stuff. This is the only one that we really don't know how to call. They, uh, they've already met each other before, um, but, you know, God knows what the hell's about to happen here. Everyone's changed. The teams, we don't recognize the teams anymore. We know the players, but in terms of their performances, Everything has turned on its head. Yeah, looking at the stats just there, you see 23 wins overall there for Oracle, four losses, and then on the other side of things, a rage, 15 and 7. Of course, that map record there for the streak was just handed to them by Mindfreak and Oracle. They're still going strong. They would have been would have been more up for Oracle if they hadn't dropped the map against SYF, I believe it was. So, you know, they would have had about a pro win streak of 12 at that stage. So they're looking pretty strong at the moment. Oracle only dropping, I think, one map out of, out of a possible 12 that was done in total. So, yeah, very strong indeed. And you see them now on your screens. For those that weren't watching this morning, they had a phenomenal run to get here. This loser's bracket. Hopi, JTEX, Steptis, and Zeppa Iman, who are you looking for this, this squad to really turn up here in the Losers Bracket final? Well, I did proclaim that Zeppa's my mum, so it's got to be my mum since it's Mother's Day. What so I'm looking you? for Zeppa to step up yet again. I mean, this guy was such a. I gave him potential win here. Hey, I've given him minimum $4,000 as that as third place prize, but they're going for more. But no, Zeppa has been a superstar today, Miles, and I'm looking for him to step up when they really need it, which is right here in the Losers Bracket final. Well, the whole squad has been crapping gold so far throughout the entirety of the competition. I mean, for me, on top of the on top of the already stellar performances from all four of them, my man JTEX, he's the guy I want to see go off. Had a rough series against SYF. He was the only player on his team there to go negative almost every single game. But apart from that, he's been stellar. He's been putting on a tremendous show for us. And I actually caught on him a little bit before the game, and I said, what was going on against SYF? And he said, well, the team, usually what he does in hardpoint games, you know, the three push in, he hits the flank. Yep. When he comes into the flank, he tends to get those kills. He gets those guys who are weak. He gets those guys in one shot. But in this instance, the guys pushing in up front were getting all the kills. So he was doing the flank. He was running into absolutely nothing. And by the time he turned around and got himself in a position, he was getting killed off a of respawn. So he was like, oh, quick, guys, just put me in the hard point. I'm not killing anything. So that was really the reason why he struggled so much yeah. in that series. You know, Otherwise, superb, superb performances. Yeah, and no, of course, that's Oracle right there. And over to Rage, we will go to have a look. At their lineup is looking like here. You just saw them a moment ago in that winner's bracket final. They went down three out of Mind Freak, Beeson, Fate, Flares, and Lakey. Let's hope these guys can shake that one off, Josh, and just focus on the one ahead. Beeson kind of looks like someone just told him he's losing the loser's bracket final. He's like, what? What? Say what? What's she say, son? That's Beeson's face right there. you got Fate, Flares, and Lakey joining him as well. Fate has been look playing pretty consistently, a lot more consistent than what I, I usually see from him. He's been playing really, really well. Lakey was a, a superstar yeah. in the previous S&D as well, so in the Search and Destroyers, look out for him. Flares is the X Factor for me here, Miles. I really need him to step up in this series. Tiny bit shaky here and there, not necessarily always 100% in there, but when he can be, I think, yeah, Josh, X Factor, despite deciding key crucial component for success there for the boys in Rage. So I guess one of the questions here, Miles, is obviously Oracle, they had a massive big run this morning. Since 10 a.m. they were playing up until about, I think, 2 or 3 
They finally got they had that bit of a break while that winners bracket final happened. Granted, Rage did just lose three three zero to Mind Freak, but they've at least been playing recently. Oracle, you know, have they hopefully they've been warming up on the back there? Do you think this coldness might come into, into effect in that first map? That was a major consideration of my own. I was super worried that they'd go off, they'd have a break of one series, and that's enough to kind of, you lose your edge, don't you? But uh, having a chat with, uh, with, with JTEX, he said they've been outside warming up and playing the games, keeping the hands warm. And he actually said to me that even in those weird practice games against bots and against you know, other team stuff, he's got such an air of confidence about their gameplay. The team are so, so confident. And I really think that will be a deciding factor to how much of a, of a game they bring up against Rage. Well, we'll see if they can exude that confidence indeed. As we have a look at the series overview now on your screens, Breakout Hardpoint will be the one to kick this things off into high gear. Throwback S&D to follow. And then, of course, we will see Precinct Uplink now. If it needs to go further than that, a Scorch Hardpoint's been thrown into the mix, followed by that final S&D on Crusher. I'm thinking a few people in the audience are hoping that Oracle may, might be able to roll this one up quickly. But at the same time, there are people out there who are back in that Rage team. I'm looking at that rotation there. I'm thinking this might go down to the walls there a bit, Josh. Uh, we saw um, Oracle's amazing comeback on their breakout hard point, And if they can get a jump here against Rage, they might be able to just lead it the whole way. This one is really going to be hard to pick, Dallas. I could go really either way with both of these teams. Yeah, you know, I was going to have a look at my crystal ball. Couldn't find it, though. I didn't have the uh, GPS locator turned on on it, so it's missing somewhere. I think someone's taken it. They're probably going to have a bit of a try their luck at the, at the star tonight, perhaps, with that one. But Miles, yeah, as the man said, and I think you'll agree, it's really going to get into the wire between these two teams, and it's going to be all about the fact that they really have to break out quickly and break out hard point. Well, wait, so they've already played before. Is that correct? They played in pool play and Rage won 3-2? Uh, no, I, no. I, I think I was mistaken. Might have been in pool play that perhaps they did play. They haven't played in the bracket at all, though. Maybe we can get an update from the legendary Mikester behind the scenes about what the score was then. But if they've already played, that makes this even more exciting. Otherwise, it's basically just like the, the, a battle of two teams who are super warmed up, super ready to go, very, very keen. You know, the, the horses are in the stands. They're in the stocks. They're ready to go. And it's going to be pretty sweet otherwise. Bio checked his uh, crystal ball. I, I shook the magic eight ball, and all it came up with is it, it said, stop making back of puns. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it said that, I'll try. The Twitter thing um, was full of them. Oh, mate. We, we don't know who's going to be winning this series. It could really go either way. I, I completely agree. As you see the map fly through now on your screens here in the audience, and, of course, at home there as well. The audience has come back in after a bit of a break from that last one. Again, they're keen to see which one this is going to play out. You know, while Mildred did 3-0 Rage, can Oracle win this loser's bracket final? Can Oracle take on Mindfreak in the grand final? And can they get a map off that mythical creature that Mindfreak can get to drop? We'll find out in just a moment as they are set and ready for action. So I'll hand it away to you, Josh. Thank you very much, Bio. Booyah said we're getting hyped and ready to go in the loser's bracket final, ladies and gentlemen. What a weekend we have had. And thank you to everyone who's tuning in at home as well. We're all feeling warm and fuzzy with all the support the Asia Pacific region has got. Make sure you do tweet the stream. Join in the conversation. Use that hashtag CWL Sydney 2. It has been a great, uh, a, a, just an all round awesome weekend. Big shout outs to everyone who helped put it together. Our awesome production team as well. We're getting into the losers bracket final where I got confirmation, by the way, that both of these teams have not faced each other yet. So we're waiting to see. Who's going to be taking, uh, you know, the uh, the first step forward out of Oracle and Rage? Ladies and gentlemen, losers bracket final time. Someone is going to the grand final to take on Mind Freak. Who is it going to be? We're kicking things off here with the one and only Beast, and he's going to try and change the game yet again up against Oracle. One hard point at a time, Josh. Let's see how they go. Here's the break. Both teams are about to clash like waves upon rocks into mid. Beast gets dropped quick. Pretty quick there, actually. That was a, a very comforting open for the Oracle fans. Lovely tags there from Fate. Ooh, Fate, two in a row. Doesn't manage to get any more after that. Let's have a quick look at Hopi off of spawn. And she's managed to get into the hard point. So Oracle have got that time. Fate may have got the kills, but he did not manage to get the hard point. And here we are, still on ball with Hopi. Little bit of a lead for Oracle, but wow, what a quick turnaround there from the boys on that It's going to be all about that first rotation over to Cell Block, though. As we know, I mean, Oracle got the jump in mid. You can see their spawns are now flipping out, but Rage, they did have control a lot of the time of that side of the map, and they do now have the lead. And you can see there, it is going to be flares over on that side of the map. 
few players there were just slayed out from Oracle. They are nowhere near where they have to be. They are coming out of caves, making their way through mid-map. We're about to go to the rotation. Rage in front, and they seem to have the premier position as well. Fate's in a great position. He had that MV4, and indeed he still does, so he's going to be beaming anyone who decides to come around the back. And this has been a great flip here for Rage. Here we are still on board with Rage. He's managed to get that first half point on the flip, 31 to 7. As you said, Josh, it's been a very early good start for Rage, but can they hold on to it? Fate gets caught off guard there. Setsy goes down. This is Zeppa now making his entry into the cell blocks, just taking control. Actually, no, here's the contest. There's the Oracle still in control. Rage now knocking on the door. First gets two. Can he make it a third? No, he cannot. Zeppa with a second. Can he make it a third? There's two more players charging in. The slide underneath him gets another. Zeppa three in a row. Tasty stuff. He's 25 points away from the Scorchers. He's got that tr Trinity Rocket if he wants it. That's a six kill streak there for Zephyr as well. And that was helped to be set up by Sets, who came knocking on the back door. He helped go in for the pinch, completely slayed out Rage. And now Zephyr with that very nice streak. He, that's going to be very handy if he just stays alive and works into those score streaks, Miles. Because Graves, obviously, a very open hard point. And because it's early in the game, he can utilize them later on in the game as well. Last few seconds, strap points are going to go to Oracle on the rotation. You can see Rage is all over it. But there could be a collapse here of Oracle from both sides. Here we go. We've got Zephyr and we got Hopi coming in from both sides. Zephyr oh. gets taken down. Back over to Hopi. Also gets dropped, so Rage have held true. Setsy gets two, but can't find the second one. Third even. Forgot how to count. <laughs> Flares, though. Hard point is all looking Rage at this point, Josh. Very back and forth between these teams. This is a big push, though. Lakey with an aid. Beaston gets the kill as well. Flares dealt the damage and managed to get out with his life. So once again, a beautiful defensive round there from Rage. Oracle are back on spawn, although JTEX gets in. Dropped very, very quickly. And here comes that Trinity Rocket from Zeppa. He will be... Oh, no, he's actually not dead. He's managed to stay alive somehow. But will he be able to keep a hold here of that Trinity? Will he find anyone with it? Not a chance. Doesn't even get a tag. So maybe a waste, Josh. What do you think? Oh, I mean, he kept them out of the hill for that long, and Oracle are wrapping up the points. So I wouldn't say a, a waste. I actually think I like the, the use of it. It's all about this wrap and how they utilize that. Zeppa, he's going to be in a good position here, and he's going to face Beaston potentially, <coughs> excuse me, as he comes through the cut. So here comes Beaston. Zeppa's set up for it, but Beaston too quick on the trigger, and Beaston's going to be holding down Commissary as the rotation comes in. Beaston does get dropped, and now it's Oracle pushing in, and they do tie things up and gain the lead once again. Both teams fighting as best as they can, and neither of them are going to give an inch to the opposition. I love what I'm seeing out of everyone. And you can see here, Miles, across the scoreboard, no one is really slacking. JTEX, we're pointing him out a few times, but he does have 32 seconds on the board. He picks up one before being dropped. Lakey's going to be in there. Head to head, only six points between them at this stage of the game. Here we go. Hopi through mid. He's going to be contesting a couple of players. This is it. The push from Rage. Can they make it work? No. Hopi gets dropped in the air. Setsy now sitting down by Loading Dock. Fake gets the kill, Flares gets another one, and this is going to be Setsy also about to push up daisies. Can he make something work here? Nade goes out, but the jetpack just too strong. It looks like he's going to be going down as well. This is Hopi trying to pick up the pieces where he fell off there. Pushing on through mid, 83 now to 66. Oracle lagging behind ever so slightly, but look, Josh, we know that these boys, they like a comeback. We'll have a quick look at Beast, and he's got a Scarab, and he's halfway towards his reactive armor. This is a dirty little 1v1 situation, and Zeppa gets caught with his pants down. Beeston coming out on top there. Central rooftops now flip, so Beeston managing to win the fight for the mid. Got to watch out for Lakey on that three-kill streak as well. If he starts getting the score streaks, it's going to be big as Rage are working towards triple digits right here. No one able to really get a jump and get some points on the central rooftop, though. Obviously, it's just going to be carnage in the middle of the map right here. Rage do have the advantage. They're about to hit triple digits. Oracle going to be behind by about 30 seconds, but it's still not a terrible place to be. Hopi... Hoping he can do, he can step up his game. Sets and Zephyr leading the charge as per always. Rage, though, such a great performance in the last couple of rotations. They're set up nicely. You do see, though, JTEX has the spawn over for Cells. Sets clearing that one out. Taking out Lakey and Beast as well. Nice two-piece if they can maintain control for the next 20 seconds or so. They are set up to get a lot of points. Here we go. Next rotation could prove crucial for the boys in blue. Rage, though, up by a sizable chunk at the moment. 109.80. And we go in flares. Catches Hopi, napping. We jump over with Fate. He's also pushing through a cell block. New hard points just flipped. Shots out, gets JTEX. Here's the push on the right hand side. Does get tagged. Hopi also diving in there now, coming in through the back end. It looks like it's still in the hands of Rage. And Hopi not able to win that 1v1 gunfight. And now he's going to get pushed here and showers. He does have the help of his teammates. And it's an outside push. They've got no other angles. So what a slide in from Lakey, though. Lakey comes in. Can he find a second? No, he can't. Wonderful work there from the young man. Huge, huge plays already, Josh. 16 and 10 for Beeston. 16 and 9 for Fate. 
Rage definitely winning the battle with guns. Smooth moves from Rage. They know how to break dance as they bust into cells. Be beautiful stuff from the entire squad. We're about 25 seconds till that rotation over to Graves. So everyone still fighting for this cell block, but the spawns are in favor of Rage. Beautiful stuff from the squad. Oracle are racking up points. They want to at least reach 100 before we go over to Graves. And it is good that they've been able to maintain this kind of distance. You know, Rage did get ahead, but they're going to close it within 30 points. And if they can get these streaks going, Sets and Zeppa both working towards them. There's a Scarab. At least they've got one toy to play with. Zephyr could be going as well. And because he said still going strong until he finally gets dropped. Those streaks are going to come, come up big in this hard point. Massive plays there. Oh, hope he just managing to etch out that 1v1 against Beeston. That would have been massive if Beeston got the win there. But look at this. Here's the push on Graves. Hope he needs to check his corners. Checks the corner. Doesn't manage to get hit. Does get taken. Never mind. Flares with a two-piece. Come in from behind. The timing was immaculate there from Flares. 150 to 111. JTEX getting killed of his own. I hate to say it, 6 and 19 here for JTEX. It's a bit rough. It is very rough considering two of his teammates also have more time in the hill as him as well. And we, I think we need to watch JTEX more because I just want to see what's going on with him, Miles, because I know the kid's talented. We saw it in previous days. Has he just run out of gas or is it just bad timing? What's going on here? This gunfight will tell a little bit of that story as he gets dropped and Sets picks up the kills pretty quickly after that one, Josh. Can Setsy, who has set our hearts on fire thus far today with his purry <laughs> game. Play. Can he get a couple more for us? He might be able to do that. Shots out. He's dealing damage. Lake, he's there to get those kills as well. Zeppers in the back end. Lovely flank in from behind. Ooh. Hopey, will he be able to find this next hard point on the rotation? There's actually no one in place for that. Not a single player from either team. Only person is in position to grab that one is Beast, and he's just about to net that time. This is very important, but at the same time, he's got no cover there. He's surrounded. Everyone's fighting for the spawns. No one's fighting for the hard point. Beaston's the only one in there getting points. Oracle starting to lag behind a little bit. Triple negative for JTEX. We pointed out Zephyr and Sets trying to do what they can. We've got to also point out Hopi. 9 and 19 isn't great either. But you can see here Lakey fully streaked out. This is not looking great for Oracle at this stage of the game. So 185 to 126. Oracle have come back from naughtier deficits than this. But the boys of Rage, lovely shots from Beaston. He's looking for a two. He wants it. He's 125. Oh, look at these tags, man. Fate in the back end. The two, the tandem between these two players. Absolutely delightful. Beeson on the back end. Doesn't manage to get the best of Lake of, uh, of Zeppa there, who picks up another two-piece. Zeppa also getting brought down. Let's have a quick look on the fight for mid on that next set of hard points, which is the commissary. is going to rotate very, very soon. A few seconds remaining. Hope he gets dropped. Have a quick look at Lakey as he gets those final moments. He's fully streaked. Camo's at the ready as well. That is the 210 mark broken from Rage. This is going to be absolutely massive, this next hard point. Uh, uh, people are going to say I'm picking on him, but quadruple negative now for JTEX. He needs to wake up and start twiddling those thumbs. Zeppa doing what he can. He does have his rig ready, and you can see Sets and Hopi doing what they can. But Lakey, again, with all of those streaks, he's going to be ready over on the central rooftop. They only need 30 seconds to take out this game. Oracle, they do have the ability to turn this around at any time, but you can see Rage has walked away with about 80 uncontested points. And Oracle, they really need to come up with a miracle if they want to keep going here. Sets and uh, Zeppa really keeping the hope alive for the squad. Hope he's only got one or two kills in the last minute or so. He needs to pick it up as well. The whole team just getting out slayed right here. Rage really wanting to go back into the grand final, try and get some revenge against Wide Freak. Well, Hope he was just on the flank for the uh, for the next set of spawns, watching the players coming from behind. He just dropped back in a mid and what timing. He's about to find himself a second kill. Can he get this player going through window? Lovely work from Hopi. Beautiful timing. That worked out for him very, very well. He's going to get the scrap time here. No one in position for that next hard point. Again, these teams are so concerned about slaying each other out in mid and not letting that time sink in. Looks like it is going to be an Oracle grab, first of all. 224 to 157. Oh, camo from Lakey. Knock, knock, knock. He comes in up front, misses the player on his right. Hope he does get him. This is Setsy now on the defense. Finds flares long range. Can he get another one? On the door. His teammates are dropping around him. He's got camo if he wants it, so he could break a push here. Gets one. FTL jump. Not to be fooled, does get taken down the Zephyr, still. Last line of defense now for Oracle. Couple players on spawn, he needs to buy some time for his team. Josh, things are looking a little bit better for the boys in blue. This is a nice run from them, but Rage, super close to the finish line. Zephyr trying to go hero mode. He got two in a row. Hopi and JTEX both got kills under their belt as well. Sets even money as he's going to be trying to get a few put few more kills as they set up this rotation. You can see Rage, they've given up the scrap points. There was only about 20 seconds left, which would be a lot, but given their lead, they just need to hold Graves. They're going to have Lakey right at the back watching the caves. Hopi might try and sneak past him though, and you can see he does get caught out. Hopi goes down. Three players from Oracle are going to be pushing in from Cell Block. Here you go. There's going to be Hopi and JTEX both pushing in. Two Rage players are down, and it is going to be Oracle pushing in and get control of Graves. They are only 14 seconds behind at this stage, and this could be the comeback that they need. Zephyr goes 
goes down. JTEX needs to pick up the kills here. He picks up one before being dropped. Hope he's still there. Picks up one. He needs another. He's taken down. Oracle are going to be cleared out. Rage now in control. Oracle need to be instantly on that heal. They've got decent spawns. They need to push in, get advantage of that one streak they had, but it looks like it's going to go down. Rage now 15 seconds away from victory here, and it looks like Oracle are scrambling to do what they can in the final seconds. Like his perspective, we're going to watch maybe the last push. We'll see this game. They can win it here on his hard point, and there's the smoke out. Sets he comes through the smoke. He gets his head removed. A second as well. That's JTEX gets one kill, and it looks like it may be all she wrote in the hard point. 250 to 215. Rage coming up on top. Big game there for Rage. You know, Oracle really giving it to him after a bit of a slower start as well, but it wasn't enough in the end. That final push, they popped the smoke. They did what they could to really break that hard point, but sadly it wasn't enough in the end. And as you mentioned, 250 to 215. You know, that really could have gone more down to the wire. And you saw it before that grave hard point even came up that, you know, Rage is sort of, right, they can't win off this, but we can win off the next one. Let's just get that set up. Let, let, let them have the 20 or 25 seconds that are still remaining there. And let's just go for that final, I think it was about 25 points they really needed in the end. And on this replays here, you know, it was mentioned throughout this class a few times there by you, Josh, that JTEX was sort of struggle street there. Again, population him. Well, what, I mean, what do you call it, right? So he went 11.31. He got a minute and four, but he only got one defend. Two players, Zeppa and Sets, who were just both heroes. If they all played like Zeppa and Sets, they would have won the game. But unfortunately, it wasn't going to be. They both got a minute 24 and a minute 21 up against uh, Rage, you know. And if you look over there, look at their kills. 25, 25, 27, 29. Mm. You've got Lakey with all of the time in the hill and five defense. But they were just such a, a good unit altogether. You know, they yeah. were all putting in the work. Compare that to Oracle. 29, 23, 11, 17. And... You know, sometimes you do need to bolster some individual performances. If you're in the final three, you know, you're in the loser's bracket final, you can't show up misfiring. Oh, no, you're exactly right. You really can't. You've got to bring your A game to this match. It's, it's just as important as that winner's bracket final match was and the, and the grand final is going to be. You know, you've really got to bring that potential to cause some upsets right here, right now. And we, and we sort of mentioned at the start there, the first map might sort of show us a bit of light on how the series might run. I think overall, though, you know, it's not a massive difference. 250 to 215, we've seen a lot larger gaps in these score lines of hard points. So I think that Miles, coming to the S&D, definitely, you know, Oracle can just sort of think that, yes, we brought that to them. We can still win this series. Still four maps to go. Let's get this S&D done. S&D could be that turning point we need for uh, or the Oracle fans. I say we. I feel like we're kind of leaning on Oracle a little bit too much because they've been the fan favorites. They've been on stage all day. I can't get my can't get my head out of that one. But I think, yeah, S&D could be their game. We've already seen the prowess. They've taken down some top-tier teams and at their own game, especially in S&D. But also, to be said, in that same note, Rage pushed Mindfreak to 6-5, albeit not yeah. Mindfreak's best game. But you know that they're going to be hitting real. We root for the fan favorites here of Oracle. Yeah, Rage. I mean, I'm kind of rooting for them. If they get a 3-0 sweep over Oracle here, that puts them in a really great position to kind of bring some kind of energy and momentum up against Mind Freak. I do worry for them, considering it was two, it was a 100-point clubbing, right? Yeah. So Mind Freak really stamped on them in the uh, in their first hard point from the winner's bracket final. Uh, so, yeah, you could say that, well, both teams, but you could say for Rage that they really need this 3-0 if they want any chance of taking on Mind Freak. Of course, Miles, we're in that rig draft there now. It is S&D throwback, which is coming up in just a moment. You're sort of seeing anything out of the ordinary just a second ago there, or pretty, again, I know I chime on a bit about it, but stock standard stuff at this sort of level of competition. Well, the only difference we've seen so far, uh, JTEX was using Striker and Centurion um, yeah. on the other side of the board. Uh, it was Flares, actually, was the warfighter for his team. So otherwise, Merc's Phantom's FTL is pretty standard, but the only major difference there was, yeah, the Centurion payload is going to be used by Oracle and Rage will be running the overdrive if they get to that. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Flares, he's used, I've seen him make overdrive plays in the past. S&D could be huge, especially on a map that's actually quite small, like Throwback. Again, you can make a push out. One overdrive play is going to get you well over the halfway mark, maybe able to get the drop on the enemy team. Something that really could be uh, something special. But hey, Centurion, who knows? It's also a small map, Throwback. You know, it's not very hard to make that ground up as you go throughout each round. And obviously, it's, it's one of those maps that you should, I would say, maybe see a bit more of the typical defending play you know you obviously you can try and rush out but there's not that there's really not far you can run on this map so 
I think from the defense standpoint, I'm hoping to see these guys sort of defend more instead of being aggressive. We saw on day one, I think, Dallas, we were casting the game together, in fact, where somebody made a, uh, he used the SD, he used the overdrive play to make it, it was a 1v1 situation, and the bomb carrier had, SD, had overdrive, and he made the play all the way to a separate bomb site yeah. using overdrive, and he got there super quick, so he could get the arm down, and the other guy was kind of slowly plodding along, so, yeah, it can be, it's a game winner, essentially, if you can get it at the right time. I love overdrive players in SD. Like, we've seen players where they barely see it at the opposition and they just shoot a few rounds so they're seen on the map miles and then they activate overdrive just to duke them. Pretty it's cool. It's a super duker. It's a super fast super duke duke em. Em. Super duper duke em. Super duke nuke em? Super duke nuke em. Shake it, baby. <laughs> Talking about bubblegum, perhaps? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we're going to get this search and destroy underway. Rage versus Oracle. Ladies and gentlemen, we're into the loser's bracket final. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty keen to see how this one's going to go down. Hopefully we can see a few scopes as well. Not really seen too much in throwback, but sometimes you see them along the bike path and uh, over on field. You can see that a few times, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be seeing it out of Hopi sometime, well, right now. See what Scopey can do. Scopey hit a murderous two-piece against Tainted in their search and destroy domination they had against them. Can he do it again? It'd be nice to see that. Lecky, we'll watch Hopi for a moment because he's got the old snipperoo. Ooh, almost. Player on food. Almost. What's going to happen? Lecky got dropped with bomb as well, so this is going to be an interesting turn of events. Flares wins his 1v1. Sets and JTEX versus Fate, Flares, and Beaston. What a start to this one. A little bit scrappy, a little bit mean in the middle, Josh, but uh, it's got texture to it, right? Yeah, I mean, it does have texture, and, you know, it's got some good vitamins and minerals in there. I mean, it's, 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 it's still good. It's very feeling. Very um, satiating start to the beginning of this SMD. And you know what? I, I like it a little bit scrappy as well, Miles, because it's just a bit more exciting. Um, and that's what we saw at the beginning of this with Hope Scope bringing out that sniper rifle and hopefully going to make something happen now as that bomb has been planted. You've got Sets and JTX need to take down three players and get the defuse. Well, Sets now left all alone. He's going to start by taking down one. The one in front, he didn't spot him. And that's going to be a 1 0 start for Rage. Rage had the numbers. They could play them one the way they wanted to. Unfortunately, though, I mean, positioning-wise, JTEX was kind of quite out of position. He was well long down bike path. He had a K-bar. He probably got drilled there by an MV4 player. Not necessarily the gun of choice for that scenario. But look, man, sometimes it's the cards you get. You've got to play the hand that you dealt. Indeed you do. Let's see how uh, Oracle respond to this. Hopi, is he still going to be running with the scope? Because it looks like he will be. Hopi feeling himself with that scope, I think, uh, the first couple of rounds here, Miles. Well, this is what Hopi's been doing so far in the tournament. He's been running, ooh, he's been running snipe. Every now and then, we keep talking about his sort of slightly unpredictable and unorthodox play. It's a very useful strategy because it does mean that the enemy team can't come to expect it. And in turn, now, we've got two dead for Rage. What a turn of events. Bomb's gone down at A. We'll have a look at Rage to see how they retake this one. But it is at A. Flares and Beast and Laugh 2 alive. It's a dream team. Flares is already going 2-0. You can see he's 125 away from his Scarab. He's about to find something. There's a player in mid with his name on it. Beast is a little bit further back watching, his, watching the back. Flares, is he going to find anything? Tagged up heavily. Beeston's on his own. Beautiful shots there on JTEX. Or Zeppo, excuse me, now. There's the crush. Setsy comes in, ties things up 1 1. Oracle played that brilliantly. Hope he just stayed up the back with that scope. Didn't really have to do anything before uh, JTEX and Sets popped out. Zeppo and Sets teaming up to get that final kill there with uh, Sets finishing off. Beeston did go down 1 1 in this SD. Things are all looking pretty close so far, Miles. Uh, early days, of course, in this search and destroy. And uh, is Hopi still sticking with that scope? Oh, Fate's actually going to have a crack himself. So we'll see how Fate goes with that as Hope has actually switched off his scope. Fate going for some snipes. Oh, wow. He actually missed, missed the spot on a few of those players. That's Beast and getting shots out in mid. Hopi oh, dodges that, that one. That was an easy one, though. For Fate, that should have been an easy one, I really think. He's had three shots at this. Fate, if you do not hit, you must acquit. Thank oh. you. Oh, he finally gets one. Domes him too. There you go. Getting away with murder here. Fate, can he keep it going? He's getting pressured. Pistol's out. Oh, it slid on Flair's last man alive. I don't think that one kill that he got was going to be worth the, you know, the panic that went into that situation. Oracle will able to collapse on him. They did get the bomb down, but Oracle now answering with a second round in a row. Um, I, I don't know. I think they could have played that one better, especially now Hope you've got three in a row, and with this defuse, he's going to be well into that Scarab. 25 off it, and then he's going to be into that Trinity Rocket just after. Oracle, great start to this S&D. Well, we almost saw what could have been a, almost an entire team wipe if he hit those shots, but hey, man. I think that, yeah. In his defense. Oh, in his defense, I can't scope for crap that <laughs> Fate should have been able to hit those. 
Let's see what Hobie does with Bomb. He's going 3-1 at the moment, 25 away from Scarab, halfway towards his reactive armor. Oh, didn't land a single shot, but Zephyr got the kill nonetheless. This is a very, very ambitious start. He's going to go straight in for B, right? There's the arm, instantly sets he going for the flank. You see the players now making a move for it. JTX is going to be first line, gets the kill on Fate, gets dropped immediately though. Zephyr, can he pick up where his teammate left off? Revenge is the dish. Best serve. Cold flares kills JTX. Zephyr sets he's gone down. Beast's last man alive. Makes a run for it. Can't even change to his perspective. 3 1 Oracle. Again, just a great start for Oracle. Hope he missed all those shots as he was along the wall run. But that's why you have a Zephyr on your team. And uh, he's not missing today. Fire but... away all my <laughs> Zephyr. <laughs> Oh, I man. need him more than ever. Yeah, he's kicking ass all day, right? That's what you need he more than ever. Taking names as well, this kid. Um, great start for Oracle. Rage, I think they're not out of it just yet. On the donut is going to be Lakey, but we saw he was a superstar in there, search and destroy up against Mind Freaks, so still looking for him to step up in this one. At the break, no one down just yet. You're going to see Nades out towards that cut over there. And uh, didn't tag anything up, so these guys must be feeling pretty good. You can see everyone is stacked over that B side, and Oracle are very much aware of what's happening here. JTEX is going to be pushing out from that side. Going to run into someone. Zephyr finds Lakey Beast and does spot JTEX. JTEX takes a fall. Now we've got a 3v3 situation. Bomb still waiting to go down, and uh, Oracle are waiting for it. You can see here Beast in just watching the barn. It's going to be a player just inside. It will be Zephyr. He needs to watch himself. Zephyr jumping up and down does tag up Beast, and Beast and playing this very smart and tactfully. You can see he's going to be hit with that grenade as well, but on this beautiful raw run, gets the Kangle, and oh my gosh, you can see Hopi just gets away with his life flares, able to take down Zephyr, though, sets firing back to take down Beast in 2v2 situation. Fate has bombed 30 seconds to put it down. They can slow this down a little bit, try and maybe go for a rotation, considering both Hopi and Sets are towards mid. Maybe they're expecting that. I would expect Hopi and Sets should stick together instead of splitting up. I don't know how I feel about that. Hopi probably just going to scope it out. Now he's got the call out. You do see Sets is going to come right down the middle of the tracks. They can collapse over on B. Oh, aggressive, and it pays off. Sets able to pick that one up. Hopi's going to go in. They need to stick together for the trade. They need to be careful. You can see there, waiting to go for the defuse. Spots this player. It should work in their favor. Eventually getting the clutch kill. Fully streaked out, Hopi. This is going to be four rounds in a row. And beautiful stuff there from Oracle. Surely, Miles, they're not losing it from here. Well, they've got a lot of utility to use in the next round. They've got full streaks from Hopi. He's got his reactive armor as well. And on top of that, as far as the points go, yeah, Hopi's well and above and beyond 1,000 points. Sets, he might not be too far off of his payload. But we'll see how they go. Got to be a confident round, this next one. Yeah, Sets, he's also ready to go. That active camo's ready. So we'll stick on board with Sets here. Oh, wait, flares. Overdrive's hit. He's far forward. Let's see if the play works. Oh, he's going to be in there. This is the this is the initiative they needed. He's got the jump on two players here. Nades out. Perfect position. Flag vest gets the second. Beautiful work there from Flares. That overdrive play. Immaculate run. Beaston comes in as well. JTEX last member alive. JTEX does pick up two, though. That's a great return fire from JTEX, but he gets domed, and that's going to be a great way for Rage to come back in that. Flares came out swinging in that one. He was a very angry man. Can I just say, what a counterplay from... Oh, look at this. That's why you finish it. Fate finally hitting a killer there. But look, the, the, the overdrive play started this off so well, but immediately the counteract from Oracle was just on point. And without that, they would have been absolutely left lambs to slaughter there. So match point, it would have been ideal for them. But look, they've so fully loaded at the moment. Zephyr's got his, his, ulti his ultimate, excuse me, wrong game. He's got his payload ready. 5-5 five, five at the moment, 6-2 for Hopi. He's still fully streaked out. We might see some of those streaks come soon. He's waiting on information for his teammates. Here we go, Bombardment at the ready. Pilot to Bombardier, where is it going? Oh, the anticipation's killing me. He's just taking some time, man, scoping out where everyone is. No, nope, he put it away. He put it away. He's just, just mapping out where everyone is. Smart plays by him. Uh, I like how they're sharing the load. Oracle, everyone up there, either five, and then you've got one play up there on six. Lakey eating donuts right now, but nine and five for flares. Beautiful stuff. Great individual performance. And now you can see here, moving out. Lakey's got the support of Beeston. And uh, he might be able to come in. That bombardment comes into play, but he should be safe. The bomb does go down. And, uh, oh, that bombardment does eventually hit him. Lakey goes down. Fate dropped by Zephyr as well. Oracle looking good to take their fifth round. Beaston and Flares left alone. You've got Beaston in tickets. Someone's going to have his number, though, in just a second, as he's the only one left alive. Four and five. You've got the entire Oracle squad pinching in on you, son. It's your nightmare. Come to fruition. Will you fight your way out? He's tagged up by everything. You've got one player waiting on tracks. He's pretty fine. This is desperation right here. It smells bad, but Oracle, too good in that one.
That's map point for Oracle. Beaston, man. He's a caged animal. He gets more dangerous than ever when you back him into a corner. He tried. Did you see it? Like, it was pretty scary, man. I, I had a feeling if they didn't jump at the same time, he could have, he would have easily killed one of those players. He's a wild animal. Man on a mission. Snarling at those doors. That sounded too sensual for the... It was more like... Yeah, it was more like... Yeah, like a, like a sort of a raccoon in a bin. <laughs> a raccoon in a bin. <laughs> a raccoon in a bin. <laughs> you I'm going to dub you in. I'm going to tell Beast and you call him a raccoon in a bin. <laughs> He's going to change the game on you, man. Two and five right now in this search and destroy. Oracle and Rage. Oracle looking to wrap this one up, tie up the series. One, one. You've got a Trinity Rocket still up your sleeve, Hopi. That's kind of hard to fit up your sleeve. It's quite big. But... We are going to be seeing Beasting go down. He's the first to drop. Zephyr follows him into the grave. Both six foot under. Who's going to be the next to drop? Oh, the timing there. Sets might run into someone right here. One player head to head, and he does drop it. And there we go. Oracle wrapping up the search and destroy. 6 2. We've got a tied game in the series here, Dallas. Yeah, 6 2 indeed. As you said, Hopi still some streaks there. Some payloads that he didn't need to use as they got that last round in. Obviously, in round number seven, I want to say. It was going to be that bombardment that came down on Lakey while he was trying to plant that bomb under the bridge. And just, you know, he thought he was safe. I thought he was too. But after that second come down of it, just really cleaned him up and wiped the floor with him. So Oracle picks up the victory in the S&D, tying that series back up at one apiece. And they'll both head into uplink, trying to get the uh, series lead now, of course, as you see the replays now. But overall performance there on the scoreboard. Josh, what do we sort of see there? Some sort of showing why it was a 6-2 win? Well, we see great performances across the board. Everyone stepping up. JTX getting some kills here in this search and destroy. A 9-2 and two performance from the Hope Scope is going to be what stands out for me. Fate hit a couple of shots, excuse me, but he probably could have got further without that scope. He got 3-7. and seven. Lakey with the 1-8 and eight probably could have done a little bit better, Miles. Again, it's, for me, it was the performance from the team overall. We know that Oracle are a very, very passionate team. They're very loud, very aggressive, you know, when it comes to the comms. But, sorry, the comms are what is crystal clear. I, think, I feel like they may be loud, they may be crazy, but they're very concise in what they're getting out there. And I feel like the communication was one of the things that separated them. The, the, the pushes from teams, and it was 2v1 situations or even 2v3s, they were coming out on top of those fairly comfortably convincingly because good communication. I oh, know, exactly right. The comms are very important, especially in a game like S&D. Obviously, you need to let players know, even when you're dead, watch your, watch your teammates' perspectives, the POVs, because you always see things other people don't, because when you're playing, you're just focusing on one little thing. Your teammates can watch your peripherals for you if they spot something, comment out, let people know. That way they can actually just get the rounds in the bay like they did, and the comms are always coming in strong there from that Oracle team. Of course, we'll head into that game number three next up. It is an uplink. And I'm pretty excited now to see who can actually get this series lead now that Rage was 1-0 up, but Oracle bringing it back tight one apiece. I can't wait for this uplink, to be totally honest with you. Rage, Esports, and Oracle, they're 1-1 so far. The pre-Saint uplink up next, as you said, Dallas. Um, look, I mean, I'm, I really am a broken record here, Miles. I'm sorry to repeat myself. It's kind of cliche, but I, how do you call this one? When the breakout uh, hard point was so close... As close as it was, uh, it went not really back and forth. Rage kind of had control the whole time. Oracle with the 6-2 S&D. And we've seen how both of them play uplink. They're both very good performance on this. Uh, how do you pick it? It's got to come down to who's hot, who's hot and who's not. Hot who, gets the, who gets the rose at the end of the show. That's really where it's going. And again, I think it's going to fall down to a couple of key players. JTX, if he's not on, I think Oracle are really going to struggle. Well, you saw him struggling that hard point, wasn't it, right at the start there? And that's what sort of got them off to that slow start. As it was Rage who pushed away. After a little while, you know, he fired up a bit. The rest of the team also fired up and helped them bring that score back in the first hard point there on, on breakout. But it w wasn't enough in the end. And therefore, it was Rage to take that one out 250 to 215, as you see on your screens, as we just said as well. And as you would have just seen at home and in the audience, 6-2 to Oracle in the s &D as these lads get set up for the third map of this best out of five series. It is, of course, the Losers Bracket Final here at CWL Sydney number two, presented by PlayStation 4. And right now, both these teams fighting to stay alive here on Championship Sunday. They want to verse Mind Freak in that grand final. They want their shot at the title. But both these teams still, you know, it's a valiant effort thus far. Guaranteed a third spot at least in man as they head, of course, into that beautiful rig draft that we tend to always see before every map. We see it a lot. We see it a lot. And occasionally you see some craziness in there, like Gravity Vortex Gun. Not this time around, though, as all these players are made into the top three. And generally, if you're in the top three, you're not going to be using the Gravity Vortex Gun. I'd be very impressed if you did, though. I don't think it's 
too crazy, man. Centurion rarely gets out in play, and when it does, it's, re it's you know generally impactful. But I think you maybe I don't know the timing, but I think you get Gravity Vortex Gun quicker than you get the Centurion. So look, let's face it: if you're going to be playing Uplink, if you're going to be playing anything a little bit quicker, then maybe it's a smart move. It's, yeah. it's, it's not going to find its place in S and D or in Uplink, maybe. But hey, man, give me the hard points. Why not? No, yeah, I was talking to some of the players earlier today when I was seeing the Centurion being pulled out in Upland games, and they're like, you know, you've got to go on a massive slaying mission and dunks to be able to achieve the Centurion at least twice. You know, you might get lucky to get it once. To go for it a second time would be a phenom of a feat to see. But, of course, it is map number three, as we've said a few times now. Uplink Precinct. Series is tied at one apiece here at the Losers Bracket Final. The loser will go home. They won't go home empty-handed, but they will be done for this competition. And the winner, of course, will go on to face Mind Freak after Mind Freak 3 0 Rage earlier on in that winner's bracket final. The final rig draft coming in now. The map fly through, as you see, where those portals are located, where the players want to run these. Now, I'll be interested to see in man how many one pointers they go. Obviously, it's, it's down that back alleyway there. You want, it's hard to sometimes get across if you're not set up right near construction side. And, if they can't get across there, they'll have to go for those nice little one-pointers. But we have seen a fair few interceptions down that way as well. Indeed we have. You know, I mean, there's a lot of clutch plays you can make on this map. Both of these teams trying to do what they can. Uh, whether, you know, Rage can pull it off, you know, I think they've definitely got the ability to do so. Oracle, I'm probably feeling a little bit more in the uplink. But Rage have pushed some of the best teams all the way and have won a lot of uplinks themselves. I just can't wait to see this one go uh, go down. I think this entire series may go the distance, considering we're currently 1-1, and things have just been crazy, Miles. Crackers. Absolutely Bananas. crackers. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. The shiz is banana. Don't mind a bit of Gwen. Yeah. Why not? Nothing wrong with that. For me, man, JTEC's got to go off if Oracle are going to win it. Lakey has got to pick up the slack. Hit a bit of a rough one in the last s and I'm not sure if I'm going to have some stern words with JTEC or if he's going to have some stern words with me. I'm not too sure after this. We'll find out, though. Hopefully, he can put on a stellar performance right here. Rage versus Oracle. Get hyped, ladies and gentlemen. We're 1-1 in the series. Both of these teams looking to get the advantage. And Hopi, Hopi is going to start by... By what did he do? He took down Zephyr. I, I, I don't even know. Did he make up for it by killing Beeston? Can't really tell. Either way, Hopi, he's in, a, he's in the wrong part of town right now. Somehow alive. Somehow getting kills. Finally dropped. Last member alive for his team. We are going to see Flair's making a move for that drone. He's got all the space in the world to work with. Can we get something out of this? Here we go. Statue control is exactly what they wanted to. Fates are going to be coming in from the side. This is a lovely position to catch JTX in. Doesn't manage to catch him. JTX coming up hot. That's all dead for Rage. Potential play about to unfold. Oh, it's all open. JTX crucial kills must go down. Doesn't manage to get it. Zeppa, can he land it? Does indeed. He bought the time. The point was built above the body of JTEX. Indeed it was, you know. I mean, he went down, but at least he played uh, the distraction play at minimum. And he did get some shots off and enabled two points on the board. Oracle are there after the first minute. We have to go back. Hopefully someone's going to get a replay and find out exactly what happened in, that, in the start of that game. Either way, we're going to be seeing a great start for Beeston, who's currently three. Make that four-kill streak right here before being dropped six and three. Beautiful start. Flares here we're on board with. He's going to get some shots out. Sets as well is also going to be doing what he can for the Oracle squad. And all most players are up on the field at the moment. And the drone is still in mid-map. Looking to try and make a move here. You've got Beast in there. He's just waiting for a couple of Oracle slayers, uh, players to be slayed out. And as you can see here with three down, they're now going to make a move. Surely, as I say that, they should be in there. But you can see mid-map, no one really there. The drone was thrown forward. Fate should be able to pick it up. This should be potentially a... Uh, a run through here, or maybe a one point fate, and players both picking up kills. It's going to be all up to sets. Sets do what he can, waiting for the support. In fact, sets does stay alive, picks up Lakey. Here we go. Oh, he's forced to go through the throw. He could have actually got two points there, though, Miles. Tough situation to be in, though. His team, his team didn't quite have the kills, and by the very fact that he made the jump, they exposed themselves to the guns of, of rage. But if it hadn't happened, it may have never been a one pointer. And look, at this stage, one point on the board is not a bad thing. It's early in the first half, two minutes 24 left, or two minutes 40 left, excuse me. JTX may have that ball. The drone now, he's made his run all the way through mid. He's got a clear open lane. It's going to be a two. Just by the tip of the, well, the bottom of the tip of that uplink point. Beautiful stuff there. JTX with another clean dunk. Zeppa also with a dunk to his name. This is actually looking very convincing so far for Oracle. Oracle do have the preferred so side though, Miles. And we talked about this last time when we had Rage on this map. When Rage flips sides, they completely dominate it, and I think they have the ability to do so again. I'm not convinced that a three-point lead is going to be enough, especially when Rage runs the offensive again. 
Shots are out. This is a potential big play happening. Fate's got an open lane. Can he make the one-point throw? Oh, no. He missed the sitter. Setsy has just grabbed that. And they're going to pick up those kills as well. Oh, so unfortunate as well because Flair's actually won the battle on the point. And now Beeston is going to make a run back. Can they keep the lane open for now? It's still good. Beeston to Flares. Flares. It's a dunk. Two points on the board. Four to three. Rage back in it. Rage are definitely back in it. And as I was saying, I don't think they were ever out of it. When we flip side, it's going to be very interesting. Beast and Fate both picking up kills there. 11 and 4. Flares. He's been playing like a monster this series, Miles. Well, we go Lakey. He's managed to cut in from the side. He's going to be able to catch these plays in from behind. This is very, very important for their push. That was a Trinity Rocket coming in. Didn't manage to do too much, but look at this. Fate's still in a strong position to slow down those players. A statue. Without getting statue control, you really can't make a run on either point. So for, this, for the boys of uh, Rage on this side, attacking towards statue is really ideal. They want to hold this position. They can set top tickets. Lakey's doing what he can to keep those players at the back end. We see Zeppa grabbing that drone now. He's got an open street. Plays on spawn. Two kills out. There's another kill in the position for him. Can he dunk it? Not able to contest. 6-3 to Oracle. This is massive for the boys in blue. And did you notice, it was actually JTEX who went hero mode there. He held down that back lane. Able to get one kill before being dropped. But that's the kill they needed to get. If JTEX fell, those points wouldn't have gone through. So big ups to JTEX for that one. And now it's actually JTEX making another run as Rage are getting slayed off spawn. Let's see if JTEX can get through here. It's at least one point. The throw looks good. It was intercepted though. Beast in. He's going to be... Uh, uh, well, not, I would say hero mode. It's very close at this stage of the game, but uh, 11 and 9, nice work with that intercept. And now, taking it all the way back over to Oracle's base, Beasted all in the same life as well. If he can get a kill or two, this might be a point here, but he needs to back up. Sets get, set, excuse me, getting kill on Lakey. Hope he getting Beasted in as well. So that was shut down, but still big props to Beasted for shutting down the, the Oracle. Huge momentum push. Also, fate on that same life, two piece in a row. He managed to get two kills out of that. Drone's just reset, and now Lakey maybe going 8 and 13, but he's been absolutely crucial so far. I've been mean, wonderful positioning as far as when his teammates are making those pushes. Overdrive is almost ready for Flares. Beeson's got drone. He has a little bit of space to work with Flares with the crucial kills. Can he get one more? It's a big throw from Beeson. It doesn't look great. It was intercepted anyway, but regardless of that, lovely work. That's going to be the round. 6 3 at the whistle. It's looking really good for Oracle, to be honest, mate. Rage, it's, it's a tough ask from this side. I think, I think Rage is going to get this. I think Rage is going to do this. Oracle played really, really well just then, but I saw some moments of brilliance out of Beeston. Lakey as well, and Flares has just been playing amazing. I think that uh, now that they've switched sides, there's a really good chance of Rage on the comeback here. If Oracle can get some points on the board to start with, it may be a different story, but right now, really feeling Rage, especially now that Flares has that overdrive ready as well. Yeah, Flares ready to go with that overdrive. 18 and 8, he's popped it. Here we go, baby. He's got his running shoes on. He's going to go all the way. Bits throw. It's out. It isn't good. He misses the one point. And that was an overdrive as well. Too much sunk into that one with very little return on that investment. Zeppa now answering back. Oracle, do you think they saw the play coming? Do you think they make the read? They held back a little bit. They weren't too far forward on the push. And maybe, just maybe, it was what they wanted. I mean, sometimes you just got to pull the trigger and it's just, you know, sink or swim. But I, I, I don't know. I think that was a bit undercooked. The overdrive straight off the bat. And especially when you've only got, you know, you're only going to have one chance at an overdrive, two if you're lucky. I just don't think that was the right timing to do that. Now Oracle have just picked them apart and now on the, on the offense once again. Oh, Zeppa. He just cut the head off the snake in that entire push and now he's managed to get the drone out. Oh, he's still alive. What a life this has been for Zeppa. You know when someone says, play your life? This was a good one. Can he keep it going? No, he cannot. But still, beautiful play there from the young man. Managed to get two kills, stopping a push all by himself and then moving the drone back to the sort of center of the map. That's a wonderful set for him. We'll have a quick look at Fate. He's making a big push up via statue. FTL ready for him. Had to get a couple of kills. And again, positioning wise, Fate has been on the ball. No pun intended, full match. Oracle have just been playing amazing, and I'd love to delve into their heads. So thanks to Astro. Let's go to a listen and see how pumped they are after still being in the lead after going through the second half. I threw it on the portal. It's on the portal. It's on the portal. He's on it. He's on it. Oh, my bad, boys. My bad. My bad. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Yeah, my bad. No, no, he's on it. Nice. But this is two. They're swinging stats. 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 Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. He went upstairs. Downstairs. Downstairs. Ali stairs. We're gonna push back. We're gonna push back. Even if we die. Even if we die. Kill, kill, kill. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Your life is big. Your life is big. They went T. 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 One's already pushed out T. Another street. Another car. Two cars. Okay. Cool. And another one. Another one. Jump. Nice. Nice. I'm in too. I'm in too. Wait. 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 I'll get a ball, I'll get a ball. He's in Z, he's in Z, he's in Z. Left side. Is that? Nice. Go, it's fine, it's fine. Throw it down corner. 
I am surprised, genuinely, at how well Oracle are doing. And now with this overdrive, they're in for another two points. This is going to be decimating to Rage's morale. With 20 seconds left in the game, they've just got the relays going, and Zephyr is still being an animal. Three kills in a row. And have you noticed that as soon as JTX got a few more kills, Oracle was stepping up, but the entire team have come together to just really put the boot into Rage's backside. Well, Rage, it hasn't been the best uplink round for them. But after this, we do have another up, uh, we have another hard point. There we are, guys. Two to one in map count so far for Oracle. Yeah, big game indeed there in that uplink. At the half, it was 6-3. Oracle leading, obviously, by plus three. At the end of the game, though, 16 to six. Big ups to there, Oracle, right at the end. Don't realize the chemo play we saw, what we're doing the list at the end. You know, all those things. And obviously, we saw, saw as well. He was just sitting, Steps was just sitting under the, under the uplink portal there for a little while, waiting for the right moment to put that drone in and then allowing his team to grab drone again. However, it was used against them and the other team of Rage did get that one pointer there in man, but still an amazing effort. It was an amazing effort. I love their timing. Their composure was completely awesome. And you know what? It's one of those situations where I'm happy to say I was completely wrong because I thought Rage was going to turn it on their head in the second half and I thought they were going to come back to get it. I think what happened is they got shaken up by that very first play, Miles, because they used that overdrive and got absolutely nowhere with it. It was undercooked. Undercooked at best, you know, rare if you get there. You know, when it's kind of blue, it's really still gushing. You're like, I wanted medium rare. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you're right. And the problem was, though, that it was chicken, you know, and they got salmonella, they're feeling sick, and that's what happened. They got food poisoning at the end of this. But that's only a short-term short -term illness, uh, Miles. They can come back for, for the next map. You can bounce back? You can bounce back. I didn't notice before, but I just thought then the replay sets with the pass into the wall, bouncing back at him. You go, all right, I'll just grab the drone again and run it myself. Two points in. But these points just relaying back and forth over and over and over again. Just right towards the end there. They, they were not messing around at all. We also see that overdrive play that came in too. That allowed him to get there very quickly. So it's 2-1 series lead now in man to the boys from Oracle heading into this hard point. But they did lose that first hard point, 250 to, two, 250 to 215. Yeah, I'm a little worried about them. You pointed out that little bit of a fumble. That was a, that's a name for that, isn't there, Miles? We coined the, uh, the name for the fumble and recovery throw as the fart back in uh, Black Ops 3. So Classy. If you, if you miss the throw, but then you do eventually get the recovery, it's a fart. So good I'm fart there, Setsy. We smelt it from here. Strong one indeed. But obviously, like <laughs> I said, it will be. 
<laughs> Guys, yeah, well, yes. we're trying to focus. Kids. We're trying. Game number four, of course, will be that hard point as they head back into it. It was Rage who took out the first hard point, 250 to 215. You know, I love Miles, I love Josh, and just the stuff they say up here. I've got to contain myself sometimes, so I know exactly what it's like. But for God's and sake. I'm, I'm sure... <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm sure everyone here knows what it's like when you're just trying to contain yourselves and these guys are just throwing out some good ones left, right, and center. But let's focus on what's coming up next. Scorch hard point, different ball game altogether, apart from obviously the uplink we just saw, Miles. Do you think Oracle can close this one out 3-0 now, or will the uplink once again go in favour of Rage? I think the uplink's going to go to Rage. But this is where it gets kind of scary because... The, the, the uplink went to Oracle. Sorry, sorry, Miles. Oh, yeah, the uplink went to... <laughs> wait, what did I say? <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> I, I mean, sorry. What I meant to say was the score chart point, I think it's going to go to Rage. I think it's going to go straight to them. Uh, and then I think the S&D would also go to Rage. And the Rage I, as well, even yeah. though Oracle won 6-2 on throwback. Even though it was 6-2, I've, I've still got hopes because Crusher is... The way you, everyone has been playing Crusher has been... High progressive, bit messy, and I do feel that like a, as far as the team goes, I think Rage. I think they've got the, the just the tiniest bit of an inkling that they'll win those kind of scrappy gunfights. We'll see how it goes. With that aggressiveness as well, obviously, it might come into play as you said. If it does go to game number five with the S and D, but before we get there, it is going to be Rage who has to answer back now, being one down in the series after originally being one zero up to begin with. Scorch hard point. Oracle picking up the uplink, of course. You saw a moment ago, 16 to 6. They also won the SD on throwback for those that are just joining us. 6 to 2, as you're seeing on your screen. But as we've already mentioned a few times, that hard point, 250 to 215 in favor of Rage. As the lads on both squads head on in to the rig draft, having a look up there myself. Can't see too much out of the ordinary, really. A couple of Centurions going in. They want to utilize those, of course, and some of those open up hard points and slow the plays down a little bit there in, man. Indeed, they do. Uh, Miles, this is sure to be a great match, that's for sure. Um, we were only, what, 35 points separating these teams in our first hard point. And like I said, we've, we've got JTEX now starting to warm up along with the rest of the squad. And Zeppa is still just being a complete lanimal. It's going uh, to be great if the entire team can come together because I think they might be able to take over Rage. But again, Rage can form that comeback. And if they do form this sweep and they do clean it up in Game 5, that's going to give them the momentum they need to take it to Mind Freak. I've been going on about it a little bit now, but I think Lakey, this is his map, this is his game type. I think this is where we're going to see him back in the field in a big way. He's going to be flying the flag of Rage from atop the meanest mountain. And if he can get back into this for his team, I think Rage have got a very, very solid chance at, at growing and maintaining a lead here against Oracle. I think Oracle, they, they're superb, but I think JTEX might struggle a little bit here again on the reform game. Yeah, I was about to ask this then. Obviously, JTEX was the one who sort of went a bit slow there at the start, and on that first half point, it really cost him a, that, that first off lead. Just the rotation as well. So I don't think they were really pushing to contestively as a team at the right moments. And that's obviously showed in that scoreline. Even though they did bring it back, it just wasn't enough in the end. So here is this one next. You know, JTEX can pick up a, a few extra kills and really start off strong here, Josh. You sort of feel an Oracle should be able to get this one? Well, I mean, we don't want to put all the pressure on him, but it's kind of true, you know. If we, we can make it fairer by saying if every team member really pulls their weight, then they've got a great chance here if they all play at their peak. Put it this way, if JTEX played the way he did in that uplink, they're not losing this match, and they're going to go to the grand final. As they get set, ready for action, of course, the lads will load in to the game. It is game number four here now in the loser's bracket final. As they, of course, the series is leading in Oracle's favour. 2-1 to one after Rage was up a 1-0 lead to begin with, but they'd lost that S&D, lost the uplink as we all just saw. And they could perhaps lose their chance right now and attempt to replay against Mindfreak in that grand final. As they are set, ready for action. The time is ticking on down. Miles, get hyped, son. I'm ready to go. You ready, Josh? I'm ready. Dust, ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Do a little dance. You guys. Here we go, boys. I'm going to kick this one for the Lakey. I've put the pressure on him. Erad out. I'm keen to see. Some he's twitching with Erad, man. He's ready to rock and roll. Two nades as well, so he's not going to be running a. Uh, he's not going to be running that red dot or the laser sight rather for the uh, hip fire. Actually, so two nades out. Both of them going to go straight away. Oh wow, it's a melee to begin with. Rage, disastrous start for them. Setsy, JTEX got two. Zeppa got one. Ugh, what a run. Oracle. First time on the board for them. Let's see how they do on the next respawn. JTEX off to a two and zero start. Oracle are going to be wing. Maybe. Sets here with his C-Rad out, and he does have a lot of shots out. JTEX and Zeppa both team out. Zeppa with the three-piece 
Four in a row, destroying Rage off the start. Wow, Oracle, this is how you kick off your potential last map in the Losers Bracket Final before we welcome you to the Grand Final. Potentially, Rage getting picked apart once again. JTEX is here in S5, and so he's going to be the hero that we need here in this game. 15 seconds for the rotation. You see the spawns are in Oracle's favor. What a beautiful start to this match for them. Rage, however, they're definitely not out of it, and this is just the beginning, Miles. I pulled away from it, but Zeppa got the kill there on Lakey, and we still with flares here. The next rotation, any second now. It's going towards next hard point. We'll still have a look at Fate. It's getting those kills. Turbine's now in the next position. This is where we'll be seeing Centurion coming out a little bit later on. This is a, it's a perfect position behind one of the, the sort of air conditioning units or something out on the outside where the uh, Centurion really, really comes into his own. It's a very, very useful payload to be using in that position. Wonderful gunfights both sides of the board. Setsy now. Only player alive, or oh, he's still alive, managing to duck and dive between that one. Zephyr picking up kills, Hopi as well. So slaying across the board, pretty solid for the boys in Oracle. Fate yet to pick up a kill. He's got five deaths to his name already. Yeah, he just got picked off there by, uh, I believe it was Zeppo, who was just in a better position, uh, unfortunately, for Fate. And you can see their spawning right out is going to be Rage. 20 seconds left in Turbine Hill. You might see one or two players from Rage still challenge this, but they're going to really focus on this hangar hard point. And you can see it's going to be Zeppo pushing out first. He's 8-3, and three, and that's the man you want running point. Got shots out. Unfortunately, the positioning just was not great. JTEX pushing out towards Rocks. Player over on that head glitch, as you'd expect them to be. Cooks the nades before throwing it out. If he checks his left, he might be able to pick up a player there. Sets is going to be holding in the fort for Oracle getting those scrap points and before he's going to be moving out. Now over in Rox's battle still taking place and Lakey is 2G holding this one down. Fate still on 0 on 5 but he's got 13 seconds of time to his name and they are going to be racking up more points here as Flair is going to be trying to hold down the fort. Does pick up one, goes for more as well. Unfortunately not going to happen as the entire Oracle squad does collapse on them and they look like they're going to be holding down the fort here in Hangar. Oh, Beast is still alive to tell the tale and he managed to clear, clear those players out. Oh, there's one left there but he's not... Oh, no way, Zeppa! You can't count him out no matter what position he's in. He's like a roach. Unkillable. You he's going to inherit the earth. <laughs> yeah, you can put a nuke on him and he's still going to be surviving. Zeppo has just been insane throughout this entire tournament. Hope he's off to a blistering start as well. JTEX doing great as well. Zeppa 12 and 6. He picks up another two. Fate and Beast and sit down because this is Zephyr's territory, 106 and climbing, and we're only in the third hard point. What a great start here for Oracle. We're rotating over to Drill, and you can see here Rage in a position. Lakey's getting twitchy. Fake zero and nine. Yeah, that silence is yep. basically what that deserved, unfortunately, for Fate. But he had such a blistering start to this series and previous ones as well. Beast in those having or trying to have the game of his life. Fate needs one. He's finally off that donut. Welcome to the game, Fate. Almost managed to make it a second kill. We'll have a look at Zeppa. He's been very, very hot so far, and it's not going to change anytime soon. Setsy with two. Zeppa with one. He's going to make the play here. Going in from this. Oh, wow. Oh, what a turn. Beaston. Beaston has just ascended. He's now entering one of his later forms. I'm sure it's not his final one, but he is absolutely beside himself right now. 12 and 9. He's got the most time on the, on the board for his team. 54 to 117. Rage, though. They're not out of this yet. Flares, couple of beautiful kills to his name. Beeson just gets dropped in the back end. Flares, keeping it real. Doesn't manage to finish those kills, but he's still doing the damage he needs to do. He watches his right. He's got a player in there as well. Team still racking up the time. Hard point's going to flip any second now. Josh, we've got a game in our hands. The Rage aren't out of this yet. No, they are not. It's going to be uh, up to Sets and Zephyr to push through mid to see if they can clear it out. Sets stays alive. Beeson chucks a Clayser and falls off the map. You've got two players still up for Rage. The scrap points are going to be going towards Rage. This is going to be challenged over here on Bridge, but the spawn is going to be good here for uh, for Rage. They've got control of this next hard point as we moved off drilled and our next lot of rotation start. 117 to 82. This is a great game so far. You're going to see Flair's going to be taking on one player here in mid-map. Going to be just holding this next location as well. Still 30 seconds left in the hill. Plenty of time. You can see here Zeppa. He picks up a second one as well. Lakey's going to be the man to take him down though and sets, fires back, goes for a second. Flair's trading out kills back and forth. Hope he putting the smack down on Flair's and it's still going to be an Oracle hard point you can see there backing up a bit was set along with Zephyr just trying to ensure that they get those preferred sports and indeed they do you can see on the left side of your map they're all spawning out over on that next hard point and uh, look this is going to be some great positioning for the Oracle guys as they still maintain the lead but Rage trying to get close to that triple digit mark they should make it as this Trinity rocket does come out and indeed they do now onto the turbine hard point Zephyr's here to hold it down and he's gone 17 and 13. Can he hold on here? Comes the play from the outside wall and the wall run. Two players coming in. Both of them get clean up there, though. Lakey manages to make his way through. Wonderful play from the young man there. Now, we've still got a little bit of time on the board. From only down by 40-odd points, Oracle. 
Still in the lead, but Rage certainly not out of this yet. This hard point has proven to be very, very effective for them earlier on. Lovely position here from Lakey. He's going to get the information. Darts get tagged up a little bit, but can Izzy Red stay true? It doesn't. He gets brought down. Flares, big kill down the range. Comes in to clean up the pieces. Does get tagged on the enemy team, but not enough to get the kill. He's got to contest. This is really important. Not able to get the player on the run. Does get his teammate in the pinch. Last 20 seconds of this hard point, Josh, and this is looking a lot closer. Rage back in this one with a vengeance. I've just been enjoying watching these guys come back because Oracle had a very healthy lead, and Beaston has just been a, a machine, really. Uh, the way he's been playing, he's playing to win. Fates joined the party as well, and everyone are just, is just putting on a performance. JTEX running positive, 15 and 14. Zephyr has just been playing out of his skin and sets, 14 and 9. Beautiful stuff. No one seems to be able to put the man down. This ERAD has been working brilliantly for him. However, we need to keep in mind, Miles, that Rage just got within 10 points of them on that last hard point, and now it looks like they are in control of Hangar here, and they may just get the lead if they can stay in control. Here we are. Hope he's last guy alive for his team managed to make that play. He actually backed off there. He was close to the, to the attack and the hard point, but he's actually run off. So now five points difference between these two teams. Oracle, they had a wonderful lead to begin with, but Fate has answered back. And I'm not talking about that, Fate. I'm talking about this one. Fate now on point. Can he get a couple more kills to his name? He seems to have awoken. Lovely shots. Does get brought down eventually. Lakey on time. Again, also doing a good job picking up those kills. 21 and 18 for Zeppa. Beaston also 21 and 18. This is going to go down on the wire. Rage now with a bit of a lead. Next hard point is going to be crucial. Have a quick one of those players making the fight for it. Reactive armor ready for Beast. And he's also got that Scarab. Oh, nades out. Three players on the push. Zeppa goes down. Beast and doesn't find the second. Lakey on the rebound. Can we get a couple more? Watches the players on the flank. Lovely awareness. Hopey though. That was beast mode from Hope. He sets. He's got a three kill streak as well. Rage, they were riding the hype wave and just gaining momentum as they went. But Oracle now within 10 points of the lead once again. Hope has just been a beast as well. Zephyr still going strong. The entire team are just turning up. But Lakey with the flank. JTEX, Zephyr both gone. Hope he answers back, but he may just be dropped in just a second. He will be challenged. Fate comes out. Hope he gets hyped after that two piece. Heavily contested here in Drill. 182. Two apiece as we're about to go to the next rotation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the hard point you have been looking for. Lakey comes in. Perfect three-piece. Hope he answers back. And all of a sudden, we're back to an Oracle hard point. It cannot get any closer between these two teams. Hope he's getting real vocal on stage. Still on board with Fate for the moment while they're trying to crack him through this next one. Hard point's just flipped. The rotations were pretty much on point. Here we are. Fate's going to get the first view, but this has been an Oracle hard point from start to finish. It's looking good for them. JTEX on a three kill streak here for the Oracle squad, helping him to maintain this lead. We've asked him to step up, and he has answered the call. He's about to put that Centurion down. Unfortunately, he does get dropped. 197 to the 187 of Rage. Rage back in front as three players of Oracle are down, and they are spawning out as well. This could be very dangerous as they're all the way over in Hangar. A couple of players are over on the Turbine side, though. It is so important that both Hopi and JTEX stay alive as bridge there's about 25 seconds left they need to be thinking about these future hard points as there's only a couple of points between them oracle the first to hit 200 points here on bridge 20 seconds for the rotation look here at flares and lakey both moving around through the lab you're gonna have hopey holding down the fort but fake flares coming in to clear him out beast to picks up one as well and rage are set up for this next hard point it is so vital for both teams this next turbine hard point it could be one here it's gonna be tough very hotly contested i think we're gonna finish up over in the hangar we will see. Rage's hard point over here on Turbo and snaking away as Lakey spots one shot out. He's not going to pick up the kill. Beaston and Lakey both picking up kills. JTEX falls. Hopi and Sets trying to break in here to Turbo and only 25 seconds left here for required for Rage to tie things up and force the game five. Lakey's still here. He's got that active camo waiting as well. Three payloads ready for Oracle, though. If needed, they will come out, and I dare say they're going to be needed with only 13 seconds required for Rage. Challenging here, Fate, he's going to be stepping up, and you can see he used that FTL jump. Doesn't, it isn't effective, though. His sets is clean up. Beast and answers back, but what a hard point we have on our hands, Miles. Oh, my goodness. It's really going down on the wire. Oracle now in control. They've got 16 seconds left on this one. They're going to try to rack up as much time as they possibly can, and then we're going to get the rotation. And the next rotation is the game-winning hard point, Josh. It's all going to come down to this.
Flares just won a very important gun battle as Zephyr was trying to move around rocks. Oracle are going to have the scrap points and they are going to be two points off Rage, but Rage are in control. Trophy systems are down. Fate, Beast are both picking up kills, but it's up to Sets. Sets is going in. He picks up one. Hope he goes down. Sets picks up another before being dropped. This was going to be all on Sets. The last few seconds, Rage are going to try and clean this up here. No one's in position from Oracle to challenge and Rage win the hard point. 250 to 235. Yet another hard point going their way, and we are now in a game five for our losers bracket final. Rage coming right back into that one. What an excellent matchup it was. I wrote down some stats there during that hard point. After the first rotation, Oracle had the lead 117 to 74 against Rage. After the second rotation, Oracle still in the lead 197 to 182. Then finally, as you mentioned, 250 to 235 in favor of Rage. Once Fate started getting those slaying kills, getting those numbers up, the, the score that I just mentioned sort of speak for themselves. You know, it was a bit of a lackluster in the first rotations. Then he started getting some more, getting some more, getting some more. And it really showed out after the second rotation was done. And then even before that third rotation could be fully completed, Rage closed it out. But what an excellent hard point, and again, another close one there. Beeson just played with a new level of intensity throughout that match. He hit his 30 bomb right at the end. He really led the team. And when you saw that Oracle were out in front by a long margin, and the rest of Rage started to slow down a bit, it was Beeson who turned it around. He stayed on fire, and he really just rallied the troops together. He had his torch, and he had a Leroy Jenkins moment on a few hills there where he was just going in, completely tore apart Oracle in a few stages of the game. Obviously, there was a big play there on bridge after when the, fir the third rotation started off there, Miles. He was trying to pop that Centurion down, but got picked up. Do you think that might have been a game changer if it had gotten out? I honestly do, because let's face it, bridge is a nightmare to play, because when as soon as it's, it's a box corridor, and that is banking grenades off of the wall, that's players banking grenades off of the floor, so you've only got a tiny little space to work with, and if you can get a Centurion down there, you're basically secured. All you have to worry about are the gunfights, and let's face it, Oracle had the numbers at that point, so if they'd managed to get that Centurion down, JTEX would have been in a really pristine position to be getting a lot more time out of that one. Potentially a game-changing moment. So the series now is tied at two games apiece as we head into game number five, S&D on Crusher. Now, we saw an S&D earlier, of course. It was Oracle who picked up the victory there, 6-2. But as we mentioned prior to the hard point when we were looking down the long barrel of things, we sort of feel that the S&D on Crusher perhaps will go a different way there, Josh. Look, that S&D that Oracle played was very, very convincing. And now here on Crusher, I think they've got a good chance of winning this as well. But consider, considering that I think more on this map than throwback, you're going to be relying on the players stacking up and being a bit more aggressive. It's going to favour Rage a bit more than throwback, but I'm still feeling an Oracle victory here. I'm sort of thinking we will probably should see the scope coming out from Fate as well. We've seen it before from him, so I'm thinking we'll see that again. Hopey. As you guys were saying, the Hope Scopes might come back into, into play too from the Oracles team as they head into this S&D. Game number five, I'm sort of thinking that it could go, yeah, round for round. Obviously, as we sometimes see, as soon as one team picks up two consecutive rounds, perhaps it'll make the difference there, Miles. We could be seeing that on Crusher. But uh, again, it's it's a bit hit and miss if those teams are going for those big four stacks. You know, b site is popular as ever for the four stack. You know, and if, once they get stuck in, it tends to just be a mess, and it's kind of like whoever gets the first kill generally gets a, you know, maybe wins the round, but it's going to be nuts. Also, I want to note that JTEX went the Centurion again over Flares going for the Overdrive. So we'll see if that impacts the game at all. Both Rage and Oracle playing for their lives here. It is game five. One team's going to go packing with, I think, $4,000 of prize money. And, uh, of course, you know, you want to get as far as you can in the competition. Going third, you don't want that. But still, obviously, a great accomplishment to come third out of 31 teams here this weekend. I oh, know it is indeed. You know, and definitely both these teams have, I think, surprised a few people here. You know, they, they've definitely turned my head back and forth a little bit with the way they've been playing and just really showing up throughout the three-day competition. Of course, it is the lowest bracket final right now. It is game number five. The series is tied up at two games apiece as that first game, of course, was the hard point in favour of Rage. They then dropped two maps in a row, but they're still alive after another hard point victory, and they are forcing this game number five against Oracle. These lads are pumped. They're ready. They're set for action. Of course, the winner of this goes on to play Mind Freak in the grand final. Mind Freak patiently waiting for their return to the stage, and they really want to get that W right now to not just go up against the grand final juggernauts of Mind Freak, but to also at least secure themselves a second-place finish 
Enough from me. Over to you lads there on the caster's desk. It should also be noted that if, well, it doesn't matter who makes it the grand final of either of these teams. Whoever does get there needs to win two best of fives to win the grand final. So it's already an uphill battle against Mind Freak, and then they have to do the nigh on impossible by getting two best of five wins. However, Miles, something tells me we've seen that before. Spidey sense is certainly tingling, Josh. Mind Freak pulled that amazing upset. Well, not upset, but the amazing comeback versus Ten of Minds in our last event. Are we going to see some kind of miracle again this event? We shall find out. We need to get this one done and dusted, though. Ladies and gentlemen, get hyped. It is game five of our Losers Bracket Final, and we've got the scope out here, and we're missing shots. Fate's going to be trying to get what he can here. That player did duck back out again. Fate's going to be all over that. Unfortunately, he's going to be missing that shot. But this has definitely got me tingling, Miles. Well, as you can see, the, the very presence of that sniper profile has already changed the face of the game already. And now we've got a major push towards A, and ooh, it could be a vicious one at that. Here comes a play. Lakey shots out. Gets one. JTX trades back. This is again back and forth. It's not ideal for these players to be doing this, but look, hey man, if you get the kills, you get the kills. Flares has got that bomb now. Oh, fate all in his lonesome. This completely turned. I thought Rage had the advantage in this one on the attack. You can see their fate does pick up the bomb, but Sets and Zeppa, these two players, they've been the highlight reel for me from Oracle all weekend. Put them together, and I don't think Fate's going to be able to fight this one out. It's, again, it's, it's all against him. And look at these two, just sticking together like glue. They're going to trade this kill no matter what. Fate, credit to him, though. I think he's duking it very, very nicely. And we're going to be seeing, hopefully, a plant. He's just trying to play very, very carefully. He hasn't spotted anything yet. Going to be working potentially back towards A. It looks like that with the time running out. That's what they're going to do. You can see Zep Zeppa and Sets both check and B. They surely know it's going to be at A now. This bomb's about to go down. Fate, if he gets his bomb down, which he does, he's not in as bad of a situation right now. And you can see, oh, he didn't spot the player. That's COD timing at its finest. Sets there with two kills to the one of Zeppa. He's going to get this defuse working towards that Scarab. How much does that hurt, man? Really, if you're Faye, you did everything right. You duked him out. You pushed him towards B. He didn't necessarily know that, but that may have been his intention. Crept back in towards A, and then get shot in the side like that after just missing the very fact. And it's up. literally just that millisecond it too, is. right? If he just... Mm. Makes me sick. But hey, man, that's one on the board. A win's a win, right? It is indeed. And that's Call of Duty for you, folks. We're going to be seeing yet another round, as we generally do. We can't be done after one. Oracle now on the attack. Sets had a nice start with that 2-0. And, and now he's going to be the objective carrier. And straight into the gun and right here. Nice work by Hopi to pick up the first kill. That's Lakey going to be going down, trading out. Though JTX goes down from the scope of fate, actually. He picked up that kill, so that's very nice. Hopi's still working his way through over on this A-bomb site. And you can see here, they're all stacked on this. Beaston, Flares, and Fate all wrapping around. You can see it's actually Beaston going right around the answer. He might catch one, catch one off guard. Indeed, he does. Picks up one, but he gets taken out by Sets. Nice little trade there. 2v2 scenario. Sets and Zephyr once again, Miles. What's the duo? The fearsome twosome. Can they make something else happen here? Lovely timing. Some 1v1 Zephyr versus Fate. Fate finally catches a good bit of karma. He's going to be getting that kill in the side after tagging up his buddies 1-1 one, one apiece. And he picked it up with that only because, of course, he was rocking that scope. And you can see there the Pew Pew Gun does pick up the kill. Nice work there. Uh, and Zeppa goes down 1-1, one, one, tying things up. And uh, I really do genuinely hope this goes the distance miles because this is a great search and destroy. Well, let's have a look on the offensive side of things. Fate, maybe run a snipe again? Yeah, he will. Let's see if he can't catch a couple of those players da dashing through mid. Zeppa, he's asking for it. Will he get it? Ooh, not quite. Still Quick rotation right around to B, though. This is it. Good timing. Can you get anyone? A little slow on the trigger, it seems to be. Might need some lessons from Fumage. Um, but we'll see. see. He's going to be missing that one as well. And he gets caught out from behind. Hopi on the flank. Picks up two. Beast and Flares enter back. Zephyr gets another. Beast all alone though. 1v2. He goes down. Oracle with a great round there. Answering back against Rage. Going round for round here, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we like to do it. And look at this maneuvering here. Great stuff from Zephyr. The old alley right over his head. Straight into the round win. Oracle up 2-1. Kind of awkward trade so far. No one's really bested either in terms of st strategy or, or tactics. It's just kind of been wicked gunfights. But hey, I'm not complaining. These are fun to watch. These are indeed very fun to watch. Sets here is going to be running the objective. And this time, going for Bean. You can see every single player is over here. You can see a running point. He's going to be hoping. Look at this. Zeppa getting two. Beast and answers back with two of his own. Who's going to get the advantage now? 2v2. Oh my gosh! Oracle wrapped that one up and tied it with a bow as well. That's a great little package there. Very good form. 
nicely done. I suck at wrapping packages. You know, the, when you get the corners just yeah, right? Yeah, just right. Man. Perfectly folded. You know those people that wrap the top of the box and the bottom of the box separately? So you can take the top of the box oh, off. I mean, yes. that's some top yes. level. But everyone, top surely, level wrapping. Surely everyone just buys that, the box oh, as probably, is, yeah, right? Yeah. Unless you're one of those arts and craftsy people. And I'm sure there's a couple in the crowd. Here we go, guys. Round number five. Oracle managing to win the head-on collision in that one. Actually coming out pretty much unscathed, so that was very impressive. Fate? Nope, no snipe this time. Traded in for an MV4. Not as fun, my friend. We're going to come off you. That was a low-hanging fruit joke there, but I'm going to leave that one. Beast in here, he's going even four and four, and uh, he needs to stop this uh, this Oracle onslaught because they have a lot of momentum. And Zeppa, he's going to be taking down Beast, who gets another one as well. Zeppa, I... Look, I'm going to come up and shake your hand after this one, that's for sure. Eight and two, you have just been a complete superstar throughout this entire weekend. I've said it multiple times. I will keep saying it if you keep performing like this because what an amazing Call of Duty player you are, son. We're over here with Hopi, just getting some shots down range. There's only two players left here for the Rage Squad. It's Lakey and Fate. And you can see there, they're not sticking together either, so they need to be careful. Lakey's just trying to get some eyes on a closer person to them. He's going to be JTEX, who's just biding his time. They need to be careful, though. Lakey trying to spot it out. Oh, both of them work past. Oh, there's play in the corner. They do spot him. They nearly kill each other there. Lakey does get a few uh, shots on his teammate, but it's not going to matter. Lakey able to stay alive. 1v2. He gets dropped. Oracle now. Four in a row. Oh, dear. We said two in a row was a game winner. Mm. Four in a row is basically pack your bags. You're going home, lads. They just seem to have absolutely no answer on the side of Rage. Every play is countered perfectly by some annoyance. And this is what I was talking about. This, that was a strategic overcome. They really did put them out of place. Rage were forced into a corner, had nothing to do with it, and they took a pounding at the hands of Oracle there. Sets here, gonna be running the objective once again. Five and one, if he gets his plant down, he's gonna have that Scarab ready, and he's also gonna have his active camo in just a second as well, Miles, which of course is gonna be huge. Hopey, Beaston training out, Beaston once again, picking up two. JTEX ends back to his zone. Fake, the only one left, he does have that FTL jump, should he need it. He does have the K-Bar in hand. The cam camo player is gonna get him. Oracle, one round away from making it to the grand final here of the CWL Sydney Open 2, presented by PlayStation 4, or in this case, presented by Zephyr, because what a stellar performance by that kid. Setsy used his camo, though. Was that too big an investment? 5-1? <laughs> nah, probably not. <laughs> probably not, especially <laughs> Zephyr. Still, he's got, what's, what's Zephyr rocking? Because he's still got his uh, payload as well. Ah, it's only an FTL jump. Whatever. Beaston's been having a great game. 6-6, six and six, but he's always picking up those doubles. He's always picking up the kills he needs to get. This is vital. Look at the stack here. They're uh, completely split up. So this is going to be a free plant. We're going to see how Oracle respond to this. 9-4 and four from Zephyr. 6-1 and one for Setsy, by the way. Great stuff. And now they're going to collapse on it. You can see Lakey's going to be the first one to run into them. It's actually going to be Flares picking up one. Make that two. He's going for more as well. Will he get a third? Yes, he will. woo -hoo -hoo. That is how you respond to that, my thank, friends. Thank you very much. Uh, match point? No problem. We'll just take a, a very clean round. Look at that flank from Lakey. Hyper-aggressive. Well overextended, but the fact that his rest of his team were in position to clean them up, I mean, that was like, they pounced that one with all the poise of the Avengers. That was a tasty round. Indeed it was. Flair's picked up a couple there, and uh, they were basically gifted to him. That was really nice, though. Um, Oracle now on the attack, and you can see they've been very, very aggressive before. This is, again, match point. Could be the final round, and they're about to clash head-to-head. -head. Every time they've done this, Oracle have come out on top. He finds three shots down range. Lakey, Flares, both picking up kills. 2v4. It's going to be up to Sets and Zephyr. The wombo combo from Oracle yet again. You can see they've slowed things down, and they're backing up. They, oh, they might have duked here. Did they actually duke him out? Because it looks like they may have. You can see here Beaston trying to work his way back around towards A as both Zephyr and Sets are working their way over towards this B side of Sets. He's going to try and get this bomb down. Brilliant timing as well. If they pull off this 2v4, I'm flipping tables and I'm going to leave the building because this is going to be nuts. You can see bomb down. Now it's up to Zephyr who's just been beaming everyone. He spots one. Shots out. He's got that FTL jump. Should he use it? No, he doesn't get to. Sets all alone now. He gets dropped. Rage is still in this game, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be 3-5. I would have loved to have seen FTL jump and then just destroy everything but uh, unfortunately it did not go down that way nonetheless Oracle still with a healthy lead but if they keep giving up points like this you've got Lakey he's got that scarab at least it's something he could pick up a free kill there potentially this is uh, maybe this may be going down to the wire he's like two pixels away from camo as well mm. that's comeback material and not to forget Beeson's got his reactive armor 
Ooh, Lakey. So close that to camo. That camo you mentioned earlier might have been a little early, Miles. Dude, it was an early investment. We were all lols and jokes and crap. Uh-oh, it's a big start. Sets with a perfect nade. He gets fate. There's enough information there. Lakey's in. But is it too late? What? JTX is above, on the stairs. He's backed out. Sets with the... Oh, Scarab! He gets... No, he doesn't. Beaston gets the kill out of it. Lakey now. Zep answer back, Sets gets one as well, it's all up to Flares, Flares goes down, Oracle are going to the grand final to take on Mind Freak here at the CWL Sydney Open 2, and what a performance, so well earned, the entire squad have fought their way through the lower bracket, and what a great run it has been, Rage, as much as they put up a fight, it was all the Oracle show. Cinderella's going to the ball, a huge. No, nah, that was a good one, Miles. Good one, Josh. 6 3 at the end of the S and D right there. Best set of five series come right down to the wire. Oracle, as you pretty much mentioned, the Cinderella story has not ended yet. With nice. that losers bracket run, now going to the grand finals against Mindfreak. She gonna meet that prince, give her a big old kiss. Question, who's the prince on Mindfreak? Ooh, it's probably uh it's probably fighter. Let's go with fighter. Nah, He's but fair thing. enough. We'll, we'll focus back on what just happened, however. Josh. Overall thoughts on that whole series, mate. Like, it was back and forth, obviously. The hard points were out of grasp for Oracle, but they did it in the uplink, and they did it in the S&Ds. Well, it just shows, you know, you can win a lot of hard points. You can have the aggression. You can have that gun skill, but unless the team can come together where it's needed in those objective game types, the uplink they lost, the two S&Ds they lost, you know, they, you, you really need to get those wins. Just two hard point wins aren't going to be enough, and it was proven here. Yeah, I was hoping to see that FCL jump in that second to last round. I think it was uh, how I say that. It didn't come into play, but, you know, they ended up closing it out 6-3. Obviously, the first S&D score was 6-2. So much of a muchness in the end when it came to the S&D. It just seems that Oracle just has those down a little bit better off. Obviously, sadly, there to the team of Rage. They aren't going home empty-handed, though. They're still getting $4,000 for a third-place finish. Plus, some pro points will be thrown their way. So I'm sure they'll be happy with that effort. And I'm sure, or I hope, to see these guys back again at that last chance qualifier coming up in Melbourne in July in men. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a great event for sure. And I do hope to see them. I mean, they upset a lot of teams and surprised many people with this lineup, with this current roster going this far. Top three, it's nothing to sneeze at, Miles. No, nothing to sneeze at whatsoever. So as you said that, I got a little tickle. Did you? Yeah, that was really weird. Mm. I mean, look, man, they've gone, the, they've gone the distance. Why not go all the way to the grand finals? And now, going up against Mind Freak, spectacular run for the boys in blue. I mean, Oracle have really put on a show for us. Rage cannot be too disappointed with their performance. You know, you get this way, you get this far and deep into the competition, you want to go all the way. But look, as you said, still got the last chance qualifier, still netted a ton of cash and those pro points, absolutely crucial in making it towards champs and the global pro league. Sometimes it's just the not right time to go all the way. And you see right there, Rage, 250 to 215, the first hard point, followed by that S&D Oracle answering back to tie the series up, 6-2. They then saw 16 to 6 on the preset uplink. Again, the hard point. Rage is clearly the better when it came to that one. 250 to 235. However, back to an SD and as much of a muchness back to that block we saw earlier on in the series at game number two. 6 3 it ended up in game five for that team of Oracle to get themselves into the grand final and secure themselves at least a second place guaranteed finish here at CWL Sydney number two, presented by PlayStation 4. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ex very excited to see what's going to happen coming into this grand final. You know, can can Oracle take at least one map off this Mind Freak squad? Will Mind Freak 3-0 them? It's, it's really going to be interesting to see. Can Oracle defeat Mind Freak in two best out of fives? That is the story that I want to see. You know, last CWL, Mind Freak came back in two best out of fives and, and defeated TM, but could it happen to them? It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard for Oracle to win anything here, but maybe a search and destroy. I see them taking that, you know, a possibility. But have you seen Mind Freak? Their S&D has been pretty good. To be fair, Rage took them the distance, and you saw Oracle just pick apart Rage. So I really think that there's a great opportunity here for Oracle to take the search and destroy. Aside from that, I don't see him winning a hard point, and I don't really see him winning an uplink. So... I, I'm thinking it's going to be, I'll, I'll be fair, I think it's going to be a 3-1 to Mind Freak. In first, first game, best out of five miles, obviously it's still a little way away, but what are you sort of feeling in regards to this next grand final that's coming up shortly? 
as far as Mind Trick go, we know that they are a spectacular team. They are the top dogs in the region for a reason. Um, but at the same time, Oracle have got a lot of fire in the tank still. As far and they've been playing like this all day. They haven't had any rest, any reprieve, and they're still going all guns blazing. And they know now this is the time not to crash. And it's just it's up to their brains and their bodies to keep them going in this final corner show for us. And if I may just bring us back to the series we just saw, big ups to Rage for coming mm. this far. I mean, Beaston put on such a stellar performance, you know. We're making jokes. It's quite. A, it's a. It's a bit of a meme in the scene to say that he's changing the game. And I, I just want to say congratulations to him for coming this far. A top three performance is great. He and the rest of the squad, you know, who have been thrown together. So much talent. They've come all the way and uh, upset some of the bigger, more established names. So I mean, they they got to be happy with you know walking away with. 4K, a lot of pro points and a good position for both the uh, the relegation online tournament coming up for the CWL uh, Global Pro League Stage 2 as well as the LCQ in July. Yeah, you are right. It's no accident that that team of Rage made it through as, as far as they did up in the top part of the bracket in the winner's bracket to finally fall in that winner's bracket final earlier. However, that is them done. However, we will go to a quick short break and when we come back, it is grand final time. Mind Freak, the undefeated yet to drop a map at this event will face up against the ones out of that loser's bracket that we just saw now. Oracle Esports in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. The action's still coming your way when we come back. Knocking on the door. Flares gets two. Can he make it a third? No, he cannot. Zeppa with a second. Can he make it a third? There's two more players charging in. The slide underneath him gets another. Zeppa three in a row. Time the hill is him as well. We, I think we need to watch JTEX more because I just want to see what's going on with him for Miles because I know the kid's talented. We saw it in previous days. Has he quit? <laughs> Thank oh. you. Oh, he finally gets one. Yeah. This, is the, this is the initiative they needed. He's got the jump on two players here. Nades out. Perfect position. Flag Vest gets a second. Beautiful work there from Flares. Oh, all being dropped, but that's the kill they needed to get. If JTEX fell, those points wouldn't have gone through. So big ups to JTEX for that one. And now it's actually JTEX. Lakey, hope you get Beast in as well. So that was shut down, but still big props to Beast. Yeah, that silence is yep. basically what that deserved, unfortunately, for Fate. But he yeah. are still going strong. The entire team are just turning up. But Lakey with the flank. Nicely done. I suck at wrapping. I know that when you get the corners, yeah, just right. Just right. Yeah. Perfectly folded. You know there's people that wrap the top because they have a lot of momentum. And Zeppa, he's going to be taken down. Beast, who gets another one as well. Zeppa. Zeppa hands it back. Stets gets one as well. It's all up to Flares. Flares goes down. Oracle are going to the grand final to take on Mind Freak here at the CWL Sydney Open 2. And what a Three. Round number eight. Going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades. Making it now a 3v2. Here we go. Bomb down A. It's going to be an easy climb. The active camo, wise for smiley. He sneaks out there. He's nice going to find place. the kill, and there we go. Rotation. Oh, sorry. The spawns are going to be in control of Validate. He's going to find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just over this the huge. Pitch. No. It's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most, and he's going to be able to break that spawn. To no avail. He's going to fall there, but his teammates do clean up the rest of the pieces. Ramming is the last alive in a 1v2. One player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko. He jumps off just in time. Perfect. It comes around Ramming. Nice. Very nicely done nice. by him to get that 1v2. A very good clutch. Empire has already hit the rotate. They're set up pretty nicely. They don't really have anyone out on that anchor, but it looks like we finally have someone from Validate playing spawns for once. So this could be a flip here, and it is. So we have number seven, Pixel spawning out cross map in the lab. And this is a full... Oh, control, control, Pixel, Pixel is pushing out. No, wait, wait, wait. Tag on the right, heading. Go down, Pixel. No, 2v2, 2v2, 2v2. In the middle, in the middle. Nice, one, last one, last one, last one. Pushing, he's pushing. He's absolutely, absolutely hitting. I'm on that. One more front, one more front. Find us, find us. Push your game. Help, help, help him, help him, help him. I'm absolutely on that. Nice one, that dead. Nice snake. Hang on, hang on. Good shit, good shit. Hang on, tag, there's two, one tag. Pixel, one more. Pixel is tagged, Pixel is tagged. One more, Gary. Not heavy, not heavy though. Watch out, watch out. Picked up once again, Zephyr's going to have it this time. He's got his team that have right in front of him. He's got two teammates there in the opposition spawn. And only a one point, he did die mid-air, so... And they would have thought maybe it would be the old jump. If he can use it, they might try and give him a place. Killify tries to pick up the second beast. And one more wave of spawners. Here's the run. Goes for the pass. It's oh, good. And Beaston sinks it. Beautiful work there from Rage. That call up on main. Nice, nice, nice. I'm saying ball, same ball, same ball. Jump down, jump down, nice. I spawned her, I spawned her. I'll be helping. He's killing me, he's killing me. One what? shot. It wouldn't let me get in. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Second bump. Try, 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 try. Uncontested, please. They're doing very good at uh, betting and trading here. 
Ludak was just inside the hill there for a little time, trying to get some more up off the respawns that will come. The Trappies will go up now to Curry Kid. He's, he's going to try and redeem himself after that last round. Picks up all around him. He pushed too aggressive there. Too many players focusing up on him. Shots will come out. Can get to the double. I'm not sure how. Hey. Rapids on the screen right now. He's going to be coming up this little mid-cut hit. Finds one player in the back. Can he get the second shaky shots? But he'll do it. So a nice two-piece from him, but it's not enough. Fighter, he's going to shut him up. Let's see what they end up doing. Looks like a long roar on there. Yeah, great it works double out. Play. Double kill. And he might find the third in the middle of the map. And potentially a fourth as well. Third there. Can he find the fourth? Being alive for a bit, you know, just controlling it. It's still the nitty-gritty of this map. There's nothing really crazy going on. Cody shooting everyone but killing nothing and then killing everyone. So... Typical Cody things. Uh, streak. Really ineffective in the end there, but Hypers, he's going to be able to get another two piece. He's been getting two pieces after two piece. Make that three. The man starts to heat up a little bit here. Ritter actually just played nice and slow. And he managed to just sort of sneak in there, get the break without really much effort because his teammates were expected, well, the other team was expected to have cleared out that ground, but it's not going to matter. Stems is a huge two piece, and they're just completely in control of Turbine yet again. Not worse coming out. Stems just got pretty early. There's a camo player oh, right in oh, front of Shoggy. Didn't even see him there, <laughs> but picked up the three piece nonetheless. Ooh. There's a four kill. And just like that, Shonky, I think he was as surprised as I was at a player strolling past his screen. Already, I do like that. I think they need to have a little bit more presence on middle map, potentially work for the pinch instead of playing for those pawns so early. Yeah, it's important for turbine because it can be a money hill, but they basically just made this middle hill for Empire become a money hill. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation coming back. Nice, quick reactions from Frontline, realizing, hey, they're pretty stacked every single time, but Luna's nice, busted Luna. and gets a two-piece. Will he get the three? Has to reload, unfortunately, and gets traded out by Kitty. So if he is able to pick they are able to pick back rocks. It's going to be a little bit gross, so they can't get out in time. It's picked into Erad range. Luda picks up the first strike. Can he pick up the oh. second? Yes, he does. Nice place for him yet again. And is it 2v2 now? FTL potentially a little bit wasted there as he gets that player one shot. Still trying to say hi to each other in the middle of the map. Here we go. First one to give a warm welcome is going to be Kitty. But look, Luda and Snowbee, they're going to trade out two kills. So it's a good sort of trading scenario for both teams. It's going to work for four players. No. This is a massive, massive amount of uh, work to do. One at a time is going to make it work. There's the first kill. Second. Back a back, two in a row. Now it's going to be really seconds left to go back a back. He does have to make the move, though. He is the bomb planner. He's got a nade, and he's got camo. This is massive. Over the top, activates camo. The 2v1, he gets one on the turn. Back a back, unbelievable. 1v4 clutch to keep this team in the round. I mean, look at everyone looking around. What just happened? Ladies and gentlemen, we started with 31 teams three days ago. $30,000 on the line and 10,000 pro points for the winners of each player in the championship team. Now, it's Sunday and only two teams remain. And well, they could not have had more different runs through the bracket. Oracle Esports came through and dropped into the lower bracket so very early on. This would be their sixth series in a row and man they have had an amazing afternoon of call of duty mind freak on the other hand they have not dropped a map all weekend long and they are the undisputed champions of the anz region it's hopi's heroes up against buzzo's band of brothers who is going to take home this trophy and show us that they are the best of the anz region well gents i think we're in for one heck of a game bio over to you Thank you very much, Sandman. And yes, it is grand final time here at CWL Sydney number two. Of course, these guys had a long road. That is, of course, Oracle. I'm talking about Mind Freak as well, but Mind Freak a bit easier, it seems, on them. It is the final match of the day. And once again, joining me up here on the desk, I have Josh and I have Miles. Gents, how pumped up are you for this one? I am pretty damn pumped up. I'm about to explode up here, Bioacid. This is the grand final. 
that maybe weren't expecting, but uh, I didn't know I needed it so badly until we actually had it. Had no idea it was coming. Well, had a, and I had an idea it was going to be the uh, grandfather we're going to get when we started to see the way Oracle were playing about halfway through the day. It was like two or three series in, and I was like, no one's going to stop these boys. No one. If there's anyone who's going to stop these boys, they're in the finals of them right now. Oh, it really is. Obviously, Oracle, we've seen them throughout the day. If, you, if you've been tuning in since 10 a.m. this morning, you've seen exactly what these guys have done to get here. Now, look at that win-loss ratio in regards to maps. 26 and 6 for Oracle. Well, 18 and 0 from the Juggernauts. A win streak of 18. If that was to come crashing down, this is the only chance we're going to see it happen, I think. There has been some close calls for Mind Freak, but this is the one where you really need to lock it down and bring your A game, and Oracle are aware of that. We've seen them this morning. We've seen them all day, and honestly, you're going to see them one more time. Hopi, JTEC, Skepsis, and Zeppa, that squad of four, bringing the damage coming up in this one, Josh. Hopi, JTEC, Skepsis, and Zeppa, you're broken down right there. I'm developing a little bit of a man crush on Zephyr. I'm sorry, Miles, but what a performance by that guy. Setsy as well has performed astonishingly. Put them all together, and you have one hell of a squad that might be able just to get their sword through the armor of Mind Freak. Potentially, they have a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of experience here on the roster. They haven't been together very long, but so much raw talent. The potential is off the charts. Over 9,000, you may say. But will we get to see that here in the Grand Finals? Yeah, going off that 9,000 remark, they definitely have to go Super Saiyan in this one because they are up against that Mind Freak squad that we've come to know and love. Just like that, buzzing, excite, fighter, and shocks. These guys have played and, and destroyed here so far. They've played on an international level many times. You all saw them over there at the Global Pro League for CWL. And right now, they're here to take down CWL City number two after picking up the first one a few months back. I really love Hopi Squad. Everyone knows I do, I do. And Oracle, they really deserve a victory here, as much of an upset as that would be. But Mind Freak, they're playing so good this event. The GPL has just really hardened them into a diamond of a team. They've been playing brilliantly. And something tells me production have that sound effect <laughs> queued up. Flawless victory is coming out. I don't think they're dropping a map this uh, this entire event. If they do, it's going to be the Search and Destroy, as we discussed. It has to be the Search and Destroy. If there's one weakness to this Mind Freak lineup, it's that Search and Destroy gameplay. We all make fun of Buzzo for not getting any kills in it, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, that will be their Achilles heel here in this Grand Finals. But still, there's a lot of other game types they can win it off of. They can win that first best of three off of the respawn game types alone. They don't even have to concede a single Search and Destroy. But look, we'll see how that one goes. Ultimately, if, if the boys in uh, an Oracle are going to make any damage here, it's going to be an S and D, and if they can take an uplink, then that will be absolutely... I, I will be gobsmacked, first and foremost, just because MF, as you said, Josh, diamond hard right now. But it would just be the most wonderful upset to see here at the Grand Finals. As we have a look at that rotation, first up, it will be Retaliation Hard Point, followed by a breakout S and D and Frost uplink. Now, many people are probably going to assume that we'll only see three out of these five of course, Mind Freak, with that flawless winner bracket run, they only need to win one best out of five series, and they have done and dusted. However, it's a bit, a bit on the other side of things for when it comes down to Oracle. Now that I actually see that what Search and Destroy this is, Breakout, which is obviously the newest Search and Destroy here, Mind Freak, they have experience at this on land against the world's best. I mean, I don't think that uh, the guys over here from Oracle have that experience. Well, I, I know for a fact they don't. That just scared me a little bit, uh, and I, it's dashing my hopes of, of Oracle being able to, to pull out that breakout, or I'm that, that search and destroy. I'm still holding fast. I think there is an element of unpredictability to breakout search and destroy that we have seen so far at the competition. It does get a little bit rowdy, particularly on that A bomb site. B bomb site is a little bit open and shut, especially if a team can get in there early and set that one up properly. But A in showers, you know. You never really talk about what happens in the showers. Sometimes in the locker room after the days, it's a bit awkward. You know, there's a bit of comparing going on there. And I think here, when the comparing gets going, it just gets a bit out of control. And before you know it, the round's finished. Well, we all know Mind Freak measures up when it comes to that because their performance speaks for itself. Oh, no, it really does. And I believe some of the Mind Freak squad are currently warming up up on that main stage because it has been a bit of a rest for them in between matches. Obviously, they didn't they didn't have to play until that grand final time, or the winner's bracket final time. Then they had another break just before while that loser's bracket final went up and underway. You see them getting warmed up right now here for this grand final at City Wall City number two, of course, presented by PlayStation 4. They want to take home that first place cash money, money dollar bell goal. 
It is course 14. Was that English? I liked oh, it. It's plenty, mate. Plenty of that to go around. But $14,000 for first place or $14,000 for first place, depending on how you want to read it. A bit of an inside joke there. Then second place, though, $7,000 for second place as well. That's a lot of moolah there, Miles. Drinks on the winners tonight, I think. We'll be chasing those boys down, wherever it may be, the star or someone's hotel room. I'll find them. We'll find them. I have a particular set of skills. I know. <laughs> I mean, I know who you are, or where know. you live. But I know that you just wanted to call the duty open. Bro. <laughs> and I know you're you. going to the star. And you will buy me a drink. <laughs> you will buy no, me. but obviously, of course, we all jokes aside, you do see that Mind Free squad. They are setting serious. You also see now on your screens, Oracle. They've been playing phenomenally, it, as we mentioned in that pr past match. It has been a bit of that Cinderella story, you know. They, they are a team of very core four players who can play well together, provided the chemistry is mixing right. And today is one of those days, starting at 10 a.m., making their way through, knocking out some big-name teams, you know, like TM, SYF, other ones, and they've just been up before against Rage in that loser's bracket final, knocking them out as well in that game number five to get themselves here and go up against the juggernaut of Mind Freak that we have mentioned a few times. I am very interested to see if they can pick up a map. You know, even one map loss from Mind Freak will just put a sort of halter on that 18-0 wins they're on right now. It'll push it down a little bit. I don't know if it'll get inside their mindsets, though, Josh. I feel that even one map, if they were to lose it miraculously, I feel that they'll just brush that off and come out even stronger the next map. I think they may. I think they may. The only different, or the only time I think that may be flipped on its head is if somehow Oracle will be able to pull the upset on this first hard point on Retaliation. If they somehow got a victory here, there's a big chance for them to take the S&D. Mm. And if they can do that, then Mind Freak are going to be very much on the back foot. But... I, I think it's going to be extremely tough for the young guys at Oracle. Um, and it'll credit to them. They've made it here. They're in the grand final, but Mind Freak are just another level. When we talk about that hard point retaliation, though, Josh, you know, as we've talked about time and time again, MF have come back from the States. They're more acclimatized to that extremely fast pace, the lethality of North American and even now European uh, play of, of respawn game types. Will the boys of Oracle be able to even keep pace? Are they even going to be in the same sort of stratosphere when it comes to this game type? That's what I'm most excited to see. Having that rig jack there now on your screens, it is pretty much the norm now when you go up against two top tier teams. It's what you want to see, you know, it's pretty much evenly matched across the board. The only difference, I think, was one of the reactive arms in there. But Retaliation Hardpoint, also on your screens right now. We'll go for a fly through here, show you where those hard points will be located, where these teams will be duking it out to get first points on the board. Of course, that bridge location is one of those main ones and is that first place that they'll all be fighting for at the start. And of course, they'll be fighting for spawn control as well. That way they can get on that second one for that rotation. It's very important to get early off spawn control. Make sure you get your anchor usually in the right position and allowing you to really lock these down the early points off in the game. Again, as we mentioned before, Hard point retaliation on an international level. This is no stranger from the Mind Free squad. They've played these ones before up against the best in the world. They've done all right. They're going to be doing it once again here now against the local APAC region of Oracle. I'm sort of feeling it will be a uphill battle from the get-go for Oracle. But as you said, Josh, if they can grab an early lead and even a win on the hard point, it really could push Mind Free back. Indeed, it could. It's an uphill battle. It's quite the hill indeed, but they've got the momentum to reach the plateau and I think uh, that's going to be look it, it, it's going to be quite the upset there's no two ways about it you know we keep stuttering out over ourselves because we're trying to trying to find the light in the darkness here for the Oracle guys and I think there's uh, there is a chance but they need to find it right here off the bat they need to get all of the momentum and you know really they need to get their hands in the air and just get all the energy that they can to get this spirit bomb to take out Mind Freak. They really do indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, the grand final about to get up and underway. Are you backing Mind Freak for this one? Do we have any Oracle supporters in the crowd? Yeah! Yes, we do. Even up on the caster's desk, we are back in the underdog. It could be an underdog story. And the best ones that, that have come before are always the ones you do not expect to happen in the first place. Over to you boys on the caster's desk to take us through map number one on this hard point. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It comes down to this. Mind Freak 
Oracle, one of these teams are coming out on top. We've already seen at our last event, a loser's bracket team come back to win two best of fives to clutch the grand final. Can Oracle pull the upset? We're about to find out. We're going to kick things off here with Buzzo from Mindfreak. Most important player to watch for me is going to be Buzzo off the break here. He's the player who sits back. He gets those players watching the wall run. And as you can see, he's about to toss it out there. Look, watch that step to the left. He's going to be able to get that player. Ooh, timing is perfect. But look, the long range shots, exactly what he's going to be looking for. Already gets his first kill dropped immediately by Hopi. Shocks are still on the point. He's going to be making the play towards this one. And already MF on the board. They will be your players in white. And now, Shocks grabbing his time. Here comes the next wave of Oracle spawners. How are they going to answer up against the mighty Mind Freak? Shocks is going to be belly down now. Shots out on those two players already weak. That was an easy peasy two piece. No problem. The third in the bag. Shocks already putting on a show here in the grand final. 3 0, both to Shocks and Fighter on the first hard point. 20 seconds left. Mind Freak started off 30 and 0. We're going to be start thinking about this rotation as well. And surely Oracle is thinking that as well. Hope you're off to a nice start. Two kills. Zephyr just finally getting on the board now. Just waiting for sets. His teammates pick up a kill as well. Shocks picking them apart. Hopey going down as that was Shock's fourth kill and he's already into streaks and we're only just on the second hard point now. Second hard point already looking very, very blue and that may be a tactical choice for Mind Freak, but who knows? Setsy is already in there, as you can see, grabbing that time. 38 already on the board for Mind Freak. Tagging folks up, getting shots out. Zeppa, he's been a superstar all day long and nothing's different here. He's already on four kills and two deaths. Two players up top holding that plat, but already JTEX getting two pieces in the back and Shock's and Fighter, the Wombo Comer has got taken down there. Looking at JTEX right here, and now he's going to be making a run just below Broken. There's going to be a play just inside. Shots out, there's two there, and he was spoiled for choice. Going to be taking down Exciting Fighter. Both picking up kills, but you've got Zephyr on the flank. He's going to be taken down by Fighter, though. What a brilliant start here from the Mind Freak squad. Oracle, though, with their sec second rotation onto Lower Street. They did pick up a few points. Mind Freak just cracked 50, though. We'll see how Fighter plays this one out. He got three kills in a row before dying three times. Got three again, goes for four, and he's going to be trying to work towards those streaks. 50 of that's carrot spots one, gets it in the streak. Now he's going to be oh, taken from behind his sets, gets the jump on him. And look at Shocks, just patiently waiting over in Graves. Nothing tactical. He's just standing there, man, waiting for that rotation, and they're going to be into the points already. So important to notice what Fighter did there. He didn't engage those players when he initially saw them. He didn't give away his position. He let them expose themselves a little further, and he waited for that opportune moment to strike. Speaking of opportune moments to strike, here comes a push from the boys in blue. Oracle now answering back. That was Zeppa taking care of the Scarab of Mind Freak, and now they're going to make a play. Nobody else on the flank. We do have JTEC coming on through the side. Nades over the top. Does tag up a player by the car. Do you know his car that was that just exploded? It was John Wicks. Here comes JTEC. In out of nowhere, he gets taken down there. Zeppa still making a run. Shots on Fighter, baby. Gets him through there. Can they get to Graves? This has been a lovely push. Oh, and wow. Who's that excite? Still alive. Managed to get tagged up eventually there. And Setsy has got a big fight ahead of him. Tagged up over the top. He's got to play it on the right side of him. What's coming in any second now. But this has been an okay hard point as far as MF go. They got to 99. Not quite up to 100 yet. Oracle, though. 39 points and rising. We'll have a quick look at Fighter. He's now getting ready for the next hard point. Nobody in position to contest this one. Oracle, they're just being outclassed at this hard point. But we'll see if they can make the break on the next push. Yeah, hopefully they can make some kind of a break in here. My Freaks seem very well set up for it over and broken. You can see they've cracked 100 points as they got over there. Now you can see the collapse in here. You're going to have Sets and Hopi both walking down that main lane. They might actually get the jump on a couple of players there. Sets spots one long range. A little bit hard to hit, but he does have the MV4, so it's nice to have that laser beam. Uh, coming to play when you are trying to hit those range shots, but it's Mind Freak still racking up all of the points here as Excite is in there doing it for the team. Fighter, want to point out, is already 12 and 6. What a brilliant start. Set's got three in a row before being dropped, but it's, it's, it's all Mind Freak right here, getting all of the points. We're about halfway through this hard point as we rotate back over the hallway in just a second. It's going to be vital that Oracle gets that rotation, Miles, because if they aren't set up for that one, they just keep giving these points up to Mind Freak. I feel like Broken, they gave this one almost entirely to Mind Freak. That was almost a perfect 60 just because they didn't make the play. Oracle were there. They were just teetering on the edge of the engagement. They were and scared, Miles. I don't want to say the word scared, but they looked like they were absolutely crack cack in the dunnies, mate. They were absolutely ready to fill them up. And this was a really tough one for them to make a play on. And look, now it's 135 to 55. It could have been a lot closer had they made the play, but instead, they sat there twiddling the thumbs. Indeed, they did. Luckily, they get, uh, well, they're professionals to do that. And hopefully, they can twiddle them a little bit further in the direc direction of the hard point, though. Shocks, he's going to be breaking in here for the Mind Freak squad as they hit 140. Oracle do have a respectable 55 points up there and the entire squad have been picking up kills which is what I love to see Fighter going double positive is really the thorn in their side right now because he's getting all of the points he's getting streak 15 and 7 he's just dominating and really pulling their pants down and giving Oracle a spanking
On board now with the Diva. We haven't seen too much from him in the game already, but he is going 11 and 7. Two I totally streak as well. Name, by the way. Oh, there he is. That's the Diva we know and love. Two in a row. I always called them Haytex because they seem to be one person there as they died in a, in a hail of Excite Fires. Three in a row for Cody. Five now on the streaks. Can he get a couple more? 75 away from the Trinity Rocket. This will be monumentous for Mind Freak if they can grab this one. But again, positioning wise, Mind Freak, Josh, they just seem a step, a step ahead. A cut above, if you will. Excite snaps onto that one. That was lightning reflexes right there as we go back over to the bridge. He's going to be 50 off being fully streaked out. Surely he's going to be able to get this. He only needs one more kill. And you can see he's actually about to run out of ammo. So he needs one more kill out of that. Meanwhile, JTEX try to jump into that heal. Mindfreak are about to crack 200 unless JTEX and the rest of the team can make something happen here. Hopi, 8 and 12, trying to make something happen. A fighter as well on another streak there. Work towards it. Excite is still going, by the way. And he still needs 50 points, but he's doing what he needs to do. You know, he's holding down the flank, making sure no, no one comes up the rear. And uh, Mind Freak are just dominating right here. Fighter just getting the top of Sets' scalp, and he's collected scalps right here. Still going strong. He's fully streaked. Fighter, Excite, both racking them all up. And you can see Excite, he's now just trying to get back into the action. Will he finish the kill? He will not, actually. So Fighter is going to be the one with all the toys. Excite has a good toy box as well, though. 30 points for the victory for Mind Freak, and a really driving home the fact that they are the premier team in the region here, well, Miles. This. this is what we talked about, Josh, that lethality, that immense pressure. The skill and the dedication it has put, they've had to put into this one to make their hard points this good. And you can see, this is what happens when you go over to the US, you start playing with the teams and players. They're, this is, a, if anything, to emulate this kind of style. The region needs to really do that to in order to level up. So take notes, boys and girls. Look at the way these setups are being unfolded. Look at the way MF are breaking these. You know, if you want, jump into the DM, see if you can't get a pointer or two, because this is certainly the style of play you need to be bringing. This is how the rest of the world is playing Infinite Warfare, and MF are really putting on a clinic for us here. They are really, really really good at this game, Mars. That's about as simple as you could say it. 26 and 12 for Fighter right here. Excite's been going on nice streaks as well. 17 and 9. Beautiful KDs. I just want to point out that all of Oracle doing a great job as best as they can. You know, lots of kills on the board, but unfortunately, they're just getting picked apart. Mind Freak are going to be wrapping this one up very, very soon. 241 points, but Oracle are trying to climb up. You know, it would be a great consolation for them to at least crack tri triple digits. Um, but who knows? They could form a comeback from here. It's going to be almost impossible for them the way Mind Freak are playing, but it can be done. Buzzo is going to be dropping JTEX. Here come the streaks. It's going to be the fighter, I believe, fighter, because he had that uh, uh, the bombardment. It didn't pick anyone up, but as they rotate over to Graves, it's going to be Mind Freak. They count them down the last few seconds, and they are going to put Oracle into that 100 point club. 250 to 93. And look, I mean, if that's how they're going to rock up to this grand final, it's going to be tough. They might take the S&T, but unless they're going to slay a bit harder than that, Dallas, I just don't think they're going to have a hope here against the mighty blue wall. No, you are right indeed. Good sir. Oracle really hitting that struggle street early off in that series. At the, at the end of the first rotation, it was 186 to 57. Then at the final score, as you mentioned, 250 to 93. So it didn't take even a full set of rotations. I think it got to the third hill in the second rotation where they finally looked down and got themselves that victory there. Of course, it was very close for the Oracle Esports crew to get into that 100 points, but they could not make it seven points shy of that goal. Mind Freak making it look very easy after being away on that Global Pro League for the Call of Duty World League in America and obviously showing exactly what it takes to perform at that level up against this Oracle Esports squad. Now, SND is up next in game number two. We, we talked about it earlier off before we went to this grand final to begin with. We figured that, you know, perhaps if Oracle could cause a major upset in the first hard point, it maybe would push Mind Freak back a little bit. Doesn't seem to be the case, though. Mind Freak are not phrased at all. And I sort of feel that they'll just keep the momentum rolling as they head into game two with these replays. But Miles, you know, if you've got players like Fighter, as he did, just cleaning up. You know, Osai didn't get fully streaked out, but he got very close. I think he was 25 points away for a good minute or so. But really, you know, he was doing the job that he had to do. You sit back, hold those spawns, watch the flank, doing what had to be done for the team to get the W in the end. But what really could have Oracle done up against such a competitive and scary team like Mind Freak? Well, it's tough. I mean, let's face it, the... Mind Freak are used to playing far more dangerous opponents. That's the truth. And, you know, I say that with no ego or no sort of ill will. It's just the truth. They've been playing against Envy, Splice, you know, top tier teams. We're talking like absolute top tier teams. I, I hate to say Cloud9, you know, they're still up there, right? Giggity. But let's, let's face the facts here. You know, these are very, very dangerous opponents. And they've picked up so much from playing in the US. And it shows here in the gameplay. You don't get to go that huge. You know, let's face it, fighters also ludicrously talented, like monstrously skilled. We heard the crowd's reactions. You know, I like to do this every now and then so I get to hear the crowd. And the truth be told, 
Crowd was going nuts when he was picking up those kills. Shocks went on, what, a seven kill streak with players just coming at him and he just kept mowing his way through them. It's not just the gun skill, it's not just how sick they are in game, it's also what they're doing as a team and it shows across the whole board. You don't get a scoreline like that just because you're all wicked shots. No, exactly right. You mentioned Fighter and we did before. Obviously, he had that time score multiplier, then a seven kill streak came in just for him as well, whilst inside that hard point and just really cleaned the way up, cleaned the slate and pushed them back. And so many times. Josh, we saw Fighter. He was just on the next hard point already, waiting for them to come. They weren't showing up because the rest of the mind freak were doing the job in regards to slaying. So he just got the first 10, 15 seconds with anyone even coming close to him. Yeah, Fighter and Shox were in that position. You saw Shox in the first rotation over to Graves. He was standing there. Wasn't even prone. Wasn't aiming down slide. He wasn't doing anything. He was literally just standing there, waiting for any kind of competition or opposition to come his way. It never came because, as you said, Dallas, they were getting picked apart. Oh, they were indeed. But enough about map one. Map number two. Will be an S and D, of course. First to six will take out the S and D. Potentially 11 rounds to be played, but I think majority are feeling it could be well over before then. Breakout is the map of this S and D, and I've, you know, we've seen these guys before and how they play it, how they can perform on this sort of map. I feel that it will be a, a quick one, especially after that hard point performance. Oracle is still have to go and be reeling from that as they head into map number two. There, Josh, I, I'm, I don't really want to ask for it, but. What are you sort of thinking this will the, go? They need, it's just, it's quite simple. Uh, I really think Oracle need this search and destroy. Frost up league is where SYF really went the distance with my freak. They ended up winning by two points, I believe. They might have got two more at the end. But uh, look, I, I think that if Oracle go down in the search and destroy, the, the series done and dusted, but we'll see. Uh, uh, the way I think this is going to go is after that hard point, which was not close, I think Mind Freak, with their experience in the GPL on this new map and game type combo, I think they're going to win this one and they end up going to eventually take the series. I still feel like there's an element of, of unpredictability and I'm not hesitant to use the term random when it comes to this game type, just the way we've seen teams play, especially on that A-bomb site, which everyone seems to be stacking hard towards. B's more open and closed, a bit more black and white. I feel like the boys on Oracle could get a couple of surprise rounds off of Mind Freak here and I can I still believe that they can take, uh, take the map off of them. Well, you know, I mentioned at the start of this whole weekend that obviously Mind Freak has been away playing in an international scene. Coming back to the APAC region and playing against teams here, that could exactly happen, you know. They could be used to such a different play style. That just little things, and I hear it all the time on Twitter from NA and EU players. It's like, they're like, these Australians play so different, we're not used to it. Maybe they've picked up some bad habits while they're over there, and maybe they might get caught off guard just like they catch off the international teams time and time again. Time will tell, though, as the crowd, you know, they're all on Twitter. They're all getting hyped up for this one. It was game number two in the S&D. Everyone lives on their phones. Look up and live, people. No life going on down there on your screens. As these guys obviously getting set, ready for action. Cody giving a bit of a wave out, I think, to the people in the crowd there. Obviously, there are a fair few Mind Freak jerseys in that sea of people there. Very supportive of that team. There's been a few sales as well, I think, Miles. I was going to say, this is actually, it's totally off topic, but oh. this is the very first time all day long we've actually seen Oracle not look their super confident selves. And it was only after that crushing defeat on, uh, on the hard point. Well, it is hard when you're going up against a team like Mind Freak. And yeah, you get crushed on that hard point. 250 to 93 for those just joining us. It was the map one score as they'll head into map number two. Mind Freak, ah, 1-0 here in the grand final for CWL City number two. What you doing on your phone there, buddy? Hey. <laughs> Naked tweets. Got eyes on you. Got to be careful. That jib will come over the back of you. You will not expect it. So... Oh. That could have been deadly. This could right? be slot in some of those DMs sometimes. Keep an eye out for that in the gym camera. Could be some interesting intel popping out live on stream. Unaware. Keep an eye on Naked's phone, FYI. As these guys obviously get installed, set up, ready. Hopey, you, as you mentioned, Riles, you know, they're not looking that super confident themselves. You know, these are worried some a little bit, but then you look over to Mind Freak and they're just like, number that the office boys. Looking very comfortable. And again, this is actually quite a prolonged break. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, maybe a technical issue or something going on, on the stage, but we've got a little bit more downtime than we usually have, and that's only going to cool off the boys of Oracle even more. You know, MF, they're used to this sort of, you know, they're used to sitting around, waiting around again. This is another day in the office. They're very well practiced, very well rehearsed, but when you look on the other side of the stage, these are players who need to be on fire to really be delivering the results, especially against a team like MF. So, interesting scenarios developing. Maybe it's a, is it sabotage? Naked, what have you done? Yeah, it might have been a bit of sabotage, perhaps. Obviously, the Mind Freak guys are playing on that left-hand side of the stage for the first time this weekend. Used to that right-hand side, but the right-hand side's been working well for Oracle, so they're going to keep going there for now. 
as we see from behind. You see us in the background. That's us dancing. That is, in fact, Quick little mention is. again. I mentioned it earlier today, but again, it is Mother's Day after all. So any mums in the crowd or those watching at home, you know, obviously Hopi's partner, Maddie, expecting mother. So happy Mother's Day to all those Happy Mother's Day, Zephyr. Oh, lovely. He's my mum. I said it earlier in the day. Yeah, I know true. you did. I was, I was asking if you got him a present at all, and you said you hadn't. Uh, he's going to have seven grand by the end of this. Maybe 14 if he's extremely lucky, Ooh. but seven grand, I think. Double down. He could double down. Red Ooh. or black, by Red man, like myself, buddy. I wish I went red a long time ago. That's a story for another time. Uh, anyway, we're still waiting for this second map to get up and underway. The redraft is in the process right now. And again, those guys from Oracle, let's just focus on what's ahead, lads. Don't worry about what's behind you, of course. The hard point is done and dusted. Take it to another one later on, perhaps, if you can pick up a win here. In this S and D, as it was mentioned, if they can get the S and D win, it's it's doable for an uplink win as well to force a game number four and then potentially game number five. We'll find out though as this redraft gets put up here in just a moment. Obviously, it is S and D on breakout again for those joining us at home. Let us know in the chat who you think is going to win, what the scoreline will be. Use the hashtag on Twitter hashtag City Roll City Number Two. Get involved, get amongst it, be social. But as soon as you do that, put your phones away again and watch the screens in front of you. As I said, look up and live is an important role in life. Safety is no accident. Take it home with you. One of the things I like to say. Daddy Bio coming out. This is, these are good life advice tips. <laughs> it is. You know, if you want to get through, if you want to get around and, and get through life in one piece, listen to what I have to say. Get to my age, pretty much, from production. Yeah, throw it at me. Quick little shout to production, though. They're doing an amazing job. Shout out to all the staff here from ESL, obviously, as well. Doing an amazing job so far this weekend. It's been great. They go, all right. It's... It's a hard feat. Obviously, they had a big event last weekend, another big event this weekend. So props to them all, especially the two who are standing beside me, Josh and Miles. They both had some big weekends there as well. And they're still fighting, still alive. Quick little shout out to my non personal sponsor, Red Bull. This was surviving, getting me through the days. Yeah. Caffeine. Everybody's friend. Too G much of it will probably kill you, though. Yeah, well, I'm not mind freak. I'm not going to say, say G Fuel like every five seconds. There's a website where you can actually put in your body weight and you can check how many cans of X amount of energy drink it would take to kill you. Really? Challenge and, um, accepted. It, honestly, I, I think it would be the most excruciating death imaginable to see how many like. I'd be interested to see that in case it actually tells me at a limit and I've already passed that. Yeah. Like... Clearly. That would no, explain a lot honestly, about you, Bio. It, oh, Dallas, man. honestly, it's like it, you have to drink like 150 cans at like my body weight, and it's just like crazy. And I think okay, by the time then by the time you get to like 115, 120, like you've been in such agony. You'd so die. at my body weight, it's about 15,000? Oh, shot the water himself. Super right. Sometimes. Right. Right. Happen, I, I, I've probably come close to that number, to be honest. <clears throat> Listen, S&D is loaded what? on in. The Legend players the are in there. The guys are getting up and underway. It is map number two here in the grand final. The CWL City number two. My freak up 1-0. Can Oracle answer back or will this be game number two for Mind Freak? And they'll push it to perhaps game number three to wrap things up in a nice little neat bow. We'll find out as the boys have loaded in as I take it and hand it over to my man, Josh. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off map number two of our grand final. And we're going to start with Shox, just taking his time. Probably just deciding on what loadout he's going to go for. Don't think there's going to be an issue. They're just going to wait for the spot maybe before they make a move. We're just going to wait for the callouts and see where these guys are positioned before making a move forward. Excite Tech's going to be the first to drop from sets before Fighter gets some shots on JTEX 3v3 situation to kick off this search and destroy here, Miles. Buzzo in mid, he's got two players around him, but they're all lying prone. That first peak is going to be a sore one. One dead apiece. Oh, here comes the push. It's about to happen. Tags up. Setsy gets dropped by Buzzo. There's your first kill. Can he get a second? Unprecedented. Buzzo's got two kills in search and destroy. Bomb's gone down as well. Hopi, last man for Oracle. Hopi, keep it real though. Nah, not to be long. Hopi had that Oni out, which means he had a scope. So keep an eye out for that through uh, for later rounds. I did. He put it away and then he put it back out again. Oh, Terrifying. Still, lightning quick reactions there from Fighter. Brings down Hopi. Immediately getting his uh, vengeance for his teammate. But Buzzo, two kills. What say you, crowd? Can he get more? No. Nope. That was a very quiet that moment. That was a very quiet Brutal moment. quiet. Crowd's too cool for reactions, man. Setsy here from Oracle is going to be running the objective for the squad. Only two kills for the Oracle team from that last round. That's not too bad, though. They're off to a, a, a decent start. Mindfreak do have the jump. Now on the attacking round, Oracle have a chance to uh, to come back. You can see there, they do have the man advantage as they push over here towards A. 
Going to be going for a plant here. Fighter just working his way around through caves. Buzzer actually picks up JTX, but the bomb has been planted. So Oracle, although they're a man down, they do have the advantage with that bomb because Shocks is going to be picked up there by Hopi as well. 3v3 situation. Even money. Actually, you're going to see Buzzer goes down from Zephyr as well. So this should be Oracle returning fire here. Sets is going to be prone down. Zephyr also just uh, taking it easy. Waiting for uh, Mind Freak to make a move. You can see Fighter. Actually, going to be making a move around. Excite cleans up Zephyr as well. Oh my gosh, Fighter, the only one left alive here in a 1v2. Oh, did he spot that player in showers? The timing might be right to try and pick up these players. Will he spot one? Oh, he spots one, picks it up. Will Fighter be able to clean this one up? 1v1, spots a player, and no! That player was not close enough to get that smack down, and luckily, Oracle, they come out on top in that round to tie things up, and it was Hopi, my man, who ended up cleaning up that one. Sets helps with the attack, and you see just a little bit too far away for that to be effective. Oracle at least answering back, so we're not going to see a whitewash by any means, Miles, and, you know, very early in the search and destroy, hopefully Oracle can put some magic together, because magic does happen, Miles, and I hopefully it can happen for them. I believe in magic. I 100% believe in magic. I've, se I've, I've seen Penn and Teller in the flesh. I totally believe in magic. Fighter, though, he's got bomb. He's making a play for B. Maybe I said that too loud. Oh, let's go. Got to check it out, man. Oh, go on, Opie. Can he make something work? Do it. You won't. You're scared. Oh! Wow, that was oh, that so looks on. That looks so on from our screen. Oh, there is a slight delay from uh, the Codcaster, so it might have been slightly off on his screen. But either way, Hopi, I believe he's going to be... Oh, what? Hang on. I... Wait, no, I don't know what that was. Let's, let's everyone stick to the facts. calm let's, down. Let's stick to the everyone facts. calm down. Bombs, bombs down at B. Excite has got three members of Oracle coming at him. He manages to not get a single one. Shocks in the back end. Buzzo's the last player alive on the bomb. Done the full kills. Buzzo gets two. Shocks last player. Yeah, we, okay. We'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. But okay, Shocks has made it at 1v1. And there's a lot of time on the board. Hope he as tense as they come, this 1v1. He tags up. He's got first shot in. Sorry, I'd back out, Miles. I'm just still in shock. He's buying time. He's buying time. Hope he's well over the top. Oh. Look at this angle. He's going to buy himself a little bit of time. Oh, Hope he. Come on, son. Do it for the boys. Shocks is in close. Do it for the vine. The vine's dead, isn't it? And so might be he. Ah, there we go. The timer does run out. Shocks managing to stay alive there. You can see Mind Freak up 2-1. Let's just discuss that because that looked on to me, but there may have been, you know, a little bit of uh, delay with the Codcaster. But also, something should also be noted. There are, there aren't they on the mythical good side of the stage? Yeah, that's one for the players to discuss. The, yeah, uh, we'll leave it to them. The preferred side, as the players are calling it. Hopi, going to be running snipe. Sets, he's got bomb. He's going to be making his way up through mid. Can Hopi land a couple of shots here? It'd be absolutely crucial to do so. Oh, he's got two bouts of information. That's plenty. Goes up high. JTX gets Fighter. Two dead, actually. That's another one. Fighter's gone down. Excite's gone down as well. So it's 2v4. Oracle with the numbers. And they're making a play for Bomb. It's looking pretty good for him right here. Zep is going to be in mid as well. Looking towards Cells. So that Bomb should be going down. Shocks and Buzzo. In a tight spot, shall we say. Buzzo. 5-2 and two in a search and destroy. Okay, who's playing for Buzzo? I don't know what's going on. Buzzo, I guess the GPL practice has really paid dividends for him. Shocks goes down. Buzzo, 1v4. Can he pull off an ace? He's not that good at SD just yet. Two rounds apiece right here. We head into round five with everyone all even up here in this uh, breakout search and destroy. And it's been uh, controversial. To a degree, yeah. To a degree. The crowd's been um and ah and an I actually really love the crowd reaction to that because uh, they said what I thought. Ooh. <laughs> that was it. That's basically, that's probably spot on to what was going through my head at the time. Either way, we're moving on, ladies and gentlemen. We're uh, tying up here, two rounds apiece. Fighter, objective, no surprises here. Is Hope still running the scope? Scopey. That would be uh, yep, great to see. Whoa! Oh, two in a row. He got Thank you. As well. Thank you. I'll take a bow there. He does pick up one. Fighter goes, oh, just misses that one. Tries to go for a head rush there. Spots oh! the player! Get down, Buzzo Hope. He's lighting up with the scope. Oh the my ace. gosh. And this, this is why you watch the Hope Scope. What a way to finish this round off. The player jumps out. Instant reaction. Domes him. Beautiful stuff there. Hope cleaning up the round for Oracle. And they are now in front. And what a deserved round to them. How do my freak respond to this? Does Excite get his snipe out? Does he want a bit of the loving? Nah, 
seems not. We'll hope he remains on site for this. He's game. nine and one, fully streaked out. You have to watch him. He's come to the grand finals to play. He's fully streaked. Can we see a little bit of magic? Now you see the bombs going in for A. B rather. And is this is bombardment yeah. coming out. Likely just away. pinging the map. Pinging the map, see where they're at, getting some vital information. See the mid-map movement is already pretty important. We'll have a quick look on the forward. No, we won't actually. Ah, oh, it's a very, very slow wrap. Oh, you got to watch for fighter. you got to watch fighter. Def has got tags. This is going to be a massive fight. You see the players relocating for the engagement. Buzzer's got one. Shox gets the second. Setsy. He needs to relocate. Hopi gets Buzzo. Oh, and it's all coming down to this. Setsy's the last player alive. Last man standing. Bomb's gone down. 30 seconds left on the clock. He's got a nade. He didn't see that player. He saw that one. Goes for the bomb. Beautiful play. Over the top, though. Wonderful reaction there from Mind Freak. I actually really like what Setsi did there. He was hoping that the player that he saw to his left wasn't going to react that fast to him. Obviously, very, very tough position. Can't fault Sets. 1v3, always going to be tough. Still, heads up plays. It wasn't quite a four snipes ace <laughs> from Hopi. But it was still damn pretty. It was disgusting. Man. Beautiful positioning from Excite. Like, he didn't put himself inside the building. He knew that Shox was already in there. So, you know, by also being in there, he's offering no help to his team whatsoever. Staying on the outside meant he could respond quickly, keep an eye on that bomb site in the event of any kind of shenanigans, which he did see. So, top moves there from Mind Freak. Let's see how this offensive round goes. Opie, he's doing it. We'll stay with him. Fully streaked out still. Can we see a repeat? Yes, maybe. Two players going through mid. He's got the information. He got another one. This is huge. Shocks because Setsy in the back end. Oh, JTX is on down already, so it's fight with a big kill. Opie, you better give us something. We're going to jump ship soon. Shocks can smell him. Hope he's the last player alive for his team. This is going to be a tough one for him. To oh, I thought that was going to be on, unfortunately. Oh, oh, sweet baby Jesus, fight is gone. Can we get another? Unbelievable, Hopi. What's he on? Where's he going with this? He's going to find two. Shot out, it would have been a dream. But man, took fighter to school with that one. I might actually kiss him. It's okay, man. It's okay to do that. I just sometimes you gotta express your feelings, Miles. I'll make sure he's okay with the first. But damn, what a shot there. The hope scope is real, ladies and gentlemen. You thought he was a mythical creature. He's proven to be uh, an actual thing. You know, and I'm glad he was repaid for that issue he got earlier on. Because that was... <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that right. she got earlier on. He's back on it. It's a two-man split, both A and B from Mind Freak. Hope he's in position to catch one of the players if they do commit, but look, they're very, very deep in this defense. We jump on board with Shocks, that he's sitting right far back on the other side of the board, fighter again, laying in wait. They don't want to be tagged up by, by Hopi. Let's call him Scopey. That was a bombardment. Did he find any targets? No, but it caused a lot of noise. Oh, he got fighter with it, so that's big. Here comes Zephyr on the plate. They know the window's open. Three of them have stacked up there. Hope he's all on his own on the other side of the map, so now this is going to be very big. That's a snipe. Oh, I think it's Excite. We'll have a quick look, see if he can't make any magic for us. Nah, not a shot just yet. Hope he took shots out in the back end, so that's now 2v4. And there's one in the air. Can Hope he make the... Oh, Excite. Through the railing. Not quite. Big aggressive play here, though. Last man alive for his team. Wonderful aggression there from the boys in white. Called that one kind of funny, though. I shot Hope he. Instead of Excite. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you got one in the background though. So we got two scopes on the map that round and Oracle cleaned that up very, very nicely. Hope you and the rest of the boys from Oracle could actually take away this search and destroy. Both of them only need two more rounds. Four rounds apiece right here. And uh, Hope he's 13 and 3. And he's and not going to change still anything. Got this. Hey man, don't fix what's not broken, Hopi. We're loving the action that's coming out of here. And where else to do crazy nonsense like this than the grand final? If he just stays patient, he might catch out Fighter, who's coming around the corner. Will he spot him? It's oh, perfect position. Do the flick scope. He's also yeah. got JTX. He's got JTX on that side of the bomb as well. The only player not there is Buzzo. That's the bomb down at eight. JTX needs to stay alive. He's the bait. He's the worm on the hook. But look, Mind Freak are not taking it. They are not having it whatsoever. On the other end of the board, Zeppa. He's on the zone. He gets taken down there. Hope he needs to watch his back. The flank from Mind Freak is very real indeed, but look at this, it's actually a turn, it's a double flip. MF have gone the other way around, JTX got two. Love the way they played this one out, Buzzer's going to be left all alone, there's one player spots him, he does pick up one, needs two more, he's going to be caught out, the defuse is going to come in, Oracle! Now after some brilliant play from Sets and Hope, did you see that nice little bait, they set the trap, Mind Freak didn't fall for it, but Zeppo was up the back.
So he was watching the flank. When Mindfreak tried to wrap around, Zeppa was waiting for him. They traded out. It allowed Oracle to collapse in on the bomb site. They just destroyed Mindfreak in that final round. And wow, what heads up gameplay from this squad. Mindfreak may actually be dropping their first map of the entire competition up against the Youngbloods here of Oracle. Zeppa sitting in the dirty laundry. He cleaned that one up. Let's see how we go here on offense. I'm going to be adding to that dirty laundry yep. if we uh, get any more crazy scopes out of Hopi. 13 and 3. He's got that lining and that Trinity still waiting for him. You can see he's positioned here to pick up something, but uh, no one's coming for him. So you can see, uh, I think it's Fido is probably going to have the best view here. See what's going on. There is a Scarabout as well, by the way, and Excite does have his scope uh, trained on that B-bomb site, but nothing's going on. We need to watch out for these streaks coming out. Hopi using that Trinity rocket. He should maybe pick up one there. He does not. It's going to be firing again. Uh-oh. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's the map just playing against you right there, which was unfortunate. Uh, both scopes still in play. We'll see how uh, how that goes down. You can see Fighter is actually cross-map from Hope, so Hope might be able to catch him out. Excite, he's going to have his sights trained on B, and as you can see there, both uh, Zeppa and JTEX, oh, Sets as well, are all making their way uh, across there. I think Hope he might have shot out, and that's going to force Fighter to back up. Excite has set the trap, though, and he may catch out these players moving towards B. This is an incredibly intense round. Excite misses that shot. Bomb's going down at B. Here comes the play from MF. Buzzo's relocating. They're all relocating in the moment. Can Hopi catch a player or two on the walk? Scorches out. This is massive. Is he going to catch him? They know exactly where they are. That's the payload in. Doesn't get a kill with it. Excite with a snipe. Not to catch any teammates. Tagged up heavily. Shocks just activate his active camo. This is the play in from behind. Since he gets the first blood, here comes the opening. Shocks coming in. Only gets two. Beautiful work. He's got another one in third in a row. That's three. Can he find the ace? It's his. It's his for the taking. He gets dropped though. So now it's going to be all up to Fighter to take down Sets. Sets has that uh, Scarab and he picks up the kill with it. And with the Scarab, Oracle take the first map off Mind Freak here. The first one they've dropped. We're now 1-1, and we have a grand final on our hands. What an amazing way to do that as well after all of those shots we saw coming out of the amazing Hopi. Those snipes were insane. They were indeed. It was round number five where Hopi picked up that ace, was fully streaked out, had payload available, and as you mentioned, Mindfreak finally dropping a map. They now become 19-1 and one on map count. Still pretty good. It's pretty, still pretty good, but it's not a flawless victory, which is what they were probably hoping for here this weekend. Oracle have to be ecstatic with that one. It wasn't even 6-5. Didn't go around 11. They tied it up and closed it at 6-4. Very nicely done. Big play at the end with that Scarab. I was a little bit concerned over here. I was like, is he going to make it in time? Will he get there in time? And then bam, does so. My biggest concern was he's going to flatjack it. Yeah, and he's he, gonna gonna eat, he was going to eat the Scarab for breakfast and just carry on disarming because he was already about halfway through the disarm. And I thought, Fire's going to have that equipped. And if he does... Done, that's a guaranteed round. Yeah, had that blast shield, you're going to be completely dusted after that. And he wouldn't have made it in time if that happened. So, uh, would have been then. And look <laughs> at these scopes. Uh, poor Hopi. Still, though, that was the second. That's the third and the fourth the down in that grave. Of... Look at that. That's That was beautiful. That's artwork. And then how quick he was onto that as well. I was a bit concerned on that fourth one. I thought oh. maybe one of his teammates stole it on him. The highlight reel. Sorry, we're quiet here. No, that's all right. It's all right, lads. We're, we're, enjoying, we're enjoying this as much as the next man and the next girl because this is just insane. I was just thinking, not bad for a bloke who's just had a kid, right? Better, yeah, yeah. Not too bad, right? Yeah, no, he's doing all right. Obviously, he's pushing it to him. The rest of the squad from that Oracle Esports team are as well. As you mentioned, the score in the map <sighs> count becomes one apiece now as we head into map number three, which will be that uplink on Frost, I believe. And as we mentioned prior to this one going live, if they could pick up an S&D perhaps and then take the uplink to the limit, they could perhaps force that game five, obviously, because their hard point game from game to one, 250 to 93, not too much to lean on there. We don't want to. We don't want to lean on that. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Uplink, uh, Mind Freak have always been known to be beast at uplink, and once we go back to that hard point, I don't know. You're Where's right. You're, you're totally. You're totally right, Alice. I mean, if they can pull off an upset here in this uplink, they'll lose the hard point. Uh, but once we go back to another search and destroy, so it really hinges on this uplink. Uplink for me is a tough one because the only team that really took to MF was SYF. SYF ran a train through Oracle on their uplink, I believe. That was one of the, the only map they, one of the maps they took off them. Yeah, it was only one. It was three one Oracle beat them with. Yeah, they did drop that one map. So perhaps you are right there, Miles and Josh. But 
It's not over yet. And obviously, we, we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because it, it would be a two best out of five series if Oracle even took this first one. They've still got another best out of five that have to defeat Mindfreak with because they are undefeated so far being in this grand final. So coming off that Frost uplink map next, of course, the game the game mode as well. It could really it could go either way. I think Mindfreak is sort of feeling that, yes, that we'll take this and then we'll close it out on the hard, hard point on throwback. But still, can't you can't count your cards until you look at them. And sometimes you used to have to stack your chips and just the way they fall is just the way it goes sometimes they're miles and I'm I'm not counting Oracle out just yet, you know. I have faith in it. I I, I love it on a dog story. I like to like to back the ones who some people think it's impossible, there's no way they can do this, but they just handed Mind Freak their first map loss. Don't get me wrong, I'm a Mind Freak fan. I am, I've watched them play now for a long time and uh, I've enjoyed their successes overseas, but I think it's about time we got another another victor at home. I thought we saw. And I'd like to see a bit of a change in the uh, in the balance of power here back in home turf. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people in the community are thinking once Tanner Mines, the, the old Tanner Mines lineup split up, then you know there's no other team here that can sort of bring it to Miles. But just oh, sorry, bring it to my freak boss. But just like that, Oracle just did on an S and T. And granted, it is only one game mode out of a possible three, but still, it's a start. It's better than nothing. And they're the first ones to give my freak their first map loss. It's still, and also one thing, the most wonderful thing for me was how confidently they won that map. Their plays were on point. Hope he's jumping out on folks with a, with a sniper rifle, you know. Even Excite, who you know, he's, he's played against some of the best players in the world on land. He had to back down. He had to make those strategic plays. He had to make, you know, he had to call it and go, all right, I'm going to lose this fight and make a run for it. Hope he never did any of that. So I'm still admiring the confidence. There's still a glimmer of hope in the Oracle camp. Obviously, you put yourself down to a little disadvantage as well using that scope because you only have a pistol in the back pocket instead of a SMG or an AR up close. So it can be pretty painful if you do have to get those. But we saw, I think it was in round, not f uh, perhaps six or seven, where he got that no-scope on fighter who was trying to push him up close. You know, it was a lucky shot. Couldn't pick anyone else up to try and clutch that one with the pistol, as I mentioned, in close quarters. But still picked up a kill nonetheless. As they go into the draft mode now, looking across there, in man, by this stage, we should not be surprised by anything we see. Yeah, it's all stock standard. Reactive, active camo, overdrive, enough to tell jump, chosen by all. No funny centurions or anything like that coming into play. Um, very excited to see how this one's going to unfold. Oracle do have a slight glimmer of hope. And I love the positivity from the Miles camp over here because you know, they, they need to have that. And hopefully they do. Magic mushrooms for breakfast in Camp Miles. Camp Miles? So you're saying you're uh, hallucinating to think that, uh, that mm. Oracle... You Maybe. know what? I'm more positive than you, my friend. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he loves you. Can't even get a word out right now. I'm that excited for this You've game had, number did three. Did you share a breakfast together? Or? Yeah, we did. I thought it tasted a bit funny. Mm. Clearly sliding My things back under the table. He's got a couple of things to say. Yeah. Yeah. No. Let's, just, let's just get into this what one. What kind of colours is he? He must be a few different colours. Purple. Colors. purple. Yeah, he's got Do green you like feet. purple? I like all the jeans. I a, like purple. Is he a purple people <laughs> eater? No? No. No, he's not? I'm missing that reference. you have to oh, get me later. Oh, you'll get it you later, mate. Time you later Do not worry. One. You will get it later. <laughs> As on the left-hand side of your screen, you see Mindfreak right there on the right-hand side for a moment ago. You had Oracle. Game number three, getting set, ready for action. The series is tied at one game apiece. It's going to be up to now the boys of Oracle to try and get the series lead or mind back, come, come back in dominating fashion as they tend to do. Take it away, Josh. We're going to be kicking things off with Zeppa, who I have talked up so much throughout the day, and I'm still not going to stop because the guy has just gone hero mode for Oracle where they've needed it most. It turns out he makes a good snake as well. As he's looking towards mid-map, just to see if anyone's going to come his way, notice that Sets goes down over on Snow, so he's going to be wrapping around the outside, trying to get some shots out. He does pick up one, but that drone is making a move over towards Sub, and this is going to be tough for Oracle to fight off as they do lose three players down. The drone was reset, but Buzzer's on the move. Buzzer's on the move. He's got drone. He's got the help. Fighters leading the way for him, leading the charge. Whoever could look at a fighter gets the kill. Nope, does get dropped. One point throw a quick and easy sneaky pick there mind freak on the board one point does not surprise me at all that mind freak are on the board first and they did it in 37 seconds and excite is tearing apart oracle he picked up three will he get the whole collection it's going to actually be fighter who gets that maybe they can trade later on and uh oracle what are they going to do to stop this well absolutely nothing as they're already getting more points on the board mind freak their uplink game is just unstoppable this is a very impressive life from cody already he's got three kills a dirty three piece and a dunk lovely play for buzzer gets the throw forward fighters actually got that drone he b did manage to push that one through so that was another dunk the excite got the pass there we didn't quite catch it, it was too fast to even see and there we go five nil already this was the the mind freak we expected to see here although sign of life yet yeah, setsy 
JTEX, it's a dunk. Can they get the kills as well? No. Both of them are going to be taken clean out, but that's still a very favorable position to be in if you're an Oracle fan. I love the fact that Oracle can brush that off. The Mind Freak Assault, they were setting up their relay that's almost trademarked for them, but now look at this. All four players, Mind Freak down. They've got two points on the board. Now if they can just get one or two more kills, Miles, off the spawn, Oracle in a really good position, but Fighters fighting out without E-Ray. He picked up one. Stats and Zeppelin, though, clean it up. There's another point on the board, and now they're within a dunk of Mind Freak. All four players did go down, though, so they didn't watch out for that Mind Freak Assault. Oracle need to stay alive here. You can see here, Excite's also into streaks, so that's going to be very, very dangerous. Eight and five start to fighter as well. However, the entire Oracle squad keeping their heads composed right here, but oh, wow. all four go down, and this is where another relay can be set up by Mind Freak. You can see Excite and Fighter both going ahead, along with the supporters. Shocks. Buzzo is going to be waiting back for that drone when it resets, but you can see all four players from Oracle wrap around through snow, going back towards me, which is what I actually like to see. Smart heads-up plays from these young guys. Zeppa tearing them up. Fighter and Excite, and allowing Hopi to go ahead. He needs to watch out for these spawners. You might get at least one point. Decides to go back, follow his teammate, which is exactly, of course, what he needs to do. That's another point on the board. Oracle, they keep it up, man. They keep it up with the momentum, at least. It's, they really take advantage of the fact when Mindfreak overextend, you know, if, they, if they're stuck out in dodge, they've got no players left from defensive positions, and that's when they manage to get those couple of points. Now, I feel like Mindfreak, they've got off in the bank. They can allow those plays to happen. They can allow that to unfold. So I still feel that MF, while conceding these four points already, they're still very much in control of this game. I'm, I'm getting the tingles, man. I thought this was all going to be dusted, but the Oracle, the way they're playing, they're actually playing extremely well, keeping up with the squad. Zephyr, 12 and 9, Sets and Hope both getting those kills as well, but excites away. He's got the support of his teammate. He's thrown forward, and he's going to be up top, top sub. This is such a hard position to clear out without support, but you can see there he did have support. He was able to trade that one out, so very nice stuff. JTX and Zephyr both go down. Excite coming off the spawn as well. Shocks. Trying to get this drone moving forward. Buzzer's going to clear out Hopi, which is exactly what he needs to do. But JTEX is there to clear him out again. Excite, though, he's picking him up. Zeppa and Sets both fall, and the drone is making its way out again towards the middle of the map. Now we can see here from Hopi's point of view, he's going to be trying to stop this Mind Flick onslaught. He's going to be dancing around him. Lots of shots ringing out. Unfortunately, he will be dropped. And with a minute and a little bit left remaining in this first half, it's a lot closer than probably what we expected, Miles. Massive play from Shocks there. Look at that drone placement. He managed to get around the corner. Oh, wow. Oh, he's still alive. He's going to make this one all the way. Holy dunks, Batman. 9-4. Shocks had a player right behind him, but without the help of Fighter, who's literally hanging onto his coattails there, managed to get the kills and managed to run that one home. So spectacular work from the boys in blue already. But Oracle, hot on their heels still, 4-9 to nine in the first half. This has been a beautiful run for both teams. I just want to go back to that Shocks play, and that was amazing awareness. He was going to go for the one-point play till he got the call out for his teammates, said they were all clear, decided to run in, and it was very safe to get those two points. It was only in by a little bit. I mean, Oracle was definitely hot on his heels, but smart plays nonetheless. And here we are a little later on. Zephyr's actually going to be able to make a run. Oracle getting clean up. Zephyr's on his own. This isn't going nowhere. Mind Freak, they're going to be composing themselves and pushing forward again. They can get some points on the board here. You've got an FTL jump ready for Excite. He could be throwing it forward to himself. We love that move. You can see there just uh, timing his fire to try and get anyone coming around that corner. Hope he's going to be there. And uh, he actually stays alive throughout that exchange. He's going to be tagged up a lot. Zephyr still taking names. So hope he cleans up Excite. Last 10 seconds of the half. Nine and four is where we're, uh, where we're at at the moment. The drone is still moving, but the last few seconds are going to be counted down. Hope he can get one more. No, he's not. Dreams are crushed right there. Hopi and the rest of the team down by five at the half. Mind Freak. Dominant performance. They set up a relay. Then they realize that Oracle might be a little bit of a tougher opposition than what they might have expected and what I might have expected as well. You can see just there, the hair of his ass cheek was what got shot at the end of that, <laughs> at the end of that half. So we're going to pluck them big, long, curly ones, man. You've you got to watch out for those. Gotta grin they get you killed. In times like that, they can. Here we are. Second half at the buzzer. Four to nine. MF up by one, up by that. One one in the series overall. Here we go. JTEX up early. Oh wow, what a nade. Beautiful start there. Fire excite both getting kills. And now we've got MF still pushing through. Two two apiece. Hoping sets get two to answer back. And now we've got a bit of a contest for mid. Drones out though. Excite's got it. He's going back to ship. Seems to be his favourite spot on the map. He gets a lot of kills from there. Oh, up over the top. Lovely work though. Answering back. Drones still far forward. MF with the advantage right now. Mind Freak with a five point lead here. Four and a half minutes, still plenty of time for Oracle to come back. I do question if Mind Freak are taking this as seriously as they could or should be, because we know they had a little bit of fun in previous uplink matches. So, with that said, thanks Astro. Let's go to a listening in and see how serious they're actually taking this uplink match. Are they all in the base? They're all in the base. Two, two, two. They're going. They're hitting ice. One hit blue. 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 One
Ready? Yeah, one ice and PC, yeah? Okay, yeah, one base, one base. One base, one base, hope you... Wait, 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 Watch your shot, watch your shot. Yeah, you're 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 top heading, top heading. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, fucking go. Hey, from the top heading, thin, the thin. Left side, left side. Yeah. Nice, nice shit. Uh, poor Ritter. I'm, I'm flanking left. I'm just playing, playing this left. with you, yep. I'm Dover. I'm dead. Uh, I'm, I'm off this one, I'm nowhere near you guys. I don't see anyone. Hey, watch your shot, you're flanking middle. He's middle. Dover now, or mid heady. I'm PC, I'm PC. I'm yeah, hey, hey, front red, front red. Okay, we're getting him. Hobie, nice. Where am I coming? I'm just holding for you. I can't shoot. Back left, back left, back left, back left, back left, back left. I'm just gonna go out for one if you want. Okay, let's go. I think I'm based, I think I'm based. All there, all there, all there. There's two on the base. I didn't want to push hey. there, Lincoln. Yeah, sorry, my bad. We don't have shit. I'm just camp on the ship. My bad, my bad. <coughs> I'm laying with you, Cody. I'm laying with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm right I haven't got the top right yet. They could jump over us. Yep. I'm gonna watch you. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. Hey, you go. I'm gonna play. Actually, I'm gonna. Hey, you're right. You're right. You're right. We're dead. We're dead. Come on, Zephyr. I'm gonna start pushing up. Sorry, Lincoln. Hey, let's go. Let's go. I chucked it to. I started pushing up. I started pushing up. Run, 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 run. I'm, I'm all the way on their base. Wait, one on their base. Wait, two on their base. Two on their base. I'm just, I'm just holding. I'm holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm nowhere near, so you guys are by yourself. Wait, hey, probably one gonna be going out of one. I can maybe pinch you. And add one to blue, to blue. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. One in blue. One in blue. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming up, boys. Watch the right. Watch in blue. He's in blue somewhere. Yellow, 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 Tag, tag, tag. Oh, I got one. Alright, that's fine. You're gonna be PC, Setsu, yeah? Setsu, PC. Yeah. Close to coming. It's gonna be sorted. Round towards what? I still have Trinity. Top place, top place, top place. Short, short, too short, too short. Two, two, two. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, two there, two there. Alright, one's pushing ship, one's pushing short. He's pushing, pushing, pushing robot, pushing robot. That's him, that's him. Alright, pushing robot. I'll help you guys. You went one more. Wait, probably, 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 I'm going right, I'm going right. Oh, yeah, I've got OD, I've got OD. I have FTL as well. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come. I think I'm pushing oh, yeah, yeah, mid-red mid somewhere. Wait, top space, two space, two space, they're going hatch, going hatch. Going hatch. I've got camo, yeah? I'm playing around, playing around with you. One dozer, 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 dozer. Nice, dead, dead. I've got camo, yeah? I'm just getting short, 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 let's go. Come on, Zephyr! Nice. Get a blue side, get a blue side. Yeah, I've got ice, I've got ice. Do you want it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I got the blue door, I got the blue door. You got it? Wait, 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 I can Trinity, I can Trinity, I can Trinity. Am I going back door? Am I going back door? I want to show you that. This has been another very rough match for JTEX. 7 and 25, Mind Freak just dominating there. Again, the active camo smackdown as well. That's got to hurt from shocks. You can see there, Miles, that they are actually taking this game very seriously, though. Maybe that SD loss probably stung them a little bit. Well, with just one minute left in the round, and they're down by seven, Oracle have got a lot of work to do. They're not out of the tournament yet, so this is going to be a massive few moments from the fighters just grabbed that drone. They did manage to get those kills on, so we'll jump over to Setsi. He's trying to get a couple of kills for his team. Oh, wow, absolute pandemonium doesn't manage to make too much happen there. Hopi, can he do much more? No, he gets dropped as well. Shocks though, has had a screamer of a game so far. 27 and 16, 30 and 21 for Fighter. Otherwise, things are looking pretty damn good for the boys in blue. Buzzer's has got that overdrive play. Not managing to make anything happen there, and he does get sit down. Seven points left. Uh, sorry, seven points for uh, for Oracle to catch up and just ca cause a tie, but with 30 seconds left, I don't think it's going to happen right here. With Fighter, Shocks, both beaming the way they are. They've had such stellar games. Fighter's broken that 30 bomb. So has Shocks. Everyone on the Mind Freak squad going immensely positive, except for Buzzo. But look, he's still positive anyway. 23 and 22. And look at this. Points on the board for Mind Freak. They got that extra one in as well. 5 and 14. It's going to be all she wrote right here for the uplink. Pretty much as we expected here. All tied up nicely. Oracle. They're going to be down 2-1 in this series. It's going to be very, very tough for them. Mind Freak dominating throughout that uplink. Now we head into the hard point. It's going to be extremely tough for Oracle to come back after that loss in Up League Dallas. Oh, it will be indeed. Obviously, I had a little stats once again. At the end of the first quarter, the first two and a half minutes there in the first half, it was 7-3 to three in favor of Mind Freak in the, the Uplink. Then 9-4 at the end of the half, and then we saw that tail score 14-5. to five. So really, you know, only two extra points added in in a total of seven and a half minutes from that Oracle squad, but the Mind Freak team just doubling their own score for plus seven in the remaining seven and a half minutes there. So really, you know, putting their nail and the hammer down when it came to the uplink, they were, as you mentioned, maybe feeling a bit re reeling from that S&D loss and they just wanted to take it as serious as possible. We heard it during the listening and the comms were going the whole time. A bit of smack talking on out there from Lincoln, I think I heard as well a few times. But, you know, 
What's what's Kai? What's gaming without some smack talk in between? Look, it's it has to happen, and especially against these guys. You know, you've seen all day. They've been in the crowd watching these games. They've seen Setsy. They've seen Zephyr going off, and they need to let them know now. Especially in the grand finals, they've got to ease out that confidence. They've got to just get a get a drip on them and just get as much of that out of them as possible to make the next map as easy as it can be for Mindfreak. You know, the battle's not just one in the game; it's also one outside of the game. And you saw the look on the face of JTX there. He's disappointed with his own performance. He feels like he's letting the team down, and that sort of that feeling is shared across the whole team. There's a whole other battle happening in the heads of these players outside of the game. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, man. I'm just watching Hopi here, and he's just staring down Mind Freak. He's just looking across there thinking, you bastards. <laughs> oh, that's, look, he's just been staring for, what, 30 seconds. During that uplink... Uh, after these after this highlights, we need to catch Hopi. He's probably still staring. During that uplink game as well, you know, each point that went in, I saw some Mind Freak supporters clapping, supporting the guys, and, you know, I, I think... I think they're getting more supportive behind my freak after they lost that SMD. They're like, right, hey guys, come on, let's, let's bring this back. Let's, let's, let's get into it. We have to do this. And just like that, you see on the replays, you know, it was coming up a fair bit of blue towards the end there. We saw a lot of payloads being used from their rigs. Well, there's a couple of score tricks being used as well. I think even during the listening, I think fire, like Paulie Scarabout went for a bit of a fly around into near the sub area there and picked up a couple of tays, got the comms out, and that's what you need to do when you're using that Scarab as well. But game number four, it doesn't have a hard point here coming up, and... Again, after that first half point we saw earlier on in this game, number one in the grand final, it was 250 to 93 in favour of Mind Freak. Will we be seeing something like that again, Miles, do you think? Yeah, at this tournament, Dallas, there are the coffins made. Uh, they've got three big nails in them. There's two at the top and one at the bottom. Two of those nails have been hammered through, and Mind Freak have got their hand on it, hammer's ready to go, and this throwback hard point, that will be the final death knell for the boys on Oracle. So they're about to drop the hammer, I believe, there, Josh. I, you know, it, it, it is what it is, right? I, I didn't even write down the score for the first one. I just put 250 to not much <laughs> because it, it was really like that. You know, Mind Freak just dominated in that hard point as we go into throwback, which we've seen Mind Freak dominate many, many times before. It will take a small miracle for, uh, for the guys at Oracle to come back from this. Look, with all that said, we're not hating on Oracle. We all know they've done so well to get to this grand final, but... You know, experience speaks for itself, doesn't it? Well, we saw them on the camera before, and I think they're sort of starting to realise what's exactly going on here. And they're it's coming to realisation that perhaps it is a bit too far to grasp at this stage in the competition. And going up against a team, as we've mentioned, like Mind Freak, who are just used to playing at this sort of level time and time and time again. That being said, though, Oracle, you know, it's, it's not by chance and happenstance that they're actually here. They actually are a skilled team. They've done. They've shown us what they're made of all throughout today in the past two days here at CWL well City number two. So definitely a team to keep an eye out for no matter what happens at the end of this grand final. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We'll have a look at this next matchup, of course. Hopi, not staring at the cross of the boys anymore. He's focusing on what's ahead of him. Just, of course, this uplink, oh, this hard point, sorry, on throwback. But the rest of the guys not looking too confident at this stage. Just got to shake it off. And it's hard to shake it off, but it has to be done. It has to be done, but that's not only as it ha you know taking these losses is not easy. But they've been playing since 10 a.m. this morning, <laughs> and it's now what? 10 a.m. Friday. They have been playing all day at the absolute zenith of their game, and man, that's going to drain you. That's going to you're going to be tired mentally, physically. You know, everyone says us gamers, oh, you just sit around playing games all day, man. I'd love to see somebody play at this level for upwards of five or six hours. It's for another time and place, I think, but the debate of people saying that gamers aren't really athletes, I really hate to see that sort of stuff. You know, it, it takes a, a certain type of person and a mindset to be able to grind as much as these guys do. It's not easy and it can wear you down after competing at this sort of a level for this long of a period of time. So anytime I see something like that, you know, I just shrug it off, but it really has to get out of some people's mentalities because not true whatsoever, Miles. I got enough bones to pick with people who still call it e-games. You know, it's esports with a big E these days if it starts to send us. No big S, that's how we run yeah. it. Cyber athletes, if you really, really want to go there. But otherwise, we're just professional gamers, man. We're all just gamers, brah. Well, you were talking about how, you know, how much mental fortitude you really need to, uh, to make this kind of run. I just want to point out that Oracle have won five series five full series in the lower bracket to get to the grand final and that in itself is quite the feat it is really a feat made of thin arms of those guys from that oracle team and they're definitely not done yet they're still going to bring it to mind think as best they can i think that it might be done and dusted but obviously they don't believe so as long as they have a little bit of faith left inside themselves and just band together as brothers 
as they get set up and ready for this next one. Of course, it is game number four, perhaps the final game here in the grand final for CWL Sydney number two, presented by PlayStation 4. Get some hype around you people. Come on, do you really think my freak can end it now? Can my freak end it? They're saying no, because I can't hear a damn thing out there. So clearly Oracle's going to take the hard point away, according to the crowd. I'm going to call a bunch of lies if Mind Freak win now. <laughs> As we get set up, ready for action. You see the Mind Freak guys on your screen. Of course, Oracle on the opposite side of that stage. The boys are locked and loaded. It could potentially be what we're going to see now. The final game and map being played. I'll hand it over to the two phenomenal people right next to me. The beautiful and luscious man and Miles. Oh, Dallas. Oh, it's been a long day. And we're almost at the end of it. Here we go, Josh. Potentially the final map. What has just been a stellar ride. Quite the saga. Many chapters written in Oracle's success story. But is this the sad, real ending? They've come up against the tough old life that is Mind Freak. Yeah, well, I mean, Mind Freak of the Bilbo. They were going to leave some space at the end of the book for Oracle. But it seems like their story is not done just yet. Mind Freak could be wrapping everything up right here. First aid's out, shots ringing out. Who's gonna get first blood? Excite's looking for it, and he is gonna get that with JTEX going down. Hard point here on throwback. Obviously a brilliant combination. Shaky shots, he's eventually gonna go down, and that was Hopi and Zephyr picking up a couple of kills there. First point on the board is actually to Oracle. Oracle getting the first point, but not for too long. As you see on your map, the buzzer winning those long range gunfights, get shots out, there's players in mid now tussling. We've got fighter behind the bus, JTEX gets shocks in the back end. Buzzo, lovely position there, he's getting tags on these plays. He gets brought down, that is another mine Street player brought down. Hopi with two. We'll have a quick look at Setsi. He's trying to watch over mid. You know, they're getting a bit of time here. But again, the rotations from Mind Freak are just so precise. Clinical precision when it comes to getting those next rotations. And as you can see, it's been a very unfruitful first hard point for both teams. However, the next one will be a barn burner. JTEX gunned two, so Excite got two of his own as we are about to rotate over to Barn. You can see Mind Freak tearing up here in the middle until Hopi tears him apart along with Sets as well. And now you're actually going to have Mind Freak, despite uh, a couple of players going down, are still going to be in control of Barn thanks to Shocks being there. Fighter off to a very uh, unusual 0 and 4 start at the beginning of this half point. I'm sure that's going to turn around very, very soon. Mind Freak, despite taking a few deaths, are still in control of this barn hard point. Their rotations were on point, and Oracle needs to do their best to break in here. They're all attacking from Bale. You can see there's going to be Sets and Zephyr both going in the front door. Zephyr goes down, Sets follows suit, and Mind Freak very much in control. Watertight defenses. I wouldn't mind putting a Mind Freak defense system on my home. Fighter 0 and 6, though. I'm not sure what's going on there. Must be a very rough start for him, but can't complain with the scoreline after, you know, one and a half hard points. At least that nade was beautiful from Excite, might I add. Uh, picking up Zephyr there. Fighter still yet to pick up his first kill for this hard point. But he doesn't need to if they're going to get all the points. Ten seconds until the rotation. We're going to be heading over to bike path. You can see the closest player to it is going to be Zephyr. Instead, he's actually going to be pushing in and trying to get his kills out of, out of barn. Um, they saw that they had the good spawn, so they were happy to do that to try and slay out Mind Freak. And Oracle should be the first people to lay foot in bike path if they can clear out a few. Sets does pick up shots. Shocks, excuse me. Um, but yeah, no one's still yet to get this uh, hard point. It's actually going to be Mind Freak who get in there. Sets though, trying to get their long range. Picks up one. The player in the corner. He tags him up a little bit. But Shocks and Excite clearing out. Excite with two. Beautiful stuff in all of the mayhem as well. Fighter did get on the board. Three and eight, might I add. Tries to get another, but he's actually going to be gunned by Hopi. 68 and climbing to Mind Freak to the 17 of Oracle. I actually must say, Oracle are getting the kills, Miles, but they're not getting the points on the board. Yeah, it's interesting to know. When Hopi was seeing that sort of hesitation, he needed to hold back their shocks, then diving headfirst into the hard point. That's the kind of play you need to see. You've got to get in there, man. You've got to get your hands dirty. You've got to get the points as well as the kills. Beautiful long range there from Excite. Big long range shots. Not able to find his home. There we go. Pushing, that, pushing the hard point. He's going to get the contest. Excite is doing damage, but not able to make anything work. Buzzer goes down. It's all dead for Mind Freak. Not able to jump to anyone there. So we're going to dive over to Zeppa as he's ready for the next part. Indeed he is. Zeppo has been on an absolute tear. He's even money at the moment. Ten kills to Hopi. Breaking into double digits. Oracle's going to be still getting the points here over in the baseball field. And they actually set up pretty nicely. You've got Zeppa up the back watching... Um Watch any players who want to come through bowling. He's got the support of a teammate. Does get some long range shots out. Fighter's going to go down. You can see he almost gets another one. Buzzer is actually going to clean him up. But Oracle are still rapid, racking up the points. Here's Hopi takes down two. Buzzer and Excite fall. Plenty of support here for Oracle. And there's still 30 seconds left in this hardpoint, Miles. They can form a little bit of a comeback here. Look, he's got help. Sets, he's there as well. There's maybe a member of Mind Freak in bowling. But look, as you can see, just grab that position. Lovely kills there. On the back end, can he get another? Hopi doesn't manage to make it work. Sets, he's back on respawn. Now you've got Excite and Fighter locking down that hardpoint. That was a 
a really nice run there from Oracle. MF, though, answering back in kind. But look, there's only 15 seconds left in this hard point. Excite winning the gunfight in the air. Lovely dogfight there from the young man. And still, Excite and Mind Freak climbing away on the scoreboard. 90 points and climbing here for Mind Freak. We're about to go back to the middle of the map, and you can see those numbers on your screen. That's going to be Jake Tex and Hopi both locking it down. Hopi, beautiful shots out to shut down Excite. He's got the support of his teammates as well, and they're going to be racking up points as they work towards 60. They're going to only be 40 points behind Mind Freak at this stage, which is a lot better than other teams have performed against them. It's a lot better than their first performance as well, might I add, Miles. So they're here to play. They know it's do or die, and they're going to definitely, uh, if they're going to go down, they're going to go down fighting. I think they will be certainly going down fighting, Josh. And Jtex is doing just that fighting doesn't manage to get the second on shocks, but he was doing a wonderful job there slowing things down. Can set to get this big kill. The player in the mid, this looks like he's going one on one up against Fighter now. Fighter does get position caught, catches shocks, reloading. He's got players all around him, not a chance. Absolutely cut down. This is Hopi on spawn, he's trying to get them play happen. One, 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 two to Mind Freak. It's almost 59 to Oracle. Can they get in here? Hopi. With all the weight of the world on his shoulders, they've come this far. Can they take another map off Mind Freak? It would be absolutely a dream come true for the young boys, but not sure if it's possible. Yeah, watch these spawns as well, because you can see here Oracle actually well set up for this barn rotation, which is about to happen. You're going to have uh, Sets holding down the fort. He's going to go out in the field and just try and see anyone coming. Someone needs to get in there and get those points, though, while they can. And Scarab comes into play from Shocks, picking up Zephyr, which is going to be bad because he was the troll locking down the front door. The FTL jump coming in, and Sets is going to clean everyone up. Two shot by Shocks. Shocks gets through. Bazo. Well, takes down shots for all the trouble. Mind Freak still in control, though. 122 points to climb to the 75 at Oracle. And I'm just loving the fact that Oracle are at least giving them a fight. Oh, Zeppa, the FTL play confused us all. But he managed to get on through, so that actually kind of helped. That worked out for me. Setsy still on the point. Wonderful shots, though, from shots. Unstoppable. Excite gets a couple as well. And that is very, very difficult. All the best made plans in the world are ruined when you come up against the aim of those two players. It really does slow things down. So still, this is exciting. Watching the back end, 12 seconds left in this hard point. We're going to get ready for the next rotation anytime time now. Bypass it will be set. He's already in position. So as we notice, Oracle, they're on top of the rotations. They're far, far ahead, but can they hold on to them? It's all good and well getting there first. But if you don't sink your teeth in, you're not going to get any points out of that one. So here we go. Fighters picking up two. This is Setsy. We've got players pushing on through mid. That was fire in mid. Lovely shots from Setsy. Gets uh, Excite. There's another player in mid, though. He needs to slow that one down. And there you go. Continual onslaught of MF. This is a very extended kill from Setsy. He ex overextended to get that one. He committed far and wide to get it. And he got brought down for his troubles. 160 now to 83. Hopi on that two kill streak, and he's going to be trying to do his best to lock down this bypass. Slides out, no one was to his left, unfortunately, one to his right. He is going to be dropped there by Excite. Zephyr and JTEX fire back. Fighter and Shocks as well pick up a couple before Zephyr trying to go in hero mode. Hopi, the only one left alive, and he goes on in. Still plenty of time left in the bypass. He trades out one kill. Mind Freak still very much in control of this map, and indeed the entire series. 15 seconds left before we're rotating over to that baseball field, and you can see it is going to be Fighter in the closest position to that. He's going to go out to mid to try and clear this out. He does pick up Hopi, and you can see in the background, Excites picking up one, but Zephyr and Sets keep the hope alive for Oracle. Shocks, he may get the scrap points, but you can see there it's both JTEX and Hopi setting up for that next rotation, and they've got the good spawns. And we saw last time we were around here, Miles actually got a lot of points, so this could be a nice little comeback kill for, uh, for Oracle, if they can get the money out of it. MF already pretty deep. Shock's got a kill on Setsy. Beautiful stuff from Hopi, though. Zephyr goes down as well. JTEX, last man alive. He's holding on. Camo play in mid. It was going to be Shock's, the sneakiest of all beavers. Managed to get that kill there. So now, Josh, back to square one. We've got Shock's here on a six-kill streak. This is the kind of Shock's that they're going to tell stories about. You're going to have your grandma getting all the kids around and just telling stories of this kind of Shock's. Back in my day, he was uh, tearing faces, is what he was doing. 28 and 15, beautiful stuff. 185 to 110. Oracle doing what they can, but bombardment coming out. Seth's running for his life. He has to get out of there. Shocks does get his teammate, JT. Look at this. Seth tries to get one. He's going to be doned by Fighter, and this is looking rough for Oracle. Mind Freak ahead by over a minute. Zephyr coming in. He's still keeping the hope alive for the squad. He's even money. He's going to go for his third as well. Drops Buzzo. Tries to get the turn on. Unfortunately, he goes down. This is great stuff. Shocks, though, he's still got streaks. He's got that Trinity Rock, he's got the Scarab, and he's also got Hopi's scalp after taking him down over there in mid-map. 
Bazo going to be pushing out a long field here. You can see Zephyr in the background. He's always in the kill feed miles picking up kills. It's just been unstoppable and he's not relenting here as you said that next kill. Over the top, coming in hard. He's got a bit of time on his on the board. 195, 2022. This is already one of the best scores anyone's got against MF in the tournament so far. Can the boys of Oracle keep it going? JTEX needs to step his game up. 18 and 24 getting shut down again. Hope he's in the hard point. Can he get a kill out of it? Yes, he does. He gets excited. He's got a few more coming his way. Can he get a few more? It would be ideal. 195 to 131. Oracle still in his 20 seconds left on the clock. Hope he's doing a great job holding on to this one. Zephyr winning the gunfights at long range. Doesn't manage to get that one though. JTEX, can he pick up the pieces? Fazo tagged up, doesn't get the kill, he doesn't finish it. Oh no, Setsi, he's got to come in now and help Hopi. Hopi gets dropped, so that's the time stopped for Oracle. Hopi nice did get a lot of time though, and he got a five kill streak as well. So Oracle's still in it. Mind Freak yet to hit 200. They are still a minute in front. We're over here rotating over to Barn. Mind Freak in control once again, and they got a lot of time off this last time around. So Oracle really needs to come in aggressive. They're all going to be pushing in through Barn. They're going to run headfirst into a Scarab. It gets dropped. The four stack coming in, knocking on the front door. This is Oracle. You can see the camo play coming in as well. Sets is going to be trying to pick up one. Hopi and Zephyr pick up kills. Excite gets Zephyr. He picks up two. Goes for three. Is Excite going to get more well, it's shocked to clean up Hopi, and that was Oracle picked apart one by one. Mind Freak showing their dominance in that heel on Barn. 222 points and still climbing miles. 224, this is it. Business end of the tournament. This is tournament point. MF, can they tie this one up? Zeppa says no, he's still holding on despite the efforts of Excite as he's about to make another play on in. He's got the FTL jump. Oracle with time on the clock. Shox takes Hopi in the back. Here comes the play on Barn. Shox goes down, Zephyr as well. Looks like a nice run there from Oracle. They managed to keep this one together. JTX with two, Zephyr got one. Back on the next rotation. Here we go, Josh. Another set of bike path. This wasn't too favorable towards the boys of Oracle. MF looking so strong. Setsy with a big kill though. Excite, He's on, he was moving on the hard point a moment ago. He's still got Scarab. 236, 237. This is it. Oracle need to get in there. They need to get their hands dirty. But MF, the defense is just too strong, Josh. Shrieks are coming out as well. Shocks picks up sets. This is going to be the final match points. Mind Freak, are they going to lock it down right here? Yes, they will. 250 to 167. Mind Freak are going to be wrapping this up right here. They're going to be knocking out in the final stages, Oracle, who had such an amazing run. But Mind Freak, they were always the juggernauts, the premier team coming in as heavy favorites. We always thought that they were able to do it. Oracle, such a great run, and I hope they're happy with that second place performance. I definitely would be. But Mind Freak, in the end, holding out once again for the second time. We will be saying this. Congratulations to Mind Freak, your CWL Sydney Open 2 champions. Alrighty, gentlemen, Buzzo, I'm going to come over to you, sir. What a what a lovely looking trophy there. Firstly, congratulations. You guys had an amazing weekend. From start to finish, you dropped one map up against these guys, and that is it. Pretty impressive, yeah? Yeah, hey, I, me and Conrad walked to the after third map for a toilet break, and I was honestly more depressed, like... I was as depressed as like we just lost the event, like losing that map. But you know that was probably going to be the only map that we're going to lose is breakout. We played it. I think that's our second time uh, in a proper official. Um, so yeah, if that was going to be a map that we're going to lose, that was going to be the map that we're going to lose. Yeah. Talk to me about this team over here. We've seen Hopi time and time again in so many teams, and to come through today, second place, it's it's pretty much a win for these guys. They've played some really great Call of Duty. They've struggled all the way through. Well, not struggled, but fought all the way through the lower bracket all day long to come up to you guys in the end. There's not much else they can do, yeah? Yeah, no, I um, uh, just want to say congratulations to Hopi. He's going to be dad soon. So, you know, he's playing, he's playing for that. And he's, um, it's good to see him come back and, you know, take second. Um, yeah, I don't think anybody would have expected. Honestly, I didn't even know he was on a freaking team, if I'm honest. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, they, they played amazing. Zeppa, Zeppa's a freak. You know, he played out of his absolute mind. So, you know, they're, they're, a, they're a good team. What's next for my freak? Um, Anaheim, GPL, Stage 2, and then Champs, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly what we're doing boot camp wise but um, yeah, event-wise, that's it. I couldn't tell you, honestly, we, you know, for GPL 1, we sort of just did it last minute, boot camp wise so yeah, I, besides those events, I don't know. Well, you reaffirmed today, not that you really needed to, but 
You guys are, of course, the best team in the ANZ region, certainly for now. And I'd like to invite in Maniac over with your check for $14,000. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give it up once again? CWL Sydney Open 2 champions, it's Mind Freak. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here at ESL Sydney Studios for the Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation for Sydney Open number two. Mind Freak are your champions and deservedly so. That's it for us here for the weekend. We will see you very shortly coming through in July. 16 teams in the last chance qualifier. Who from the ANZ region will make it through? We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us. Good night. He'll go inside. He's got stopped the defusal. No one else is there right now to start it back up again. He's done the damage. He's done what he needs to do. The, the cops are coming out. They're yelling at him on bomb. So they've got speeds as well. Setsy gets carried. Back from behind. On the turn. Oh, FTL. In front of him. Over that drone. Let's see what Sipsy decides to do with it. He's going to go on this lower wall run. Throw the drone out, and he knows he's got players contesting him. Somehow gets that hit fire. Can he turn around wow. for the second one? Swifty, that's the kind of slaying we expect from you, my man. And he'll get another one. Oh, go Swifty, go heal, go heal. I got me. Go on, Swifty! 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 Go on,
dreams that I was chasing. And all that time I wasted. Talking into action, laughing and joking. You know my dogs will be doping. There's many different patterns. Pick the one that's everlasting. I'll always be around when you're feeling down. Take my hand and you'll find out. Cause I can't let you go and let you walk away. If I can't tell you why I've been fading this way. Can't hold you down. I'll let you find out. I guess we'll find out. Let's find out. Oh, if I don't get to say, I was hoping maybe you feel in the same way as I do. You've been on my mind. There's no way, there's no way. I... Ignite this passion. Everything that you imagine can come true if you abandon the What are the right things to do when the feeling inside takes over you? Cause I can't let you go and let you walk away. If I can't tell you why I've been fading this way, they let you say you don't know. If I can't hold you down, I'll let you find out. I guess we'll find out. Let's find out. Oh, if I don't get to say, I was hoping maybe you feel in the same way as I do. Studios, there's nothing left to do but play the game. Let's get into it. 
tainted, ride that momentum all the way to the grand finals, or will Mind Freak turn it around like the champions that they always are? It's lonely at the top, and there's only one place to go, but I don't know if Mind Freak are quite ready to do that yet, James. Who would you like to kick this one off with? I know you've got a sniper rifle on screen, and yeah. look, we're getting ever closer to it as we speak. We're ready. He's ready. Excite. Give us the goods, mate. Please. I don't even know. He's probably got some kind of nerd spot that he's worked out. Let's see what he can do off the rip here. He spots a player early on, and the second one can't nail that shot there, misses it. So now he's given away that he has that scope. He can't change weapon even if he wanted to, but he does find that kill. I'm lucky that I caught that. I stopped back over at the exact moment there. So that's going to give Mind Freak the advantage. But as I said, that Nimble will find Buzzo. Excite trying to find those few players that he can see in his thermal scope here. Excite, he's just hesitating that split second, and you can see yeah. in that moment, those players are backing out. You cannot hesitate at a time like this. He's managed to get that one kill, and we've still got a 3v3 unfolding before us, and it looks like A is going to be the site of that fight. Big flank from that player on, on Tainted Minds. It was Zeus. He managed to get the kill on fight, and now it's gone back and forth, and his chocks all on his lonesome up against Denz and Nimble. He's going to be making his way towards the, the A-bomb site. His teammate fighter drops that bomb. He has to play passive here, but somehow he completely gets that gun there. I don't know who it was in Tainted Minds who was able to find that kill. We'll see in the final kill cam. It was Nimble. He like, he's sort of strafed in and then strafed back out again and just got the lucky last bullet. If you would expect from these two teams, but man, are we getting a show. Dens now, he's 25 away from, uh, well, Scarab, he's already got it. He's got that reactive armor. Nimble also has his payload at the ready, and this is an early and aggressive part. Mind Freak, they need to make something happen here. They're quite well spread, but look at this. Tainted Minds, they're going for the jugular. They want the kill, and what a way to do it if they can make it happen in a 6 though. Damage gets one, Nimble gets the second. There's Fighter with a kill on Nimble. He's not going to make anything happen here. Dens, can he bring down his former teammates here in the winner's bracket final? He's going for the reload. It's all on fighter. This is going to be an unprecedented 6 0. Tainted Minds have just put Mind Freak into the loser's bracket for the first time at a LAN in the APAC region's history. I can't, I just can't believe it, Mars. I mean, how? Out of all maps to do it on, out of all game modes to do it on, the best one for this Mind Freak squad, they come out, they're 2 0 up, they're feeling good, and then Tainted Minds, they turn it around and they, they send them to the loser's bracket. This. I was not expecting this. I don't think I contain this. I came into this weekend with a kind of a broad expectation of how this was all going to go down. And look, things are looking real different already. TM just secure themselves second place here, Josh. I think there's a bit of uh, soap opera action happening on the stage there. A few choice words between the boys. A little bit of trivia. This is going to be the first time we see Mind Freak put down into the loser's bracket since 2014 and they would have a different lineup under a different organization it has been so long you have to look into the uh, into the records you need to dust off a few books from a, a couple of years ago to find when this last happened you three round number eight going for that long wall run two players there waiting though can they get them both they will carry in spades making it now a 3v2 here we go bomb down a it's going to be an easy climb. The active camo, why so smiley? He sneaks out there. He's going to find the kill, and there we go. Rotation. Oh, sorry. The spawns are going to be in control of Validate. He's going to find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just over this the huge. pitch. No. It's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most, and he's going to be able to break that spawn. Yeah. To no avail. He's going to fall there, but his teammates do clean up the rest of the pieces. Rami is the last alive in a 1v2. One player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko. He jumps off just in time. Perfect. It comes around Rami. Nice. Very nicely done nice. by him to get that 1v2. A very good clutch. Empire has already hit the rotate. They're set up pretty nicely. They don't really have anyone out on that anchor, but it looks like we finally have someone from Validate playing spawns for once. So this could be a flip here, and it is. So we have number seven, Pixel spawning out across map in the lab. And this is a full... Oh, control, control, Pixel, Pixel, he's pushing out. No, wait, wait, wait. Tag on the right, heading. Go down, down. No, 2v2, 2v2, 2v2. Two 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 in the middle, in the middle. No, no me! Last one, last one, last one, last one. He's pushing, he's pushing. He's absolutely, absolutely hit him. I'm on one more front, one more front. Behind us, behind us, behind us. Behind us. Good shit, guys. Help him, help him, help him. I'm absolutely on that. Nice snake, hang on, hang on. Shit, good shit. Hang on, tag, let's shoot one tag. Pixel, one more. Pixel is tagged, Pixel is tagged. One more, Gary. Not heavy, not heavy, though. Watch out, watch out. Picked up once again. Zephyr's going to have it this time. He's got his team that steps right in front of him. He's got two teammates there in the opposition spawn, and only a one point. He did die mid air, so you know, he would have thought maybe it would be the old jump.
if he can use it. They might try and give him a pass. He might, yeah, here, he shoot. He might use it here. He's got no one around. No, there it is. Oh, he tries to go for the play. The one that Miles was talking about earlier, but it gets shut down in the pros. They do have some decent lobby control and a little bit of control of the hall here. Fate's going to come in. Going to get this frag potentially. Yes, he does. Shuts down Monster. Going to go for a second one here. Just hitting a nice little bait and switch with his teammate that gets traded out by Templix. No real control has gone. Either. It's going to be Rage in pretty much full control, pushed up nicely on the headshot spots in this hard point right now. But Monster jumping really high and getting that frag, surprisingly enough, through the window of the van. Nice place from Monster. Is he going to get a three piece? You always got the reload, drops down, and he's going to get this. Goes out that one, and now look, back in control of the hard point. Cynics are not out of this just yet. 157 to 81. Fate in the back line, doing a bit of damage. Lovely long range shots there, MV4. Put to good use. 75 away from his scarab. And they've got the rotator. Being set up for that next hard point. You can see all members of Senex set up already for destroy building fate. FTL jump does get the kill. Sneaky. Beautiful stuff there on Monster. That's a lovely utilization of that. And here comes a bombardment. Trying to click. Fixing himself up a little bit after that previous round's sort of disappointment. I still think that was a little bit risky by Rage there. They had every advantage and they still just put it down to Beast into fight a 1v2 in middle instead of just sort of grouping and working as a team. They instead opted to sort of just cut a lot. Uh, cut I'll get your hatch. Gonna stay up. No, no. I'm behind you. Absolute, absolute. Three, there's three, there's three. Oh, one, two, three. Nice, 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 nice. Let's go. Get map control now. Get map control. Push up this right I'm gonna help you on sub. I'm gonna help you on sub. Yeah, I'm pushing left. Yeah, I'm pushing off left. Oh, dead. Two more. 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 Lakey with the two. I have no idea why that first one didn't quite work out. I was pretty sure he was touching ball to uh, to cloth. Away. Yeah, Curry just firing up straight away. You know, you saw Shocks pre-firing upstairs as well, just trying to pick one up in case they were pushing. And just like that, look at these oh my kills God. going out. <laughs> Excite within the first 15 seconds and trying to pick up some more. Giddy streaks early in the game so they can try and hold down some more hard points as the hills will rotate around. Of course, that score 28 to zero right now. 23 seconds remaining in this current half. Allowing this mind freak team to get back into that hard point straight away. They seem to be very proficient at breaking any sort of hold that this regicide lineup are trying to produce. It's not working out. Fighter with the two piece very quickly. Can he get the third? Not going to happen, has he? He's going to be able to outgun him in that one. Can he? That mini map, but they called it wrong. And now it's going to be a fact of the retake situation for this regicide team. The pistol comes out oh, from Excite. Grabs the double. Can he see the third? So decide to go over towards Yellow oh. Park. Got worse coming out. Stems gets dropped pretty early. There's a camo player oh, right in front oh, of Shonky. He didn't even see him there. <laughs> but picked up the three piece nonetheless. Ooh. There's a four kill. And just like that, Shonky, I think he was as surprised as I was at a player just strolling past his screen. Already, I do like that. But I think they need to have a little bit more presence on middle map. Potentially work for the pinch instead of playing for those spawns so early. Yeah, it's important for turbine because it can be a money Ooh. hill. But they've basically just made this middle hill for Empire become a money hill. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation coming back. Nice, quick reactions from Frontline, realizing, hey, they're pretty stacked every single time. But Ludus nice, busted and gets a two-piece. Will he get the three? Has no. to reload, unfortunately, and gets traded out by Kitty. Snobby is able to clean. So they are able to take this back. Rocks, it's going to be a little bit gross, but they can't get out in time. S sticking to Erad range, Luda picks up the first frag. Can he pick Ooh. up the second? Yes, he does. Nice place from him yet again. And it is a 2v2 now. FTL potentially a little bit wasted Ooh. there as he gets that player one shot. And they to come and say hi to each other in the middle of the map. Here we go. The first one to give a warm welcome is going to be Kitty, but L Luda and Snowby, they're going to trade out two kills. So a good sort of trading scenario for both teams that's going to work for four players. No, and this is a massive, massive amount of, uh, of work to do. One at a time is going to make it work. There's get the first kill. Second, back a back. Two in a row. Now it's going to be really seconds left to go back a back. He does have to make the move, though. He is the bomb planner. He's got a nade, and he's got camo. This is massive. Over the top. Activates camo. The 2v1. He gets one on the turn. Back a back. Unbelievable. 1v4 clutch to keep this team in the round. I mean, look at everyone looking around. What just happened? Looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation coming back. Nice, quick reactions from Frontline, realizing, hey, they're pretty stacked every single time. But Luda's nice, busted and gets a two piece. Will he get the three? Has no. to reload, unfortunately, and gets traded out by Kitty. Snobby is able to clean. The two or three kills in a row. Here we go. Still over with Shocks. You can see four plays from Valadebro is coming in. Gets one. Shocks gets swift as well. Can he get the second in the window? He does. Gets a third as well. There's a fourth if he wants it. No. I'm fairly Shocks. sure that's the, the fourth, third piece he's got this game already. So three. Six months ago, I would have said as he's on his way out of competitive. And here he is, 13 and 5, three kill streak. 
Still shooting, still kneecapping, and still going on streaks. Love it from the very experienced man here from the Regicide squad. Azzy with the triple positive. Brilliant plays. Go he, he had a chance, but he had a chance. He when worried, those players, it was always going to be tough. He's at least going to get a couple kills for his trouble. Oh, gets three. Oh, he almost got that. He was, what, two he shots just away? Her face is going free. Here comes the... Oh, this is going to be crucial. Last match, Danny Gardner. Can he get the player? He does. He gets the player on the arm. Oh my goodness. That's how you use Trinity Rocket. Last player, guy. For the vast majority of the day, we've seen the guys usually push up towards drill from maps here. So good to see a little bit of different strategy coming out. We should be copying what MF are doing, but that is three down for MF. They're just breaking every single time here. Oh, what a Mind Freak with their head in the game, and I don't see them really playing any real games oh right here, but Excite able to get in for that one point clutch. Kyle, break that play down. John. Fully point blank. I can't believe he survived. <laughs> now JTX all alone. JTX actually one picks one. up one. I cannot believe how this went down for no Oracle. Way. Is he going to get this? Oh my god. What? I Oracle should not have won that. Especially this bombsite because he should know that they're going to be defusing straight away. Can't be playing kills. He puts down Azzy. This is very close. Sets. He might clean this up. What? What? No way. That just happened. I was waiting. I like to call Hoff here. This could potentially be a two. Not, not going to happen. Did that just get intercepted? It throws it straight back. Fate is going to fly in just for jump a dunk. In, Fate. Nice. <laughs> 15 seconds left in the half. This isn't as bad as it could be for Regicide. No, I mean, they've mostly just held them to one point plays so far. I feel like Azzy came. 15 seconds left in the half. This isn't as bad as it could be for Regicide. No, I mean, they've mostly just held them to one point plays so far. I feel like Azzy came so vital. Over the top, didn't nice. get through, and it actually. So vital. Over the top, didn't nice. get through, and it actually. Well, let's face it, these guys are absolutely ludicrously good at Call of Duty. And let's stay on board. Josh, can we jump on board with Excite? Can I make a oh, request? Oh, we can do that. Please, Daddy, please. He's got a sniper rifle. Let's see if he makes something happen here. He's... Ooh, I thought he was going to shoot his teammate. Man, I love this game. The, the, the art design of this game is so rad. The way that his teammates look all blue and funky when he's looking at them through thermal. Ah, I get distracted by the funny little things. Either way, we've got Excite running thermal. He's got snipe. So far, it's a big old push through mid for the boys in green. What I love about this wraparound from Tainted Minds is as soon as they heard that scope out, they're like, look, we can't do B with that line of sight. So obviously the wraparound to A and an insta plant, but still Excite gets those. I kind of wish we stuck on him, but instead he's going to be ripping out the pistol. Let's keep an eye on him anyway. We've seen him pick up a kill with his pistol anyway. He knows where Dens might be as fighter was just from scope out, connects with it, that's the second one from Excite, Buzzer gets damage as well, which means it's all up to Nimble, I'd normally jump on a Nimble right now, in fact, you know what, well, I was going to, but he died too fast, and Mind Freak clutch a vital first round against Tenor Mines, no 6-0 victories for Tenor Mines in this one, Miles. It ain't happening, Josh, not on their watch, Excite picking up two, bang tidy snipes there, he picked up Zeus first, and I believe it was Nimble, oh no, it wasn't Nimble, it was, uh, it was damage on the jump. He caught two players there as well, so that is not only a kill, but valuable information. So heads up play from Excite there, helping his team secure the big win there. He's two kills up, and you can see he's over a quarter of a way thought towards his, uh, I believe it's his FTL jump, so excellent start for Mind Freak. Let's have a look how they do on offense. It is certainly an offensive round. Wow, big kills trading out early between Zeus and Dens. Excite goes down, Dens goes down. On board with Fighter now, see if he can't make something happen here. A is going to be the site where the fight takes place. It's still one down a piece for both sides of the team. We've got Buzzo. We've got a couple of players from Tainted on the flank. Very, very big flank. They're, ex they're anticipating a very sort of high level play. As you can see, they've actually completely abandoned the bomb site. All of Tainted Minds have moved towards B. And the bomb is now down at A. So interesting play there. I think Tainted assumed that it was a three man push with a one man running towards B. They were hoping for that kind of, you know, full distraction play, but it actually wasn't the case. So an amazing bit of deception from Mind Freak. Shocks now trying to lock down that bomb. He needs to get the defense buzzer. He gets the kills. So we're putting it down to a 2v3 situation. Nimble and damage are all that's going to be on the board for Tainted Minds. And a beautiful kill from Fire. That's Nimble on his own. And he goes down as well. Tainted Minds all dead. Mind Freak, second round to them. Mind Freak doing what they can to make this the most exciting grand final we've seen on Australian soil. The Asia Pacific region putting on a show. And Mind Freak, the reigning champions, at least on land here in our region, doing what they can to still be crown champions. Miles, as this one sets up and we go over to Excite, who's hopefully ripping out that scope again, surely, well, I mean, we've never seen 
Like, what, what kind of... Ch- what a kind of next level choke would this be if Tainted Minds actually gave this away after all this effort? <laughs> next level choke. It really is going to be a next level choke, and this is actually going to work out in favor of Excite. You can see. Okay, here's the big play. You can watch that mini map as well while these snipe plays are going down, but here comes a jump. Oh, fight against the first kill on Zeus, and we're going to watch Excite make a run for this snipe. Can he get a kill out of his pistols <laughs> out? E equals MC squared, baby. Nah, Nibble gets two. And oh my goodness, it's all over. Mind Freak all down. Tainted Minds eliminated. That was a pretty quick run. Mind Freak put all their chips on the table, Josh. That was all in. It was like, we got a kill, fighter got the opening, we've got numbers, make it work. And it really didn't. Look, Excite, you know, he for his birthday, he got the uh, the old potato gun, the spud gun. He got a kill with it, but in the end, the parents get annoyed, and Tanner Mines give him the old smack, put him in the corner, put the dunce hat on. And now they get their uh, their round on the board. Tanner Mines on the defense now. Mind Freak, very aggressive plays towards A usually. However, flipping it up towards B and Tanner Mines. Great predictive play. Are going to be ready for this one. Den's on the wall run. He's going to spot one. He gets the assist on two, actually, as Nimble picks up both. And now Spider and Buzzo versus three players with Tenor Mines. Make that two. It's a 2v2 right now. Buzzo, he picked up Nimble as well. Now down to Zeus. Zeus, he ended up going down. Mind Free clutch their third round in this search and destroy. Three rounds away from a second best of five here in the CWL Sydney Open Grand Final. What an incredible choreograph of death that really was. You saw Fighter pick up the kills in the players. Well, good morning, guys and girls, and welcome to Championship Sunday here at the Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation 4, Sydney Open number two. We started with 31 teams, 12 remain. Every game today is going to be do or die here at the ESL Studios in Sydney, Australia. A $30,000 cash prize and 10,000 pro points for every player of the winning team. Number one was absolutely amazing. Number two is going to be even better. Guys and girls, so many games to go today. Let's get into the action. Time to throw it over to the desk. And Maniac, over to you. Thank you very much, Sam. And we are building up to something. Will we erupt or will we contain ourselves? We're about to find out. I am in Maniac. I'm at the desk here. The CWL Sydney Open 2, presented by PlayStation 4. And I'm so, so happy that you could join us this morning on what is going to be a beautiful day, both outside, inside, and everywhere in between, especially in the games. And to bring us our first series, I'm joined on the desk by none other than Miles and Bio Booyah Asa. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me this morning. We've had two action-packed days of Call of Duty mayhem from 31 of the top teams in the Asia Pacific region. Bio, you've come back after a quite a long hiatus, and I tell you what, it just seems that the quality of Call of Duty in the Asia Pacific region is just getting better and better. Oh, it is indeed. You know, there's a few new names around as well, and it's been great to see these guys come up sort of out of nowhere for me, for example, and a lot of these guys were onliners for a fair while before they finally got their start in the team, so it's really good to see them actually here competing at that high level and you know, really throwing some curveballs to these top two teams that you usually see compete and just take these things out easily. Miles, with the structure that Activision brought in with the 2016 Call of Duty World League, the teams got so much better, we were so much more organized, but as I've just mentioned, it seems that with 31 teams in attendance, the scene is just getting started here. Well, you can see the, the excitement in the air here is palpable. Everyone is so keen to play their games, and although the, some of these squads have only been together for two, maybe three weeks at a time, some of them even only a day or yeah. two, you know, the performance is very high for them. Uh, uh, there's a couple of mi there's mixed emotions around everyone's performances, but that, the best thing there is that they're so, so keen to keep playing and keep going on. And they, they know that that last chance qualifier is coming up uh, later, later on this year. And, yeah, everyone is so keen to keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, two days are in the books. Let's have a quick look back at what we saw yesterday. And, of course, it was a jam-packed day on day two of the CWL Sydney Open 2. We had Ted and Mines with the 3-0 victory over Frontline Esports. Sleeper Gaming went down 3-1 to Senex. Validate Brothers with a 3-0 over Crooked. We gave them a hard time yesterday. Maybe we'll see them make a run 
in that lower bracket. Empire Esports 3-1 front line. Mind Freak obviously dominating 2-3-0 performances. And then Rage, again, the big surprise for us is how well Rage has been doing. But Dallas, I mean, it's probably fair to say with the roster that they had, they should have surprised no one. Oh, you're not wrong, but at the same time, you sort of are. Like, they surprised me. So it's been an amazing performance so far from Rage. I'm interested to see if they can really take it to Mind Freak. Like, we've seen Mind Freak just sort of have their easy little run, pick of the litter. We listened to the listening during that SYF game. You can hear how serious Mind Freak were taking And during that, hopefully they continue that performance. But I'd, I'd love to see a 3-2 if, if, if Rage and Mind Freak later on today when they go head-to-head -head and just to see how that, that match actually tease up together. I cannot wait for that one as well and as we uh, talk about that we'll also head into the pools individually and see how they unfolded starting of course with pool A. Oh my gosh, shock horror! Mind freak at the top <laughs> with the 3-0. Team Regicide actually performed really well for me, Miles. Yeah, Regicide again, it's a stacked lineup. There's no major surprises that they, uh, you know, on paper they look damn hot. I was going to say something else but I'm glad I didn't. Uh, yeah, they're damn hot at the moment and 2-1, they can't be disappointed. They took down over Potheon, they took down Visualize, obviously Mind Freak, the only team to best them there. And I've still got high hopes for them later in the competition. But then, last night they got taken down by, actually no, they took down um, uh, excuse me, Oracle, which was huge. So yeah, they're, run, they're running hot. That was very, very big as we go into Pool B. Tainer Mines at the top there. What can we expect from these guys today, Dallas? Obviously Tainer Mines are in that loser's bracket run now, so it's going to be pretty much, they need to start off hot and continue that throughout the day, otherwise they will be getting dropped out early for this competition. Empire Esports 2-1 there as well in their pool, and they are down that loser's bracket too. I think they'll come up against Tainted Mines perhaps later on, or obviously the winner of this team I think will play TM, so it, it's looking to be a very interesting lower bracket. These big name teams that we weren't expecting, like Tainted Mines, to be in there early, and we'll just sort of see if they can continue that run. It's a long road ahead though for them. Moving on to Pool C, of course, is where you're going to have Oracle topping that one as they moved into the bracket but we've already talked about these guys um, they went down to the lower bracket as well Validate Brothers, Militia Gaming all putting up good shows as well as we move into Pool D our final of the four pools that we uh, had here at CWL Sydney Open 2 which we'll get to in just a second um, look, no real surprises for me in that one, going into the bracket I was hoping that Oracle could have got further hope you could have got Mm, I don't know. I, I think Hopi in the squad could have done a bit better, but of course, Miles, he had a bit of fresh blood in that squad as well. Yeah, I mean, this is the only really strange thing for us was, you know, Oracle coming out swinging, winning 3 0s in the groups. And the same could be said about Tainted. You get 3 0 in your groups, mm. you're looking really, really strong. As soon as you get in a bracket play, you get dropped. And that's just, that's, that's kind of strange for me. That's, that's um, I suppose that's the symptom of these some of these teams being kind of pickup teams being put together. They lack in that consistency throughout their tournament run. But I'm very, very keen to see what Oracle can do in that lower bracket run. SYF game. I mean, though, Bio, we had a, a great show as one of our final games on the main stage last night. Yeah, no, SYF Gaming, I don't think that's surprised too many people so far. They are a squad of very talented players, so we are sort of expecting them to have a good run as well. Rage Esports, you know, they they obviously went 2-1 in their pools, and now they're in that winner's bracket final, so it's an amazing achievement thus far. They're guaranteed top three, so big ups to them. Stenex obviously won two there, and then Sleeper Gaming... 0-3 in the pool, but I believe Sleeper Gaming are up against Empire Esports next up in this lower bracket. We'll probably have a look at in a little while. So I'm interested to see how that goes, because I think they're actually turning some heads in that lower bracket. They are definitely turning heads. Let's check out some recent results from yesterday's action, uh, because it was a completely stacked competition all over the place. Sleeper Gaming with the 3-0 win over Frontline, that is a huge, huge win right there. Crooked, 3 over Sodality. Validate the 3 over Textbook. 3 0s across the board as Visualize take down Militia. Validate over Senex. An error of Apotheon wins 3 0 over Crooked. But yeah, as you just pointed out, Dallas, Sleeper Gaming, easily the biggest upset, at least so far, mm. in this competition. Yeah, you know, when you go up against a big team like yeah, Empire Esports, who they will be versing first up this morning. They've really got to bring that A game. I hope they got here earlier. I hope they're warming up because they're going to need all that warming up time they can actually get before they head into that matchup. And as we mentioned before as well, <coughs> obviously the winner of this matchup that we're about to have a look at in a little while, it will go on to face, I believe, Tainted provided. I don't know if we have an update on that Stenex versus Validate at all, though. But I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that has been updated. Tainted Mines are through, and the winner of this matchup will go on to play them in that bottom part of that lower bracket. But... Josh, overall, you know, it's an interesting lower bracket run for a few of these teams. It is indeed. You know, as you were just saying, I totally expect uh, 
Sleepy Gaming should be in warming up because that's going to be a very tough one for them to win now up against Empire. But hey, top 12 is nothing to sneeze at. Validate Brothers versus Visualize Miles. Probably expecting the Brothers to take that one out. Yeah, you've got to be expecting the Brothers to go hard there. You know, the, again, the talent of that lineup, they've all been a champs. There's not a single one of them there, I don't believe, has been overseas. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, as far as I know. Um, yeah, they're, they're going to be favorites going in that one. But look, Visualize, you can't write any of these teams off at the moment. And again, the nature of the pickup teams, these guys are all, it's a little scrappy. There's like, a, there's that un you know countable variable that you just cannot count on and it is going you know to the absolute wire in some of these games and all it comes down to is a couple of bad decisions a couple of crazy moments and that's when it all hits the fan and those are the beautiful moments we're looking for here but yeah that's why it's tough to place these teams we'll see how this one's going to unfold ladies and gentlemen up first we are going to have one hell of a series but before we get into that we talked about how much action took place in day two of the CW sydney open two presented by playstation 4 the guys, the very talented production team, have put together a bit of a highlights package. Let's check out some of the big and major plays from yesterday's action. Blue Dak was just inside the hill there for a little time, trying to get some more up. Off the respawns, they will come. The trophies will go up now. Got the Curry Kid. He's, he's going to try and redeem himself after that last round. Picks up all around him. He pushed too aggressive there. Too many players focusing up on him. Shots will come out. Cam Jensen's a double! I'm not sure how... Hey, Rapids on the screen right now. He's going to be coming out this little new cut hit. Finds one player in the back. Can he get the second shaky shots? But it'll do it. So a nice two piece from him, but it's not enough. Fighter, he's going to shut him up. Let's see what they end up doing. Looks like a long roll out yeah, there. Yeah, works out. Thing. Double kill. And he might find the third in the middle of the map and potentially the fourth as well. Third there. Can he find the fourth? Being alive for a bit, you know, just controlling it. To, it's still the nitty gritty of this map. There's nothing really. Crazy going on, Cody shooting everyone but killing nothing and then killing everyone. So, typical Cody things. That streak. Really ineffective in the end there, but Hypers, he's going to be able to get another two piece. He's been getting two pieces after two piece. Make that three. And the man starts to heat up a little bit here. Ritter actually just played nice and slow. And he managed to just sort of sneak in there, get the break without really much effort because his teammates were expected, oh, the other team is expected to have cleared out that ground, but it's not going to matter. Stems picks up a huge two piece and they're just comfortably in control of Turbine yet again. Thought worse coming out, Stems gets dropped pretty early. There's a camo player oh, right in front oh, of Shonky, didn't even see him there, <laughs> but picked up the three piece nonetheless. Ooh. There's a four kill. And just like that, Shonky, I think he was as surprised as I was at a player just strolling past his screen. Already, I do like that. I think they need to have a little bit more presence on middle map, potentially work for the pinch instead of playing those spawns so early. Yeah, it's important for Turbine because it can be a money hill, but they basically just made this middle hill for Empire become a money hill. So like we're going to see a little bit of rotation coming back. Nice, quick reactions from Frontline, realizing, hey, they're pretty stacked every single time. But Luda's nice, busted Luda. in, gets a two-piece, really get the three, has no. to reload, unfortunately, and gets traded out by Kitty. So he is able to clean. They are able to take the back rocks. It's going to be a little bit gross, but they can't get out in time. So it's picking two E-Rad range. Luda picks up the first frag. Can he pick Whoa. up the second? Yes, he does. Nice place for him yet again. And it is a 2v2 now. FTL potentially a little bit wasted Whoa. there as he gets that player one shot. And just to come and say hi to each other in the middle of the map. Here we go. First one to give a warm welcome is going to be Kitty, but Luda and Snowbree, they're going to trade out two kills. So a good sort of trading scenario for both teams that's going to work for four players. No. And this is a massive, massive amount of uh, work to do. One at a time is going to make it work. There's the first kill. Second, back a back. Two in a row. Now it's going to be really seconds left to go back a back. He does have to make the move, though. He is the bomb player. He's got a nade, and he's got camo. This is massive. Over the top. Activates camo. The 2v1. He gets one on the turn. Back a back. Unbelievable. 1v4 clutch to keep this team in the round. I mean, look at everyone looking around. What just happened? Looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation coming back. Nice, quick reactions from frontline, realizing, hey, they're pretty stacked every single time. But Luna's nice, busted Luna. in. Gets a two piece. Will he get the three? Has no. to reload, unfortunately, and gets traded out by Kitty. So he is able to clean. Two or three kills in a row. Here we go, still over with shocks. We can see four plays with Valid Bros coming in. Gets one, shocks get swift as well. Can he get the second in the window? He does, gets a third as well. There's a fourth if he wants it. No. I'm fairly shocked. sure that's the, the fourth, third piece he's got this game already. So three Six months ago, I would have said as he's on his way out. And here he is, 13 and 5, three kill streak. Still shooting, still kneecapping, and still going on streaks. Love it from Ooh. the very experienced man here from the Regicide squad. Azzy with the triple positive, brilliant plays. Go he, he had a chance, but he had a chance. He when three players, it was always going to be tough. He's at least going to get a couple of kills for his couple. Oh, get three. Oh, he almost got that. He was what, two he shots just away. I think her face is going for it. Here comes the. Oh, this is going to be crucial. Last man standing, going. Can he get the player? He does. He gets the player on the arm. 
Oh my goodness. That's how you use Trinity Rocket. Last player got for the vast majority of the day, we've seen the guys usually push up towards drill from maps here. So we've just need a little bit of different strategy coming out. Ooh. Should be copying what MF are doing, but that is three down for MF. They're just breaking every single time here. Oh uh, what I Mind Freak with their head in the game, and I don't see them really playing any real games right here, but Excite able to get in for that one point clutch. Kyle, break that play down. Holy point blank. I can't believe he survived. <laughs> now JTX all alone. JTX actually Bobby picks won. up one. I cannot believe how this went down for no Oracle. Way. Is he going to get this? Oh my god. What? I, Oracle should not have won that. Push this bomb because he should know that they're going to be defusing straight away. Can't be playing kills. He puts down Azzy. This is very close. Sets it might clean this up. What? What? No way that just happened. I was waiting. I like to call Hoth here. This could potentially be a two. Not, not going to happen. Did that just get intercepted? It throws it straight back. Fate is going to fly in just for jump a dunk. In, fate. Nice. <laughs> 15 seconds left in the half. This isn't as bad as it could be for Regicide. No, I mean they've mostly just held him to one point plays so far. I feel like as he came, just 15 seconds left in the half. This isn't as bad as it could be for Regicide. No, I mean, they've mostly just held him to one-point plays so far. I feel like Azzy came so vital over the top, didn't nice. get through, and it actually left. So vital nice. over the top, didn't nice. get through, and it actually left. And what a highlights package that was, ladies and gentlemen. There was so much Call of Duty action going down here live at the ESL studio from Sydney, Australia. 31 of the best teams we already discussed. Record-breaking attendance once again. And to start things off for Championship Sunday, we've got two of the Premier teams coming up. And it is going to be absolutely amazing. Era of Apothean versus Oracle Esports. This is going to be one for the ages, Miles. One for the ages indeed. Now, Era of Apotheon, the reason for that name is, of course, because they were, once upon a time, back in CWL... Uh, it was Black Ops 3, it was back in the CWL Stage 2. This was the Apotheon squad, mostly. Uh, so they're actually still wearing the jerseys, which I love to see. Uh, and it's going to be pretty keen to see how these guys play up against Oracle Esports, who have been pegged to be a little bit of a favourite going in this one, Bio. Oh, yeah, they have been. Obviously, as you mentioned, they have been around for a little while as the Apotheon team. You know, I was talking to Mike straight at the back there this morning, and I'm just like, I'm trying to remember the Apotheon lineup. He goes, is this the original lineup back again? I was like, oh, fair enough, easy done. But no, Oracle Esports, you know, they're sort of tipping themselves a little bit here, I think, this morning to take this one out. I think most people are as well, but then no one was really tipping Oracle to lose last night. So here we are at this, at this point in time. It's, a, it's going to be a great first match of the day, and let's just hope this put, sort of puts it in perspective for all the teams that are coming up of what they really have to try and achieve. And then you see throughout later in the day there, that winner's bracket final is the only confirmed match. The Blue Boys up against the Raging Bull of Rage. It's looking to be an exciting matchup overall and just just these lower bracket matches i am really so pumped for we are so pumped for all of the matches coming up and probably uh right now it'd have to be the one we've got waiting on main stage and to have a chat with one of the best players in the region we've got sam man take it away thanks josh yeah i am here with jack and hopi now mate i'm going to start with you talk to me about how you guys are feeling you've come through you've made day three congratulations are you happy with where you fell into this lower bracket um, no, not really. We kind of played pretty bad COD yesterday, um, not to our standards, and we're looking to make it better today. Um, Bio, he's back, but he's predicting that you guys are going to go out here up against Hopi's Oracle. What, what do you feel about that? Yeah, that's fair. Um, we didn't really expect to play Oracle here. We expected to play Regicide, so it's a bit of a shake-up, but I think if we play our game, we can beat anyone. Do you think that the game that these guys played up against Regicide, do you think they played it as well as they could? or? Was that a surprise to you? Obviously, you didn't expect to diverse these guys now. Is that because Hobie's team isn't playing up to standard, or do you think their opponents were just too strong? Yeah, I mean, I think they had a bit of a mishap in S&D yesterday, in both, both Game 2 and Game 5, and that really really cost them. But um, they're still a good team, and it'll be a close match. should be a close match here. Hopi, I think it's going to be a close one. How are you guys feeling? Obviously, maybe didn't expect to uh, drop down to the lower bracket uh, where you did. Yeah, we're pretty determined. Um, bit of a disappointing loss last night. You know, to dominate in two hard points so hard and then lose this series, it's pretty bad. But, you know, I know these guys are a good team. We just can't overlook them. Um, you know, three of these guys played on the same team last year. And based off how they did, if they won their game fives last year, they could have been, you know, easily a top four team. So we just got to come in today. Don't overlook anyone. We've got a big run ahead. So we just got to go one game at a time and that's it. It is definitely a long day for you guys if you if you think you're going to be able to progress all the way through towards the end. Now, whoever wins this game is going to go up against uh, perhaps a team like Tainted Minds. Uh, what does that mean? 
Yeah, so basically if we win this um, and say Taint to win their game, one of us is placed in top eight. So it's a big game, but I think this Tainted definitely isn't like the old Tainted, but they're the same as us right now, coming off a loss they shouldn't have lost. Um, they'll be determined, we'll be determined if we win this. But um, like I said, I think they've learned from their lesson yesterday, we've learned from ours, like don't look past the team that you're versing. So we'll see what happens, but you know, I'm just looking forward to this game now. What's the score? What, what is the score going to be? I'm not going to predict the score because I thought we were going to 3-0 Nolan yesterday and we lost 3-2, so. Yeah, that's it. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. What's the score going to be? I think it'll be game five probably. I'm not going to predict anyway. Either way, but game five. I hope it's game five. We all hope it's game five. Gents, shake hands and uh, good luck to both of you in Maniac. Uh, I'm hoping for this one to go all the way. I'm sure you are too. Let's get into it. I do like it when we go all the way, Ben. This is going to be a great matchup, that is for sure. We've got what seems to be the young blood, the talented roster of Oracle up against here, Era of Apothea. Now, Oracle, you can see this lineup right here. Hopi, JTEC, Setsi, and Zephyr. Miles, we saw Hopi talking about uh, Era of Apothea. Three of their uh, members, their team members, were part of the Apothean roster that played throughout the Call of Duty World League in the, uh, in the APAC division last year, or in the ANZ division last year. They actually played with um, fairly moderate success in a very stacked competition. So obviously it seems to be quite a challenge here potentially for the Oracle guys. Well, I hope he put it best. If he can clinch out a couple more game fives, they would have been a top four team. And he's not wrong, you know, as far as placements go. I mean, this squad, as far as, you know, where they're at now, I think they're disappointed, but you can't overlook their ach achievements yesterday and how they're all playing. Setsi in particular is a player I'm going to be looking out for today. He has an incredibly hot hand this weekend. He's been slaying out of his mind. Zephyr's been coming up really clutch. And we know what Hope he's like, let's face it. But for me, the guy is Setsi. I'm keeping my sights on him. I'm hoping for crazy plays coming out of him on, a r on the reg, but we'll see what he brings to the table. Dallas, I think I could compare Hopi to like the lead war boy out of Mad Max, and he's on that, he's on that crazy blood, mate. He's on that crazy crazy blood. Oh, he, he really is. Obviously, he didn't say he wasn't going to predict, predict a score there in the pre-match interview. It gave me a little tip prior to that. I won't mention it. I don't want to jinx him. You know, don't predict your own matches, as they say. But he's really going for this one. Obviously, it is a very long road ahead, as they mentioned as well. Whoever wins this still has many more matches to come. But a W right now for the Oracle squad will really sort of put that match that they lost last night behind them and allow them just to focus on what's coming up in front. Nux, by the way, was his name. Nux, by the way. From Today's a lovely yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Witness! We're witnessing Hopi. As we move on to Era of Apothean, this is a pretty awesome lineup. I mean, they didn't even have to change jerseys, three of them since last year. You've got Carrie Dismal Spades, which we all saw from that former Apothean lineup. Now here of Era of Apothean. They're also met with Kytosis. Ketosis? Kytosis. 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 Kai, yeah. Thanks for that clarification, boys. But Dallas, how do you think this roster is going to perform? I think they'll perform rather well. You know, those names sort of do stand out that we've seen many times before on online competitions at Lambs as well. You know, Dismal's, he's been practicing pretty hard. Carry, if he can do what his name suggests and carry these guys a little bit as well in these matches, if he can go on that slaying rampage that I've seen him do before, it'll really help these guys sort of cement themselves in this game. Number one, of course, which will be that hard point. But overall, the roster is a strong roster. Again, I think they're on the same sort of boat as Oracle. They didn't expect to be down here this quickly in the loser's bracket, like this far back. They thought they'd be hot, hot further along. But they are here now. They're focusing on what's on that road ahead, and they're focusing on this first speed bump, which is Oracle. We'll check out the series overview, but dismal on error of Apothea and Miles. One of the most talented, I think, ARs in the excuse me, Asia-Pacific region. Yeah, don't mind me. There's a couple of energy drinks trying to pop up there. Uh, in the Asia-Pacific region, um, especially at the beginning of the Black Ops 3 uh, game cycle. But here in Infinite Warfare, I don't know, he hasn't really shone to me as much as he could have. A little bit hit and miss. Uh, still, there's, there's glimpses of the dismal of old. The dismal of Black Ops 3 comes through now and then. You know, we, what, we had the pleasure of casting over him throughout the Stage 2 uh, playoff. And the, well, sorry, Stage 2. Yeah, the regular season was great. He was, he was very, very consistent then. But yeah, he's not as comfortable on IW. And maybe that's just something that he's still working through. But we're getting later on into the game's life cycle now. And to see him be that, he, I wouldn't say he's inconsistent is the wrong term. But he's definitely not as, as you know, comfortable as he once was. Throwback, Crusher, then Throwback are going to be our three confirmed matches so I guess it's gonna be whoever's feeling pretty good on that map might be getting the advantage here Dallas as we look through the rig draft there doesn't seem to be anything crazy so what I will ask you is do you think that 
it, what seems to be a weakness in S and D will harm the Oracle squad when they go up against Era of Apotheon in that Crusher matchup. I, I don't think it'll harm them too much. Like, if they can just play, I think, to the aggressive nature, I think Oracle might sort of do your sort of stock and standard when it comes to defense on the S&D. They'll sort of sit back, let the opposition, the offense team make those mistakes. But if they can just play aggressive, both on their offense and defense for the EOA squad, I, I think they could probably be able to take it. they just got to really sort of throw Oracle off when we get into that game number two. But this hard point on throwback, oh, I'm really excited for. You know, I looked at those rig drafts before. It, it, it is pretty stock and standard stuff. I was actually surprised a little bit. I thought maybe Kykosis would have went with the reactive armor and given Dismal the camo a bit more. But, you know, maybe maybe Dismal's trying to relive that to that hype of the AR, throw the armor on and try and get the extra slaying ability out of that. There's a few players that stand out for me here. We've talked about Hopi. We've talked about Dismal. Aside from those two characters, Miles, who do you think is going to be standing out from each of these rosters? Well, look, uh, JTEX is another top player to watch out for. Zep has been super, super clutch all weekend long. Carry, it's hard to get around him. Spades, you know, he's like, there's a lot of there is these are two stack rosters with very, you know, there's a lot of accolades behind these players. They've been around. This is certainly not their first rodeo, and this is going to be an absolute treat to watch. Again, for me, the top picks for either team sets is definitely be something to watch going off. And actually, in this one, I think for EOA, it's going to be Carry. Carry's got that he's got that game winning potential in every play he makes, and if he can if he can harness that power, if he can get to the core of that one, then I think he's going to be able to provide a lot of winning power to EOA. Ladies and gentlemen, get hyped. We're about to kick off the Call of Duty World League CWL Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. This is going to be one hell of a way to kick off Championship Sunday. Oracle versus Era of Apotheon. We're getting funky up in here, folks. Both of these teams fighting for their competition lives and trying to get further down the track where they can get more of that $30,000 prize pool. 10,000 pro points to each player of the winning team will be given here, which is vital for our upcoming CWL LCQ live from Melbourne, July 7 to 9. Miles and Dallas, this is just game number one, and we're just getting started. Getting started with Carry. We talked him up enough in the pregame show. Let's see what he brings to the table here. This is EOA versus Oracle. We're in the loser's bracket, boys and girls. So three round losses, and you are going home. Spades, he's going to get those opening kills, Dallas. Yeah, straight off the bat there, you know, he passes on through the hard point, decided just to jump out of it just quickly, and it's one of those things you don't usually see, obviously. You usually wait for a bit of map control here on throwback hard point before you go for that first hard, the, the train platform one. You usually want to tr just get these guys sort of set up, get the rotation happening as well, that way you can set up for that next one. They did have the course as good side to begin with, but for some reason it has looked a little bit hopey. They're trying to pick up the second kill, can't do much with it though. 5-0, 30 seconds already gone from that train hard point, you know, the, tra the train platform. And that's exactly as I said, you know, you don't need to see too much time being being accumulated here. You usually want to try and just get those spawns flipped in your favour if you are Oracle. Yeah, the current moment, Oracle not really doing too much on the board. Again, that hard, first hard point, very, very dry for both teams. Hope you get those final scrap points. We've got Spades here, picking up a two pieces. of Zeppo on your screen. He's also going to be looking to get those spawns up back. He's got Granny, he's got their Lime. Can he hold on? He's got the new hard point has just flipped, and it looks like it's already gone over to Oracle, so we'll see if they can get a bit of time here. JTEX with a two-piece. We'll jump on board with Hopi as he's trying to get those players on the flank. Yeah, you should be able to get those, those that time indeed, as you mentioned, and I mentioned as well. They got their spawns flipped, and that's exactly what they need to do straight off the bat there. They're still holding down spawns. They are spawning out wide, though, out there at Lime. They probably want to spawn a bit more close to the background, Mars, but you know, what can you do? Work with what you have, as they say, and just like that, Oracle has scored 23 points out of this hard point alone, out of the possible 25 that was available there. Only contested for two seconds. They have lost it now. They lost the controls, and they may have lost spawns unless they can get something working magically there. Zephyr does get taken down, though, by Dismal, so that's going to be spawn swift in favour now of Era of Apotheon, and they'll be able to accumulate some more time inside of Barn. I can hear the lads getting hyped up there on the main stage from the EOA squad as well. They're pumped ready for action in this one, and they're bringing it to this Oracle team as they get set up for that rotation. Wow, EOA really heating up already. The score may not show it, but you can see it. The play's massive defensive run there from both teams. We saw Oracle making a run right on through mid. They managed to get a couple of kills out of it, but nothing was found there. And now we've got EOA straight on a bike path. We're on board with JTX and watch him and the boys of Oracle try and break this setup. They're going for that high wall run. Nades are out. They do have a Scarab in the back pocket if they need it. Dude, that was a nice trade between Kytosis and Zephyr there. Shots out for JTX. Doesn't manage to find the kill, and he's going to be running on through. Hopi now in that hard point. Can he hold on? He's contesting it ever so slowly. Here comes the push. Both teams gearing up, tiptoeing around this one. The footsies are out. Sets gets spades. Sets he gets the second. Hope he slides on through. Beautiful plays here from Oracle. Can they keep the run going? They cannot. Oracle 
Can they hold on here? Dismal was picked up by two-piece there after then finally getting dropped, and it was a big play because he was the only one left. They actually had a three down from EOA, so Dismal had to stay alive like he did. Picked up the two kills. He's on 10 and 7 right now, so that AR definitely coming into play right there for him. He was top scoring for a moment. Him and Spades are neck and neck in regards to their KDs on this one for their team. You know, on the other side of things, Sefty's having a bit of a slow start here. Oracle are down by that, was at nine points there for a moment, so... Sefty needs to step this up a little bit more, I think. If Sefty can do that, then perhaps, you know, Oracle can answer back. Of course, we do have JTEX now on our screens. He's just trying to hold back that globe there to hold those spawns, but they can't. Kytos is coming in big. Big fight at half wall. Kytos just picks up one more. Hope he's trying to stay alive. Players all around him. He gets one. Can't get the second. So that's going to allow EOA to perhaps get some more time here if they can get in. Well, we can hear EOA here from the stage, but we want you to be able to hear EOA straight through your screens. We're going to go to a quick listening with Error of Apotheon and hear the hype. No, 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 we close, dead, let's go boys! Let's go, 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 I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel, I'm watching Tunnel. Me, 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 He's slow warring, he's gonna push out the middle. Me, just stay alive, stay alive. Tunnel dead. I'm gonna stay alive, dude, stay alive, dude. I see some Gate corner, gate corner, 1B3. Oh, no, see, I see. Two in me, two in me, two in me. He's weak, he's weak on that side of front green. Let's go, boys, come on. 30 seconds. I see front green. He's gate corner, gate corner. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. Three shot walk, three shot walk. Where we spawning, where we spawning? I just tried to push it. Two, two, yeah. No one go right, no one go right, no one go right. Go to, go to, yeah, hit left, left. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. I'm going top right, top right. Hit left, hit left, yeah, yeah. Get him off field, get him off field, get him off field. Heal dead. Nice, good job, I can't see him. One back left, one back left. Top right, one shot, nice, top right. Tunnel, 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 big kill, hopey tunnel. Hopey tunnel, we need a trade up. Top right, 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 top right. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, I got it. Scarab Lennon, Scarab Lennon, Scarab Scarab Walk dead. One Lennon, one Lennon. One to me, back Lennon, yeah. Oh, back Lennon, back Lennon, back Lennon, back Lennon, He's dead, let's go boys. Nice. Top green, top green, top green, top green, Setsy. We're looking for Setsy. Top green, 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 top Yep, I'm Sister, back. Okay, back. Back. Okay, back. 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 Window, window, yeah, window, window. Yeah, 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 That's a big kill back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, right. boys. 20 seconds. One more back, one back. Nice. Look front, man. Look front, Nathan. Look front, Nathan. I've got, I've got mid. I've got mid. Look front, Nathan. One back, one back. City front, city front. All front, all front. Back, I'll go back. I'm literally playing bowling. I'm 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 playing Big hard point there for EOA, grab a majority of the barn. You know, Oracle are pushing very close to a five point margin there a second ago, but EOA is starting to walk away a little bit. Carry could not stay alive long enough though to get fully streaked out. It's going to be over to the side of things now for this Oracle squad to try and get some more points there on that bottom half point under bridge. Seemed pretty much uncontestedly right now because pretty much EOA got, a f got dropped for four down in. They have to come off this respawn. They are trying to contest a little bit. Kytosis, while in the hill, pulls out the scarab and grabs the kill. Big plays from him. Here we go. Well, with spades is the push. He and Setsy just clean that one up well. Good. This one, Kytosis was getting kills, and this is it. EOA back on hard point. 149 and rising Dallas. This is unprecedented. Oracle were dominating their hard points yesterday, but coming up here against EOA, the hype is just a little too much. Yeah, you know, I think Oracle need to get Hopi more vocal. Hopi's one of those local players. If he is hyped, the rest of the team feel it, and they play along with it as it plays out. But right now, I'm not hearing too much from back here from the Hopi squad. And Hopi currently on 13 and 22. That might be why he's not getting too hyped. You know, he's dropping some, some numbers there in the neg negative department. So that might be sort of playing out in his mind in the background. So we just see Dismal now trying to push into that back globe, trying to break it a little bit just to keep him off it, keep that score line 
we're around at plus 50. It was a plus 45 there. As we see that time tick on up in favour of Errol Popling on still, but Oracle still trying to answer back. And even though EOA didn't get too much hill there at Globe at the start, they're still being as vocal as hell. Oh, man, you can hear him through our mics, I'm sure. Carrie's absolutely going off 15 and 17 for him. But on the real superstar for the team, it's going to be Spade. He's going 24 and 15, massive kills, massive plays from him. This is his point of view right now. And Dismal also going 30 and 22, so massive work from everyone on EOA. Look at these plays coming out left, right, and center. We'll jump on board with Hopi. Baseball field is almost finished, getting ready for that next rotation. And here we go, Oracle. They're not out of it yet, 181 to 120. They've still got life in the tank. But these next rotations are gonna be huge. Hopi not winning any of those engagements. 16 to 26 right now. He's been on the receiving end of every single bad gunfight, unfortunately for the man in blue. Oracle now, do you want the can of stay alive? We're back to train, so all back to square one. And things are looking very yellow right now. This is Kytosis. Overwatching that position. Zephyr's getting kills in the back end. Kaitos has got one. He's got his players on the flank. Just turns at the right time, but does, does get shot out. Manages to get killed by JTEX, though. So massive play. We'll have a ball with JTEX. He's managed to secure hard point. He's got Centurion ready. 125 away from that Scarab if he needs it. And there we go. Mao still getting cut to pieces. Oracle just unable to find themselves here. 197 to 123. The clock is ticking ever so slowly. And now we've got Carry still going off on one. Space just got taken out there. And here comes the push. Hope he does get brought down. Carry still trying to stay alive. He's got his FTL jump also. Does get ripped up. So look, it's back and forth between these two teams, but the score, Dallas, is looking all EOA. Oh, it is indeed. And I was watching that minimap there for a little while, and it was going to be JTEX who was just trying to hold those spawns down for the longest time. They've still got back spawns coming into the next hill, hard point of VAR, which is good, but they really need to contest that middle one a little bit more. Obviously, that score difference is not doing too much for their favour. They have to hold a good 40 seconds here to get back into this one in this barn hard point. They still have spawns. One has to stay alive. This is where they're going to struggle. Dismal is pushing in and trying to force those spawns out. If he manages to do that, which I just saw Seps spawn underpass, so in spades is spawning it out there as well. So it's sort of in a bit of a up in the air regarding those spawns at this, very, at this point in time. If they've done well here. They've gotten a good 20 seconds out of the current barn 30. They're still going to have to try and get this remaining time to really fight back. And then I think you should see that Centurion come in when they're going to the next hard point, that lower bridge. Well, we've actually got the Centurion for Oracle just been deployed in barn. As you see, just con the defensive run from the boys in blue have been so solid here. This is Oracle's hard point from start to finish. This is a new lineup from, you know, they didn't look this strong a moment ago. EOA now on the ropes. Big Oracle plays. have done a, they've done a great job hanging on to this one. 206 and 180 and climbing. Something board now with spades. Getting ready for the next rotation. Three seconds time, it's going to be all lit. We'll jump aboard Kytosis, he's the anchor for his team. This is a big kill on Hope, he does manage to secure it. He's got his camo. That hard point has just been, that's, yeah, you saw you called it as there it is. That's the, uh, the EOA have just deployed their Centurion. And that's Zeppa on a seven kill streak as well. Carrying the run on, this is Zeppa's perspective. Eight. He's got his bombardment, he's got his FTL ready, and he's absolutely slaying it through. This is what Oracle need to get back in this game. 216 and 191 and climbing. That's a game changer right there for Zeppa, getting those streaks, being fully streaked out, allowing him to get back into that hill and get these guys more time. Now, obviously, he'll probably set the bombardment when they go to Globe next. And if, he can, if they can just get another 10 seconds here at a possible 30, That'll be a definitely a game changer for him. Obviously, you see a couple of those payloads will come into play as well. Got some armors there. Hope he's running that. Hope he's still struggling a little bit on the struggle street side of the kills. But the rest of the team, you know, overall, kill-wise, EOA have two players up almost on 40 bombs. 37 for Dismal, 38 for Spades. But it's not all about kills here. If your team can't control the hard points and lock it down just like these guys are, I want to see Zeppa as we head into this next hard point. Here comes that bombardment. Tree Rocket out. He's going to oh. find one. Almost dead against the tag. That is how he's going to clear out the next hard point. So they may have lost the rotation, but they definitely got the kills. And here we go, Zeppa. JTEC's got a kill in the back. Hope he's got one as well. 224 to 217. Oracle is still in this yet. It is coming down on the wire. He's got that bombardment. This is going to be massive. They've got the time. The clock is ticking. Here comes the push. We'll watch the perspective from Carry. Carry, they're making the run through. Here comes the opening kills. Are they going to find anything on that high wall run? He's got one. Kaitos is found. Hope he sets. He trades out as well. Spades on the trade. So it's three dead for Oracle. Last man in the back end. And there's Carry. 1v1 against oh. Zeppa. Cleans him up. They need this time. 227, 234. Oracle, this is going down to the wire. Here's the push. Watch this one from JTEC's perspective. They still have that bombardment. They could clear it out. The Centurion's actually still sitting in behind, which is funny enough. But there was the bombardment. Managed no, to get two of them. They're all him. dead. It's all down. They're going to be able to get the last few seconds here. They've got to push those players on spawn. What can EOA do? Here comes the play. Are they going to find those players on the door? They make it through. Dismal and carry. Get one each. Zeppa gets two. JTEC's with two as well. And this is it, Spades. He's got to make something happen here. The clock is ticking. 244. Gets the trade out. There's one second left. The next half point is going to be huge. Here it is in mid. 
Can Stepsy on the camera play make something happen here? He's got to get a couple of kills. 237, 245. Oracle need five to win this. Stepsy goes down. Zappa's still making the play. This is it, Oracle. What oh, a comeback. Unbelievable God. run. EOA, the most vocal team we've seen on the stage yet. They had the lead from start up until the bitter finish when Oracle made some comeback. This is where you start Championship Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, of the CWR Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. What a comeback by Oracle, and it was completely made there. The final plays by Zeppa and JTEX. I mean, what a game. EOA, Era of Apothean, had nothing against the AOE of Oracle. And what a way to use those uh, streaks in the end, Miles. And of course, JTEX's clutch double, that two piece right at the end stopped any kind of force that was coming through unders um, to stop the push from Statue, which completely changed the game right at the end. They only needed five seconds left, but that's where it was shut down. Oh, man, I'm not ready for a game like that. was Game 1 Championship Sunday. I've not even had my coffee yet. Don't, don't need, need it, it now. You don't need it now. I'm just yeah. looking at those scores there. You know, Dismal and Spay. This will drop 39 kills. Spay's dropped 41, and, you know, they still managed to lose there. Over on the other side, though, of Oracle, three of the players all on 35. You know, I mentioned Hopi. Hopi fired up at the end there as well. He had a bit of a struggle start, but he ended up with 26 kills. So, you know, it was more even even scoreline across the board for Oracle. More playing as a team. You know, trading those kills, a big effort in the end there. That's what we saw. That's what we see. Three, 35 kills on three of the players. They were trading so much and then getting doubles on top of that. And then, you know, being fully streaked out, really the game changer. Oh, they're getting excited. I'm standing at attention because that was one hell of a way to start off this series. Miles, I've got to be honest, I thought Era of Apothean had it locked in the bag. Yeah, we were getting real riled up about how well Spades and Dismal were playing. Carry was going off at times. But at the end, you know, those kills, we, we talk about Spades, you got 41 kills in that last one. You know, and at the end of the day, it was really just, it was, it came down to the decisions made. It came down to the plays made by the boys on Oracle. You know, the decision, cho the choices were there. They really, they held on to those streaks until the right times. The Centurion came out for both sides. We saw AOE, they dropped it on Bike Path on the second rotation, whereas um, uh, Oracle's, it was in the barn. Yeah. And that was their money heel. So that really changed it for them. That was where the game completely flipped for them. We, we saw them down by like 60 points and they brought it right back. And after that, it was kind of like they were off Struggle Street and the, the finish line was in sight. Yeah, that 40 seconds, I think they got minimal in barn. It was that game changer, obviously. They went down the bike path. Uh, they used the Trinity Rocket, I think, just as they came out of bike path. Then, of course, the Bombardment, when they tried to break that back heel at Globe. Like they broke it for a little while, then lost. And then a four-piece plus, four plus a ki team kill. Five, so five kills in the Counts Bombardment. You know, it, was a, it was a moment, amazing work. And that was really that big changer. You know, AOE could not not challenge that hill. They had to go for it. Otherwise, it would have been game over right there and there. They had to tra challenge right towards the end there. And even though they didn't get those last couple of kills and then went straight to the train platform, got the remaining time. I was surprised with the camo play. I thought he'd pop camo and just go lay on the hill. Nothing yeah. else, just stay in hill. But he would challenge a couple of kills. He ended up dying, but they still got there in the end, which is the main thing. My only critique was that uh, I'd, I'd play pitch and just lay on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't take anything from either team. Uh, what I will say is that uh, if Hopi plays at his best, Ooh. that was going to be one hell of a performance. And just credit to Zeppa, the way he played that game, Miles, was just insane. Oh, dude, we saw some remarkably clutch plays from Zeppa. He was he was one of the players that I was worried about going into this. He's got the clutch <laughs> factor, but at the same time, Sets, he's been the guy who's been going off for me. Uh, yeah, Z Zeppa was, uh, he wasn't necessarily on my radar as far as his player to watch out for. He's going to go huge, but he was certainly a crucial component going to that one. And yeah, that was the, the camera play towards the end. It was interesting enough, I would have totally just laid yeah. there. I would have gone for the contest. I wouldn't have necessarily gone for the for the game winning kills, but I would have gone for the, the play that's going to set up your boys to be able to get in there and, and try and make a difference there. You can see there, Hope he wasn't feeling his game either, so he's going in to, for some last minute surgery. It's only keyhole surgery, boys. Don't worry about it. It's nothing too made. It's only day surgery. But he's in there, former form surgery on the controller in Dallas. Hopefully, he can come out with a better performance going into this crush search and destroy. Yeah, I don't know if it was the fact that the control was no good for him or if he just burned it out in that last couple of hills. You know, it was, it was amazing work by all those players. He just he got right into it. Perhaps he broke it because he was that hyped. Because, we, as I said, Hopi, one of those players, if you can get Hopi hyped, he hypes the whole team up. And we didn't hear, hear, hear too much. You, know, you saw it in the scoreline at the start there for a little while for Hopi. Took them a little bit to get going, and then once they did, they, you know, as a team, they, they really meshed well together. Whereas EOA, they were vocal from start to finish.
I don't know where the hell we go from here, man. That was some game. EOA, EOA now, I mean, just the way that they're playing the respawn game types. Now throwback uplink is going to be completely up in the air for me. Mm. And if we have to get to that next breakout hard point, I don't know if I can... Can you make those kind of crazy come back, comebacks again later on in the series? Do you have the energy, the mental prowess to keep coming back from these deficits? You know, the, just the way that EOA are playing right now in the respawns, I feel like they're going to be taking the lead almost every single game we start off. The slaying prowess is there, the pace is there. Uh, it's, it's they're a hot team to watch now, and I don't know where I'm placing Oracle. You know, later on in the series, I just saw some madness coming out of uh, Oracle at the end there, um, which I thought was you know that's that's what they are, right? They're this hot blood. They're the guys that just have this crazy gun skill. But it's for that reason, the fact that they dropped a couple of SNDs yesterday, that I really feel this next SND is going to go to EOA, and then once we go back to that uplink on throwback, hoping the boys are going to be hyped from their respawns. They keep slaying the way they are. They might be fine, but. I, I don't know, Dallas. I'm feeling a little bit worried for them as we look at the rest of the series. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. It was a close hard point game, and EOA had the lead for the majority of that. It was only towards the end there that they sort of just... I, didn't, I wouldn't say they fell apart. They really didn't do that much wrong. They, they played it how they needed to play. It was just the fact that towards the end, that when they got fully streaked out on the Oracle side, it was just that was the game changer for me, and I think it was for them as well. So the S&D, obviously a respawn game, uh, go round for round. I, I would expect, nonetheless, than a game than around 11 in this S&D, you know, it's going to be a very close matchup. Perhaps one team will just sort of slay out straight at the start. It'll come down to the same old thing, their miles, which whoever can get the first two rounds in a row sort of will start walking away a little bit if it's going around for round. Early prediction here, I mean, I'm, I'm play I mean, this is a top level prediction, let's face it, but Oracle, they're the guys who I feel are going to be making the smarter plays, whereas I think EOA, they're going to be winning the gunfights. They're the hot hands right now are definitely Spades, Dismal's going nuts, Carry's going nuts, Kytosis is where he needs to be. They're the guys who are going to be getting those kills. So if it's going to be coming down to those clutch 1v1 scenarios where it's literally just a gunfight that's deciding a round, I'm giving those to EOA most of the time. So I am giving them the edge here in the S&D. And, you know, if Oracle, if they can get the, if they get the shots together, you know, I hope he's just had his, his open control of surgery. Hopefully he comes through with that one. Uh, maybe that's going to make a difference here for them. Who knows? But, yeah, right now it's EOA. We talked about how important this event is for the $30,000 in prize money and also the pro points. We talked about how that affects the CWL last chance qualifier in Melbourne, but also we've got global pro league relegation happening, folks. June 3rd is an online double elimination bracket. You've all been asking me how relegation works, so here it is. It's an online double elimination bracket. Top 16 teams can play in it by CWL Pro Points. The winning team will join the bottom four teams from Stage 1 of the Global Pro League to compete for four spots in Stage 2. The Stage 2 Qualifier Tournament will take place on Thursday, June 15th at the Anaheim Convention Center. Miles, we're hyped for that. We are hyped for that. I was doing my hype dance. That's just, this is my hype dance. That's your hype dance? I pretty, thought it was a chicken dance. I'm pretty, yeah. I like that hype dance. I, Naked almost did it at the same time with me, but, you know, he chickened out the last second. It's probably why they call it the chicken dance. Oh. The coward. He's not even here, is he? Here we go, guys. EOA versus Oracle. This is uh, rigged draft. This is kind of, this is make or break in the series for me. If Oracle can win this, then they're, I think they're home and dry. But EOA, I, which I think they will, I think this is where EOA turn it around because we heard how hyped they were. This is the momentum they need. They're certainly going to be a little deflated after this. And S&D is the perfect game type for these guys to be able to find them, find their confidence again and get swinging into the rest of the series. Yeah, it's hard to bring hype into an S&D game, though. Obviously, you don't want to talk while you've got, like, you've got two players still up and alive. So it is one of those harder things to do. At the end of the rounds, win or lose, you just want to yeah, you want to give your teammates that hype though. You want to you lose the round, don't worry. Next round's a new one. Let's go into that one, fresh start. So it'll be interesting to see how loud they get. But I'm sure if there's a two or three piece or even an ace happening on the EOA side, everyone here will know about it, including us and those at home, because you'll be able to hear it from back here. Don't worry about that. And I'm just having a look over the rig draft. So I always I like to check this out. Even though it should be stock and standard meta-wise, you never know if someone's going to throw a curveball at someone else and just mix things up a little bit. But no, nah, pretty stock standard stuff from what I'm seeing right there. And obviously, s and I'm still feeling that round 11 miles. I, I really think this could go all the way to that end. I'm calling it right now, round 11. Let's see how good the tips are on Championship Sunday. I'm going to go round 11, s and to Oracle, though. Oh, wow, because I, I think, I actually think if EOA can find... He said those two rounds in a row, yep. win an offensive round, get the defensive round as well. I think they're walking it from here. I reckon it could be a 6-4 EOA. Before I exit stage right, I was actually thinking that exact scoreline, Miles. So just to change it up, I'm going to go 6-3. 6-3 six, three. Six, three to EOA. Just right, to, yeah, just so. I'm really feeling EOA for this one. I reckon this series is going to be a real screamer. I'm hoping for the Oracle win then, just so I can rub it in both your faces <laughs> after the match. But we'll find out. By all means, you know... 
I like to be proven wrong. It's one of the things I say to teams all the time. You know, if I'm tipping the other team, prove me wrong. I, I love to be proven wrong by you because it just shows how much, how, how much, how good you are, and it changed my mindset completely on how I look at you as a team. So by all means, EOA, take it out early, as the boys said, six four from Miles, six three I think from Inman. Yep. And we'll see what's going to happen. Going through the start there, Miles, the players, nothing too out of the ordinary in regards to what weapons they're running with. Yeah, nothing too exciting. We'll kick this one off with Hopi for uh, Oracle. They're on the offensive side. And this is going to be a goodie. EOA down by one in the series already. This is loser bracket. Things are heating up. We're in round three of the loser's bracket. Actually, no, EOA are on offensive. My bad. So we'll kick this one off with Carrie. Carrie's going to be our bomb runner. Oh, and it's going to be an eight-man eight, eight man Royal Rumble. Here it be. Oh, and Zephyr's gone down early. Getting the kills. Look at this back and forth. Dismal versus Hopi and Sets. Dismal ties it up to oh. 1v1. But there we go. Sets in the back end. Absolute pandemonium. It was a brawl. And he came out on top. It was. How long did that round last? 22 seconds, I think, if that. It was not even 22 seconds. Remember the 19, 20 second mark. But that's some good S&D stuff. And that's what I sort of thought. I, I, I thought Oracle would play it differently. I thought they'd play the typical sort of defense. You know, sit back a little bit. Maybe go for a 3-1 split. One person middle of the map. Three on, stack one bomb site, And then get the call for the rotation if you need to. But they decided to stack it up. It was a good call. Always had 50-50 odds when you make the call on the fence there. That time it paid off. We'll see how EOA answered back. Though. Obviously, they are on that defensive side now. Oracle, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're going straight back to B. You can see EOA have been real slow. They went to A first. Without getting in their intel, they're going to be pushing on back through. But this is massive sets. Needs to get that bomb down as quick as he can. Here come the push. Hope he's on the front line. Tags oh. up one. Doesn't manage to get a second. Rami gets the kill. Gary gets the kill, excuse me. Here we go. JTEC 6 1. Zephyr watching that back line. Beautiful place here already. Oh, Spades on his own. We didn't catch the kills, but there it was. Spades got to make something happen here. Jumps out of the guns of Setsy and Zeppa. Going to be cleaned up. Oracle 2 0. Yeah, they knew he was there as well. They just biding time, waiting for him to make the mistake and push out. Took a bit too long, obviously, and they just stacked up around that rock just as soon as he came out the door. If he had picked up one, there were two more there just to clean him up. And like that, Oracle 2 0 up in that lead. Now, we have seen this in the past with many teams. They get the first two rounds, but then the other team adapts to the play style a little bit more. They fix up their mistakes and they'll come back and get a round or two of their own. So we'll see how EOA go now on that. Offensive side, once again, looking at that mini-map now. A bit more of a standard setup, it would seem. And Oracle adapting straight away off the start. The call will be coming in from Oracle now to the rest of the team. Telling them, yep, looks like it's the B-Boys. Come on, rotate over. Trading off kills there, one apiece. Now making it a 1v2, 1v3. What's for a moment? Oracle are just walking away at the moment. 3-0. Oh, this is my prediction almost out the window. I, I called EOA to have the hot hand better to winning those gunfights, making better calls there, but so it's far. not over yet. It's not over yet, but so far, Oracle absolutely hammering this one. Do I get half right points if it is a 6-0? I still called Oracle to win. Yeah, you round de 11. Oh, it definitely does. Definitely. That that stands up in the uh, in the Cod Caster Court. <laughs> <laughs> that is my defense, and I'm sticking by it. <laughs> Let's kick this one off with Setsy. Oracle 3-0. Here's the first major change they've made. They've gone A. Look, and you see EOA have taken the bait. They've sent all four players towards B. This is what happens. Mm. You push them one way, and then they work out very little. They've a lot learnt. And yeah. them, this is going to be a massive wrap from both teams, actually. They're going to be circling around each other. We'll kick this one off from Carry. He's going to catch anyone through mid. No, he's not. This one's going to be the player running point for his team. Oh. It's very bold just to give up on the bomb side as well. Like, even though they are moving as, as, as a whole team, you know, trying to catch these guys off guard, it's still a bold play. We've seen that happen before, and we've seen people get diffused on because they just don't keep eyes on that bomb area. As you'll see right now, EOA making their way back in there now, checking things out. A few kills going out, though. Steps in a 1v3. Can EOA get this one? 13 seconds left. He's just got to stay alive. He'll go inside. He's got to stop the defusal. No one else is there right now to start it back up again. He's done the damage. He's done what he needs to do. They're, the cops are coming out. They're yelling at him on bomb. There's the defusal. Oh, sorry. There's the actual defusal as well. They had that round. Almost. They had that round. <laughs> their whole team is yelling on bomb. <laughs> Sets thought he had it, but there was this player left. I'm not sure if he, he knew. He, he didn't know. He pulled out the taunt too early. <laughs> he almost got caught with his D in his hands while they could have looked at a round B loss there to the defusal. That's wild. That's, I've never seen anything like that. Sets is feeling himself. He's going 6-0. I'll we'll have a quick look at his streaks, actually. Yeah, he's fully, he's locked and loaded. Oh, man, this could be a 6-0 EOA. Wow. That was crazy to see, but EOA now, you know, that was really that round they should have had, but big plays coming out of Seps, obviously, on that two, two skill streak. He's on 6-0 and oh right now on that defensive line as well for Oracle. Sepsis putting up big numbers right now, though, of course. 
The bomb has gone down, or going down it would seem. All players from Oracle converging on the spot though. Big jump up over the heads. Three down, four down, I thought for a second there, but it's a team kill instead. Zeps now stepping by, by himself, sorry, in a 1v2. Dismal and Kytosis have to get in there, <laughs> have to control the situation. Zeppa, what's he going to do? Can he get the defusal on these two players? Can they get a round number five, or will EOA first get points on the board? I think he may have picked up enough information there, but now they've just done a loop around each other. 20 seconds left. This is going to be very, very interesting, Zeppa. He wants a kill. He's got one. He definitely wants another one. The clock is ticking, though. Oh, it's not going to work out in time unless he can find this player. Uh, it's not looking good for him. That's going to be it from behind. EOA, first round on the board. We not should. A, not a bad call, but the timing was just so rough. Yeah, on. you should see on this kill cam as well, I think, in this final kill cam. He, sh he probably sees him and then just decides, yeah, you know, just take his time. He wasn't going for bomb. He was checking it out. Let's just make sure we get this kill first because there was still about, I would say, 500 of a second. If he had gotten that kill, he still could have made it to the bomb to get that defusal. So EOA playing that very smart. Now 4-1 on the scoreboard. Five rounds gone. Again, they've got to get some more rounds on the board here, though. Sets, he's dead now, so the streaks have, have gone away. They don't have to worry too much about that, I think. As we just see now, JTEX on our screens. These guys, look at that minimap. Now, Oracle has changed this up. Look at that minimap. They've decided to slow things down a little bit here. It's already paid off for him. They killed Hopi. Oh, Sets, he's about to get rocked as well. This is it. Very, very aggressive run from EOA. They're pushing him through the back of B. Oh, they've changed their mind at the moment, but that should be the bomb going down. And B, here comes the defuse. Watch the retake from Spade's perspective. Real high wall run. Oh, he's got a window there. If he's got that window, he maybe, yeah, he's going to wrap back and he's going to try and get these players in the hangar. But look at this. Oh, he didn't see anyone. Gets taken down immediately. JTEX also goes down. That was the uh, Trinity Rocket coming out as well. So this has been a big round. Oh, wow. We barely caught any of it. Oracle, the Trinity Rocket came out from Zephyr. And that was crucial in the uh, defense there of the bomb. This was the final kill. That was it. Oh, Seti, excuse me, he managed to get that kill. And then just in the nick of time, getting Kytosis as well. Zephyr doing the most of the work there for that kill. It was a bit of a drowning pool concert just there with dead bodies everywhere that I saw just flying all over the place, mate. But 5-1 now. It's uh, EOA. I thought they might have had a chance at that round. Obviously, they got their first pick there. If they just kept trading, it would have been really good. But obviously, Oracle picking that one up now on that match point. Looking at the minimap this time around, if this is this is just going to be a massive contestion and again, it'll be the same round. The armor's been popped by Dismal, though, I think. That could be a big game changer. He's gotten one on Hopi. Can he find a second one as well there in the background? Carry just chilling back. They've gotten the first pick here, though. Here come the Scarab. They've spotted it. Did he get enough intel off that run, though? He saw at least one player. So now we've got Kytosis watching the side. We've got Dismal on the doorways. Here comes the play. Bomb's gone down. Oh, this is a big defense. He's got to get two out of this one. Saw Sands tags him. Not able to get the kill, though. Spades on defense as well, watching these doors. Oh, that was a big one. JTEX goes. Can he get a second? Shots out, not for Zeppa. Still alive. 2v3. Zeppa got Spades as well. Setsy gets carried. Attacked him behind. On the turn! Oh, FTL! In front of him! Shut him down straight away, but Setsy's the last man alive. 1v1, Dismal versus Setsy. He's got 17 seconds. This is possible. Oh, the timing. Arad wins! EOA, stay alive on match point. Oh, that FTL jump into gunfire, I'll never understand. I've seen it happen a few times, but you know, obviously it was maybe he was trying to FTL to behind him. Oh, if, swing if, around. He, if his foot got caught on that box, he might have gone straight over him. What and if, then, what if you FTL into someone like and you stop inside like a, of them, like a good old telefrag from like, yeah. from like the Unreal? <laughs> you're, days. Just, you're just inside the person, just and you just start firing at them and kill them from the inside out, just like Matrix One. Oh yeah, there you go. Here we go, guys. Match point. Oracle on offense. Since he was, he still got bombardment. Ooh, ooh. Could help. Mm. It's another brawl. Oracle won the first one. Can they win the second? Shots are out. First blood goes to Dismal. Kytosis gets a second. It's looking good for EOA. Oh, it's a disaster. Dismal's fired up. What a disaster for Oracle. That was match point. EOA crawling back slowly. That's two in a row now. If they get one more round, Oracle are going to be definitely feeling the pressure. You know, a 5-1 lead to now. Or was it 5-1? I think it was. Yeah, it was 5-1 or 5 Yeah, so two rounds in a row just then for EOA. So it was 5-1 lead, you know. Dismal, look at the Dismal. 13 and 6 right now. Carry, he's not doing what the name suggests, 2 and 6, but he's still in there helping out. You know, he's an OBJ player. Fair enough. I'll let him slide. Spades, after a massive game before, a little bit lackluster here, but when you've got a man like Dismal going 13 and 6, you don't need to do too much else. Here comes the play on A. Only player who's not making the same run. Oh, the camo it. play. Oh, and a second. Spades, last man alive for his team. We can barely find him. He's already dead. There it is. Oracle got the 6-3 over EOA. Inman was right. He called it. With the wrong team.
Wrong team, though. I was close, boys. Not too far off, mate. I had EOA peg for this one. They were winning those gunfights, and it was a miraculous comeback at times. But look at that. In the end, it was going to be Oracle taking that one. I'm pretty pleased. I, uh, yeah, I was a little bit off. I, I had to score right. I'll, I'll take that. That's a half win, isn't it, Dallas? Oh, according to Miles, it will stand up in cast court. Will. It so does. In the court. Cast court. <laughs> in the, in yeah. the cast court? Yep. yep. Man, I'd, we actually, that would be great. To, I'd like, like two things, a cast of union. That, well, that's not going to never happen. And then uh, the cast of court. Okay, I, I like that. No, we, I'll, uh, you know, I'll stand corrected. I could not have been more wrong. You could see Oracle riding the hype train there to uh, hopefully to Winnersville as they're going to be potentially eliminating EOA if they can get this next up link. But just bring it back to this search and destroy. Um, I mean, Dallas, you were feeling Oracle in this one, but, you know, their, their S&D compared to yesterday is really night and day. Oh, it is. And they used to be on the replay as well. Setsy so celebrating a bit too soon here on the bomb. That was almost a big mistake there. And I, I can hear it from back here, and I'll let it know on the stream. You know, they were all yelling at him saying, on the bomb. Because he was just celebrating, you know. He got the old lighter out and started trying to start a fire. He was fired up. Perhaps he was showing that, but... You know, I, I felt that Oracle, that would have been a much closer game. And, you know, with Dismal from the EOA squad, I think he ended up about 12 or 13 kills uh, in, in the overall score. So, you know, he, di he did all he could. You asked Dismal to fire up, you know, get that old AR shot back on. And he has been doing that, but just not enough this time. Oracle now up 2-0 in this best of five series. Miles, I don't know if I'm feeling EOA after losing that S&D as well as such a close hard point. So close to the hard point. And it's a really demoralizing defeat as well, especially when you were winning the majority of the game. And I don't know if this is going to affect them too much, and I still have high hopes for their respawn game types. But again, Uplink is like that weird half... It's the weird sort of middle ground between hard point, which is, you know, kill everything you see and play super fast and go for those rotations, and S&D, which is play very slow and, you know, very methodically. Kind of have to do a little bit of both in Uplink. you got to be fast, you've got to be on the guns, but then you also have to be making the calls and, and listening to your teammates and all that stuff, so... I've got I still have high hopes for AOE, that EOA. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully they can compose themselves, bring it back, and make this, uh, you know, a bit more of a series. Dallas, we still have hope in them, and I'm sure they can do that. It's going to be tough because we know what Hopi and the rest of the crew can be like once they uh, start cruising on that hype wave. Oh, no, definitely right. After that victory there, you know, after a very close hard point, then a 6-3 in the S&D, they'll be much more comfortable, I think, going into this uplink now, but they shouldn't get too comfortable. It's still a respawn game mode. We saw what respawn is like from EOA. We've seen that they can compete and they can really bring this to this squad. I was very shocked in that, in that last round. Obviously, the second last round in the S&D, they got 40 without dropping a player in that round, and then the next round, you know, it just goes completely against them again. It's rarely you see that, that when you can pick up four kills on the enemy team before the bomb even goes down, then it'll happen. So EOA, just forget about it. Focus on the fact that you did well on the hard point to begin with. Just keep it going in the respawn game modes now. You should be able to take this little game five still. It's not out of the books. Throwback uplink up next, and it can go either way, which is what we're just discussing here. Both teams have the potential. If EOA do manage to score a victory there, that takes us into a breakout hard point, which Miles, we talked about it. EOA had the lead pretty much the entire way in the first hard point. Again, I still stand strong to the fact that they can close those games out. They have the ability to do it. But Oracle, you cannot rule them out ever. You know, they say ne never say die. What's you know, even if the, the odds are heavily stacked against them, which they were in that first throwback hard point. Now, when it comes to throwback uplink, you know, I still feel like the the way we saw the way we saw AO EOA play the map, they're going to be looking very comfortable here. They're going to be looking very very confident. But again, if they can execute the same way they did in the in the S and D, things are going to be looking pretty sweet. Uh, just you're exactly right, you know, things will look pretty sweet if they can execute at the start during the throwback uplink, you know. And they could, I feel that EOA, if they win the uplink, they can win the hard point. You know, they'll, they'll put Oracle up against the ropes, they'll take this to that game, five retaliation S&D. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, obviously, but, you know, we want to just paint a picture for you all using the magic of words. The voices in my head, aside from constantly screaming, are also telling me that the Validate Brothers have just eliminated Visualize. <laughs> In Called the it. lower bracket, you know, on the other side of the lower bracket. So, uh, yeah, w that's not really unexpected at all, I don't think, Miles. Uh, it's hard. I mean, v we saw visualized a little bit earlier on on this Saturday, I believe, and we've seen Validate Bros all weekend long so far, and, you know, it's, it's a high-caliber team. On paper, they've been a little bit lackluster in their performance, especially against teams that they maybe thought they'd be doing better than. I feel like this is the practice they needed. And what better practice than at a LAN in a tournament when the stakes couldn't be higher? So I really feel like that might have helped them step things up. Bioacid, I mean, Validate Brothers, they can still make a pretty impressive lower bracket run if they put their head to it. I think that, uh, you know, this 3-0 win over Visualize the kickoff championship, championship Sunday is just what they needed.
Oh, no, he's exactly right. A win on Championship Sunday is the biggest thing you could ask for, obviously. Instead of having to play later in the day, you get the first Ws under your belt straight off the bat. You know, perhaps Oracle is sort of feeling that as well, but hopefully they'll let their brothers just... They just keep the momentum running. That's what you want to do. You don't want to go cold. They can stay in there, stay warming up, get their shots up, keep it keep it going, scrim against anyone else who's sitting around doing nothing and just try, you know, keep your team composed because as soon as you start getting a little bit cold and sort of, you know, fading away a tiny little bit, it will show in your gameplay when you're up against a high caliber team later on. Indeed, it will. These guys are both hot by the looks of it, though, and they're ready to rock and roll. We're going to get into that game three very, very shortly. Just as a reminder to all of you guys, our third and final event of the Asia Pacific calendar will be coming up very, very soon. That is the Call of Duty World League last chance qualifier. We're going to be live from Melbourne. Um, it's going to be awesome for sure. July uh, 8 to 9, and uh, I think it's actually going to be 7 to 9. But anyway, it's going to be that weekend, folks. Black it out. It's going to be great. Um, as it says, the name implies it is the last chance qualifier where we will be sending two APAC teams to qualify for the Call of Duty World League Championship. Um, as we said, it's going to be going coming for live from sunny uh, Florida. $30,000 prize pool once again and 10000 CWL Pro points. Gentlemen, we've all had the pleasure of going to the Call of Duty World League Champs at one stage or another. Dallas, you can speak to just how crazy these events can be. Oh, no, it definitely gets super exciting. You know, it's one of those things that sort of go any which way. I was there when, when T1 finished fifth in the world. I was in there when Mind Freak known as Immunity finished sixth in the world. You know, and these teams over there from Europe and from MA, from NA, they don't take us that seriously. They, they really haven't in the past. I think they're starting to now because they're realizing that if they give us a respawn game mode, our S&D has always been one of those stronger ones. And if, they, if we get the S&Ds and we get one respawn game mode, that's all it takes. Because I remember, you know, it's, it's exciting event. Curve balls get thrown left, right, except center, because obviously they're curving. <laughs> I like that. I actually like that. Uh, look, we've had a top six finish, a top five finish the year before that, Miles. Then we kind of dropped off a little bit from that. Say it, Josh. Shit the bed. We shit the bed. Say it, That's Josh. exactly what happened. So where do we think we're, uh, we're going to be landing this year, folks? Because, I mean, uh, unless we see something crazy today, we're... All hopes are on my freak to make something happen at the champs at Call of Duty Champs this year. But uh, look, say we get a few teams there, we're, we're at least going to have three. We know we're going to have three, maybe four. How are we going to go throughout Call of Duty Champs, Miles? Because, I mean, it's hard to sell at this moment, but... It, it is, but at the same time, you know, MF have had plenty of time in the States now. You can see in their gameplay already they're, they're looking real good. Um, I've, heard, I've heard whispers on the wind of other teams going over. Can't say anything yet. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a couple of teams go. Did you sign anything? Did you ever sign? I ain't signed yeah. nothing. On. But there's, I know there's a crate of beer in it if I uh, if I don't spill the beans. But look, it's I'm, I'm I'm super hopeful for more teams going over. Is we've already seen the results in Mind Freak. They were there for two and a half weeks, and they play or two, maybe three weeks even. I don't know the exact time, but the amount of time spent in the game and and the level at which they learn. We called it the hyperbolic time chamber earlier. Oh yeah. And they really did come out of that looking a little bit more yellow in the hair. I can't believe I didn't hear that, Miles, because that is such a oh, perfect true, right? analogy oh, for that, right? Isn't it? <laughs> you know, Cody came out and he was huge. You know, when Trunks comes out and you're like, damn, son, he's all like super sane and all that. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much, that's that's how it's looked. So I'm hopeful to see more teams go over because you do see the results. You really, really do. Especially once you have the connections with the North American teams and there's going to be Europeans out there more so now. Um, the level of competition is rising and unless you can get out to the States, you're going to fall behind in a big way. And we came very close at Cod XP, Cod Champs last year on Black Ops 3. Very close to making it out of groups. And it came down to just a couple of moments. And if those guys had that time in the States, we would have been seeing them in bracket play. We would have been seeing them going up, ag up against teams like Splice at the time, up against teams like, you know, Fab E. They would have taken them out and it would have been freaking crazy. But alas, this year it's going to be good for the APAC teams. That's what I'm saying. If we can just finish a goddamn game five. If we can Go. just finish a goddamn series. Those round 11s, man. Ah, oh, killing me, man. However, let's bring it all back to what's in front of us. And what's in front of us is maybe EOA getting eliminated from the competition if they're not careful here. Up against Oracle in this throwback uplink. We're going through the rig draft process right here. Your standard fair, overdrive, reactive armor, active camo, Centurion, all being brought into play. Throwback, one of my favorite maps here. 
in Infinite Warfare. Not too much longer, and we'll be seeing some more stuff coming out of WW2, and I know we're all very, very excited in the pants to see that game come out, but here we are, finishing off potentially uh, uh, well, uh, what has been a decent run, I'd say, for EOA, but it is not over yet. We've seen reverse sweeps before, and this is such a talented roster. They may just do it. I'm seeing Hopi and the rest of the guys over there from Oracle looking very composed, though. Very well themed here in the ESL studio. The mood lighting of blue versus the light of EOA. Miles, this is this. We've really set the stage here, literally and it metaphorically. Well, we've got fire and ice. We have a team that get really hot oh, and very vocal. I'm so keen. And then we've got a team that like to stay cool and they keep their heads in it. And no matter what, they manage to you know keep their keep their sort of molecular structure. They don't let themselves melt and get under the under the hotness of the, or the turn the steam or even turn the water. They keep it together. I'm, I'm all losing it here, but that's the truth, man. I think if we can see the fire in the bellies of EOA, then something special can happen here. But Oracle, they keep it cool. They keep it together. This is their series. This is their 3-0. Dallas, your predictions have been rather on point. How do you feel this one's going to go down? Well, just looking at that rig draft, I'm questioning the Centurion from Spades instead of an FTL. So I'm sort of feeling that maybe it might, it's going to go in favour of the Oracle, and I think they're just going to... Score-wise, I'm going to say 9-6 to Oracle. 9-6 to Oracle. I'm feeling probably an Oracle victory here. I think it's only going to be by one or two points, though, Miles. What do you think it's going to be? Yeah, it's going to be one or two points, but I'm giving the win to EOA. I still think they've got it in the respawn game types. I still think they have the firepower. But do they have the technical execution to make those plays happen? I think we start this one off with uh, yeah, with, uh, with Setsy. Setsy has been wrecking fools in this series so far, and I don't doubt he'll do anything but in this one. Dallas, any final predictions? The final prediction, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. You know, I don't like uh, sitting on the fence. I don't like going back and forth. I'll start with that 9-6 to Oracle. Again, if EOA win 9-6, then again half right. And We'll, we'll keep it with that. But starting things off, as you said, with Setsy here on our screens. Does the actually chemo? I believe Zeppel will be the one with the FTL jump. And let's see if we'll you see an FTL jump come out of him again. We did try and try and see it on Frost before. Kytosis, though, picks up the first kill on Hopi. Some more shots going out. Trying to get that map control, as you always tend to do at the start of Uplink. You want to get the map control before you grab the drone, before you try and throw it down. That right-hand side, usually towards bowling, is the way Oracle will usually head towards. But... For now, they're just, you know, again, fighting for that first part of the map control, Miles. Uh, the map control, a little bit shaky between both teams. Hope he got caught with his pants down back on uh, back on that last respawn. So now he's back into the fight. He got ripped up though, by a player on top train. Oh, Kytosis is in a real bad spot. Nice jump there, gets the play, but he's going to get dropped on immediately. Carry now. Last player alive for his team Bring in mid. Out. This is going to be the flat. And, oh, brilliant kill on JTX there. That's going to slow things down. Oh, look at this, the drone runner. They haven't slowed him down. Sets, he's still got drone, though. He's made it quite far forward. But here comes the respawners from EOA. They're going to be answering back. Lovely shots, though. Imagine getting that kill. Kankaitosis flushes players out of his base. Beautiful big shots. Kill. That would have been a game changer. Yeah, no, that was a big kill there from Kaitosis. He was the last one left just down that right-hand side alleyway. And the drone had been thrown back out towards near bowling. So, obviously, he had to get that clutch kill. Otherwise, they would have been running that straight through bowling. At least gotten a one point, I think, throwing it up and over the top. But, again, you see the drone currently away. It'll have to probably reset if no one's going to really go for it. I don't think they're too concerned about it at this point in time. Oh, I say that, though. They decided to challenge for it just then. Sets will jump down to grab it. A push-up now. It's a three down on EOA here. It's going to be Oracle trying to push up quickly, grabbing the kills they need to get. Obviously, the drone now sitting up still outside on the outside of Bowling Alley. Will get picked up by the EOA squad and will get reset, I believe, just to slow things down and push Oracle back. Wow, Setsy absolutely going off winning these really crucial gunfights. But again, the rest of the team's not able to push on through. They've got the, they're winning the fights, they're holding on, but they're not able to make those executions happen. So again, getting drone forward, they lock down bowling, and then nothing happens after that. We'll jump on board. Oh, no, we won't. He's about to get there. Oh, we should have. There was Zeppa, Zeppa now <laughs> winning that gunfight. We'll watch and see the boys in Oracle can make a play happen here. That's a big kill there. Oh, Zeppa goes for the far forward throw. He's going to be moving up. He has only got Setsy behind him. He needs to win a big gunfight. Oh, as a play. oh the timing. Oh, the timing. Big. Lands right into his lap. His players are pushing up here now as well. That's three players down. The drone is exactly where they need it. It's going to be a two-pointer here. There it is from Setsy. Two points in. First points on the board after the first quarter now gone. 2-0 lead here to the Oracle Squad, and they're looking for the relay. Here comes the relay. That was a beautiful pass from Hopi to Zeppa. Zeppa now passes it on to Setsy. Setsy, it's good! Big. What a setup from the boys there. That was absolutely immaculate. Looking at the minimap now, it's going to be JTEX who's in that part of the minimap. He's not really set up though. His teammates are under gunfire. They're trying to clear the base out. EOAR. They know Setsy's in there. There it goes. Zephyr will get picked up as well. 
And now EOA can sort of push back Oracle again to try and get some points of their own on this scoreboard. But right now, Oracle looking very dominant. Few kills going out here. Looking at that mini-map, you know, again, they're just trying to clear out the part, middle part of the map. It will be Carrie who's going to pick up that drone, go for a bit of a run here. His teammates are pushing up through Grandma's, through middle part of Barn. It may have to be a one-pointer, I think, maybe Miles, unless they can get some big kills at the back. All right, it's the play. He's going for the throw. It's a cheeky one, but he manages to net it. 4-1. EOA, first points on the board. That was a really rough one. I think, EO, I think Oracle, they could have done a lot more defensively. They should have seen it come in, and they had no one in the air to try to stop that one on the goal. But either way, the boys of EOA now on the board. There we go, Hopi and Setsy making that play happen. They got that far forward throw. Drone Zapper wins the engagement. This is going to be big. They've got to make those, got to get these kills though. Without the kills, the drone throw is absolutely nothing. Kytosis mm -hmm. got drone for EOA. Let's see if they can't make something happen. Big far forward throw. Carry is going to be leading the point, leading the charge. Tip of the spear gets taken down by Hopi. Kytosis, can he answer back? Vengeance, will he find it? Trying to find it now there at Lime, as you mentioned. Two players though from Oracle pushing in. I know this play before, JTEX was the one who was actually in the opposition spawn earlier. He's waiting for this pass once again. This is the second time they've gone for it, and he's been picked up as he pushes around the back end side of bowling there. Dismal from EOA, though, he's struggling here. The drone is being run by Zeppa. He's got players and teammates all around him, though, but Spades and Dismal trying to clear the base out. Seps picks up one kill, goes for the one-pointer. It's good. The ref says in for one, 5-1 the scoreline becomes. Four-point deficit now for EOA. What a turn. Hope he got taken out in that 1v1 there. That was absolutely crucial. I thought it was going to all go downhill from there, but no, Setsy stayed alive, kept the point, kept the kills coming. I managed to sink that one point. Absolutely brilliant stuff. This has been a wonderful round for Oracle. Maybe not as many points as they were hoping for, but here we go. EOA, they've got a chance here. It looks like Kytosis is in position to get, up, get the drone and make it far forward. You can see his players already trying to win these gun engagements there in the spawn of Oracle. Oh, big win there. Kytosis, last man alive for his team. He's got to make something happen. It goes for the drone beatdown. Can he get another throw? It's up. It's out on the bounce, not a chance. As obviously they come to the end of the first half, 5-1 in favour of the Oracle team. As these guys looking to try and keep that lead going in their favour, you know, it's it's not over yet though, obviously. I think we might be able to see a way. If Dismal could fire up a bit more, heading into the second half, I'm hearing a lot of comms coming out of Oracle during that first half there. And looking over that scoreboard, you know, Dismal's only on five after five minutes. It's a big thing to ask. You know, you've got to try and lift your spirits high, son. I believe we should go for a listen in, though, with this Oracle squad. The comms that were coming out from these guys were great to hear. I want to see if they can keep that momentum going, keep the hype train up, and we'll take this one away. So we need to listen in, thanks to Astro, with Oracle. He's going to pick up bowling. He's going to pick up bowling. Wait, 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 I'm in bowling, I'm in bowling. Okay, then I'll get Outside bowling, outside, one more on me. I think on the pass. Bowling, bowling. One, one, dismal tag, pick it, pick it and bowling, pick it and bowling. Uh, bowling, he's out of the map, he's out of the map. I'm in bowling, in bowling, in bowling. I want to bowl kills, Jay, let's go, Jay. Completion, completion. Back up base, back up base, carry. Four reset, four reset. Keep standing base, stay base, stay base. Just wait, just wait, wait, wait. Danger, danger, danger. One shot, danger, one shot, danger, one shot, danger. Stay in the back, don't move forward, let's go, danger. One more, Kytosis, I'm ball, I'm ball, I'm ball. You missed, you missed, you missed. Oh, you have one, you have one, one for one. Nice, nice, nice. I'm B3, I'm B3, I'm B1. I'm going to top ticket here. I'm B1, 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 I'm B1,
Watch your ball out. Yeah. Nice. Three, four, three, three. Under the bus, under the bus. Nice. Let's go. Go, go, top green. Go, top green. Go, top green. You two go lemon. You two go lemon. Now, watch out. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish on the pass. Let me finish on the pass. Yeah, hey, one, hey, one, hey. Yeah, okay. I'm waiting out. Hey, hey, tag. One, hey, one, hey, one, hey, one. Oracle on the rebound, Hopi keeping the dream alive for his team. He's on a wonderful four streak. We've got to see every kill here. Zeppa's the player withdrawn here, pushing through Granny's carry. Finally ends the run of Hopi there. And this is going the distance, Dallas. We saw the scoreline develop slowly but surely for EOA. They managed to get a couple of points in. And now look, Oracle. Keeping, the, keeping that line far forward, what else are they going to be able to do to keep, hold back the tide of EOA? Yeah, EOA are just trying to move that drone forward, like throw by throw. Now, obviously, it is going to be Oracle who keeps picking it up, throwing it over the top. Our yeah, pharmacy there, and they just keep pushing the pressure back on EOA. They're only up by two points here, so EOA definitely not out of this yet. Still a minute 45 on the clock. And Setsy, he's got all five points so far for his team and carry three on the other side. So, obviously, these two guys are the ones who you want to get that drone to. JTEX has that drone now. Hope he could be a bit of a pain here if he can get a couple of kills. He's got players all around. He does die, though. Pushing in on JTEX. Jay gets his one. Sorry, gets the second one. Shot down by Kytosis. Kytosis clears out their spawn once again. And that drone will slow things down. Massive defensive play. If you lose those fights, they get a point instantly. Kytosis goes down again. Zeppa tagged up heavily. Still staying alive, though. That nade might find him. Doesn't manage to do it. Here comes a Scarabout straight away. Oh, doesn't manage to find anything either. The defense from Oracle looking too strong. There's a minute left on the clock. He's got a camo play waiting in the back pocket. Hope he gets the second. Kytos is finding the kill there. Can he get a couple more ca carry in position now? Oh, this position is ideal. Gets a couple of kills out of it. Doesn't get brought down, though. There we are. Dismal. We needed him to step up. He's about to do so. Drone's still sitting in mid. They haven't made a play for it yet, but their time is not on their side. They need to win this one. This is it. Their tournament life is in the hands of these four players. The next 40 seconds are going to be crucial. Carry with a lovely kill there. The drone is in the hand of Setsy. Setsy now. He's made it all the way. He's passed the halfway mark through Grandma's. Cuts him down, Zeppa. He's in Granny's. He can still make the play. He can get the drone. Throws it back out. Hope he's the last man alive for his team. And here we go. On the rebound. Can we see EOA get on the board? 20 seconds left. A dunk will do it. They can get no more. No less. And this is it. It's all coming down at this. Kytosis with a couple of kills. Carry on the rebound doesn't manage to make it happen through mid the drone's been thrown already spades he's got to hold the line 10 seconds remaining can they make it work i don't think they can hope he, he's going to burn the clock here and oracle have got to be pleased with this result what a turnaround this series has been drama laden and there you go ladies and gentlemen the tournament lives of eoa end here oracle move on to the next round the carving has been etched on the tombstone and we will say adieu to Era of Apothean and Era comes to an end Dallas it was a great way to finish that off they did a uh, it, was, it was an awesome performance but unfortunately Oracle just besting them there in the end oh they did you know all I, what I saw Era of Apothean to do was just get the hands on drone throw it up top over tickets get carry just to get around there somehow pop camo grab drone in for a two like that would have been the perfect play to happen but just the offense that was coming out from that, the defense, sorry, coming out from Oracle in their own section of the map and in the middle part of the map, this couldn't be done. They were just out slaying there time and time again, and that drone was just all over the place down under bridge. Oracle, just guns of fury, well executed plays. I think that Apothean looked, uh, I guess, a little bit composed with their setting up, but the execution just wasn't their mark. It was, there were times, there were moments of pure brilliance. You know, we'll see a few of those in the highlights. Um, you know, we had one superb play from Oracle. There was a, a relay where they netted their two dunks, and after that, they, they built a wonderful foundation to be sat upon, you know, for the remainder of the rounds. A couple of crucial moments, though, where it just fell apart, and it really did hinge on a couple of kills. Again, watching these highlights back, it was really, really close to begin with. You know, the teams were so tightly contested. This was the first dunk from Setsy. Beautiful opening play there from Zephyr, managed to give him the field and then after that the relay there was a pass over the top from Hopi into sets he gets the single yeah actually it wasn't that, was, that wasn't the play one we're talking about but yeah it was it was very very well executed from the boys in Oracle Apothean just falling short now and then credit to all of EOA but can I just say that Spades has very much still got it oh. Stella's, Stella never lost her groove with Spades <laughs> no he's definitely playing really rather well you know we saw him I think it was 41 kills in the first half point definitely going off there uh Struggled a little tiny bit in the S&D. Dismal picked it up, though, with, I think, 13, 14 kills or so in S&D alone. And then into that hard point game, you know, he, he definitely is still, still having it, still picking up. It was 26 kills, I think I'm reading there as yep. well. So, you know, he's, these guys are still a strong team. It's always going to come down to the thing, though. Once you are knocked out of a competition, the lane is over for you. 
So you stay together, do you mix things up? I, I'd like for them to stay, stay together. I, I think they have a, something that can, can work well here. It's just more about, you know, working on that chemistry, working on the plays and just finding that right groove that'll suit you. I definitely think that they should be sticking together. I mean, they made a good roster last year. Kartosis makes a good addition to the mix. Um, and Miles, of course, we've already talked about it, that relegation online tournament, 16-team invite, as well as a 16-team invite last chance qualifier. I mean, getting that teamwork down pat is going to make all the difference. Yeah, I don't want to see a team change happen. You know, there's not a lot of chemistry between those four players. And particularly, uh, the only one who's going to be any, who's going to be really disappointed himself is going to be Dismal this, this, in the final map. But otherwise, he played like an absolute savage in the first two maps. And, you know, he was terrifying to watch in that hard point on, on throwback, the first one. Um, it was, yeah, it's, I, I don't want to see a team change. I want to see them stick together, work out those problems and get back in it because they've still got chances to make champs. Hopefully we'll see these guys stick together. Let's check out some of the other results around the traps here at the CWL Sydney Open 2 presented by PlayStation 4. We talked about that Validate Brothers 3-0 win over Visualize. And unfortunately, we do say goodbye oh. to Sleeper Gaming after Empire probably with an expected win 3-0 over them and Tainted Minds with the 3-0 over Validate. I know the Sleeper Gaming were very, very pleased to have made Bracket. And, you know, that's what they wanted. That was their target. And, you know, if you, hit, you set those goals, set those smart goals, those smart attainable goals, you know, they certainly did that. You know, Tainted, not a massive surprise there, Dallas. We did expect them to get a little bit further. Yes. They were very hard on themselves yesterday. I had a chat with the players. They were super disappointed with themselves, and as they should be. You know, high expectations, top-tier, you know, um, organization in the region. I, th I feel like they let themselves down a little bit, so they're going to have everything to prove today in uh, lower bracket play. With Tainted Minds 3 over Validate and the 3 of Oracle over EOA, Tainted Minds will now go up against Oracle, and we've also got Empire versus Validate Brothers Dallas. We have some stacked games ahead of us. I am, to say I'm pumped is an understatement. I've already drunk a liter of Red Bull this morning. Empire Sports and Validate Brothers, that's going to be amazing. You know, you guys are sort of tipping Validate Brothers to, to sort of have that in the bag, but I think Empire could, I think Empire can really turn some heads. Tanner Mines versus Oracle Esports, though. I think with the current way that Tanner Mines has been playing a little bit here, perhaps today's a different day altogether. They've, they've forgotten what, what happened in the last two days. But Oracle this morning already, 3-0 win. They'll be feeling ecstatic heading into the next series against Tanner Mines, and I really think there could be a, an upset for Tanner Mines there. That's really going to be hard to predict how that one's going to go. Um, I'm actually feeling Empire, to be honest. I, I was the match before. Sorry, I'm, I apologize. It's all right. It was I'm, the match prior. Hey, man, we're... we're Good man, it's championship Sunday. It's, we're all feeling good. I'm feeling Empire in that matchup, though, Miles. Yeah, I've, I'm uh, feeling Miles. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, that's the first feeling I've got on the desk. I should we had a hug yesterday, didn't we? We did. Oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry, man. Grumble, grumble. Grumble. It's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't we, um, I don't complain when it's free. <laughs> Damn. 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 Um, what was I gonna say? I've lost it. No, I'm an easy it. broad. Empire, like Empire were, yeah, Empire have got the favors in that one, but this next matchup, a quick sort of early call in this one, I see a similarity in the play styles of what is now tainted and what we just saw in Era of Apotheon. Fast-paced, really aggressive, super strong gun skill. I actually think Oracle might have, uh, they've got a key in here. They've got a little, they've got a little way into the armor of Tainted Minds in this one. So this is gonna be a killer series to watch. Very excited to see how it's gonna unfold. Oracle versus Tainted Minds is gonna be up next here at the CWL Sydney Open 2, presented by PlayStation 4. It is going to be a bananas matchup. You don't wanna miss it. Fight at half walk. I chose to fix that one more. Hope he's trying to stay alive. Players all around him. He gets one cut. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's a big kill right there. Let's right. go, boys. 20 seconds. Oh, back, back. Watch out the back. Oh, nice. Nice. Look front, man. Look front. Look front. The boys in blue have been so solid here. This is Oracle's hard point from start to finish. This is a new lineup from you know they've, they didn't look this strong a moment ago. EOA now. Funny enough, but there was the bombardment. But it's oh, get two with it. They're all dead. It's all down. They're going to be able to get the last few seconds. One. 13 seconds left. Just got to stay alive. He'll go inside. He's got to stop the defusal. No one else is there right now to start it back up again. He's done the damage. He's done what he needs to do. The, the cops are coming out. They're yelling at him on bomb. There's the defusal. Oh, sorry. There's the actual. Attack behind. On the turn. Oh, FTL. In front of it. going to be Oracle trying to push up quickly, grabbing the kills they need to get. Obviously, the drone out. Sitting up to outs on the outside of bowling alley. Will get picked up. Guys in Dismal trying to clear the base there. Sets picks up one kill. Goes for the one pointer. It's good. He read a couple of kills. He's got players all around. He does die though. Pushing in on JTEX. J gets this one. Sorry, gets the second one. Hopefully, he went to the back pocket. Hope he gets the second. Kaitos is finding the kill there. Can he get a couple more? Ca carry in position now. Oh, this position is ideal. Gets a couple and of kills. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The tournament lives of EOA end here. Oracle. 
move on to the next round. The carving has been etched on the three. Round number eight, going for that long wall run. Two players there waiting though. Can they get them both? They will carry in spades, making it now a 3v2. Here we go, bomb down a. It's going to be an easy climb. Active camo, why so smiley? He sneaks out there, he's going to find the kill, and there we go. Rotation, oh sorry, the spawns are going to be in control of Validate. He's going to find another kill. Can he find the third one? Just over this the huge. Pitch. No, it's so close. Nice. There we go. Smiley turning up when needed most, and he's going to be able to break that score. To no avail, he's going to fall there, but his teammates do clean up the rest of the pieces. Rami is the last alive in a 1v2. One player's already on the bomb. That's going to be Perko. He jumps off just in time. Perfect. It comes around Rami. Nice. Very Holiday Brothers, their head is in the game, and I uh, don't blame them. They are behind by one at the moment. Dean Gunnan. Jeez, I wish I stayed for listening for that one because they would have been psyched. But it's eradicated quite comfortably. Dean picking up a second. Dean's just been a two-piece machine this whole game. Oh, sexy, absolutely ludicrous play. Rage, not doing, not making too many mistakes, but just getting out slayed, I think, a little bit at the moment. Yeah, Killify's positioning there was fantastic. On the end of, of two great kills there, receiving a ton of damage himself, managing to buy a, a whole heap of... The time is ticking on down, and just That's like that, they, they test the waters, so to speak, with that one, just to see if he was out. They got the tag. Can he get the second? Where is the second player? He says, hunting around for him, not too sure. Right, but if he keeps going around for round, it just shows you know, the talent on both these teams. They try and trade off inside a bike shop there. Fate picks up one on Eminence in the background. Lakey picks up a second on Chilean as well, making it now a 2v4. Down once again now. They'll wait for a bit of control, perhaps, and wait for that drone to come back on in, of course. Once it does get reset, here it comes on down now. And again, the battle inside the lobby will be taking place. Killify tries to pick up the second beast. And One more wave of spawners. Here's the run. Goes for the pass. It's oh, good. And Beast sinks it. Beautiful work there from Rage. That call up on Mainstream. Nice, nice. I'm taking ball. Same ball. Same ball. Yeah, down, jump down. Nice. I spawned her. I spawned her. Help me. Help me. He's killing me. He's killing me. One what? shot. It wouldn't let me get all in. Good, all good. All good. All good. Second right, time. Alright. Alright. His back pocket, those will be coming out any moment now. This is a huge play for him. Caught nimble, napping there, gets a big kill. And now 27 and 19. And